What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Was Betrayed and Became a God, the movie, which is every single part that we have done and combined them into clips. And just like that, it is a nine hour or eight and a half hour long movie. I'm not exactly sure. But before we get into this video, seriously, a special thank you to my balance breakers. Rob the King, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Crumbling Darkness Fear, Madly Wolf 333, Ant Lewis, The Beast 25 YT3, VR Wolf Hashtag 2347, Sinrar Q, Jordan Patchow, Mazaku, Dr. Underscore MLG Underscore is the Bomb, Asimotus, and Grim Fireshot Gamer. Thank you so much for becoming a Balance Breaker, which is the highest membership tier. If you guys want to see more what ifs on Goku's or other anime characters, go down in the description below and subscribe to my second channel called Ampalpalski. If I should change the name to something else, just go ahead and let me know, and I might consider doing it. So, thank you guys so much for the support. 30,000 subscribers, we're 2,000 subscribers away. It's actually crazy of having, like, just even one-thirds of, like, even just so close to 100,000 subs. Like, I just want to get there by the end of, I don't know, something, or at least the end of college. That'd be crazy. But so, thank you so much for the support. Let's try to hit like 500 likes for the movie. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. The Prologue After the Riser Arc, third POV. In the city of Ko, it was dusk. Birds were chirping and trees were rustling. It was a typical happy day. But not so happy for our young brown-haired protagonist, who was currently lying on the grass with a look of pain in his eyes as he laid on the grass with a hold near his heart, crimson blood flowing out of his body as he laid on the grass, awaiting his death. Is this a sick dream? If it is, I'm... I'm gonna wake up, Issei says. Third POV, flashback to a couple of days ago. Issei is riding a bicycle at incredible speed with a grin plastered on his face. Hell yeah, finally got a contract done, Issei said to himself. Ria's gonna be so proud, <laughs> maybe I'll get to touch her boobs. Issei arrives at the ORC club room as he grins wildly before entering. President, I'm back and I did the job you gave me, Issei said. Inside the club room, everyone is seen to be having a discussion among themselves, so Rias is seen reading a book while having a frown, which goes unnoticed by Issei as he enters the room with a smile, unable to sense the negative emotions in the room. Prez, I completed my first contract and the lady gave me a ring, Issei says. Suddenly, Rias gets up, startling Issei as she places the book down and looks at Issei with a stern glare. Issei, I'm glad that you saved me from that wretched harem-loving man, Rias said. Don't thank me, Prez. It's my duty to save you. I'll always protect you no matter the cost, Issei says. Although I'm glad you saved me, the way you behaved in front of all those noble devils disgust me. The look on those devils gave me back then. I cannot think of it. Ugh, so I want to tell you that I, unaware of what's happening, Issei tilted his head in confusion, as he then notices the glares he's receiving from the others, except for Kiba. Prez, I'm confused. Tell me, what's the problem? Issei said. You're my problem, Rias replied. Issei stares at Rias with wide eyes, processing what this is all about, but then his brain got the answer. A bitter answer for his problem, but his heart didn't want to believe what was happening. What do you mean by, I'm your problem, Issei said. Issei, due to your immature behavior in front of the noble devils while you crashed the party, I believe my reputation as the devil's king's little sister has been tarnished so too. Regain my reputation, I hereby ban you from the ORC till I ask for your presence. If you try trespassing, you'll be severely dealt with. Also, I'm not that girl to kill you by retrieving my pawn pieces. Although I'm tempted to do it, cause you st but you still have the boosted gear, so I may find some use in you. A sickening crack is heard, as the ring he was holding was crushed into pieces, and so was a crack formed on his heart. Sorry, man, but I can't do anything against this, but if you want some help, I'll gladly help you, Kiba said. Kiba is seen with a sad smile on his face as Issei looks at everyone present for any hope, but all he got was Konako's stoic glare, Azia's face filled with relief, Akino's face with a suppressed smile, and Rias's face with no emotions looking at Issei. This, this is a prank, right, Prez? Issei says. Prez, tell me this is a prank, right? Azia, tell me this is a joke, isn't it? Guys... Guys, tell me this is a sick prank of yours. This isn't true, is it? Kiba looks at Issei with a solemn gaze as he stared at Issei's trembling figure with a look of pity for his new friend. I know it's hard to accept reality, but this is true. You are not permitted to enter the ORC. 
Issei suddenly turns around and walks towards the exit with an emotionless look on his face and his eyes devoid of any emotions as Issei spoke in a cold voice. I understand, Issei says. Everyone silently flinches that they have never seen him with an emotionless face and a cold voice with no emotions. Issei then exits the room, slamming the door on his way out. The next day, brought to you by Issei, being kicked out of his home by his parents. That's in parentheses. Currently at Ko Academy, it's noon, as Issei is seen to be limping towards a cherry tree with numerous bruises and cuts littered all over his body, as he lies down on the shade of a cherry tree, panting heavily. <sighs> what did I do to deserve this? I didn't peek on a single girl that I hang out with Matsuda and Motohama today. First Rias and the others hurt me mentally, now the whole school hurts me physically. Fuck my life. As Issei is seen lying on the shade of a cherry tree, two girls are seen running towards Issei with a wooden katana with the intent to strike Issei. Wait, why am I feeling like I'm being stalked? Issei said. In an instant, a wooden katana is seen to aim to strike his head, but Issei dodges narrowly, but another wooden sword comes into contact with his hands, making him jolting up with his hands holding his hands in pain. This isn't funny. Who's there? Issei said. The answer Issei got was fist to his face and a kick to his knee, struggling to stand, still managed Issei to get a glimpse of the ones who attacked him. It was none other than the Kendo Club. Rotten hell, you filthy, you filthy pervert, girl one said. I come from hell, Issei said. How dare you filthy pervert who gave permission to talk to us. We don't have conversation with people who sexually harass others, girl two says. I did no such thing, Issei replied. Again, Issei gets a slap to his face as both girls are fuming with anger. Don't lie, pervert. We know that you've been kicked out of the ORC club due to your attempts to sexually harass the two great ladies of the co, Akino and Rias, our school mascot Konako. Everyone knows this, girl one says. I heard that even your parents chased you out of your house and removed your filthy self from, your, from their esteemed family, girl two replied. You're right. They are no longer my parents by name. And I don't consider them my parents anymore, Issei replied. Rias, she ruined my peaceful life, and I shall do the same. Issei then runs away from Ko Academy, ignoring the shouts of the Kendo girls. After running away from Ko Academy, Issei stops to catch his breath, only to find that he's on the same spot where Rainer killed him. I will not let anyone fool me again. This I swear to Satan himself, and I shall ruin Rias's life in every means possible. I saw her as my master, my love, but to her I'm just a toy to play with. I guess I know why I was betrayed. It's because I'm weak, yes. I shall become powerful enough to make them tremble. If I'm powerful, I won't be betrayed, yes. A chuckle is heard across the surroundings as a barrier is erected by someone Issei immediately gets on guard, but the events from before play in his mind, distracting him. Issei, look above you, Drake said. Issei looks upward only to be met with a light spear going through his guts, leaving a hole and blood spurts from his body as Issei weakly lands on the ground and looks above to see a fallen angel flying away. Is, is this a sick dream? If it is, I'm gonna wake up. And that's the end of the flashback. That's the end of the prologue. Chapter 1. Issei's POV. If this is a dream that I don't want anything but to wake up, with my last bits of energy I tried to keep my eyes open, I could already feel my body going numb. If only I had a second chance on life. I wanted to be happy, I wanted a family. But here I am, betrayed by everyone and dying a painful death. No, I won't die here. I want to live, I wish to live, I must live! My life took the wrong turn in an instant. I had planned to live a happy life with Rias, but here I am mumbling my last words to no one. Rias, it sickens me to think about that bitch, a power-hungry bitch who used me. I even gave my arm to save her, but this bitch, how dare she, ranting about her fame while she could have been a slave for Riser. Drake, goodbye, partner. I may have been your worst host, but hey, at least you didn't betray me, Easy replied. Partner, in my life inside this sacred gear, most of my past hosts just saw me as a tool, but you saw me as my partner. You may be my weakest host, but you're my best host ever, Drake said. Chuckling to myself, I laid on my deathbed, awaiting death to take me away from this world. But then a bright light blinds my half-open eyes for an instant of what appears to be a book with skeleton hands, and it seems to be an eye materialized in front of me. <laughs> I must heap hallucinating things. 
Rejoice, boy, as your wish may come true. Ha! <laughs> creepy looking book just talked to me. Definitely not creepy that my vision went black. Time skip. I opened my eyes only to be met with moonlight entering my eyes. Am I in heaven? No way. I'm a devil. Only then I realized that my fatal wound was closed up, leaving only a scar of where I was stabbed. No way. I'm sure I died. As I was thinking what could have happened, I hear a voice in my head scaring me. You're awake. Good. What the? Issei says. Fear not, boy. You're not hallucinating. I'm the one who took pity on you, thus saving you. Wait, what? The book. This voice belongs to that book. Damn. Wait, where's Drake? If you're worried about your dragon friend, he's asleep. I've ensured that no one listens to us. Whew. Wait, how'd you know what I was thinking? This is surely freaking me out. Don't be freaked out. I'm just a voice in your head. Also, I won't be able to have a conversation with you ever again. What are you? Issei says. I am a... I don't know who I am. If I wasn't scared beforehand, then I'm now. What kind of answer is that? Wait, don't tell me he's an amni... I'm not amnesiac. It's just I don't have a name. Answer me. Anything related to you that you know, Issei says... I exist across the multiverse, every universe, every timeline. I'm present. I wasn't created, I existed for eternity and will exist even after the destruction of this universe. I can do anything if I had a soul to host me. The only restriction I have is the lack of a soul. I created concepts. Everything's are created by me, and I am the supreme concept. I rule the multiverse. I am the Pridorial Concept. Everything was created by this book. What the actual hell? Wait, how am I not freaked out? You're not freaked out? Oh, I see. So, your soul is accepting me at last. After eternity of unable to use my full powers, I get a chance with this. I, we, will be the supreme being. What do you mean by we will be the supreme being? He said, replied. To save you, I tried to merge my powers to your soul. This was the first time I succeeded in doing this, but I have killed many by trying to merge with them. But you're different. Your soul is unique. While I began to create other universes, I placed a random factor that unique soul may be created after a long time to host me. I feel our merging is complete. Don't freak out. Your personality will be slightly altered. We will both become one thing. Of this is a gift no one can get. Now go to the multiverse. My first creations will help you become Come, the Watcher, my host. Suddenly, my veins are popping out. This is strange. Overwhelming power flows through me. My wish is granted. I know who I am now. This power, Rius, watch out for me. I'll burn your ambitions soon. Third POV. Issei then starts to laugh, like a child who's got his favorite toy. The moonlight shine upon Issei as a twisted, psychotic grin makes its way towards his face. I'm... The supreme being, huh? Issei, what happened? Wait, how are you alive with that grin? And what's with that grin, Drake said. Drake, I'm the supreme being. Can you believe this? I got a second chance at life, Issei replied. I can feel an unknown power flowing through you, Issei. What have you done to become? Well then, listen carefully. Issei says... Time skip brought you by Issei explaining what happened to Drake. This is a lot to take. The primordial concept, the true ruler of the multiverse, supreme being to think that pervert is the host of the powerful concept. This world must be fucking with me, but whatever. I'll be your sacred gear forever, my friend, Drake said. Drake, I don't wish to be a devil anymore. You can make me a dragon. I would have done it myself, but I don't know about my powers, Issei said. Sure, partner. Hang on, it may sting a bit, Drake said. Suddenly, Issei starts to scream as emerald-colored aura envelops Issei. You said it will be just this thing. I feel like a mountain is on top of me, Issei said. That is not a big deal. Fuck you, asshole, Issei said. Sorry, I don't swing that way, Drake replied. The Emerald's aura subdues as Issei stops to yell due to his pain lessening. Issei comes out of his Emerald aura. Issei's facial characteristics are changed beyond recognition and eight broken pieces lay on the grass. Eight broken pawn pieces lay on the grass. You didn't tell me this would happen, partner, Issei said. 
I believe that due to my scale color being crimson, your hair color changed to red, as I was the one who awoke your draconic characters. Also, I feel that due to you changing into a dragon, your draconic affinity has evolved into a true concept. If given proper training, you can master your new concept, but as primal concept, I'm not sure what to do, Drake said. We are gonna go to the multiverse. As the weirdo book said me, also it mentioned that some of its greatest concepts are there and could help me, Issei said. Then go to the multiverse. I'm so hyped to see what it looks like, Drake said. Do you think those bitches will search for me, Issei replied? I do. After all, you're the Red Dragon Emperor. I believe that all the factions will search for you, including the Devil Faction. After all, having a missing Longinus user doesn't do well with the Devils during this time of extreme tension due to the Great War 4,000 years ago. Beware, gods. I shall return once again with vengeance for all Devils and those who oppose me, Issei said. Issei then disappears into thin air. In an unknown forest, a silver-haired teen is still seen standing on a cliff mounting looking at the sea below with no interest on his eyes widely suddenly his eyes widened suddenly impossible i can't sense the red one this can't be possible it's as if he disappeared from the universe itself suddenly the silver haired teen raised his eyebrow as his eyes show curiosity but then shifts to an emotionless state whatever i lost my rival huh boring Volley, the red one won't disappear just like that. I've known Drake for a long time. If he goes missing, it means he'll come back stronger. The man now introduced as Volley smirks, as blue wings emerge from him and he sees his flying away. Now, we're with Rius. Scene break. Rius is seen reading some files retake to Supernatural as she then gets up from her seat with tears startling the others. Rius, what happened? Akino said. No, no, this can't be happening. I refuse to believe this. Rius then starts trembling as she falls to her knees having a mental breakdown as the others get concerned and confused. Rius, what's wrong? Konako said. Issei, I can't feel his pawn pieces, Rius said. The others hearing it stare at Rius with wide eyes knowing what that meant except for Azia who was confused. Akino, call my brother now, Rius said. Sure, but Rius, Akino said. Everyone search for Issei. Everywhere around Ko. Also inform this to Sona she'll help us search for Issei, Rius says. Issei, you can't be dead, right? Rius says. And that is the end of chapter one. Chapter two. Third POV with Rius. Currently it's midnight as Rius is seen flying with her bat wings, searching for Issei with a concern evident in her eyes. Akino, have you located Issei? Rius says. Rius, his pawn pieces are not functional. He cannot be alive, Akino says. No, I refuse to believe he's dead, Rius says. President, I have located Issei's pawn pieces, but they are cracked and emit a strange aura, Kiba says. Please, let this be a sick dream, Rius says. Now, back with Issei. Issei is seen staring at the moon on top of a cliff with an amusement visible in his eyes. The moon is gradient today. I believe that the multiverse itself is welcoming its new ruler. Whatever. Are we paying a visit to the multiverse or not? Drake said. The moon is so pretty, but why do I feel the urge to destroy it? In an instant, a bright silver light covers Issei, and when the light disappears, Issei is nowhere to be found. Issei's POV. A bright silver light covers me as I wish I could feel my body becoming lighter as I am floating. Wait, I am floating as I get far away from Earth and somehow I am breathing. Soon I get accelerated at unknown speeds as my vision becomes blurry. But then I see something. What appears to be a dragon picking up a green orb with huge mana reserves, but I have much more mana and a girl with blonde hair gazing into my dragon eyes. That dragon. It's similar to Fafnir. I think this is dimensional, Drake says. Crack. I have heard about this place from Great Red once. He said that this is a crack that separates the parallel universes from the others. He stated that he, that even he has only once been in this place when he first manifested, Drake says. Oh, okay, Issa replied. And then I got pulled incredibly fast to what seems to be a wormhole. This is magnificent. And then a bright bluish light behinds me for a second as I get pulled inside the wormhole with even greater speed. But I can't feel any dizziness. I'm actually enjoying this, but Treg, 
Oh my god, too much, too much speed, slow down. I am tophobic. Ah, Drake said. Heh, <laughs> the great Welsh dragon of fate of speed as I was chuckling to myself. I slowed down as I met with an incredible sight. Oh wow, this is insane. There are no way to describe what I'm looking at. Multiple universes, infinite. Parallel universes, infinite timelines. Oh wow, and at the center a planet resides. I guess it's the multiverse, Issei says. What the... Incredibly awesome. Infinite space, infinite timelines, infinite universes. Wow. I feel like I'm an ape on steroids, Drake says. Really, Drake? Has a twisted sense of humor, but the primordial concept says that its finest creations will be here, and it will help me get stronger. So we're all... So where are they? With And I move forwards to the center of the multiverse, but I can't reach it. I'm pretty sure I'm moving at incredible speed, but why can't I reach it? Is it that far? Even I heard a deep voice behind me. Hmm, so it finally got a host. But this brat also has another concept in him. Definitely interesting. Where the hell are you? Are you one of the so-called finest creations? Look behind you. I look behind me only to see a horrid looking thing. I feel like I'm about to pass out, Issei says. This thing has a fucking scythe, which screams death. In this thing, it looks like it's made out of nothing but bones, and not to mention a black cape that has black best color I've ever seen. Afraid of me? I can't blame you. You're looking at the thing that all fear, except you, that is. What are you, Issei says. The creepy skeleton tells its head towards me as it starts to grin before answering. I am death, one of its first creations. Impossible. You can't be death. Hades is the concept of death, Drake said. The thing, now known as death, snarls as it can feel its annoyance. Drake really has bad luck. Don't you dare compare me to those false idols, Welch lizard, death said. What do you mean by false idols, Issei said. I am the true concept of death. Hades was blessed by me. He just has a drop of it. Well, I have the universe full of it. You see, the primordial concept did not want us to interact with the mortals, as it would result in the mortals finding about the multiverse, and it feared that the mortals would fight against each other's universes for dominance. So we blessed a person on each universe with tiny drop of our power, making them look like our concepts. While we stay hidden, playing our roles in secret, only two concepts, including myself, know about the multiverse. The other concepts in the universe were created by us, and they also don't know about us. Oh, that makes sense. But can you just change your appearance, Issei said? Sure. What the actual fuck? That thing is a cute cat girl. Did I say cat girl? Fuck yeah. What? Why are you staring at me? Oh, do I look cute, master? Cuteness overload. My mind has been corrupted. Must protect. Partner. Snap out of it, Drake said. Oh, so you're a female, Issei says. Yup. Ha. <laughs> oh, death. Where are other concepts such as yourself? They are here. Show yourselves, death says. Soon a bright light shines. As it disappears, a white armored figure with wings made of its whiteness of white with a soothing aura walks towards us. Death, what are you doing at your mortal form? My apologies, my lord. Death here can be quite a flirt. Oh, no need to apologize and call me Issei. Yes, Lord Issei, my apologies again. I am not able to restrain myself from addressing you as Lord, my lord. Ha, huh, I never thought I'd be having a conversation with one of the most powerful beings in the whole multiverse. Anyway, tell me your name, Issei said. Life, my lord. Well then, death and life, please help me become stronger, Issei said. Sure, I'm quite talented in what mortals call magic, and your second concept, I feel it's related to me, ah, your secondary concept is destruction. What a fine specimen. Mind if I do a little experiment? I can definitely, f her tone, become a butt sturdier at the end. This is an interesting situation, Issei says to himself. Death. I said, don't disturb our lord with such behavior of yours, Life said. Don't worry, Mommy will help you, Death said. Mommy, what the hell? I feel like I'm about to die due to embarrassment, Issei says. My lord, can I change into my mortal appearance? Life says. Sure, go ahead. 
As I look at life with curiosity, life gets covered in a bright light and soon, what the hell? Another cat girl as beautiful as death. Ha! Huh, I'm in heaven. My lord, do you like how the way I look? You're cute too, life. Well then, let's train in the hyperbolic time chamber, death says. What do you mean? Issei replied. My lord, it's an alternate dimension where the flow of time is different. Three years inside is three months at your DXD universe. And I'll train you on swordsmanship and physical attributes, life says. Okay, who will train me to the primal concept's powers, Issei said. As I said, that both of us will strife in as they gain a serious look. About that. You can access some of its powers such as creating things, Death said. Without a soul, without mana, any non-living thing except weapons with mana can struck, granting partial immortality. The one who you, the one who bless, cannot age and will forever live for eternity. But he can be killed. Also, immortality for yourself. What? The supreme concept said it can do anything. Issei said, "My lord, you have the power to manipulate reality itself." To do what you wish without any restraints. All laws of nature can be overrided by you. That literally you could do anything but at your current state if you use the powers of it to its fullest. We believe your soul won't be able to handle the burden of the powers and will get destroyed. If that happens you'll be gone forever. Forever. But as a, fa a fail safe it will be reformed within a couple of eons. And we will wait for it knows what time another perfect soul. But if you succeed you'll become supreme being forever. So I advise you. That not to use your full powers, not maybe a trillion years later. Wait, I have to wait a knock trillion years to use my full powers? Issei said within himself. Anyway, let's start our training, shall we? Death said. Yeah, let's start, Issei said. I feel bad for our lord. Death's gonna have a good time breaking my lord. Life said. What's that supposed to mean? I mean, about my future already, Issei says to himself. Always remember, the first rule of death's training, do not talk about death's training, death says. Eh? Third POV, a minute later. Issei is seen running away with tears sweating, screaming like a terrified prey. Holy shit, save me. You're gonna know what mommy's wrath looks like. First rule of death's training, do not talk about death's training, Drake repeats to himself. Drake is seen crying inside his state as death also trains him. With Rius. Now we're back with Rius, so scene break. Rius is seen having a mental breakdown with Issei's broken pawn pieces, sobbing. I'm so sorry, Rius says to herself. And that is the end of chapter 2. Chapter 3. Issei's POV, one year later in the hyperbolic time chamber. Hell. I saw hell. Death's teaching me is hellish. How am I even alive? She is a real slave driver, but on the brighter side, I have managed to master the elemental magic types. In life, she's been very, very good with a sword. In this past one year, I have never been able to land more than five strikes at life with a sword. My life sucks. First rule of death's training. Do not talk about death's training, Drake said. I am honestly worried for Drake. For the past one year, he's only been saying that with a break. Crying like a crybaby, poor bastard. Death tells me that he did something very, very bad. Another year later, in the hyperbolic time chamber. Somehow, the hell got a lot easier. Death is still a slave driver, but the training got a bit easier. I've mastered my sacred gear. The juggernaut drive was really hard to master, but I did. And life's training is still the same I have mastered. The way to use a longsword and a katana. Also, I've unlocked my second concept. Destruction. I've accidentally destroyed an entire universe by mistake. My concept for destruction is crazy strong. Also, Drake, he's still the same still crying and muttering the same words. Poor bastard didn't deserve this. Also, I have developed a sincerely bond with both of my mentors. Issei said. State the first rule of death's training, Death said. First rule of death's training. Do not talk about death's training, Issei repeated. The third year at the hyperbolic time chamber, now we're inside of Issei's head, is talking to himself again. I have mastered my secondary concept, destruction, finally, and I have mastered every type of sword, and with the help of death, I have mastered my dragon form. It's freaking awesome. I managed to create some new forms for my sacred gear, and I have an idea. And with the help of death and life, I have managed to create techniques similar to full powers of the Pridormal's concept. Bit a lot weaker, a field of which overrides the world at the fundamental level. Laws of nature are defied by my field. 
In short, my words are a lot there. I'm able to transport my enemies there. I've named it a reality marble. But it drains a lot of mana from me, and I'm able to use it for a day at best. The next day... Finally, I have escaped the hell. Drake is really happy that he literally cried tears of joy. Anyway, I noticed death arriving along with life in their human form. Yo. How are you? Mommy misses you screaming, Death said. Did you forget what we just talked about? Death, Life said. I haven't. Issei, are you visiting the DXD universe as you train has completed? Death said. I am, Issei said. Oh. Then let us give you a godly lift, my lord. No, Issei, Life said. Just said my name. After all these years addressing me as lord. Fucking, fucking finally. Issei said in his head. Here's my gift, Death says. As Death said that, a black mist forms over her hand in a cool-looking dagger with a fearsome aura appears. This is Azoth sword, my finest dagger. I've created it for you, Death said. Created using the best metal in EXE, universe. One of the strongest metal in the entire multiverse, embodied with my aura. It's power enough to kill what mortals call their low-tier heavens-class beings can fatally injure mid-tier heavenly-class beings. Wow, just wow. I never thought I'd get a dagger from death herself. This will definitely be a good weapon, Issei says. Now, behold one of my greatest creations, Life replied. A bright golden light enveloped the area, and beautiful multicolored daggers emerges. This is the Rule Breaker. This dagger can sever a pact with any familiar beings, and this dagger can also sever a being from its life force, but won't work on the concepts, Life said. Both life and death smile mischievously, as I know that I have met my end. Let us address you as brother, Life said. Yes. If you don't, we'll take something precious as your first kiss, Death replied. Oh, about that. I don't mind. But hey, they can tell out, can I? Issei said. Oh, hell no. I'll let you call me your brother, and I am not going to code this soon. I'm going to explore the DXD universe for a while. I'll be back in a month, in the multiverse, in a year in the DXD universe. Bye, brother, Death said. See you later, Issei, my lord. Third POV, one month later in the multiverse. In the multiverse, Death is seen watching a universe with amusement, and life is seen having a nap. Suddenly, bright lights envelops, and Issei comes out of it. I'm back, my dear sisters, Issei said. No, no, please, Issei, my partner, I'll give you anything. Please, let's go back, Drake said. Both life and death in an instant hugs Issei crushing his ribs, breaks a few bones. My lord, I've missed you, life said. Yes, mommy misses you, death replies. You broke my bones, I'm about to die, Issei said. Both life and death loosens the hug, noticing Issei's difficulty in breathing. Ugh, oh, I forgot to mention this. I have a girlfriend I'd like you to introduce you to, you guys. Issei nervously snaps his fingers as a portal opens from it, a beautiful girl with blonde hair, ocean blue eyes, brimming with radiance, having a body men would die to get, and a cute smile plastered on her face, wearing a red-colored royal mantle exists in the portal. Greetings. I am Mordred Pentadragon, the only true heir to the Camelot, Knight of Treachery. Nice to meet you. Both Death and Life stared at Mordred with wide eyes as Issei nervously smiles. She is cute, Death said. Death hugs Mordred with a bone crushing, but somehow Mordred is able to withdraw the mighty hug. You must be Death. Issei said you're the most violent slave rider he had ever met and the most prideful one of his two sisters. Issei is seen sweating profusely as Mordred stares at Issei with a smirk. Issei, mommy's gonna hurt you really bad, Death said. Oh shit. I think we should just change the conversation, Mordred replied. Yes, we should. By the way, I'm Life, one of my lord's sisters, my lady, Life says. Both Issei and Mordred sweat drop at Life's antics as Death face palms. So tell me, have you done it yet? Death says, Issei blushes furiously as Mordred with a light brush answers the question. <clears throat> no, we haven't, Mordred replied. My lady, can you tell us why you two met each other? How you two met each other? Sure, Mordred replied. Flashback three months ago after Issei left the DXD universe near a yokai village at the Shinto realm. Issei is seen flying with his dragon wings, which are emerald green in color towards a mountain. Issei, 
The few yokais I met before said the evil spirit would be here. Issei lands in a forest, focuses to find the spirit's aura. Suddenly, a huge fire blast hits Issei, but Issei, with an emotionless smile, looks at the spirit which tried to hurt him. It had an eye missing, and a blue skin with no hair, and bloodstains on its teeth. Damn, you're one ugly-looking motherfucker, Issei said. No, I'm beautiful, bastard, the spirit replied. I'll just kill you, Issei said. Issei then proceeds to tear the spirit's head off with his bare hands as blood gushes out of a fountain. Good riddance, Issei said, but the Issei in an instant ducks down and a fist barely misses his head. Who's there? I didn't do anything, Issei replied. In an instant, fully armored figure rushes at Issei at speed surpassing a normal devil and tries to kick him at his knees, but Issei dodges by moving away, but the figure then closes the distance and tries to stab Issei at his heart with its blade, but nearly, but Issei narrowly dodges. You wild the spear, how dare you feast on innocent yokais for your sins? I shall behead you. Hey. I'm not the evil spirit, I just killed it, see? Issei points at the corpse of a dead spirit as the figure stiffens. I'm very sorry. As the armored figure's armor disappears and then it's Maltre From it, Maltred comes out of its visible blush. Seeing her, Issei also blushes a bit before regaining his composure. I'm Mordred, Mordred Pentadragon. I'm sure you've heard the tales about me. I did, but I thought you were killed by your father, King Arthur. And you're a girl? Issei said. Suddenly, a sword is seen inches away from his neck. Call me a girl again and you're dead. Got it? Mordred said. There's no need to be ashamed to be called a girl, especially a girl as cute as yourself, Issei said. C cute? You pervert, Mordred replied. I'm not a pervert. I was the I was the one- <sighs> That doesn't matter. I'm leaving. As Issei gets ready to fly away, Mordred pulls him back towards her. Hey, how did you kill that yogi? Yokai, Mordred said. I ripped its head off with my bare hands, Issei replied. Mordred stares at Issei with a shock as Issei sweat drops. You're staring at me, Issei replied. Oh, sorry, Mordred replied. Mordred with a blush looks away, Issei sighs. Anyway, where do you live, Issei replied. After hearing Issei's question, Mordred gets sad and as Issei notices this with visible concern on his face. I don't have a home. I'm a traveler, traveling across but the human realm and the other dimensions. I had a home, but I destroyed it, Mordred said. Mordred whispers the last part, and Issei to her as his hand senses hears it with a saddened look. I'm also a traveler. If you wish, we could travel together, Issei said. Mordred blushes but composes herself and turns her face away from Issei. And if I don't wish to, Mordred replies, I'm an expert swordsman. Maybe we could help each other train, Issei said. Hearing this, Mordred's blush increases as she composes herself with a cute smile and demands Issei. Promise me that you'll spar with me, Mordred said. Sure, where are your clothes? Issei asked. In my pocket dimension, Mordred said. Mordred smirks as Issei looks at Mordred with astonishment. Are we traveling together or not? Mordred says. We are traveling together, Issei replies. Issei flashes a handsome smile with Mordred follows him with one thought in her mind. Why do I find a smile cute, Mordred? Flashback ends. That's how we met, Mordred said. Both death and life is seen chuckling as Issei's remembering the pleasant moment. So, Issei, what are we going to do now, death says. Issei's face darkens as his eyes flare with anger. Both Mordred and myself are going to go, Issei said. Both death and life exchange a glance as Mordred look at Issei's worried. Are you sure you're okay? Because that's the place you hate the most, death said. Are you sure you'll be fine, my darling? Mordred said. I am, and I'll make sure to visit you frequently and death. Destroy the EXE universe. The mortals there have found about the DXD universe and will most likely attack the DXD universe. Sure, death said. Goodbye, both of you, Issei replied. See you later, Mordred Issei. Life said. Likewise, Mordred replied. Uh, and that is the end of chapter three. And that is where we're going to stop for now. We just finished chapter three, and we will probably read chapter four next time. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this series because this story is, I mean, it's fire, okay? This story is absolutely amazing, all right? I'm still recovering from the high school DHD season five, no news, oh, my heart. But hey, it is what it is. I got more what ifs in store for the time being. Once again, thank you guys for all the support. It's been absolutely amazing. This story... What if Issei was betrayed and became a god? It's truly amazing. Let's try to hit a thousand likes still. Of course, if you guys want to know exactly when I upload, slash my, slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. And once again, I really do thank you for all your support. 
We had 26,500 subscribers currently. Like, thank you so much. It's been absolutely amazing. We're getting hundreds and hundreds of subs, like, almost every week. It's kind of cool to see the likes and the views and the subs just go up all the time. Like, I really do appreciate it. I'm glad to know that so many people enjoy hearing my voice narrate instead of a robot's. Because I do agree that is quite annoying sometimes. But, hey. It is what it is. If you guys want to see another stream, please just let me know. I do enjoy those type of things. I also had to take a new format in my High School DxD video because I want to avoid copyright from Kadawa because I, you know, they tried to delete my channel last year. So, all in all, thank you guys so much for the support. Without further ado, Spartanic Arts. Wait, 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 wait. Go subscribe to my second channel, I'm Popowski, who does Goku What Ifs. I know I haven't uploaded there on a month, but I swear it'll come out with partly what if Goku was the God of Destruction Part 3 will come out soon. I've just been, it's been a week. I've been actually sick this whole entire week. As you guys know, at the beginning of the week, I was sick. But oh, whatever, whatever. Without further ado, Spartanic Arts, DxD, out. Chapter 4. Third POV at a palace above the sky. Angels are seen guarding the castle, which radiates a calm aura, but the look on the angels' faces say otherwise, one filled with sadness and anger. Suddenly, a bright light invades the area, and from it, four angels with a divine presence but a saddened expression walk into the castle. Angel 1. Are there any survivors? I'm afraid only one. To think that he made an attack on us, Angel 3 replied. It's not an attack, but a massacre, Angel 2 said. The third angel nods his head, and he looks down in fury. Brothers, what was the sole survivor's last words? Angel 1 says. He said, what attacked us was a monster under human skin. His grin was so unnerving that I felt like I was staring at the devil himself. I don't want to live after seeing that. Unholy sight. He is a twisted psychopath. I fear will kill us all. With that, he died, Angel 2 said. The hunter of the Red Plains truly lives up to his name, Angel 3 says. That thing just destroyed the first heaven and killed about thousand of our brethren. And you speak without any hint of remorse, Angel 4 says. I am for sure saddened, sister. But he killed the exorcists and angels who were suspected were close to fall. He didn't kill them like a psychopath, but like an assassin, Angel 1 said. With Issei in the central street of Ko. It is currently dusk at the streets of Ko. We're busy as always, but deep in a dark alley, a blue portal appears. Opens up, and from it, Issei Mortared came out. It's dusk. I thought it would be afternoon, Issei said. Your hometown is beautiful, with huge restaurants and amusement parks. I love this place. Maybe we should go on a date, Mordred said. Mordred slightly smirked as she noticed Issei blustling. We can go on a date, Issei said. Great, darling. If you make it a date enjoyable, I might give you a little gift, Mordred said. An hour of a makeout session? Issei replied. Both Mordred and Issei smirked at each other before bumping fists. You got a deal, Mordred said. As Issei bumped Mordred were chatting with each other, a gruff looks man bumped at Mordred by mistake. Mind apologizing, bitch? Hearing this, Mordred gets angry, but then freezes on her spot as she looks at Issei who is having a sinister smile. Well, pal. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Issei said. Who the hell are you? Issei then places his hand on his neck, as the gruff man suddenly grabs a pen and stabs himself in the eye and falls down dead. What the hell, Issei said. Issei fakes a horrified face. As the other passerby, people get scared away while Mordred looks at Issei with an emotionless look. Why did you kill him? He was innocent, Mordred said. As Mordred whispers the last part, Issei flashes a sinister smile, grabbing her hand and taking her to the Empire Street. He was anything but innocent. He tried to touch my Mordred, and he addressed my Mordred as a bitch. Only I could touch my Mordred, and only I can curse at my Mordred. Issei then giggles like a psychopath as he looks at Mordred who sighs. Whatever, just go back to normal, Mordred said. Issei then stops giggling as he smiles, holding Mordred's hand. I am always like this. You do know this, don't you? Issei said. It can't be helped, I guess, Mordred replied. Issei then snapped his fingers as the case full of cash and a key is seen on Issei's hand. Princess, go ahead to our new apartment. I have, I have something to do, Issei said. Mordred said, sure, don't be late. Mordred, pre Mordred proceeds to walk away from Issei, winking at Issei. I'm glad that I met you. Now back to work, Issei said. Issei then chuckles to himself as he teleports in front of a familiar house and rings the bell. 
Anybody home? Issei said. Suddenly, Mr. Hyoto opens the door with a confusable visit on his face. Have we met each other before? Mr. Hyoto said. Hyoto residence, Issei says. Yes, and you are? Mr. Hyoto replied. Can we have a nice conversation inside? Issei replied. Mr. Hyoto then opens the door with confusion. Come in. As Mr. Hyoto opens the hose, Issei follows him with a grin plastered on his face. Oh, that's not good, Dreg says. Time skip. Currently inside a luxurious apartment, we see Mordred and Issei on the couch having a talk and watching TV, but then a news is displayed on the TV. Double murder of couple at Co. Today, the officers have found out the two gruesome murders have taken place at the city. The victims, Mr. and Mrs. Hyoto, who are well-respected, were found dead on their house just now. Their internal organs in a jar and limbs cut off. With signs of torture as multiple fractures of bones and cuts are found in the bodies. Also, it's stated by the forensic surgeons that Mr. Hyoto had his manhood severed while he was alive. Issei then closes his eyes and presses a smile on his face, replacing it with a sullen look. Did, did you kill them? Mordred said. Nope. Although I don't care, Issei said. Mordred eyes at Issei cautiously and looks at Issei in his eyes for any signs of nervousness but finds none. All right, I believe you, Mordred said. Issei then smiles reassuringly as he then looks at the ceiling with a blank face. If only you knew, my dear. Flashback. Issei is seen seated on a couch and Mr. and Mrs. Yoto sitting on the chair. I believe you want to know who I am and why am I here, Issei said. Yes, sir. I am sure I haven't met you, Mr. Yoto said. Well, you could say I am a friend of Issei Hyoto. I'd like to talk to you about him. I'm sorry, but there is no one named Issei currently, M Mrs. Hyoto says. Issei then chuckles, as then he uses magic to disguise himself as his old self, earning shocked looks from the couple. I believe you know me now, Dad, Issei says. Magic? No way, my son didn't know it. its existence, Mr. Hyoto said. Issei then lets out a magical la a manical laughter, as he then summons his boosted gear. I never guessed that you both are mages, but that doesn't matter. Your magic circuits have been deactivated by my magic, so you can't try anything foolish, Issei said. W what are you going to do, monster? Mrs. Hyoto said. A sinister smile makes its way towards Issei. He may look cute, but he's a psycho. Let's have some fun, Issei said. I'm going to pretend this never happened, partner, Drake said. Flashback ends. A smile makes its way towards his face as he chuckles. The game begins. Let's see who will last long enough to find the killer. Watch out, Rius. I'll end your existence by your own family, I swear, Issei says to himself. Issei, I have been wanting to ask you, are we going to do this in the city? Mordred said. We are attacking Co Academy, Princess, Issei said. Eh? Mordred asked. Ha! Drake replied. Rius is POV. This is problematic. A potential stray at loose was the only thought in my mind as I witnessed the horrible scene in front of me. Issei's parents dead. Rius, you should see this, Akino says. Akino, who is examining the corpses, looks at me with seriousness. What is it? Rius says. Just as I look at the corpses, I am met with a shocking discovery as my eyes widen. Those are Latin words, Rius said. It says, Necta Pratora Nisisi Es Mori. It means, no way. Why would the stray leave a message unless, no, he's dead? It means brutal death to traitors. Traitors must die, Rhea said. I can feel myself trembling at the words of the stray. I could tell the same for Akino. Could it be, no, he would never do this. Also, he's dead, Rhea thinks in her head. Let's just forget what we saw, Akino says. Third POV, back with Issei. Issei is seen lying on his bed, as he is seen deep in thought. I wonder, did Rius find my message, and found its meaning? As Issei is thinking, Mordred creeps into the room while making a noise le lays next to Issei. Can I sleep next to you, Issei? Mordred asks the question as a huge blush could be seen on her face. Sure, Issei replies. As Issei turns his head towards Mordred, then he notices that she was on her nightwear, and she blushes seeing her cute face. Do I look good in this dress? Mordred asks. Of course you do, my knight. Issei then proceeds to cuddle with Mordred with a finger intertwined as Issei then blushes her soft breath against his skin. Good night, darling, Mordred said. Good night, love, Issei replies. Issei then kisses Mordred gently as he then inhales her sweet scent 
burying her his head at her neck. I'm the most lucky of men of all the universe. Such a beauty befitting for a supreme being. In an isolated castle, a fallen angel with ten wings could be seen on a throne with a mysterious glint in his eyes as he then looks at his ring. Don't... Don't you think the ring is just too much? I'm going to capture a small devil territory. Soon, a scary voice is heard, echoing across the castle. It will help you if Sir Zex arrives before you kill them, but beware, Mysterious Person 2 says. If he rises, his full capabilities, you won't stand a chance. I know that. That's why. I have a pendant of Gia. I'll escape with it if necessary, Random Person says. Whatever... Just don't reveal that I help you in this. Random person 2 says, Sure. God of death, Hades. A terrifying skeleton covered in royal robes with an aura of death is seen from the shadows. Entertain me well, boy, Hades says. In an unknown landscape, scene break, amidst the beautifully scenery, a dark voice is heard. And that's the end of chapter 4. Chapter 5. Third POV with Sona. In a mansion elegantly designed in medieval style, two women are seen seated having a conversation. They are Sona Sitri and Tsubaki, the Queen of Sona. The murder of those Hyotos is a particular case. I strongly believe that the killer is not a stray, as a stray never leaves their victim's bodies, Sona says. Do you imply that a normal human could have killed them? Tsubaki replies. Sona looks at Tsubaki with amusement visible in her eyes. There is a possibility, but no normal human would leave a message in Latin. Even if it is a serial killer, the words in their body says otherwise, Sona says. What do you mean? Tsubaki replies. The words on their bodies mean brutal death to all traitors. Traitors must die. Think carefully, Tsubaki. This is a crucial clue. You think the killer knows that they abandoned their son and tried to justify killing them? Tsubaki said. Sona then looks at Tsubaki straight in her eyes with a frown. That's the major possibility in this, but there is something I do suspect, Sona says. Do you think that Issei himself was alive and did this? Tsubaki says. Highly unlikely, as his pawn pieces were found broken. Lord Beelzebub himself stated that there's no way he's alive, although I believe the killings won't stop. I suggested improving the patrols across the city. Also, if anyone with a residual magic energy is found, quickly stalk them, and if needed, dispose of them, Sona says. Tsubaki stares at Sona, shocked, but then he regains her composure. Sure, I'll tell the others to increase their patrols, Tsubaki said. Tsubaki, don't inform this to Rias or her parash. Knowing Rias, she'll go after the killer in hopes of it being Issei. Just inform this to our parage, Sona said. Got it, President, Tsubaki replied. Tsubaki then teleports away as Sona looks at the documents on her table with a strangely amused smile showing joy. Whomever you are, I appreciate you as you got me thinking for so long. I know that you're intelligent. Let's see who wins this game of chess, unknown killer. The next day, back with Issei. Issei is seen running across the street in his uniform with Mordred following him. I'm going to be late, Issei said. No, we won't, Mordred replied. Issei and Mordred reach the school campus, only to be met with a, fo with a frowning Sona and Stodic Tsubaki. I guess you both are the new student, Sona says. We are, Issei replied. Good. Follow me. I'll take you to your class. Also, refrain yourselves from being late, Sona said. Sure, ma'am, Issei replied. Issei salutes with a fake smile as Mordred chuckles, but Sona rolls her eyes. This way, Sona says. Sona guides them to the classroom, which is 3C. This is your allotted classroom, and if you need any help, feel free to contact me. By the way, I'm Sona Sitri, Sona says. Both Sona and Tsubaki take their leave. As Mordred whispers softly to Issei, They're devils, Mordred said. I know, Issei replies. Issei and Mordred get inside the classroom to find the middle-aged woman and many students eyeing Mordred. Also, Rias and Akino are seen to be in the same class. Everyone, we are receiving two new transfer students. Please welcome them. The teacher says, Yo, I'm Issei, Issei Kotomine. I'm from Tokyo, and before you ask, I'm not related to Issei Hyoto, the missing students. Glad to meet you, Issei says. I'm sure that you're all shocked at Issei's last name. Just as Issei said his name whispers, I heard around the class, but Rias and Akino look at Issei with a look of disbelief and disappointment. Well, Mr. Kotomine, 
You can sit anywhere near Miss Grimmery, the teacher says. Rias raises her hands to show Issei where she is, and Issei then takes a seat next to her. I'm Mordred. I'm an orphan, Mordred says. Please take care of me. Every boy in the class yell praises, but none notices the dangerous glint in Issei's eyes except Mordred. Well, Miss Mordred, you can have a seat next to Miss Akino, the teacher says. Mordred then sits near Akino and flashes a smile hidden with malice. Time skip to the end of the school. Mordred and Issei are seen leaving the school campus. Mordred is seen to be in a bad mood. Hey, you look like you could destroy this city, Issei said. Stupid school. I aren't even a damn teen. I've seen hundred years old. I'm seven hundred years old, Mordred said. It's quite funny seeing you of all people ranting about this school, Drake said. Drake's got a point. You're the knight of treachery and yet you act like a child, Issei said. What's that supposed to mean, Mordred replied. Issei then looks at Mordred who is seen pouting, which he finds cute. You look so cute, I want to pat you, Issei said. I hate you, Mordred replied. No, you love me, Issei said. Issei then looks around at Mordred with a killer smile, causing Mordred to sigh. Whatever, Mordred said. If you remember, we need to tend to something important, Issei, Drake said. Ah, uh, yes. I do have an important job to be done, Issei says. You better come back before soon. We still want to beat the cocaine elf's ass, Mordred said. Sure. See you later, princess, Issei said. Mordred then teleports away while Issei then enables a suppressed sadistic smile while whispers something. Presence concealment. Just as these words escape Issei's lips, his clothing changes to that of thin silver armor with a red cape and bands across his face except his eye conceal his identity. Time to hunt the vampire devil. Issei then moves back onto the shadows before appearing, disappearing from the street. Time skip. Near the ORC building, Issei is seen stepping out of the tree shadow with his golden orb shining like a wicked force amidst the night. Time to kill some brats, Issei said. Issei then enters the ORC to find a hidden door protected with Rius's magical field. Boring, Issei says. Issei then proceeds to skillfully dodge the bounded field with ease. Gremory is really pathetic. At the bounded field deployment, this is a mediocre at best, Issei says. Issei then enters the room only to find a coffin making Issei sweat drop. Did Rius make a coffin the vampire's howdown? Issei said, a loud yell is heard from the coffin as a blonde cross-dressing boy with blood red eyes jump out of the coffin scared. Who are you, mister? The vampire then stutters, intimidated by Issei's dressing. Gasper Vallad, I presume, Issei says. Yes, Gasper replies. Issei then proceeds to throw a knife at Gasper's head, killing him instantly. You deserve to die a peaceful death, Issei says. Issei. This isn't like you, killing innocents. You are a good man, he says, so why? Tell me why kill him, Drake said. He was innocent, but he already suffered a lot. I just saved him from his pain. Also, he's a part of Rius's prize, so I'll use this to strike fear into their hearts, he said. Just don't let Mordred find out about this. Answer me. Do you love Mordred with your heart, Drake said. Yes, I do, he said, replied. Time skip. Issei is seen entering his house with normal clothes. I'm home, Issei said. Suddenly, Mordred appears out of nowhere and hugs Issei. You're late, Mordred said. Yeah, I'm sorry, Issei says. Issei is seen scratching his head with a sheepish grin while Mordred looks at him with a glare. Go get freshened up. We are eliminating coca Beal, Mordred said. I'm sleepy. That can wait. Don't you get it? We are killing coca Beal and that's final, Mordred said. Mordred then stomps Issei's feet, but Issei seems to be unfazed. Jeez, women are scary, Issei says. Issei then gets freshened up and lies on the couch to take a nap. Issei's POV, inside of Issei's dream. Hell, I saw here hell. Screams of agony and stench of blood fills land as the land littered with corpses. Even my standards, this is cruel. This is really scary. I see a man stabbing a man with his sword above all the hill of corpses. I am able to hear human whisper, but I can't make it out what it says to me. And then the voice, the text, just blinks. Suddenly everything becomes blurry and my vision fades away. Third POV. Issei then wakes up, covered in sweat with a frightened face. Holy shit, that was crazy, Issei thought in his head. Time skip. As Issei's backyard, at Issei's backyard, Issei is seen casting an advanced bounded field, while Mordred is seen stargazing at the sky. The stars are beautiful today. 
You should take a look, East Mordred stops. It truly is. But look at the stars when something surpasses it is near me. Issa then winks at Mordred, causing her to blush. But I am just a failed knight, a failed king, an existence that shouldn't have existed. Even my father abandoned me at the end, Mordred replied. Mordred lets out a bitter chuckle as lone tear escapes her eye. I think of you as a knight who'll do anything for the innocent people, a kind-hearted soul striving to lift a sword calibrium. In my light, you saved me from my darkness, and countless times you've managed to make me smile. So Mordred Pentadragon, thank you for everything, he says. Ise proceeds to wipe her tears away, then blushes, noticing her glorify under the moonlight. Entrance, Ise then kisses Mordred gently for a second. I, Mordred says, what? Love you, Mordred says. As soon as those words escape from her lips, Ise's heart skipped a beat as the unknown flashes of a toothy grin with one thought in his mind, must protect. Unknowingly, both of them entranced by each other, closer to another in centimeters apart from from each other's millimeters just as they both were about to kiss. Mind having your chit chat after we wipe Cocoville off the face of existence, Drake said. Startled by Drake, both of them move away with a huge blush on their face. Damn it, Drake! I'll one day have my revenge for this, Issei said. Mind telling me what this was about? That was a confidence booster, Mordred said. I'm all fired up, Issei says. Drake signs, sighs as both Mordred and Issei chuckle. The white one. He's near us, Drake said. Both Mordred and Issei stiffen at Drake's word. Is he a he or a she able to sense us? Unlikely. We have our aura concealed, Drake said. Issei then lets out a manacle laughter at his lips from a sadistic yet sinister smile, scaring Mordred and Drake. If my so-called rival is weak, I'll just break his collarbone like a twig. I know that you'll do that, Drake said. Time skip with Rius at Co. The Co Academy is seen to be just like my school, would be on the outside, but currently a huge barrier is seen erected across the Academy by Sona and her parage, while on the inside, Rias and her parage, along with Blueberry Haired Girl, are seen fighting a Cerberus and a priest with multiple swords, while a fallen angel is seen flying with a grin unlike any other. Is that all you could do, you truly pathetic? Cocoville says. Cocoville then proceeds to create a huge light spear, throws it at the building, destroying it, leaving a crater. Cocoville, in the name of our lord, you shall pay for your sins. The blue-haired girl then tries to swing for a longsword, but Cocoville punches her in the gut, making her fly past several trees. That sounds so nice coming from someone who has no lord. What do you mean by that, you heretic? Ha! Your god died at the Great War along with the Devil Kings. It was us fallen angels who were destined to be the victor, but then Azazel declares that peace, and I was like, what the actual fuck? We were about to win a war. Everyone present... Everyone present, both devils and exorcists alike, look at Cocoville with shock while Ozia faints. Impossible, Rhea says. Nothing is impossible, my darling. No, why? Are you fucking kidding me? There's no way he's dead. On the contrary, Michael has been doing a job. Maintain the heaven in sacred gear system from not failing to operate. I'll give credit to that, Cocoville says. Cocoville looks at everyone with a smug grin. Suddenly, the barrier above Cocoville breaks. A red light is seen descending from the sky. You talk too much, cocaine elf. The red light disappears to reveal Issei and his balance breaker, with a ferocious aura around him gaining shocked looks from everyone, mostly Rias and her barrage. The red dragon. This is bad, but if anything goes out of my plan, I'll just use the ring and pendant, Cocoville says. Cocoville whispers the last part to himself, and that is the end of the fifth chapter. Chapter 6. Third POV. Everyone present look at Issei and his balance breaker, with shock evident on their eyes while Issei internally smirks, looking at Rias' expression. I Issei? Rias says. Rias then looks at Issei with little hope just to be crushed. I am not Issei Hyoto, one of the past hosts. I am the new Red Dragon Emperor, the most powerful one, Issei says. Brat, come at me, Cocoville replies. With pleasure, Issei says. A dark red beam hits Issei and erupting him at the source of the attack is revealed to be a pissed of Rias. You bastard! You're the one who killed Issei for his sacred gear, aren't you? Rias said. Issei then gets really pissed at Rias' immature behavior and her attitude. Listen carefully, bitch. I did not kill him. He was weak and got betrayed and killed by some pest. And if you stand in my way, I will eliminate you. Issei's voice becomes more draconic at the end, scaring everyone but Cocoville. I don't have a lot of time. Come at me, brat, Cocoville says. 
Princess, all for the Excalibur fragments, but one here if you wish you can have a good spar, he says, says. Suddenly, a huge gust of wind blows everyone as the gust subdues Mordred is seen standing with her armor and claret. Hey, shitty priest, show me what you've got, Mordred says. Freed then grins at Mordred and Sue the grin erupts into a manical laughter. Ha, huh, I'm glad you kill you and chop you up into little pieces, Freed says. Freed then in an instant closes distance using Excalibur rapidly and delivers a horizon slash only to be blocked by Clarent. And Mordred continues with a kick to his admin, making him stumble. You're a fake, Mordred said. Freed then uses Excalibur, the nightmare to create dozens of illusions trying to stab Mordred in her chest from different directions only to be stabbed in her guts. Illusions cannot trick me, you fool. I can sense your presence. I am talking to you down. My bad. I'm taking you down, Freed says. Freed then tries to decapitate her head with Excalibur rapid, only to get his left arm severed clean. Ah, you motherfucking bitch, Freed says. Mordred then proceeds to decapitate him, and killing him instantly while everyone who proceeds to witness his brutality were shocked, especially Kiba and the blue-haired girl. That was... interesting, Issei said. Indeed, Cocoville replied. Mordred then picks up Excalibur fragments and hands them to the blue-haired girl. Tell the church to keep these fragments safe. I have no interest in a broken sword. Mordred then proceeds to lean on the tree, looking at Issa while others stare at her. What? I want to see how the red dragon kicks the elf's ass, Mordred said. Sure, let's get started. Issa then snaps his fingers, forcing te teleporting Cocofield Mordred himself away. What? Where are they? Kiva said. With Issa. Issa then... Issa and Cocofield are still in the snowy valley, the moon shining bright crimson in color. Heh, <laughs> not bad, trapping me on a broken dimension. However, the Earthbreaker spell of mine will destroy Ko. My girlfriend took care of that, Issei said. I did, Mordred replied. Mordred is seen leaning on a tree without her armor, exposing her to the rays of moonlight. Divine retribution, Kokovil says. Then the sky splits open and huge golden beam of holy energy hits Issei, but he has seemed unfazed by the attack. Boost! Times ten, Drake says. Issei then closes the distance with Cocoville in an instant and proceeds to kick him in his face, but Cocoville managed to dodge it, and then creates a sword out of light, tries to slash Issei, but breaks upon impact with his arms. Are. Crimson Firestorm, Issei says. A huge firestorm engulfs Cocoville as he lets out a huge scream due to the immense power of the attack. Boost, Drag says, times five. Issei then brutally kicks Cocoville in his guts, giving him no chance to recover, then pummels him to the ground. I won't lose to you, Cocoville says. Cocoville then summons a chain scythe. He then swings it at Issei, but the scythe catches its chain and pulls Cocoville towards him, and Cocoville is then met with a sucker punch to the face. Cocoville then falls to the ground with a broken teeth and bruised eye. Devil's ring, help me, Cocoville. Suddenly, uh, an enormous amount of mana floods Cocoville as the ring in Cocoville's finger breaks startling Issei and Mordred. The hell, Issei says. Issei turns around only to be met with a fist to his abdomen, cracking his balance breaker. What? Issei then looks above and gets stunned for a moment by a few appearance of Cocoville, a silver armor with torn red cape radiating both demonic and holy energy. You nearly killed me. I've never felt this sensation since the Great War. Red Dragon, I acknowledge you as a worthy opposition, so I shall push past my limits. Satan Angel Drive. An enormous amount of aura is released, then Cocoville making the dimension itself shake while Issei looks up at him, surprised and astonishment. He is on par with a mid Satan class beings with his armor. Let's have an honorable fight to the death, Cocoville said. A sword then materializes on Cocoville's hand, radiating huge amounts of divine aura. O sword of purification, let thy enemies crumble under the shine upon the heavens, and bestow death to thy enemies, for all shall be purified. Hectolate. The forgotten holy sword. How do you have it, Issei said. It was always with me. I got... I got it after the Great War. I shall kill you here and start a new war for my enjoyment. Kill me if you can, Cocoville, Issei replied. Cocoville then appears behind Issei at unbelievable speed and slashes about ten times the Heculite on Issei's armor. Cracking his armor and Issei gets thrown into a boulder breaking upon impact. Drake, can you repair the armor? On it, Drake says. The cracks on Issei's armor disappear in crimson light, but then suddenly a fist comes crashing to Issei's chest, shattering the armor and making Issei stumble, also making him realize, I can't defeat him with my balance breaker, Issei says. Boost! 
Domination Drake. A ferocious fire rushes towards Cocoville, and an instant Cocoville manages to shield himself by using his arms and sword. Think. I can use Juggernaut Drive, but it will track the white one, Issei said. The Flamin then subdues to reveal Cocoville with minor burn marks in his armor. Boost! Times four. That actually made me feel a bit hot, Cocoville said. Issei then rushes towards Cocoville, but then Cocoville proceeds to appear behind him and slams him to the ground, making Issei cop blood. You'll have to use Juggernaut Drive if you wish to defeat me. Nah, I want to enjoy this fight, Issei said. Boost times nine. Transfer. Issei then appears above Cocoville and then proceeds to deliver a solid punch to his abdomen, which sends Cocoville flying into multiple boulders, breaking them, while also catching him by surprise due to the power of Issei's punch. That hurts. You transferred all the power from your boost to your punch, didn't you? You caught me by surprise, but... Cocoville says. Cocoville then appears behind Issei and stabs him in his abdomen. With his holy sword breaking his armor, Issei then moves back trying to create distance. Issei, stop this and use the other forms or use your concept. You can't win against him with your balance breaker, Drake said. I'll use my other powers using my other forms or my concept of or my presence to the supernaturals. Issei then deactivates his balance breaker, allowing Cocoville to find how he looked like. Don't tell me. That's all you've got, Welch Dragon. Suddenly, the air becomes colder, and the trees rustle, and the moon crimson light falls upon Issei as a giant mana burst out from Issei, throwing Cocoville a couple hundred meters away, as mana accumulates around Issei till his shoulders. Cocoville gets scared due to his attempts. Mana, unknown to Issei, whispers one of the most powerful words on the universe. Trace on, Issei says. A huge amount of mana accumulate on Issei's hands, taking the shape of a yellow spear, forming with flowing with demonic energy. That spear, it's filled with pure demonic energy, Cocoville said. Cocoville then proceeds to fire about 30 light spears mixed in the demonic energy of Issei skillfully blocks all the incoming spears. Cocoville watches in awe, but by Issei's skill on the spear, while Mordred, from afar, looks at Issei with pride. Interesting, Cocoville says. Cocoville then rushes towards Issei with his sword, and aimed to his decapitate Issei, but then Issei holds the block attack and then uses the blunt end of the spear to hit him, and his abdomen making him stumble, and Cocoville loses his stance. I shall taint my spear in your blood, Issei says. Merciless, focus on breaking the opponent's stance while maintaining your stance. I see your skills are impressive, Cocoville says. Learn from the best, Issei said. I see. Well, here I come, Cocoville replied. Cocoville then rushes towards Issei with a heart to an aimed at Issei's chest, but Issei paired all the blows with his speed. You're good, I envy you, Cocoville said. Issei then finds an opening and stabs Cocoville on his shoulders with the spear making him bleed. Nice, but sadly, I can use my holy powers to regenerate a bit, Cocoville said. Cocoville then tries to close his wound using his holy spears, but finds himself unable to. The spear has a curse. This spear is Gimbundin, isn't it? The spear of the famous Dramid Undabin, also known as Darmud, of the love spot a hero from the Celtic mythology. Indeed, this spear is known as the Golden Rose of Mortality. This spear can disable any kind of regeneration works well for drawn out battles, Issei said. Issei then charges towards him, with wielding a spear in one hand and tries to stab at Cocoville heart, but then gets blocked by Cocoville using Hirota. That was a mistake, Cocoville says. Is it? Issei replies. Mana condenses around Issei's free hand into that of a long red colored spear and stabs it into Cocoville's legs, breaking his armor into pieces and Issei stabs Cocoville in his lungs with only one other spear. I see. I lost. The battle was hard fought, Cocoville said. Yes, it was, Issei replied. You lie. You had strength to demolish me. I can feel my blood filling my lungs. I ask you, kill me with Telectic. I beg. Grant me a warrior's death. Cocoville said. That was fun. I shall not kill you. You may be a bit of a maniac, but you are really powerful with that armor. But the sore is hereafter mine. Issei then picks up her lectite and then makes his spear disappear, thus missing the curse on Cocoville's body, allowing him to heal his fatal wound. Th thank you, Cocoville says. Cocoville faints due to exhaustion on a on using the ring, making Issei sigh while Mordred out of nowhere hugs Issei and proceeds to kiss him gently for a moment before parting away. That was awesome, Mordred said. Issei then equips his balance breaker, while Mordred re-equips her armor as they teleport away with Cocoville. Back with Rias, 
Currently, Ko, Rias, and her Parage are seen with looks of shock and confusion, rage and exhaustion, while Sona and her Parage are seen maintaining the barrier, unaware to what's happening inside. It's been an hour since that bastard took Kokafiel. He is sure our enemy. I will make him regret hurting Issei, Rias said. Yes, Ozzy replied. I don't care. The pervert's death was a good thing. He was the enemy of all women, although I like this new red dragon emperor, Konako said. Rias then clicks her tongue, pissed at Konako's comments on Issei while Kiba looks at them with a sweat drop. The one who killed Freed was really good. Probably the best swordsman I have ever seen, but her sword is a bit off, Kiba said. A blue portal opens up from it. Issei and his balance breaker, Mordred and her armor come out with rainted Kokoville magically flying beside them. Here, a little gift, Issei said. Kokoville then lands on the ground near Rias, while everyone on Rias' parade looked perplexed. Hey, crimson bitch, is your brother here? Mordred said. Whoever you are, you deserve to die a thousand deaths, Rias said. Rias then charges her power of destruction to kill Kokoville, with a joyful expression, but then gets hit by a boulder, knocking her off. Sorry. But can't let that bitch kill him. After all, my darling here was the one who defeated him while you screamed for your life at the jaws of a Cerberus. So shut the fuck up, bitch, Mordred said. Well said, Issei replied. A huge thunder clashes onto Issei and Mordred from above while Akino is seen blushing. Should have paid more attention to the surroundings, Akino said. As thunder stops, both Issei and Mordred are seen unfazed by the attack shocking Akino and Rias. That was pathetic. Issei said. The barrier again breaks as the blue light enters, breaking the barrier. So you're here, white one, Issei says. The light subdues to reveal a white armored figure with a rising azure blue wings. Overall, a more flashy version of Issei's balance breaker. Seems you have already took care of the fallen, red one. How ironic since I felt your presence disappear a year ago. None of your business, White One. You seem to be a strong one. Don't disappoint me, Issei said. Want to spar, Red One? I'll gladly accept an offer like this, replied the White Dragon. Suddenly, Albion speaks slightly startled by the others except Mordred, Issei and. It seems you're still persistent as ever, Red One. Maybe. I see that you're still the same, a grumpy old fool, Drake said. You're still as arrogant as ever, Drake. My rival, Albion replied. Albion mutters the last word, with venom dripping from his word. It appears your current host is strong, Drake says. Indeed. Your host also seems to be strong. Actually, the strongest I have ever observed, Albion said. He is. Until the next time, Albion, Drake said. Whatever, Albion replied. Suddenly, the white dragon grabs Kokoville and flies away. Next time we meet, let's have a good fight, my rival. Sure, he said, replied. The white dragon then disappears from sight as Issei then sighs and then proceeds to teleport away with Mordred. See you all later, Issei replies. Alright, things just got way worse. I fear for my future, Kiba said. In a huge mountain, scene break. Huge boulders are seen everywhere, around that appears to be an ancient shrine inside it a gentle voice is heard. Respond to my wishes and come back from the underworld. The purgatory, a mysterious figure says. A purple-colored magic circle of various signs appear on the floor near a man who is seen chanting. A huge explosion occurs and suddenly the flames dissipate into thin air, and a lone laughter is heard for a second, terrifying, then comes out of the shadow before emerging again. And that is the end of chapter 6. And that is where we're going to stop for now, right at the end of chapter 6. Thank you guys so much for the support. We hit 27,000 subscribers. I cannot thank you enough for this amazing, like, amazing, like, this fan base is crazy. I never thought people would like High School DxD as much as I do in a way of, like, it's not just, like, the boobs and the tits, you know, plot, but the, also the other plot or the concept. You know what I mean? The concept of fallen angels, devils, and angels battling with Greek mythology and Norse mythology. It's just cool as shit to me. And I took it to the next level with these stories and just reading with them. It's awesome to think about other people and sit here and enjoy reading my voice. And once again, thank you to Robert Block, Robert the King, for becoming a balance breaker, which is $24.99 a month, which is absolutely absurd. Thank you so much. I cannot thank you enough. If you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. Seriously, thank you for all your support. I cannot thank you enough. I am eventually going to make a membership tier where you can see all my members because they all deserve a shout out. But I decided to shout out Robert Block or Rob the King in specific because he has the highest tier in the 
membership tab. So once again, thank you so much. If you guys want to see what ifs on Goku or other animes in general, go subscribe to my second channel called Ampalpalski. I also will be posting maybe light novel reviews or some type of that deal with, uh, you know, uh, Fallen DXD. That's my third channel. And if you guys want to see like light novel reviews or just other what ifs on anime, like what if Naruto was betrayed? Yes, I know. I keep hyping that up. It will be coming, I swear. And along with Issei, the god slayer or god killer is born so thank you guys for all the support <sighs> hope you guys have a wonderful day let's try to hit a thousand likes once again without further ado spartanic arts dxd out what's up guys it's your host spartanic arts dxd back with another high school dxd related video and today we have what if isa was betrayed and became a god part three let's try to hit a thousand likes and if you guys want to know when i upload slash my upload schedule click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button Thank you to Robert Block slash Rob the King, Jorge Alvarez or George Alvarez, and Atomic Warlord 58 Toner for becoming a balance breaker, which is the highest tier in my channel membership. Thank you so much. You guys have no clue how like much that means to me. Like seriously, if you guys want to see more what if uh, more what ifs on Goku, uh, go subscribe to my second channel. Part three of What If Goku Was the God of Destruction will be coming out very very soon. Mark my words. I swear to that most likely like next week some some time out there it'll be like 30 minutes somewhat of that so thank you guys so much for the support like seriously i cannot thank you guys enough for all these channel members it's been crazy once again i'll eventually just keep shouting out people like who join so thank you once again without further ado let's go ahead and get into part three chapter seven third pov a day after the fight with cocaville this is a lame job for someone who wishes to kill their prey in an instant. My target is calf filled with humans. This is a pain in my ass, Issei says. Sir, what do you wish to have, sir? Random guy says. One Kermo Macchiato, please, Issei replies. Yes, sir, the waiter replies. The random guy leaves, making Issei sigh and shake his head. Think. The target's a rogue fallen angel, mid-class, currently working in the cafe in the kitchen, just behind the wall. How can I kill him? Issei thought to himself. Here's your caramel macchiato, sir. Sure, thanks, Issei said. Time to execute plan C. Ah, this is a macchiato is wonderful. Focus, focus. Ah, that's right. I'm here to kill. Also, hope the calf has been insecured, Issei says. Issei then proceeds to drink the coffee with gleeful smile plastered on his face, but then the smile slightly widens as he proceeds to place the cup on the table as the clock strikes 11. He'll be dead in about 24.16 seconds approximately. Phew, that's good, Issei said. Issei then takes out the servity from his table and then applies a small amount of mana into it, making it harder and sturdier. Reinforcement, Issei says. He then flings the servantee at speeds a human eye can't keep up with. The servantee breaks the wall and proceeds to decapitate the fallen angel on the opposite side of all earning screams for many. Target killed. Need to work on my timing. It took me 24.2 seconds to kill him, which is 0.11 seconds later than my provisions prediction, Issei said. Issei then disappears into thin air, as everyone present in the calf are distracted except one. Back with Rius. In the ORC building's basement, or specifically Gasper's containment, a horrible stench invades the room as Rius and the others open the door only to find a mutilated corpse above the coffin with its eyes missing. Horrified, Rius then proceeds to contact Sona with a communication circle while Azia and Konako are seen unconscious while Kiba looks as he's about to puke. The hell is this, Kiba said. The bounded field is intact. No one with magical energy has been here, Akano says. Perhaps a mercenary? Kiva says, no way. My bounded field is advanced. No one should be able to be capable of trespassing it, Akano said. Suddenly, a magic circle forms next to Rias and Sona comes out of it, a frown evident on her face. Brutal. But not as cruel as the Hyoto family's murder, Sona says. What do you think, Sona? Rias replies. Rias falls to her knees and starts to weep and cry looking at the corpse of her former servant, while Akano tries to console her with the lone tears slipping from her eyes while Sona look at the mess with an unreal smile. Interesting. The victim is Gasper. I never expected this. I once again am wrong. How tempting is it to find out that someone here can match my intelligence? Ah, I love this. I wonder if I could have the killer play a game of chess with me. I wish it would happen. I wonder if I could win him in the game of chess. I'll find him soon, Sona thinks to herself. Is it wrong that I am aroused by this? Sona says. Tell me, Sona, what do 
we do. It's best if we can inform your brother about this. He was a valuable asset for the devils with his sacred gear. Rias, look at this, Akano says. Rias then looks at Akano and notices her terrified expression and her trembling body and looks at the corpse with wide eyes as Rias trembles into the floor. Dear Satan, it's the same one who killed the Yodos, Rias says. Sona then takes a look at a corpse, only to get a bit shocked as she struggles to surprise a smirk at some ancient letters are seen on his corpse. It says, obviously it's a translation. What does it mean, Akino says. I'll find out, Sona replies. With Issei, we're back with Issei now. Issei is seen walking on a street with Mordred next to him holding hands with him. The fight with Cokeville was awesome. Hey, I'm talking to you, Mordred said. I am listening to your ramblings about the fight. Honestly, I didn't expect you to be a battle maniac, Issei replied. Says the one who was having a crazy smile while having a spar with me, Mordred said. Hey, I was just excited. Issei said, oh yes, excited for hurting me. I never thought of you being a sadist until a couple of months ago, Mordred says. Issei then turns away from Mordred trying to hide his newly formed blush, but failing as Mordred then drags him across the street, earning weird looks from many while just look at him with pity for what was about to come. Where are you dragging me into? Issei said. Just to the mall nearby for shopping, Mordred said. Issei then looks at Mordred with despair in his eyes as Mordred shows a devilish grin. Mordred, why don't you go alone for shopping? I have something to take care of, Issei said. Like killing fallen angels on a cafe a couple of streets away, Mordred said. Mordred asked with an emotionless face, but one could feel that monstrous killing intent radiation from her making Issei sweat profusely. How did you find out? Issei said. Simple, I stalked you all the way to the calf. Issei then looked at Mordred's eyes widening, feeling a part of him freaked out at her stalking him and a part of him screaming to do the same to her later. All right, I'll accompany you on your shopping then, Issei said. Time skip. In front of a huge mall, Issei carrying about a dozen bags, about to fall to the ground unable to carry them all, Mordred hums and proceeds to help Issei. I am a high, high class in my base without magic, and yet I can't carry these bags, Issei said. Now to our home, Mordred says. Mordred then hums happily, ignoring the pain smile of Issei. We are teleporting to our house... No more walking, Issei said. Issei then opens a portal to his house, and both of them enter the portal, teleporting away. Finally, couch, here I come, my friend, Issei says. Issei falls on the couch with a joyful grin, while Mordred just sighs before leaving to freshen up. Drake, are you asleep? Issei says. No. Tell me, Issei, what do you want from me? Drake says. Well, Drake, is it possible for someone to have two sacred gears, theoretically? It depends on the user's intent powers and the user's biological resistance to clashing forces. Theoretically, it is possible for someone to have multiple sacred gears, but the limitation is that they shouldn't be human or part human, Drake said. I have forbidden Balor view with me ever since I have extracted it from Gasper, Issei says. Are you aware that if you fuse the Balor view with your eyes, you'll lose your mystic eyes, which I believe will be a severe loss, Drake said. Then I'll have Forbidden Balor view just as a backup. Partner. Which type of bounded field did you deploy around our house? Drake said. Curse bounded field. Why do you ask? The sound of the door creaking open is heard as Issei turns around to be met with a godly sight. How do I look, darling? Mordred said. Mordred then sways her hips seductively with a security grin on her face making Issei's cute face turn into filthy shades of red. Cute, Issei said. Then passes out due to immense nobles and earned a sign of looking concerned of Mordred while Drake just face palms himself. Time skip, Mordred's POV. Nothingness, that's all I could see. It's like an infinite void that never ends. This is my place, my astral plane. I am a plane, my astral plane. The inner part of one's soul, which resembles said soul's emotions, and here why I more specifically how am I here? Is something wrong with me? Why I end up here in all places this stupid dream? It's been here. 700 years since I've been here. You haven't changed, Mordred. It's good to see you. That voice, it can't be. No way. It isn't real. It must be my imagination, isn't it? Still stubborn as ever, I see. This is real. I assure you, Mordred, you are not going insane. Trust me. Who the hell are you, Mordred says. I am really sad that you forgot the person you looked up to. Night of treachery. My, he my time here is done. See you later. And I took a liking to the boyfriend of yours. Suddenly, everything becomes pitch black. 
a huge human, inhuman screech forced to my knees due to its intensity. Then I swore I saw a familiar yet distorted face of someone I knew and I admired. Third POV. Mordred is seen sleeping on her bed, cuddling with Issei, but then wakes up breaking heavily, cold sweat dripping from her forearm, and terrified face filled with nothing but negativity. That was the worst dream ever, Mordred said. The next day. It was a beautiful day for both of them, as Issei and Mordred are having a good breakfast with happily chatting with each other. Have you ever seen a mystic eye user other than me, Issei said. Well, yes, I have, Mordred said. Don't lie. I know you haven't seen one other than myself, because I am the greatest piece of work ever to exist. Feel satisfied that I am being with you because I'm a boyfriend. I'm the best boyfriend you could ever ask for. What's that supposed to mean, huh? Mordred smirk. Mordred does. Issei smirks with arrogance and pride, making Mordred pout. I was just messing with you. Jeez, Issei said. You're running my sleep, you fucking lovebirds. But hey, can't tell out loud, can I? Drake said. Hey, I've been wanting to ask you something. I can feel a lot of fallen angels here. Isn't it supposed to be a devil territory, Mordred said? Actually, this belongs to the Shito faction. Sir Zex Lucifer, who is also a major Siskan, used his political powers to make the Shindone Pantheon lend this place to them. In the name of Ko, apparently by the devils, Law is only a major high-class devil, where a pair of intelligent young high-class devils can earn the rights to acquiring a territory. That's a lame. Using your brother's own territory to use it is something only a coward would do, Mordred said. Issei then chuckles due to a response from he got from Mordred. Sir, Ze Sir Zex then appointed Rias and Sona Citri as the joint governors for this place. The reason for the fallen angels in this place is due to Rias' inability to scout in place and her retarded parage. But Sona does a good job in managing the territory. Now, I can understand the reason for Cocofield's recent attack, Mordred said. Quit, you little chat. I can sense a person entering our bounded field, Drake said. Shit, I deployed a curse field, Issei says. Issei then frantically runs out of the house, only to be met with a corpse of a human who seems to be a mage carrying a briefcase. It seems like a mage stumbled upon our bounded field, Issei said. Mordred glares at Issei, while Issei looks nervously at her. Just check his briefcase, partner. It may help us, Drake said. Issei then nervously nods and proceeds to open the briefcase only to find a file with magical seal, which Issei easily dispels and looks at the file, shocking him. It's about my parents, the Hyotos. It seems that they were a Mungus family. This contains their research on flash air. The Hyotos were also mid-ranked Magus family. The clock tower, suspicious of the deaths, dispatched a magi to collect their works, it seems. Flash air. What is it? Sorry. I am not so good with humans' magecraft, Mordred said. Flash air is displacement magecraft that substitutes something for something else, derived from alchemy. This system has a fundamental rule that as a replacement will always suffer from the deintegration, thought of as a basic low level. There are very few who use it, limiting it mostly to the Hyodo family. It allows them to displace the soul and consciousness of others into stuffed animals and other objects replacing them with Pyoto's personalities, like used in their dolls. Mordred looks at Issei with a look at the sight of curiosity while Drake just scowls at him for his sacred gear. So, what are we doing with the corpse, Mordred said. Are you aware that the Clock Tower's Carly Observatory, being able to detect the use of Magicraft across 80% of the world, Drake says? How do you know that, Drake? I am sure the clock tower was built 500 years ago, Issei said. A past host of mine was an enforcer at the clock tower, Drake said. Issei then lets out a huge sigh while Mordred looks at Issei with confusion. The Carolan Observatory range is up to Kyoto. It can't observe Ko, and our house lies on a subvariant ley line connected to Kyoto's ley line. Seven, thus our bounded field shouldn't be visible to the observatory, and I am sure that the clock tower won't send any other mages after this one, as this is a devil territory which I am sure the clock tower is also aware of. That's nice to hear, Mordred said. All right, I'm going to burn this corpse, Issei said. The boosted gear materializes in Issei's hand, and from a bright yellowish flame burns the corpse to ashes in a matter of seconds. I guess I should replace the curse bounded field with an ideal bounded field, Issei said. You should, you should do that. I don't want to witness any other innocent bystander's corpse on the front door. Sure, it'll be done in a second, Issei said. With Rias, Rias is seen sobbing silently, while her parage look at her with a solemn gaze, and a few tears of their own. While a man seemingly at his 30s with crimson red hair similar to Rias wearing a suit imitating an aura of nobility and authority looks at the scene in front of him with a frown. 
My dear little sister, I promise you that I will find the one who is responsible for the death of your bishop and the Hyotos. I have also found out that Gasper was exorcised by one of the most powerful methods. An exorcist did this, Rhea said? Maybe. The markings of body is a Greek word for the most dangerous exorcism on creatures of darkness, Kyrie Elysian. Even the name itself brings a slight pain. But do not say this. This can kill a mid-class devil by even whispering it. When it is used, can successfully purge the soul of a mid-tier ultimate class being. The one who is responsible for this must be an exorcist of the church or a heretic working for the fallen. Or perhaps this is to confuse us. This may be a fake clue. I swear to Satan that I'll find the one who did this, Rhea says. That is the end of chapter 7. Chapter 8 third POV, a sickening smell lingering around the plains, which were tainted by crimson blood and corpses of the mortals. Above them was a man, no, a thing, with a long sword as the sole witness of for the massacre. Through thy death is thy granted, fear not souls of thy deceased, of peace shall not be granted only by thy death, O death feast upon their souls, bringing them salvation. A hand grabs the thing's leg which is seen as a dying soldier taking his last breath. W what are you? The soldier says. The shadow shall bring you peace, rest for all eternity, fallen soldier. The thing then stabs him at a heart, killing him instantly. I must thy seek the Hassan of this era. I shall judge his worth and be his executioner. I must heed towards the plains of red fields. If thy assassin I killed before was right to skilled assassin roams on the plains, he may be the assassin I seek. Now, back with Issei. In a huge colossal library littered with books about mystic codes to the special abilities inherited by traditional methods, Issei and Mordred are seen reading books re re regarding divine constructs of Welch mythology re respectively. This is absurd. The humans have betrayed me as a male in the Welch legend, Mordred said. Indeed, human and a lot of supernatural historians are quite distorted in their views of portraying things, Drake said. That's correct. But I guess it can't be helped with, Issei said. Darling, what are you reading about, Mordred said. Don't know, don't know that you shouldn't have a conversation on a library, Issei said. This is our own library. We could do whatever we want. I mean, literally whatever we want, Mordred said. Mordred looks at him with a seductive smile, earning a blush from Issei who composed himself. Do you remember that we decided to do it when we are truly ready? Although my perverted side wants to pounce you on here and now, Issei says. Issei whispers the last part only to hear him in succeeding in doing so, while making Mordred develop a huge blush. We're both 19 physically, and we both have internal uselessness, yet we are virgins. While many lose it before they are 18, Mordred said. This isn't a big feat. I am still a virgin till this moment, and I have lived for a half a million years, Drake said. Both of them stare at the now memorized boosted gear in Issei's arms with pure shock of disbelief and dancing in their eyes while Issei looked traumatized. Everyone just sat there in silence for a minute. I am sure you have just made a new world record, Drake. The Virgin Heavenly Dragon, Mordred said. Drake internally ch chalks hearing such a disgraceful horrific. How are you sane, Issei says. It's not a big deal. I was focused on improving my abilities and defeating Albion while I was alive and that literally didn't have time left for these. Although it was really hard controlling myself during my heat, I still didn't waste time and remained focused, Drake said. Issei gets up from his chair and runs away with a look of horror. What are you doing? Didn't you promise me to help you learn more about human magic craft and history, Mordred said? That can wait. I need a drink, Issei said. Time skip the next day. Issei is seen on the cafeteria at Code Academy, chatting with other students as the group of jerks make their way towards their demise, which is Issei. Dude, you should tell me how you did get that hot blonde chick like that, boy one said. Think with your brain, not your crotch, Issei said. Boy two. Heh, <laughs> I want to ravage that new blonde haired slut badly. The air suddenly turns colder, sending shivers down their spines while Issei lets out a sadistic grin. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> you want a ravager, huh? I'll be glad to cut your microscopic dick and chop your legs into pieces for addressing my cute, adorable princess as a slut, and I'll be ripping your eyes out and crutching them as you scream for mercy. In the end, you will just be a corpse without eyes, legs rotting away in purgatory. <laughs> His face detorts 
into a disturbing, psychotic laugh, scaring the two boys, making them run away. No, please don't. I want to live, boy one said. No, I want my dick, boy two said. Easy then lets out a chuckle at his facial expression, changes into his normal self as he flashes an innocent smile to a girl near him, who is seen sweating profusely. He may look cute, but he's a psycho, the girl said. Of course I'm a psycho. What should I do for knowing my little secret, Issei said. Issei reads her mind, her thoughts, and replies to it with an innocent smile, dripping with malice, making the girl faint, gaining the attention of the others far away. Oh my god, help, help, this is an emergency, somebody call the ambulance, Issei said. Issei shouts with a fake concern as a guy then proceeds to carry her to the infirmary. But unbeknownst to him, Kibi is seen with a terrified face, sweating heavily as he heard their conversation due to his enhanced hearing. I don't want to die in the hands of a psychopath yonder, Satan, give me strength, Kiba said. Issei then tilts his head, creepily towards Kiba with a mocking smile. I can see you, Issei says. Issei whispered. It is loud enough for Kiba to hear it making him run away with a hurry with his eyes wide. I think I would have been overboard, Issei said, in the underworld. So scene break. Inside a creepy room with ominous aura, Rias's brother is seated along a chandelier of a figure in front of him. It's good to see you. How long has it been? 200 years? No, 500. <sighs> Don't play dumb with me, Sir Zex. Why did you request my presence? The man now introduces Sir Zex smirks, earning a groan from the other earning a groan from the other man. I hope you remember that you owe me a favor. I do, but what about it? I have a favor to ask of you. What do you need, Mr. Devil King? A serial killer is in my sister's territory, and I would like to have the killer eliminated. Damn brat, you want me to kill an insolent serial killer who is a human? Sorry, but I don't kill pests. The killer is aware of the supernatural. He or she exercised my sister's mutation bishop, who is part vampire sealed by a bounded field of an average range, by Kyrie Elysian, one of the most powerful baptism rituals. Hmm, tell me about it, the one says. Sure, Sir Zex replies. Now we're back with Issei. I still can't believe that I let you accompany me on my assassination quest, Issei says. In a cold night with crimson moon shining bright, both of them are aware, seening across a forest field with chirping and growling. I was bored. I didn't get to fight anyone other than you, since we arrived at your hometown, Mordred said. You don't have to fight someone else. Why don't you think about having a peaceful life, Issei said. Says the one who killed a vampire and his own blood-related parents in a gruesome killing spree along with the other fallen in the city, Mordred said. Issei, hearing this, trips on a rock and falls down shocked and terrified due to her words. Did you stalk me all this time, Issei said? Yep. I accidentally saw you sneaking into the ORC and followed you and saw that you kill him. As for the fallen angels, well, I did stalk you, Mordred said. It's good to hear that my girlfriend stalks me, he said, replied. The same can be said to you, as well. After all, you did place a well-hidden tracking chip on my coated dress with small amounts of your mana, making them a low-grade mystic code. He just sits there in silence. Cat's out of the bag, Drake said. So tell me, Issei, why did you do that? You know very well that I hate people stalking or keeping tabs on me. It's evasion of privacy, Mordred said. To protect you. Yes. Yes, I did it to protect you. There are many who may harm you, and it sickens me that I know that. I, although being the supreme being, can't use my full powers, or at least part of it without blowing my cover, which could cause many unnecessary problems. But you took things to a whole different level, protectives. No, this isn't protectives, it's obsession, Mordred said. Mordred looks at Issei straight in his eyes, only to be greeted with a seemingly innocent look beneath that lie that immeasurable lack of empathy filled with a never-ending insanity and overwhelming desire for destruction to cause chaos and phenomena onto this world. As she peered through his golden orbs, she met something terrific. A pair of pitch black eyes with a faint blue glow, with an aura of something terrific, something erythral. Hey, you alright? You've been staring at me for quite some time, Issei said. Clearly dazed by what she saw, Mordred was now sweating and answers Issei with a fake smile. I'm fine, nothing to worry about, I guess, Mordred says. Alright, let's get to work then, Issei replies. What did I just see? Must be my imagination, but it also feels so surreal. Thinking about this, I did have a strange dream yesterday. It's nothing to worry about. I must have been overthinking myself, Mordred says. And a huge Manson, scene break. Volley is seen seated on a couch with a man in his 30s with spiky golden hair, smirking at Volley. Ah, uh, come on. Why do you look so sad, Volley? Cheer up. It's just, I saw my arch rival when you asked me to fetch the bastard crow. He was the one who defeated Cocaville. Ah, the new Red Dragon Emperor has risen the previous one was. 
If I am correct, was a weakling. Who was in Sir Zek's sister's prize? So how powerful is he? He was, but I didn't get to see his face. But for sure, he is a good one. A shame. I'd like to invite him to our side, as Azel says. The unknown person exclaims with a carefree smile as he drinks his wine, earning a frown from Volley. Don't be so battle-thirsty. It will bring your own demise someday. In the battle, you shouldn't express your emotions. Doing so will hinder your concentration and will create an opening, which the Red One will exploit. He's right. Do you want to get killed early? I don't care. I must be cursed to be born in this era where God is dead and I wanted to fight him to the death in my childhood, Volley said. The unknown person lets out a chuckle, which turns into a full-fledged laster of ticking off Volley. So what if he's dead? There are other gods, Norse, Shinto, Greek, Celtic, and many more. If you wish to battle them, then battle them to the death, though I personally don't like this. You know that I wish to form an alliance with the other factions. They say that you are an excellent war general, yet you hate how war... How amusing, Vali said. Sun Tzu, one of the greatest war tacticians once said, The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting, Sun Tzu. Whatever. Why peace when you can enjoy the thrill of battle? Peace is a state of no emotions. Avoid excruciating feeling it is. The mysterious figure just shakes his head in disappointment at Folly's answer. Peace is serenity. A state of mind, a beautiful feeling. Peace may be a void, but it's what soothes one's soul. And peace isn't the state of no emotions. It's emotion itself. I don't get it, Folly said. One day, he'll find out the true meaning behind my words, Azazel says. Whatever, Azazel. The new Red Dragon Emperor might be a valuable asset against the new threat, or potential enemy in the future. Let's see how much the Red Dragon can fuck things up, Azazel says. Now, back with Issei. As, crim as the crimson moon shines high in the sky, forest is covered in blood, and amidst the blood was Issei in his assassin outfit. Targets eliminated. One left. Hmm, Issei says. Who made a contract with you this time, Mordred says. Mordred comes out of all the shadows in her classic armor with blood all over her. The yokai faction. Apparently the ones we killed were a group of notorious yokai bandits who have caused many troubles to the yokai faction, Issei said. In my early years of a knight of the round table, I used to kill bandits and assassins who posed a threat to the king. Mordred says. Frowning slightly inside her armor, Mordred then tries to sense any other presence nearby, but no luck gives up. It seems like the last target has escaped, Mordred says. We'll find him soon, Issei replied. Suddenly, Issei looks at a tree with wide eyes and yells, Incoming! Duck down! A longsword misses his head, narrowly startling Mordred, while a chalet figure is seen on the tree. Prepare for your trial, young Hassan, for I shall be the executioner for thy souls if unworthy Hassans face your trial, young assassin. And thy try prove you're worthy. If not, then perish. And that is the end of chapter 8. Chapter 9, Third POV The sound of death echoing through the forest as the crimson moon bore witness to the duel of two assassins. You can come out. I have spotted you, Issei says. Issei throws a knife at the tree, only for the shadow to disappear. I see, you are quite the skilled young assassin, but let's see how long you can keep up with me. Suddenly a longsword heads towards Mordred but misses her head by a millimeter. Run away, hun, Issei says. Mordred nods her head and teleports away, and then the figure comes out of the shadow. Prove your worth, prove your worth, young assassin. If not, then perish. Who the hell are you? Issei says. All he got was a kick to his abdomen, slashed to his back, making Issei grunt in pain and move backwards. Trace on, Issei says. Boost, Drake replies. A huge amount of mana accumulate around his hands as the mana condenses to a dagger, radiating demonic aura. Let's a dance, Issei said. Issei then proceeds to rush towards the thing with his dagger, aimed towards its chest, but as he proceeds to stab it, the figure disappears, leaving a shocked Issei. An afterimage? Issei says, behind you, the assassin replies. The longsword barely misses Issei, but then the figure kicks him in the gut and delivers a kick to Issei's face, throwing him in the air. I have to get serious to defeat this abnomation of an assassin, Issei says. Trace on. The dagger then disappears into thin air, but the bow takes its place. A bowman. Interesting, the assassin replied. Three red-colored arrows imbued with mana rushes towards the thing at about a match of giving it 3.3, giving him almost no time to counter when he made contact creates an explosion. 
How'd you like that skeleton face? Issei says. At the smoke clears, the thing is seem unfazed with little to no visible damage. Such attacks won't even scratch me, young one. It's nice to meet you, King Assassin. The Grand Assassin. First Assassin, Old Man of the Mountains. If I remember correctly, you are supposed to be dead, Issei says. It seems you have uncovered my identity. Youngling, but your trial isn't over yet. Drag, do it! Boost! Times 20. Transfer! A crimson aura invades the surrounding, uprooting all the trees nearer than and then pushing back to the assassin by a couple of meters. Trace on. The bow decapitates in two blue particles and a red spear he previously used against Cocoville in the form of his hands. Rush and kill Crimson Rose of Exorcism. Ge Drag, Issei says. Issei then appears behind the first assassin in his pierces his leg, severing his tendons, but in the retaliation, the thing then stabs Issei in his gut with his longsword, making Issei stumble backwards, holding his wound. You have passed my trial, youngling. It's time I depart. The first assassin then disappears into the shadows, making Issei sigh as his wound regenerates slowly. It was really fun, but my mark my man, mark my word, old man, I'll kill you in an instant the next time we meet. In the alley, scene break. The alley was covered in blood, corpses of children, women, men alike amidst the bloodbath that was tearing face of a child eating him. Hmm, the child was pretty good, but he wasn't as good as his mother. Now time to affect the next unfortunate victim for my bloodlust, a man in the cloak seen atop a building, watching the massacre below with a disturbing smile on his face. Perfect. This is the one piece of art he will make, a good acquaintance. The way he killed them is cool. Believe. It's time we met. Rinotsuki Aru. A gentle breeze hits the figure atop the building, making his hood uncover his face. With Issei. Currently our protagonist in a rather interesting situation, as Issei is sitting on the couch with Mordred hugging him while sitting on his lap with a pink hue on her cheeks. Oh darling, I love you so much. Why don't we have some fun? Don't be shy. I'll take care of you for quite well, Mordred said. No, no, you are drunk, and I won't take advantage of such situations like this one. So why don't you go ahead to our room and take a nap? I'll sleep in the guest room, Issei said. Mordred punches Issei in his gut, making him have a painted face, and then continues to hug him while whining. Stay with me, please. I won't be a bad girl. Don't punish me. I'll be a good girl, I swear, Mordred says. Issei then blushes brightly, trying to compose himself, but failing miserably as Mordred falls asleep on him. That was just, wow. Didn't know she's into these kinks, Issei says. Partner, do you know the identity of the person we fought? Drake said. Yes, King Hassan, the old man of the mountain, also known as the first Hassan, and the progenitor of the Hassan, Issei says. In my time as the heavenly dragon, just before I was sealed, I have heard legends about him. Apparently, he was born 6,000 years ago as a human. He mastered the art of assassination, and thus becoming the first assassin. His name faded long ago in the flow of time, Drake said. It doesn't make any sense how come a human lived up to 6,000 years, even the devils live only up to 1,000 years except for the Satan class ones. Rumors say that he was able to live up to 3,000 years by stealing others' life force, but then tried of the living died, a natural death. They say during his life he founded the Hassans, Drake said. A group of elite mercenaries who were known for their ability to kill supernatural in an instant while being humans. They say that if any Hassan becomes corrupt or fails to follow the code of conduct, the first Hassan will kill them from the shadows. It is said that no one has ever seen him, not even the Hassans, as anyone who has seen him has never made it out alive to tell the others, Drake said. First time for everything, Issei replied. A crimson-colored magical glimpse forms near Issei, and ears startling him a bit. State your identity, Issei says. A voice is heard from the glimpse. Sir Zex Lucifer, am I to speak with the Hunter of the Red Plains right now? State your business, Mr. Lucifer. I don't have all day, Issa replies. Indeed, I wish to have contact with you for escorting someone who is targeted by an old Satan faction, Sir Zex says. I don't save people, instead kill them. I refuse your contract, Issa says. Would you refuse if I said that you'll pay part of the Gremory territory, Sir Zex says? After a minute of silence, Issa in relaxed tone replies. Interesting. Tell me about the contract. This is a confidential matter, so please be discreet. We, the Devil Kings, have planned for a peace conference in a couple of days at Co. with the Biblical Faction and Dragons, and since the Cocoville incident, I believe that the Old Satan Faction will try to attack us, so we wish to hire you to eliminate any threat. 
Don't think you could manipulate me, Sir Zex. I am no fool. Tell me the real reason, Issei says. A huge sigh is heard from Sir Zex, earning a smirk from Issei. As you know, Ko Academy is ruled by my little sister, Rios along with Sona's future sister and Seraphal Leviathan. We suspect that the old Satans wish to start a war by killing them, as it would result in Seraphal and myself declaring war against them. I wish to hire you to protect her till the conference ends. It's amusing to know that Zayas wants the person who wishes to kill her and has killed her bishop without knowing her as the personal bodyguard, Issei says to himself. You want me to babysit your sister, Issei replies. That, and as the second in command of the dragons, you are invited to the conference, Mr. Kodamine, Suzek says. Just because you know my name doesn't mean that you know everything about me, you bastard of a devil. Oh, come on. I know almost everything about you more than anyone in this entire world, Red Dragon Emperor, Sir Zex says. You're the biggest fool I have ever met, Sir Zex. You may know me as the current Red Dragon Emperor and the Hunter of the Red Plains, but you don't know the fact that I am Issei Hyoto, the former pawn of Rius, and the mysterious killer of Ko who killed your sister's bishop. You are a good tool for me to use to get my vengeance against your sister, Issei said to himself. Hello, are you alive? Sir Zex says. Issei then snaps out of his thoughts due to Sir Zex's rambling. You got yourself a deal, but on one condition that my betrothed shall accompany me. Sure, I'll pay you at the conference, Sir Zex says. With that, a magic lip disappears, earning a huge sigh from Issei and then a scoff from Drake. The fool of a devil king is going to be the reason for the death of his dear sister. Let's see how this turns out, Drake said. Time skip to the next day. In the hallway of Ever Busy Co Academy, we could see our protagonist and Mordred waiting outside the student council room. Why we're here, darling, Mordred said. It seems like Sona is the one investigating the murder of the Hyotos and the vampire. We are here to keep tabs on our investigation unofficially. She doesn't suspect that we are aware of the supernatural. As they were indulging in a conversation, a student council member with a demonic and draconic aura is seen approaching them. Yo, I'm Saji from Class 2Z. I'm the student council member. Presence wants to have a little chat with you, and if you perv at her, I will kill you. Saji's remark earns a chuckle from Mordred while Issei looks at him with caution. Sure, lead the way, Mordred says. Absorption line. One of Vitra's sacred gears. If it only draconic type on the gear, then boosted gear and divine dividing. Both of them entered the student council as Sona and Subaki are seen playing a game of chess with the other members looking the game. Checkmate, Subaki, Sona says. Well played, President, Subaki replies. The others in the room notice Issei and Mordred as Saji sits on the couch, doing some paperwork while eyeing at Issei. Issei Kodamai. Mordred, it's a pleasure to meet you all. Likewise, Miss Seatree. No need to address me in my last name. Call me Sona, Sona says. Well then, Sona. I know for the reason of being here. Sona then flashes a friendly smile while proceeding to adjust her glasses. Straight to business, I see. I would like to have a game of chess with both of you. Sona finishes answering and Issei slightly smirks along with Mordred doing the same. I have heard the rumors about the unbeatable chess champion of Ko. It's time I check out the facts. Indeed, it's been so long since I've had good competition. Hearing the reply, Sona then grids with amusement, dancing her violet orbs. Well then, who wishes to play me first? I'll go first, Mordred says. Get ready to be pummeled onto the ground. Sona exclaims with fake arrogance, earning a couple of chuckles from the other members while Subaki looks at her with suspicion. It's been nearly a month since Sona was excited for this, for a game of chess. The other time she was excited was about Gasper's death by unknown murderers. Something isn't right. First time for everything, I believe, Mordred says. I'm going to have a talk with my bud Saji while you both play. Time skip. Both Sona and Mordred are seen focused on the chessboard, which only has a couple of pieces remaining on both sides. Everyone in the student council look at the board with extreme nervousness and excitement. You're really good at this, Sona said. Not bad yourself, but checkmate. It was a nice match. Sona looks at the board with wide eyes, shocked at being defeated, but then a strange glint is seen in her violet eyes, as then chuckles, shocking the student council who are already bamboozled. Thanks for a good match, but I want a rematch later, Sona says. Sure, call me when you want one. I'm next, Issei says. Sure, which side do you want? I'll take white, Issei says. Sona is seen sweating heavily while Issei, slightly tired, counters every move made by Sona, earning shocked and nervous glances from everyone except Mordred. Not bad, not bad at all, Issei said. First Mordred defeats me, now this one has given me even tougher challenge. If I lose, I'd be enraged with them. The world must be fucking with my life, Sona says. Checkmate, Sona. Everyone looked at Issei, shocked, while Issei wears a smug grin, eating a punch to his shoulder by Mordred. That was a good game, Sona said. After saying that crazy smile, it makes her word towards her, which goes unnoticed by everyone. They are distracted. 
I'll take my leave. See you later, Issei says. Likewise, Sona. It has been fun seeing you and everyone in your company, Mordred replied. Both of them exit the student council, leaving everyone except Sona with a dumbfounded expression. You do know what it means, right? Subaki says. Just give me a minute, Sona says. After a minute of silence, let's out a sigh. Subaki, contact my mother and inform her of things. Development, Sona says. Sure. To think that there is a man who beat me in the game of wits. This is so awesome. At last, not the one, but two defeated me in chest and one is male. It's time I start knowing about my fiancé. Ah, this feeling is so good. Finally, someone who can match me in intelligence, but I still want a match of chess with the killer. But I don't plan to now. Shall I inform this to your sister, Zubaki said? No, don't inform her, and send your familiar to Montre Ise at all time. Sona said, that's stalking, Subaki replied. No, it's called getting to know him more. And that is the end of chapter 9. And that is where we're going to end it off for now, right at chapter 9. And the next chapter we'll read will be chapter 10. Sorry, I just yawned. Now, once again, thank you to Robert Block or Rob the King and George Alvarez or Herha Alvarez for becoming a balance breaker. Thank you guys so much for all the support. It's been absolutely amazing. Once again, that is the highest tier membership. I will make a list with all my memberships and shouting out everyone continuously, but mainly the balance breakers because that is the highest tier. Thank you so much for the support. It truly has been absolutely amazing. Remember, I will do a what if on Naruto. I will do a what if on Goku on this channel eventually. It's just not the time as of right now. What if if Naruto will obviously be coming before Goku, but once again, if you want to see what if on Goku's, uh, just go check out my second channel. It'll be linked down in the description below. Once again, let's try to hit a thousand likes. That'd be absolutely amazing. Once, if you guys want to know exactly when I upload such my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. And on Fallen DXD, I'll either post shorts, light novel reviews, things of that, etc. You just say what you want me to do in the comment section, or if you want me to do it on this channel, I might as well knock it out. It'll probably get above like a thousand views and things like that anyway. I just want to try out a couple of things, if you know what I mean. Thank you guys so much for the support. 30k soon. Without further ado, let's go ahead and end off this video. Spartanic Arts DXD out. What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD, back with another high school DxD related video. Instead we have What If Ise Was Betrayed and Became a God, Part 4. Let's try to hit a thousand likes please, and if you guys want to know exactly when I upload such my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. Thank you so much to Robert Block slash Rob the King, Jorge Alvarez or George Alvarez, Atomic Warlord 58 Toner, and Lachlan Yates for becoming a balance breaker. That is the highest membership tier in the membership tier. Thank you guys so much for the support. Seriously, you guys are absolutely amazing. If you guys want to know, if you guys want what ifs on Goku, go subscribe to my second channel. Link down in the description below. Thank you so much for the support. 30k soon. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter 10. Issei's POV. Today is a beautiful day indeed, as I am on my way towards Ko Academy with my princess. I swear we're going to be late to school, Mordred said. Says the one who literally burned our food while cooking, Issei replied. Mordred then playfully punches me on the shoulders. She seems to be having a good day. Suddenly I swear that I saw a pair of red eyes looking at me. It must have been a familiar of either Sona or Rias. No, Rias is familiar as a bat, which doesn't have red eyes. It must be Sona's. Can you feel that, darling? Mordred replies. I can. Must be the familiar of Sona, Issei said. The best course of action is to take his as a calm to avoid suspicion. I suggest not make any other assassination missions for a week, Mordred says. She does have a point, although one wake is a bit too much for me, without seeking the blood of the bad guys. As we were chatting, Sona walks towards us, waving her hands. It seems we meet again, Mordred, and you too, Issei, Sona replied. I didn't expect you to see this soon, so we have a couple of this chess mask, Mordred said. Sona then slightly chuckles. Hmm, this isn't good. She's a lot more different than I last saw her. I was Rias' pawn. She was supposed to be stoic, but today she has this. Glint in her eyes. It's so unnerving. Maybe I'm seeing things, but the bell goes off indicating the start of homeroom. It seems we have to leave. It was fun being in your company, Sona, Issei said. Third POV. As Issei left towards his class with Mordred, Sona looks at Issei as a creepy smile makes his way towards his face. Her face. I'll make you mine, Issei, Sona says. With that, Sona leaves her class with her stoic demeanor, replacing the creepy smile from before. Time skip. 
Currently, Issei is seen on his room reading a book ab about mystic eyes while Mordred is seen in the kitchen cooking. Mystic eyes of petrification. I wish I had this one. It would have been useful for killing multiple targets. Instead, I just got a lame but overpowered mystic eyes, Issei said. Suddenly, an indigo-colored glimpse forms above Issei's ears, earning a look of amusement at the glimpse. Mr. Ketamine here, Issei says. The moment these words escape his mouth, a dark chuckle is heard from an unknown person. It seems you're doing fine, he say, my boy. It's good to hear from you, my old man. How are the dragon apple farms doing, he say, says. Good. The yield has been doubled thanks to my research on dragon apples. You want one, he replied. If you can, send a mountain full of it, Issei says. A loud laughter is heard from the unknown's person, earning a small chuckle from Issei. Now jokes aside, do you know there's a peace conference between the biblical factions? Yes, I know. Sir Zex invited me as the dragon's faction representative and hired me for the protection of his sister. That damn siscon never changes, does he? Also, I'd like to know about your whereabouts. Silence ensues as neither of them responds for a minute, then Issei lets out a sigh. Tanin, I respect you a lot. That's why you're the two people who know about me, at least a bit, but I don't take orders from you. I will execute my will according to my plan, so stop persuading me from revealing my location. My location. The person now introduced a tiny size. I did expect this. Don't think you're being a bit harsh on this old man, Tanin says. I'm being kind, old man. If I was harsh, you wouldn't be in one piece. Trust me, I'm far from being harsh, Issei said. We're getting out of topic, Tanin replied. Okay, I'll attend the peace conference, but I'll have my brother accompany me, Issei says. A loud laughter is heard as Tanin laughs his ass off of hearing an irritated smile from Issei. You have a mate? So who's the lucky lady, Tanin says. Her name is Mordred Pentadragon, the Knight of Treachery, Issei says. What the hell? Tanin says. Tanin instantly shouts, making Issei yelp. What the fuck? This is impossible. She was supposed to be dead long ago. Wait, is she a female? And how did a human survive that long? Tanin said. Calm down and take a deep breath. Inhale and exhale, Issei said. Tell me now, Tanin said. Well, she isn't dead because of her gaining partial immortality after her duel with King Arthur. And she is female, Issei said. Be more specific, Tanin said. I am specific, Issei replied. Anyways, should I send Bova to peace conference for your safety? Tanin said. Issei rolls his eyes and lets out a pissed of a growl. Are you implying that I can't protect myself? You're hurting my pride, Issei said. I'll take that as a no. Don't forget to visit the old man later, Tanin said. Sure. I'll also bring my maid. I've been planning out on her to take a day after the peace conference tomorrow, Issei said. That sounds fine. Also, Bova said hi, Tanin said. Tell him that next time we meet, we'll have a good old spar, Issei said. Sure. I'll take my leave. Devil work is really tiring, Tanin said. See you later, old man, Issei replies. The glimpse disappears as Issei then proceeds to read his book with focus while Mordred yells from the kitchen. Shit, I burned the food, Mordred says. Hearing that, Issei sweat drops as a thought of burnt stew as his dinner. This never gets old. Guess I should cook this time. Indeed, you should, Dreg says. Time skip. Currently, both Issei and Mordred are seen at the dining table with delicious bowl of ramen near both of them. Do you like my cooking, my highness? Issei turns around only to be met with Mordred eyeing the ramen with a face of ecstasy. It'll do just fine, Mordred said. Well, then, bon appetit. Bon appetit, Mordred replies. Mordred then takes a bite of the ramen, soon a face of pure ecstasy, as she then proceeds to finish the bowl in a minute, making Issei jaw drop. Seconds, please, Mordred said. Sure, here you go, Issei replied. Mordred. Japanese food sure is amazing, Mordred said. Time skip. Mordred is seen on the dining table with numerous bowls around her, as a depressed Issei looked lingering on his face. Bring me another bowl of ramen, Mordred said. That was the fifth bowl of ramen. Are you sure you want another one, Issei said? Give me one more, please, Mordred replied. Mordred then flashes her secret power, the puppy eyes, making Issei flustered. Must resist, damn it, I can't resist this. Nope, must resist, Issei says. Focus, channel on your inner puppy eyes, make him obey you, Mordred said. Mordred then flashes an even cuter puppy smile, making him blush even harder. Your eyes can deceive you, don't trust them, but I can't resist, Issei said. Please, fine, this is the last one. 
Mind tricks don't work on me, Drake said. Do I have to remind you that you were three years of death training? He says sarcastically laughed, making Mordred confused, but then Drake yells, making another great concern. First rule of death's training. Do not talk about death's training, Drake says. Is he all right? Mordred replied. I think I've reawakened his buried trauma, Issei said. I feel bad for him, Mordred replied. Don't be worried, he will be all right. Although I think maybe I should have taken him on a supernatural counselor, maybe then he'll be all right, Issei said. I don't think any counselor would remain sane after inspecting our poor drag, Mordred said. Maybe I'll give it a try. First rule of death's training. Do not talk about death's training, Drake said. POV, now we're with Rias. Both Rias and Akino are seen outside of the shrine as Rias' look of irritation while Akino just shrugs at Rias' attitude. Why is it taking so long, Rias said. Don't be like that, Rias. He will be here soon, so don't be like that. Or you'll get wrinkles, Akino said. Hmm, whatever, Rias replied. As they are seen speaking a huge amount of divine aura, enters the shrine as a golden light shines on the shine. My apologies for being late. I hope I did not antagonize you. As the light fades away, a blonde man in his late 20s with a halo and wearing a royal attire while radiating calm divine aura appears in front of them. No, you did not, Lord Michael. Don't worry about it, Akino says. On to business. My brother did inform me of your visit, but may I ask you the reason as the governor of Ko, Rhea says. Rhea exclaims with her pride evident in her voice, causing Michael to chuckle. Very well. I am here to present you a gift of contribution to the peace conference and as you managed to hold Cocaville to a standstill till the white dragon arrived. Akino looks at Rias with nervousness dripping from her face, while Rias remains emotionless but can one feel malice hidden. Did I touch a sensitive subject if I did? My apologies, Michael said. It's fine, Lord Michael, Rias replied. We could have a good talk inside the shrine if you wish, Akino says. Sure, it would be the best as people won't be able to eavesdrop on us, Michael says. Inside the shrine, Michael is seen leaning on a pillar while having his focus directed towards the two she-devils in front of him. After a few moments, a divine aura invades the shrine as a sword materializes out of thin air as both the she-devils stare at a magnificent sword with awe and caution at the divine aura admits. Behold the holy dragon slaying sword, Ascalon. The most powerful dragon slaying weapon next to Samuel's blood. It's in restrained form. But a devil can't wield a holy sword, Rhea says. That's true, however, a part devil can wield this sword in its restrained form. However, wielding this is its unstrained nature will obliterate the part devil wielder in a snap. I believe this will be a fine present, Michael said. We are grateful for this, Lord Michael. Thank you, Akino says. White colored wrapper surrounds it as divine aura slowly fades away. This wrapping totally suppresses the aura of the sword, enabling even a pure devil such as yourself, Miss Grimmery, to carry them without the risk of injuring yourself, Michael says. Whole, I wholeheartedly thank you for this wonderful president, Lord Michael. Seriously, Rhea says. I hope this will come in handy for you and during any crucial times, and I forgot to mention that Ascalon, as its restrained form, can kill mid-class dragons, which is low-tier ultimate class when fully mastered in the global aura scale. In its unrestrained form, it is capable of slaving dragon kings beings class, which are fully mastered. I will have that in mind, Lord Michael, Akino said. It's a shame. I wanted to present this to the Red Dragon Emperor, Issei Hyoto, Michael said in his head. I'll take my leave. With that, Seraphim teleports away in a flash of golden light making Rias and Akino sigh simultaneously. Finally, I can breathe. His aura is really powerful, Akino said. I didn't expect Big Brother to have Lord Michael give me Ascalon, Rias says. Unexpected things do happen, Akino says. Come on, Akino. We're going to our mansion, Rias says. Now, we're with Sona. Prez. I did the job you gave me. Sona is seen seated on the couch on her mansion, with a file of her hand while Sanji is seen standing next to her. Did you find any suspicious person? Sona says. Nope, Sanji replies. This isn't good. Saji hereafter. I prohibit you from taking contracts with humans for a week. Instead, you were to scout the places around your house and the Bannerman church repeatedly. Got it? Sure, leave it to me, Prez. Saji does a fake salute, making Sona roll her eyes. You're dismissed. Have a good night, Sona says. Saji then teleports away with a blue magic circle as Subaki comes inside the room with her casual clothes on. So, got any clues regarding the killer, Subaki says? I'm working on it, Sona replies. That's great. Also, Momo informed me that her contact with our client 43 is completed, Subaki says. 
devoid of an emotion, Sona looks at Tsubaki straight in her eyes, slightly scaring Tsubaki in the process. That's good. Who is currently in patrol on the western part? It's Tomo who is inspecting that part of the city, Tsubaki says. The eastern part. I believe that's where Issei Kodamai and in Mordred live, Sona says. With a small smile, Sona looks at the file thinking of Issei. Tsubaki is scouting there, I believe, Tsubaki says. Tsubasa is scouting there, believe, Tsubaki says. Are everyone in contact? Sona says. They are, Tsubaki replies. Well then, Tsubaki, that's it for today, Sona says. Oh, my, it's ten at night. I must be asleep by now. See you tomorrow, Sona. Sleep well, Tsubaki. Flashing a small smile at Sona, Tsubaki leaves the room Sona is in. You can come out now, Sona says. The moment of these words left his Dietrich's helpless lips, a cute little manicure, with a black and blue scales teleports right at Sona's shoulders, causing her to giggle. Tell me, what is Issei doing currently? The cute manicure then leaves her shoulders, with a puff of smoke turns into beautifully long girl with ocean blue hair. Master, he is currently asleep with Mordred by his side. Polygamy is it known uncommon with devils? Maybe I could turn both of them into devils with the help of my mother, Sona says. Have a close eye on them. Your task is to find out his likes and dislikes, Sona says. Sure, master. May I take my leave? You can. If anything goes wrong, inform me immediately. The girl then bows a bit and then proceeds to teleport away from Sona and having a look of happiness. Soon, my love, we can be together forever and no one, not even my parents or my sister, can take you away from me, Sona says. In abyss, wrapped in internal darkness, a loud mantra's screech bringing despair and fear upon the bravest of all echoed throughout the void. It was the screech of something tormented, something twisted beyond mortal standards, as it was cursed in its existence to cycle mindless rampage in isolation, now caged in the edge of the universe in an endless void by a pesky mortal at the cost of said mortal soul. A pair of red eyes stare at the very void surrounding with it, such ferocity, such ferocity the void itself trembles under the pure chaos it holds, for it is something simple yet complex, something beyond the common plane of existence of mortals, something that makes the universe itself tremble, not at fear of destruction, but at the carnage it leaves behind, a reminder of its existence. And the underworld, Luca fed, scene break. In the peaceful city of Lucafed, the citizens of the underworld raging from slaves to common devils are seen tending to their own business while a huge number of soldiers are seen guarding the city, and the fortress at its heart. The fortress is the home to one of the current devil kings, Sir Zex Lucifer, aka the Crimson Devil, or the first super devil. Inside the heavily guarded castle, we can see dozens of maids and butlers tending to various things while a certain silver-haired maid is seen outside the biggest room, which seems to be the office room of the devil himself. Lord Lucifer, may I enter? Grafia says. After a moment of silence, the voice of the crimson Satan filled the exhaustion is heard from the exert. Come in, Sir Zex says. As our favorite maid opens the door, only to be greeted with a sight she will never forget in her life. A futuristic spacious office opens with a huge 85-inch wall-mounted TV displaying a devil journalist talking about various news reports regarding the underworld and the typical office atmosphere with Sir Zex doing some paperwork as we greeted wide-eyed Grafia Lufage. The newly built office is astonishing, Grafia said. Thanks. Ajuka for the future thank Ajuka for the futuristic design. Although the elder devils were irritated due to the futuristic design, as they said, this compromises our old traditions. The great Lucifer's office was filled with cultural depictions like that of a cult. Sir Zex bakes a laugh, earning a smirk from the stoic maid. I'll keep that in mind, Grafia said. Grafia, are the reports for tomorrow's peace conference ready? Sir Zex said, Yes, they are. The other devil kings have reports ready. That's wonderful, Sir Zex said. I also have news from the other one of the clans. They have found out a perfect fiancé for their Harris, and they said the clan wishes to gain your permission over it. Which clan is it? Seatree has informed me that Lady Sona has been beaten in the chest by a human in co-academy and wishes to marry him, Grafia says. Sir Zex, shocked at the informed, accidentally falls from his chair. A human. Are Lord and Lady Seatree willing to reincarnate him into a devil, Sir Zex said. After a huge discussion, Lord Seatree has approved of reincarnating him after a talk with the said boy. Does the boy have any idea about this? Also, about what about Seraphal? No. The boy seems to be clueless, and Lady Seatree decided to inform to this to Lady Leviathan after the interrogation with him, as they fear Lady Leviathan may kill him in the name of protection of her favorite little sis. 
Sir Zexlin snickers at the thought of Seraphal choking the boy in the name of protecting Sona. What's the hu human's name, Sir Zex says. Issei Kodamide, I believe. The moment these words escape her lips, Sir Zex looks at Graphia with wide eyes, then starts to tremble, earning a concerned glance from the silver-haired maid. Uh, I think I heard it wrong, Graphia. Tell me name once more. Issei Kodamide. Sir Zex then accidentally falls out of his chair, hitting the floor, knocking him unconscious, earning a gasp from Graphia. Sir Zex! Grafia says, and that is the end of chapter 10. Chapter 11, third POV. In an unknown city, it was currently raining. Trees were blown away. No, they were indicating the city was abandoned, but then a woman enters the city with an umbrella shadowing her face. The woman mutters something in an unknown language, but as if it's reacting to the words, the rain subdues and the ground cracks, opening a revealing staircase. The woman then enters the staircase, which goes around. After a couple of minutes of walking, she arrives at a huge door with two mages guarding it. State your identity, mage says. Leviathan. Suddenly, the two mages fall to their knees with the head facing the floor. Forgive my insolence, my lady, the mage says. The mage opens the door, which reveals a gigantic base, with mages and the devils everywhere. Soon, the mages and the devils notice her presence, and bows, earning a smirk from the lady as she unfolds her umbrella. My lady... Lord Totsuka wishes to meet you. Shall I accompany you, my lady? The devil says. No. Go prepare the soldiers. I went ready in a couple of hours. Leviathan says. Yes, my lady. The random devil then runs away frantically. As the lady then proceeds to walk towards a room, decorated with barrier mystic codes and others such, the lady then opens the door only to be met with a man seemingly at his late thirties, wearing an elegant suit with a staff as deep as blue eyes and allies the woman with a small smile. Back, Lady Leviathan. I thought you had a good- Welcome back, Lady Leviathan. I hope you had a good journey. I did. Tell me, Tomoki, how is the plan for our little project, Leviathan says. Before I would like to inform you about our truce is likely to end after the infiltration on the peace conference, I would like to have my promise fulfilled by today, Tomoki says. Leviathan nears her eyes at the request of Tomoki. I don't have- the Lesser Grail with me. It's under the jurisdiction of my superiors, but it will be yours after you have our pact fulfilled, Leviathan says. Excellent. Well then, Lady Leviathan, I wholeheartedly present you my finest mages, who are mainly rogue spellcasters and heretic who are hunted down by the clock tower in the church. I couldn't understand the reason behind your pact with me. Why would you, a prestigious magi from a well-known Magus family, help us? You clearly are a well-known person in the clock tower who are allied with the biblical faction, Leviathan says. It's simple. I will make my wish fulfilled at any cost. Once the lesser grail is mine, I'll summon the greater grail to kickstart the heavens, free ritual, and then... And then the reach of Eptamine of all truth, the root, the Ashaka. But I can... I can't tell you that, can I? Tomoki whispers in his head. Now, we're with Issei. Currently, Issei's in his class listening to the class while having deep thought. I can't help but think about what Death said when we were alone in the multiverse, Issei said. Flashback, one year after Issei's arrival in the multiverse. In a grass field, Issei's seen leaning down on the grass, looking onto the sky, which has cracks indicating it is an Earth, but a sub-dimension. This is called training is fucking intense. It helps, but I can't stop thinking about the shit I'm into, Issei says. Suddenly, a fist comes crashing into Issei's face, creating a huge crater to the ground, but Issei remains unfazed. Death? Just give me a second to rest, Issei says. I can, but what's the fun in it, Death says, seemingly unknown to where both death and life appear next to Issei in their human form. How are you doing, my lord? Do you need any assistance, Life says. I'm fine, Issei replied. You have improved a lot. Mana's... Mama's proud of you, Death said. Life then slaps the living lights out of Death with irritation visible in her eyes. Shut up. I am not pleased with your seductive attitude towards our lord, Life says. That doesn't mean that you can slap me, bitch, Death says. Okay, fine. We'll settle this later, but do you remember the reason why we are here, Life says? I do, so shut up, Death replies. Issa then looks at the uncomfortable due to the fact that two of the most powerful beings having a verbal fight. Um, guys? Issa said. Forgive me for disturbing you, Master. Okay, so why are you both here? We wanted to show you why something extraordinary, but then that, I'll make Drake unconscious so he can't know about it. 
Death says. Suddenly, all three of them exist in the dimension and enter the multiverse. Master, you may have seen the Castle of Origins, but we're going to show you something even more powerful. So brace yourself, Lice says. Suddenly, all three of them get thrown towards the center of the multiverse at incredible speeds. What the hell, Issei says. After 30 minutes, the trio slowly decelerates as they reach a void, which exerts extreme pressure upon them, causing Issei to stumble. Don't worry, that won't kill you at first. Security barrier to keep others from reaching here. Suddenly, a huge light blinds Issei, causing him to panic, but then the light slowly disappears, revealing what could have been described by any words on first sight. Magnificent, isn't it? Wow. What the hell is that, Issei said. Allow me to explain. This is the finest creation of primal concept. It is known as the Root, the Ashaka. It is the anchor of the multiverse, which connects the multiple universes. It also functions as the backup data of all creations. Only the primordial concept or the provised vessel can access the interior of the Root. Not even us can, Death says. It was the first creation of the being. The root contains all knowledge about the multiverse, which even we don't know about. The root is ethereal, cannot be destroyed. It can also be used to observe any part of the multiverse, Life says. Only I can reach it, huh? Cool, Issei says. Not exactly. You see, any being with a soul can't access the interior of the Ashika, but theoretically, even humans can. Reach the swirl of the root. But only one in Virgintillion can can actually reach the swirl without having their soul destroyed by the chances of being alive after witnessing the swirl is even less than infinite due to the red shadow. Red shadow, Issei says. Issei tilts his head in confusion only to be met with a scary red shillette with eyes like that of a beast. That's the red shadow, the last failsafe of a mortal managed to reach the swirl of the rue. Don't be scared, he won't kill you. He recognizes you as the vessel. His job is to destroy any mortal that has touched the swirl of root, Death says. Touching the swirl of root will grant the mortals unbelievable power called true magics. There are five of them, but the red shadow kills them as soon as they touch the swirl. Only due to their sheer luck has managed to evade the red shadow, Life says. For real? You gotta be kidding me. His name is Kisher Sirlet Sirwing. He is from the universe 2 million of the Nachu universe cluster. That old fool managed to gain the second manage the Kaleptikai. Its domain is the operation of parallel worlds. It allows the user to travel between multiple universes and the ability to draw mana from the parallel universes to an extent. He managed to access partial immortality by specific means. He is the person you wouldn't wish to meet a huge troll who messes up the other parallel universes for his fun. Yeah, definitely an interesting person. He can't have fucked things up to the, to the extremes, can he? He can fuck things up to the extremes, can he, Issei says. Death groans while life scratches the head of her while Issei sweat drops. You have no idea. That man fucked up nearly 10,000 timelines in the Nasuverse for his entertainment. He destroyed about 100 parallel universes, either by mistake or by improper manipulation of the parallel timeline by adding external factor to the original timeline making it unstable. Would you believe that he destroyed an entire timeline just by saving a person from death? Oh, great. I don't want to meet him ever in my life, Issei says. Human mages in many parallel universes have partial knowledge about the swirl of root. And many try to open the pathways to the Ashika, and few succeed in doing, but all got killed except for Zeltrates. Also, once a successful pathway is used, one cannot use it further, as we should close the pathway and many users as Mac has tried to use Greater Grail, which is incredible amounts of condensed piranha and mana, but all fail to open a pathway. In short, the Greater Grail cannot be used to open a path to Ashika. Wow. This is too much for my mind to process. How can the fuck can I understand? At least vaguely, Issei says. Flashback ends. Now we're back with Mordred. As Issei is seen in his own world, Mordred is seen dozing off in class. Mordred's POV, nothingness, nothingness, encompasses around me till my eyes see. It's like a dream. I swear I saw her. It can't be real. I'm hallucinating. That must be it. Finally, I can have a small talk with you. A whisper. It was her voice. I'm sure it was her. The one I despise. The one I hate her. I want to make her disappear. You want me to disappear? Hmm. Have you fought? How have you fallen, my child? Who the heck are you? Who the heck ate you? This can't be a coincidence. I'm sure I'm under a spell or I've been cursed. Don't be so feisty. 
I don't mean harm, child. Go to hell, you fucking imposter, Mordred says. The moment I said those words, the air around me came cold. As the chill down my spine, it's been so long since I felt this, um, sensation. You are not worthy! I tried. I always did. But why did I fail? Why won't she acknowledge me? I just wanted her shadow. I wanted to make her proud. Then why? Why did she cast me away? Tell me why you did. I wanted to inherit the legacy of the Pentadragons to make you proud. Then why didn't you let me be the future of King Camelot? I wanted to be a king who takes care of her subjects with happiness and righteousness. I just wanted my people to flourish, to live a happy life. I wanted to have a good life as the ruler of Prosperous Kingdom would know. No, I didn't wish for these. I just wanted to prove my worth to you, to make you proud by inheriting the Golden Swords of Victorious. But you declared that I was unworthy. All I got was a loud malformed whisper, which I couldn't understand. But the one thing I'm sure of is that the voice belongs to one person I hate most yet admire the most. The ruler of Britannian, King of Camelot, the King of Knights. A Torah Pentadragon, my mother. The only person I hate the most. The person I killed with my own hands, along with the entire country of men and women just to kill her. Third POV. Time skip. Mordred, wake up. We're still in class, Issei says. Due to Issei calling her, Mordred finds herself awake with tears dripping down her eyes. She is unaware of her teeth's have stoic look. Why did you make me wake up? I was taking a nap, Mordred said. Hey, did you have a nightmare? Because you're crying, Issei said. Mordred replied, huh? Mordred then touches her face to find out that Issei was right. She was indeed crying, but then she thought, Why am I crying? I couldn't remember anything about having a dream, Mordred said. As if reading her thoughts, Issei then gains a serious look while listening to pretending to listen to her teacher. Maybe her dream was so frightening that the look of her subconscious has surpassed them. Maybe I'll find out soon. Time skip. At the night of day, at one of the hidden rooms of Co Academy, the three great power gathered together after the Great War. Each were beings of unparalleled power. From the Devil Faction, Seraphal Leviathan and Sir Zex Lucifer and Grafia were present along with Rius, Sona, and their leverage and their leverage standing next near the exit. From the fallen angels, Azazel and Folly, who were leaning on the wall while Michael along with the two exorcists were present as representatives of heaven. All the leaders were visibly tense at the tension to all air except Azazel, who was just calm. The representative of the dragon faction must be here by now. Ah, he's her. Suddenly, a bright multicolored magic circle appears on the floor, earning a small smirk from Sir Zex, while Seraphal gets excited at the color of the magic circle. When the magic circle... Issei and Morgid arrive in their battle attire, shocking Rius in her barrage, along with Sona in her barrage, but the one shocked of all, out of all was Sona, who was staring at Issei with wide eyes and able to comprehend the situation. Greetings, I am Issei Kodamai, the honorary second in command of the Dragon Faction. Pleasure to meet you. Mordred Penadragon, the true heir of the Camelot, and mate Issei here is nice to meet you, Mordred said. Everyone are seen shocked while Vali just grins, and Azazel smirks at Issei. You must be lucky to have a hot chick like her, lucky bastard. Please take a seat, both of you, Sir Zex says. Both Issei and Mordred take a seat, and Azazel claps his hand together. So why don't we get started, Azazel says. First, I'd like to know about the incident with Cocofield, Rius, and Sona. How about you give your report, Sir Zex says. I'd like Lord Lucifer to hear the details. Pre prepared by both mine and Sona's report, Rius then hands over the file to Sir Zex. We are fortunate that this didn't turn into a war. We are the devils, can't offer to lose our remaining pure bloods in a war. I am concerned about the objectives of Cocaville. He stated that he wanted a war, Michael said. That warmonger was really a big trouble. He managed to slip past my vigilance and stole the Excalibur fragments. I should have kept him in my leash. My bad, I can assure you that the fallen angels are not interested in a war. I also had the white dragon stop his nonsense, but the red one did it. Azazel said. The room visibly tenses at the thought of the new Red Dragon Emperor. I'd like to inform you all that I am the new Red Dragon Emperor, Issei says. Issei then summons the boosted gear, causing nearly everyone to gain a shocked look while Vali just grins even wider. <coughs> no beings other than humans could inherit the sacred gears. So how did you, Michael said. I hope you all know about the flaw in the system, due to know whose death. It is just a matter of sheer luck, Issei says. I would like to research your sacred gear. Would you like to visit the Grigar, Issei says. Azazel says. Azazel then looks at Issei with a creepy smile, causing everyone in the room to get uncomfortable. Ah, you look like a pedophile, Seraphal replies. At the, mo at the comment made Seraphal almost everyone laughs, while even Vali and Grafia have a smile. 
Lady Leviathan, please reframe your childish tendencies, Gravius said. This is lame. Why don't you all just declare peace already, Mordred thought. My thoughts exactly. Why don't we get this over with, Azazel says. Azazel grins, earning a sign from Michael while Sir Zex narrows his eyes. I'm afraid it's not that simple. We are devil. We the devils have some demands, Sir Zex says. The same can be said for us dragons, Issa replied. Since the devil kings and god are dead, we have no purpose on a new war. When we are on the brink of extinction, Michael said. Well, I would like to focus on reviving our species in my sacred gear research, Azazel said. That's our primary concern too, Seraphal replied. We were the ones who stuffed the higher amount of casualties among the royal clans, Sir Zek said. We dragons want peace. Nothing more, nothing less. Also, we would like some territory in the underworld as fee of our ar for our armies. As you know us, dragons are one of the strongest species, and we are need of dragon apples which grow exceptionally on the underworld. Sure, your demands are reasonable, Sir Zek said. We can provide our sacred gear tracking system and our medical facilities, but we demand to know the evil system pieces in and how it functions, Michael says. We can agree to that, Sir Zek said. We can share our sacred gear research and the new artificial sacred gear in return for the reincarnation system in some territory in the underworld. Also, we have some Longinus users on our side. Sure, but, Seraphos says, we request the armies of the dragons and help in dealing stray devils will offer some territory as well as information the reincarnation system of the evil pieces, Sir Zek said. I agree. For the alliance, we dragons support this proposal, Isay said. We agree for the alliance, Michael said. No objection on our side. Devils are the alliance, Sir Zek said. Then the peace treaty is sealed, henceforth we dragons shall offer our military support, Issei says. Now, I'd like to know the thoughts of the white and the red one, Azazel said. I just want to fight strong opponents, that's all I wish, Folly says. Folly just stares nonchalantly, earning a couple of worried glances while Azazel just laughs. You don't need a war to have a spar, Folly. I want peace, Issei says. That's it now officially the alliance's form. Suddenly, everyone except Issei, Mordred, Vali, Grapia, Irina, Saji, Zenovia, Kiba, faction leaders are seemingly freezed in time. What happened? Kiba said. A frown then makes it lay towards Sir Zex's face. It seems that time has stopped. What could have caused this? Forbidden Balor view, Issei said. Rias's bishop has it. He must have been kidnapped by the intruders. How is it possible? Gaspar is dead, Sir Zex said. For once the laid-back personality of Azazel changed into a serious tone. Vitra's power must have saved this guy while your holy sword saved your swordsman. Suddenly, about 1,000 magicians arrive from a big teleportation circle. It looks like we are concerned and our troops are being teleported away, Sir Zex said. And that is the end of Chapter 11. Chapter 12, Third POV. Impossible. I have that sac sacred in my house. That isn't good. Not at all, Issei thought to himself. Our troops are being teleported away. This is bad, Sir Zek said. In the skies of Ko, the peaceful Atomir was replaced by a huge magic circle through which numerous magicians entered the battlefield, forced teleporting and killing the troops frozen in time. We must rest... We must Rescue Reese's bishop if this continues. He is currently in the balance breaker state of his sacred gear. They might force him to even freeze us, as Azel says. Reese's bishop is dead. He was found without his eyes, possibly exercised, as Azel. This is someone else's doing, Sir Zex said. Everyone except Issei and Mordred look at Sir Zex with wide eyes. This is troublesome indeed, Michael says. <sighs> Why don't we just kill the mages, Folly said. Go ahead if you can, rival, Issei said. Folly then lets out a huge grin and then proceeds to fly towards the mages with his divine dividing. Balance breaker, Volley says. Vanishing dragon, balance breaker, Albion says. Azure colored light invades the battlefield, stunning the mages. Finding the opportunity, Volley then incinerates about six magi near him with a white beam. In retaliation, the other mages fire numerous spells of magic and witchcraft, which disappears into the thin air, approaches Volley. Divide, 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 Albion says. With Issei, scene break. Issei looks at Vali with a smirk, knowing that his rival isn't pathetic, while the faction leaders having discussed it between themselves. Looks like he enjoys his time, Issei says. Kiba, Zenovia, if you try and find anything about the person using Balorview, Sir Zek said, my pleasure helping you find, Lord Lucifer. Both Kiba and Zenovia rush towards the battlefield with weapons drawn out. Irina, help them find this if you can, Michael says. In the name of Lord Michael, I will do Lord Michael's bidding. 
E say, I'm going to kill some pests. Wanna join me, Mordred said? Nah, I'll stay here, but do enjoy your party, Issei says. I will, Mordred replied. Grinning like a madman, Mordred then summons her armor, and then sword rushing to kill some unfortunate magis. Are you sure she'll be fine, Sir Zek said. She will be, although I can't say for the mages, Issei said. Uh, Magus manages to sneak behind Mordred and tries to punch her in the face, but gets stabbed at his heart and dies instantly. I'm done playing. Time to get serious. She's gone serious. Nice. Dense red sparks fly everywhere from clarinet, causing some of them leaders to raise eyebrows in interest while others nearby feel a shiver down their spine. Feeling an awe powerful aura nearby, the feeling of dread overcame their mind as huge quantities of manas were accumulating around their eyes, scaring Sanji while gaining the interest of Vali who is far away. Claret, Mordred says. As she whispers those words, her helmet automatically detaches from her, causing her mana burst to shock everybody there except Issei, while the Magi while the Magi is near tremble at the might of her sword, which emits violent red sparks. This is her hatred for King Arthur, her mother. Never ending, nor faltering once she cuts down her enemies in a single slash of her past, her hatred. Blood Arthur, Mordred says. A huge beam of condensed demonic energy erupts from her sword, which then reflects towards the mages, annihilating all of them battlefe on the battlefield, the look of terror, surprise, disbelief, and shock. How the heck do they keep spawning? Every time I kill one another, one replaces them, Mordred says. Impressive. That was a mid-tier Satan class attack, Sir Zek said. Cheats. I fucking hate them, as Azel says. Whispers to nobody, which gets unnoticed by most of them except Issa, who cracks a small smile at his antics. Azay Grafia, did you find anything about the magic circles, Sir Zek said? The magic circle is connected by someone inside the barrier. Surely we have been betrayed, Grafia says. This isn't good. We have to find the one responsible for this, Michael says. A huge frown makes its way towards nearly everyone except Issei, who merely smirks at Volley, who is fighting a group of witches. Whoever broke into my house and stole Balorview is dead, Issei says. Incoming, 9 o'clock, Sir Zek replies. The moment Sir Zek's an explosion takes place in where the faction leaders, Issei and Frozen One, are. Darling, I must help him, Mordred said. The smoke clears while revealing a multicolored barrier encasing everyone which is seen supported by three great factions, leaders along with Seraphal. We have an uninvited guest, Gravia says. A yellowish magic circle identical from the one which Magi arrive appears next to Sir Zex from it. A woman seemingly at her late 20s with double D-cup assets wearing that what seems revealing of out tip appears from the magic circle but a strange thing in her eyes which seem to radiate power. The three great powers have casted a barrier, adorable and pathetic. Catarol, Catarol Leviathan, great daughter of the first devil king Leviathan. What do you want, Sir Zek says. Exactly the opposite of you want, of what you want, chaos. Kathra says. Kathra flashes her author in an attempt to scare the young devils, but then a sinister chuckle echoes through his air, everyone except a few, scaring everyone except a few. Chaos. What is chaos? Issei says. Issei then, with his eyes shadowed, asks a calm, soothing voice, which betrays no emotions, unnerving everyone greatly, making the descendant of Leviathan smirk. Who exactly are you, young man? You seem to be strong. I am strong, Issei says. Ha! It's funny of you, Catchley, to interrupt the peace conference and trying to take all of us down. If I can take down one of the three great powers, then I will give up my life for the true Satans to rule the world, Catchley says. And Zazel then burst out laughing, earning a cold glare from Kathria. Don't underestimate us. You are nothing compared to your great-grandfather. He'll be ashamed of you tarnishing your clan's name. You're nothing but a mere low-tier ultimate class being, as Zazel says. Kathria, don't do this. Do you want your life to be peacefully? Don't you want to live your life peacefully? We used to be friends, Seraphal said. Looking at Seraphal, who is sudden sad and smile, Kathria scowls and then shouts at her. You have no right to talk. Sarah, it's your fault that I'm like this. I was supposed to be the one there inherit Le Leviathan's lineage. Not some low-class sea tree. Today I will kill you and claim what's mine, Catria says. Seraphal smiles, falters an emotionless stare, and makes her way towards her. Can I take her one-on-one, -on -one? Azazel says. Sure, Seraphal replies. Hmm. What can you do, old bastard? I'll kill you, fallen scum, after I got away the new toy to check. Suddenly, her eyes then changes into something, different emitting deadly aura, startling the faction leaders while Zazel and Issei have their eyes open, unable to be able to believe what they had witnessed. Galti, I will fucking rip your eyes out and claim what's mine, bitch, Issei says. Leave this to me, I'll face her. 
And miss the sky both as Azel and Gatrel live with their 12 and 6 wings out, and are seen having intense stare down, every muscle prepared to react the moment a opponent's attacks. Ladies first, I guess, as Azel replies. You'll regret that, crow, Kathra says. Says the bat, as Azel replies. With a shitty eating grin, Azazel taunts his foe, earning an ice cold Claire from Kathria. I'll go first. Azazel unfurls his wings and proceeds to throw numerous light projectiles at Kathria, but the projectiles abruptly comes to a stop, frozen midair. Smart. Uh, I'll just overclock your stolen sacred gear till you can't use it anymore. Pretty simple, Azazel says. With a snap from his fingers, a about a thousand light projectiles at very high speeds change towards him. Kathria desperately tries to. Stop them with Forbidden Bower View, but a dozen of the projectile hits are creating a small explosion, but then smoke goes off revealing a furious Catrol with a magic guard raised split second before the projectiles could reach her. Go fuck yourself, Catrol, Catrol replies. A furious Catrol then raises a demonic pulse of compressed water at Azazel, single-handedly evades, then fires a light sphere which gets deflected by Catria. You act like a cliche villain from animes where the villain curses the hero and then dies pathetic, as Azel says. I won't let you underestimate me, my leviathan heritage. I will kill you here and now, Catherine Oliver says. Don't keep boasting about yourself. Talk less. Fight like a crazed dragon, Issei says. Well said, Drake says. Numerous spears made out of water materialize out of thin air. And charges towards Azazel, who summons a sword made out of light, then proceeded to deflect them. The water spheres blast upon impact, with his sword forcing him back, but Azazel retaliates by summoning a huge light sphere, which his own launching its sword at the Mount Descendant, who managed to conjure a magic shield to protect her in time. Not bad for a low tier ultimate class, but pathetic for a devil descendant, Azazel says. Gritting her teeth, the Leviathan descendant creates about hundreds of ice sharpens from thin air, and Azazel rushes towards him. But then, the fallen leader of appears behind her and slams his fist into her gut, with his holy aura causing her light out a scream and fall into the ground creating a crater. Impossible. I am the true heir of the Devil King Leviathan. How can I be reduced to such pathetic state by a mere fallen? No. I refuse to accept this. I will kill you. I swear on the dead Devil Kings, Katra says. Pathetic. You are a manipulation of water and ice nowhere near your great-grandfathers or your grandfathers. You're the weakest leviathan, I pity you, Azazel says. Suddenly, the leviathan descendant lets out a scowl, then an ocean blue aura surrounds her, earning a chuckle from Azazel. I'll make you take back those words, Castilla said. Water then surrounds Catrilla by creating a huge 20 meter torrent of water, which increases gradually. Still, it's just mid clear ultimate class and power, Azazel says. Behold, the greatest spell of the Leviathans, and drown in despair I shall kill you, sea of serpent of the end. The oceanic blue aura suddenly disappears, confusing everyone but then Issei, as Zazel Serzex burst out laughing. You're pathetic. You wasn't able to fully use the true power of the Leviathan. You're a disgrace, Issei says. Issei yells, making a catch of the tick. Well, I guess she musters her coldest glare and who shrugs it off. Ha! Ah, you're hilarious! You must be kidding! Azazel says. From afar, Mordred is seen, killing many magi looking at the battle between Azazel and Catchall in the air. Insolent. Well, foolishly arrogant when you clearly don't have the right to be arrogant, Mordred said. Catchall, unable to contain her fury any longer, lets out a loud pitched scream, her eyes the glow bright purple, while Azazel raised his eyebrows a bit. Unknown to the other, grits his teeth pissed at Catchall for stealing Balorview from his house. Touched it all. Balance break. Her eyes starts to glow an airy purple earring. A grin from Azazel, who throws a light spear, which disappears in a thin air a moment it reaches Catherall. You've achieved the balance breaker for Forbidden Balor View. Are you the one who killed Gasper? Shame that I have to kill you. I have fun researching your sacred gear, Forbidden and Fade Balor View, the beast. The balance breaker of Balor View allows you to control time and darkness in your surroundings. It's powerful ability indeed. I did not kill the vermin. I got this as a mere gift, Catherall said. From someone. Now die. Suddenly a dark aura surrounds Catherall, then included the darkness turns Catherall into a five meter tall monster with dragon head, making Issei grin like a madman. Didn't expect this. You had some cards up your sleeve, but still a high tier ultimate class. You're still a child compared to me, as Azazel says. The monster roars and unleashes a torrent of dark flames, to which Azazel responds by conjuring a holy barrier. Contouring the flames, but the Catrol slams her newly formed, tail at Azazel throwing him off guard, but then Azazel retaliates by throwing a huge orb of concentrated holy energy, earning a scream from Catrol as it collides with her. Die, bastard, I'm done playing, Azazel replies. 
An eerie bluish flame manifests on the fallen leader's palm, which gains the look of curiosity and shock from the others who are witnessing the battle. Divine as her flame of eradication, the flame in his palm then turns into a steam of holy fire, which rushes toward Catherall in a blink of eye, creating a huge explosion. As the smoke clears, a heavily burned and battered capsule is found lying unconscious in a huge crater with her clothes torn in different places. She's alive, you can interrogate her, I don't care, Azazel says. With a shrug, Azazel lands on the ground while Azazel while Sir Zex Force teleports to Catchall, who knows where, but, but teleporting a faint flash of light is seen. Thank you, Azazel, for keeping her alive. I want to interrogate her about the death of Gaspar Volatine in the Balor view, Sir Zex said. Too bad for them since I extracted her sacred gear just now, Ise said. You should be aware that she will not die, but she must have lost a good portion of her life force, Drake said. I am aware, Ise said. Finally, one of the old Satan faction's leaders have been caught. Michael says. Leave this to me. Your magic girl Leviathan will make her pay with a twinkle, Seraphal says. Suddenly the time freezes disappears as the once frozen Sona, Rias, and her parage look at the now heavily damaged Co Academy with wide eyes. What is the meaning of this? Sona says. Don't be like that, Sona. Your sister will take care of this with a twinkle, Seraphal replied. Are you cosplaying the magic girl Milky Spiral 7? Mordred said. The moment these worlds left the Penadron lips, Sona, Rias, and her Proj look at her with wide eyes while Zazel, Sir Zex, Issa, and Grafia smile nervously. Confused by the sudden reaction of the others, Mordred tilts her head on the only to be met with Seraphal just centimeters away from her, giving her a noticeable glint on her eyes and a wide smile creeping out of her bit. You have watched Miracle Girl Leviathan show? Seraphal says. Mm, yes, I have, Mordred said. She's doomed, Sir Zex replied. In a swift moment, Seraphal tackles Mordred into a hug, causing them to lose their balance and fall down onto the floor. Yay, I got a new friend. Say, can we have a nice dinner together and have some girl-to-girl -girl action, Seraphal said. Uh? Mordred replies, if you wish, we can have a hot threesome between your mate and me. Wouldn't that be great? He's quite handsome, Seraphal said. Mordred then blushes a fifty shades of red, while Seraphal keeps on her nuzzling her hair, earning a few looks of pity but everyone except Sona who is seen in a similar state as Mordred, and Issei, who is seen motionless, unable to process the words of the Devil King. And the strongest Red Dragon Emperor has finally created a harem of beautiful women, Drake said. I think you have broken them, Lady Leviathan, Gravia says. Lucky bastard, Azazel replies. No fair! The new student first got engaged with the president, now he's getting her big sister, Saji says. As the poor bastard, aka Saji, weeps to himself, causing misfortune to Issei's skill on attracting women, but unknown voice replies to him in his mind. Powerful dragons tend to attract many mates and foes. The way you are right now, even a low-class dragon will pummel you, becoming strong hatchling. That is your only choice. Hello? Who's there? Am I hallucinating? The voice then vanishes without a trace of them, making believe that it was hallucinating. Something's wrong, Azazel said. Suddenly a huge magic blast hits Azazel, pummeling him while creating a huge shockwave. I must have been getting old if you can hit me, Folly. Azazel says. The smoke dissipates, revealing an unharmed Azazel, and Folly flying above Azazel in his balance breaker. Sorry, Azazel. Things look better on this side, Volley said. Volley, so it's you who betrayed us. I did expect this, Issei says. I should have kept you in check, Azazel replies. Issei Hyodo. My arch rival, prepare yourself for your glorious battle to the death, Volley says. And that is the end of chapter 12. And that is where we're going to stop for now. Once again, Thank you to Rob Block, Rob the King, Jorge Alvarez slash George Alvarez, Atomic Warlord 58 Toner, and Lachlan Yates for becoming a balance breaker. Thank you so much for you became the highest membership tier. That is literally the highest membership tier. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for the support. I cannot thank you enough. What if East Day Awakening the Boosted Gear early will be a whole entire movie segment and yes, I am working on it at the moment. What if Naruto betrayed and what if Goku was the God of Destruction will be released as well very, very soon. What if Goku was the God of Destruction Part 3 on Ann Palpowski and what if Naruto was betrayed Part 1, that is an hour long special, will be released soon as well thank you so much for the support it's been absolutely amazing truly is a blessing i'm able to cut like have this community like i cannot thank you enough like it's been apps it truly is a dream if you guys want to i want to know something do you guys want to see different videos on on my other channels assuming like like just talking about anime in general you know what i mean like just hear me talk about something because if you're interested in that it'll either be on ampopowski or fallen dxd as of right now so please subscribe to those channels they will be down in the description below without further ado spartanic arts dxd 
out. Remember, let's try to hit a thousand likes. All right, peace out. What's up, guys? It's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei was betrayed and became a god? Part five. Let's try to hit 500 to 600 likes. And if you guys want to know exactly when I upload such my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. A special thank you to Rob the King, Jorge Alvarez, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58. Quizzical Cody Tolkek Sun God, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, Daybreak, VR Wolf, hashtag 2347, Sinrar Q, Jordan Pacho, and Mazaku. Thank you so much for joining the Balance Breaker tier. I cannot thank you enough for the amazing sport you guys are showing the channel. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into what if EC was betrayed and became a god, part 5. Chapter 13 Issei's Identity gets revealed. Third POV, now with Issei and Volley. Issei Hiodo, my arch rival, prepare yourself for a glorious battle to the death, Volley says. The moment those words escaped his lips, everyone instantly looks at the twin dragons with surprise, shock, and other emotions at the revelation while Issei has an emotionless gaze. Fixed on the white one, but one could feel the waves of killing intent seeping through the air, like a wave of a tsunami seeping through the shore, destroying everything on its sight. Issei just sits there in silence. Rias says, Ah, I Issei. I am engaged to the former pervert? This doesn't make any sense! How did he become smarter than me? Sona said. With tears steaming down her face, Rias musters all the strength she can and whispers under her breath, which gets noticed by Mordred, who looks at Issei with concern with evident on her eyes. How did you find out? Issei looks with a bloodshot gaze. His golden orbs gazing into Vali's eyes. Issei mumbles under his breath, but devoid of any emotions, causing Volley to chuckle while feeling a bit scared. If you want to blame anyone for this, blame Orphis, the Ouroboros dragon, Sir Zek says. That confirms my suspicions about things. I came to know recently I've been informed about a terrorist group organizing some of the most dangerous individuals from crazy lunatics to righteous people. Ah, uh, yes, they call themselves as the Chaos Brigade, a group hell bent on destroying the supernatural world. Guess whose leader? It's Orphis, Azazel replies. At the revelation of the new group, hell bent on destruction, everyone looks at Volley with their mouths agape, with the exception of Issei, Volley, and Azazel. What's the Ouroboros Dragon, President? Saji says. The Ouroboros Dragon, Orphis, better known as the Infinite Dragon God, one of the most powerful beings. It is said that even you know who can't scratch it. A true monster, in my opinion. It's rumored that it represents infinity itself, Sona says. A chill goes down the Vitra Holder's spine at the revelation of the Infinite Dragon Loli. Orphis has been watching your life. From the day you were born into it, you were a special, and the only time... It wasn't able to was the day, Issei Hiyoda, the day Issei Hiyoda was rumored to be dead. But then it sensed a strong power, one identical to yours, one screaming destruction and domination from Ko the day you disappeared, and then it sensed said power days ago in this city. Issei, in his head, all right, take a deep breath. Relax, just relax, Orphis. I should have known. My bad. She must have been the one who stole the Balor view. Does this mean Volley and Orphis know about me being the supreme concept? No. He himself said Orphis only sensed the concept destruction, but Volley didn't use the term concept. This means Orphis knew about me being the third dragon god, but chose to hide it from others. Orphis must have not informed me being a dragon god. In short, Orphis doesn't know about the multiverse or the supreme concept as death said so. But Orphis must know about the concept of destruction inside me. Hmm, not as bad as I thought, but I think I should pay Orphis a visit, Issei says in his head. Issei, is that you, Rhea says? I am not Issei Hyoto, not anymore. I am Issei Kodamine, adopted son of Kiri Kodamine, Issei says. With a shrug, Issei looks at Rhea's dead in her eyes, his golden orbs peering into her eyes. This doesn't make any sense, Saji says. Mordred just sits there in silence. I once was known as Issei Hyoto, but I have discarded that identity a long time ago, and you, Volley Lucifer, you are playing with things beyond your knowledge, Issei says. Volley immediately tenses at the name, which earns few shock stares at the white dragon, even insane mouse, Seraphal Leviathan lost her composure. What? How did you... Volley says. 
I can literally feel the blood of Lucifer in you. And since you somehow, with the help of fucking Loli, ruined my identity, I decide to do the same, Issei replied. With a heavenly sigh, Folly inflows his wings, revealing eight dark-colored devil wings, earning a gasp from the others. I am Volley Lucifer, the grandson of the former devil king Lucifer. I am a half-blood. My mother was a human while my father was the grandson of the former devil king Lucifer, Folly says. A half-blood. We didn't know about this, Sir Zex said. Dear Lord, Michael replies. Since you are a half-blood, you managed to inherit divine dividing, which is astonishing. To have blood of the true devil king Lucifer and the host of the white dragon. You weren't supposed to exist, Azazel says. Azazel looks at Volley with a grin plastered on his face. I prefer the term miracle, Volley says. Too much secrets revealed on one day. I want to go home, Sajja replies. This era is unique, a descendant of the former Devil King Lucifer wielding the Divine Dividing, making him the strongest White Dragon Emperor in history. While the Red Dragon Emperor is a powerful dragon with his past shrouded in mystery, an anomaly without any true identity, making him the strongest Red Dragon Emperor in history. Absolutely fabulous, Azazel thought to himself. When this is all over, I want answers to this mess. Wait. Hold on, if Issei's the Red Dragon Emperor in a Royal Dragon, then I can easily convince my parents the marriage between us, Sona says to herself. I should have stayed at the mansion, Mordred said. Issei, why did you leave me alone? I thought you were dead. I found your pieces. How are you alive, Rhea said. Hearing this, Issei groans in irritation while Issei volley chuckles. I am not your boy toy, neither am I your servant. I have every right to be free as a respected dragon, Issei says. I want... Answers. This is confusing as hell, Sir Zex says. Issei Hyoto, I, Volley then says. Issei quickly raises his voice to stop Volley from whatever he was about to say. Could you please refrain from addressing me as Issei Hyoto? I have long forsaken that name. Call me Issei Kodamine, Issei says. Very well, Issei Kodamine. I carry the blood of the Devil King while you carry that of a powerful dragon. I'd say we're the best heavenly dragons to ever exist, Volley says. Indeed. I want to know how this will end. Who will win, the strongest red dragon or the white dragon? Let's see, but I am sure my partner will be victorious given his intense training regime, Albion says. You're underestimating my host, Albion, Drake replies. Let's see, Drake. Let's see, Albion says. Are these two destined to fight or something, Saji says? Hearing Saji, aka Fool's dumb question, literally everyone avert their gaze at him, making him nervous. Saji, I can't believe that you don't know about the heavenly dragons and their history, Sona says. With a sigh, Sona shakes her head in disappointment, causing her to scratch his head. This is ridiculous. Every supernatural being knows about the battle, and we are praised and feared for our past actions, Drake said. A really long time ago, two dragons, immensely powerful, were born far away from each other. They were Drake Koch and Albion Gwilbur. Both dragons were born in power to kill gods. They were praised as heavenly dragons. They roamed the world with the intention of gaining power, fighting. They killed the gods who dared challenge them, thus ending many pantheons. But then they found each other, and fought into their surprise both were equally matched, and their powers didn't affect each other. They fought each other as rivals, developing techniques such as boost, divide, but then during the great time of the Great War, the dragon faction decided to remain neutral. But then the red dragon and white dragon fought each other and missed the battlefield. They killed millions of devils, fallen angels, and who were fallen angels who were nearby and also proceeded to wreak havoc on the realm of killing countless grim reapers. But Hades, the god of death, interfered, which annoyed the dragons, who then returned the underworld, which was the primary war ground. The three factions were forced to deal with the rampaging dragons and formed a truce to kill the heavenly dragons. Countless lives were lost. The day known as the Great Genocide. Lucifer and Leviathan were killed by Drake, while Onzimisus and Beelzebub were killed by Albion. And then, you, who appeared, and he fought... The dragons, who were already weakened as they were fighting 
each other and had a fight with the mobs. You know who managed to seal dragons inside the sacred gears with his dying breath, and thus the two dragons have already battled each other using their host as their vessel for the sake of their rivalry. But don't forget that the two heavenly dragons were one of the strongest beings to ever exist. They butchered multiple gods in the past, made Hades the god of death terrified of them, killed nearly three different races, killed our four original devil king, gravely wounded you know who is succumbed to his injuries. As Suna finishes a huge lecture on the two dragons, Sachi falls to his knees with a terrified expression while everyone except Issei and Volley look uncomfortable. Ha <laughs> ha, it feels good to be praised. You, Citri Devil, are a person worthy of my acknowledgement, but Drake wasn't as good as me. I see, you're still as grumpy as ever, Drake said. What did you call me, you boob sucker? Albion says. I said you're grumpy, ass licker, Drake replied. Why, you insane bastard, Albion says. You have no right to talk to me, ass muncher, Drake says. Albion and Drake then continue to insult each other's sexual preferences, causing everyone a sweat drop at the rapid insults between the two most powerful beings to exist. I need a can of Coke, Issei says. Phew, I didn't expect our partners to verbally insult each other's preferences, Volley said. I want to die, Issei says. Dear Cloud, please swallow me, Volley says. So are you going to stay there all day or man up and fight, Issei says. Volley scoffs at Issei's remark, making Issei smirk, as a crimson red aura and a zerb blue aura fills the air as they clash with each other, pursuing back everyone, pushing back everyone, but Sir Zex, a bloody red aura of his own, prevents the auras of the heavenly dragons nearing him. At this rate, they're going to have a fight. The school will be ruined, Sona said. Perhaps we can't do anything. An enraged heavenly dragon isn't a sight to see, Grafia. Maintain a strong bounded field, which prevents any being lower or equal to a lower tier Satan class, Sir Zek says. On it, Lord Lucifer, Grafia replies. Grafia then erects a translucent dome around the academy. My fears have come true. Dear Lord, bestow us in your power to survive this, Michael says. Back with the two dragon emperors, the auras intensifies, creating huge cracks on the floor, scaring the shit out of Saji and the two hers. Come on, show me what you got, Folly says. Let's fight in our base forms for a while, shall we? Issei says. In an instant, Volley closes the distance with Issei, throwing numerous punches at Issei who matches them with his own barrage of punches. This goes for half a minute with neither managing to overpower the other's onslaught. Not bad, not bad at all, Issei says. I guess you're a close combat type fighter. This makes a lot of things easier, since I have a lot of mana reserves while you obviously haven't trained them, Volley says. Divide! Boost! Volley then jumps back, regaining his footing as Issei chuckles like a madman. Why don't you try that out, Lucy? Issei says. Enraged at Issei's words, Volley then dashes forward at Issei, only for Issei to sidestep and catch his fist, delivering a punch to his guts, to which Volley retaliates by moving back. Perish, Volley says. Volley then proceeds to fire a huge projectile, brimming with an unusual demonic energy. Darker than the normal ones, Issei then successfully dodges, but then Volley released his wings and flies above Issei, who just groans in irritation. I'll make you pay for revealing my identity to ones I despise, Issei said. Boost! Times four. Twin dragon shot. Issei says. Issei then fires two concentrated red orbs, bimming with mana at Volley, but then... Divide! Divide! Times four. The orb disappears into thin air, but then Volley notices that Issei is nowhere to be found and then turns around to be met with a kick to his face, sending him crashing to the ground, making blood flow from his now damaged nose. Boost! Divide! Divine dividing then glows a deep blue in color while releasing an Erzor Org and grin from Issei. Volley. We can't be playing around. This gear has reached its limit for dividing. I suggest using Balance Breaker, Albion says. But that doesn't mean that Volley can't use Divide. He can just expel excuse excesses aura, thus increasing his limits, but then he'll reach his limits at the point if he goes on, Azazel says. Heh, <laughs> more. I want more, Volley says. You're not half bad, Volley, Issei replies. Kick his ass, Issei, Mordred said. Boost! In a blink... Issei appears behind Volley, catching him off guard and throws him a sucker punch to which Volley responds by a hook kick, which manages to push Issei back a few meters. Dear Satan, they're capable of this without getting serious, Sona says. Suddenly a beam of demonic energy hits Issei, creating a sandstorm blocking others' view of Issei. Divide. Boost! The moment Divine Divine proceeds to 
uh, divide Issei Sealed Power, Drake springs into action by boosting. I can sh I can just destroy him if I release a few of my seals. If I release them all, Volley will surely die even if he tries to divide once. But doing that isn't worth. This guy has potential to become strong. I'll spare him, but that doesn't mean I should give up, Issei says. And as Issei is in his own world thinking about things, Volley utilizes this in situation and tries to deliver a punch to his face. But Issei, due to his draconic instincts, manages to evade the attack and then delivers a roundhouse kick, sending the white dragon flying. Time to take things up another level. A bright light invades the area, causing everyone to shield their eyes. Soon as the light disappears, revealing Volley and his balance breaker. Vanishing Dragon. Balance Breaker, Albion says. Let's fight. The way dragons fight. Divide! Times six. Suddenly, Volley rushes towards Issei at unbelievable speeds. Issei off guard and delivers a wheel kick to which Issei narrowly dodges, but then Sucker Punch comes crashing onto Issei, slamming him towards the ground, causing him a standstorm. Well, I think I overestimated you, rival, Volley says. Has the fight ended? Saji says. No, this is nothing but a prelude to the actual fight, Serzek says. With his eyes narrowed, the Crimson Satan looks at the Sandstorm with a calculating look. The hell? I thought it was over, Saji says. Will the Red Dragon be victorious? It's necessary for the Red One to be victorious, as the White One is with the Chaos Brigade, Michael says. Issei is childish. He hates losing. I am also childish, and I hate losing. That's how I know, Serzek said. Even I didn't know about Issei Hyodo and Issei Kodamai being the same person. Hyo no, Kodamai, Issei, the Red Dragon Emperor and the Hunter of Red Plains. You are a miracle that wasn't supposed to exist, Sir Zek says to himself. The sandstorm then settles down, revealing Issei with his battle attire torn and having a bruise on the place Volley punched him, shocking Volley while Sony and Mordred unconsciously sigh in relief. Welts Dragon, Balance Breaker, Drake says. As Issei enters the Balance Breaker, a huge crimson aura forms a shellet of red dragon, causing e Volley to sweat silently while the others erect a barrier to protect them from the monstrous aura. Boost! Time 7. Crimson Firestorm, Issei says. Albion, Reflect! The huge firestorm conjured by Issei gets reflected, but then Volley is met with a roundhouse kick to his face, slightly cracking his helmet, which gets repaired instantly. Divide! Divide! Times three. Drake, boost about five times and transfer them to my nervous system, Issei says. You want me to boost your nervous impulse? Thus increasing your reflexes. This is extremely dangerous, Drake said. Just do it, Issei replied. Boost! Transfer! Is there wave impact, Folly says. A huge beam with blue spark searches towards Issei at unbelievable speeds, but to Issei, the beam seems to be slower thanks to his boosted draconic reflexes. Force barrier, Issei says. At an instant, Issei manages to erect a transparent barrier in which the beam explodes, creating a huge explosion after smoke subdues Issei, and above a crater six meter long with second degree burns. Erecting that barrier was definitely useful, Issei said. Divide! Times four, Albion says. In an instant, Volley closes the distance with Issei and tries to blast Issei with a draconic spell. At the point-blank range, but Issei tries a new technique. Drag, rapidly boost and increase my defense, Issei says. Boost! Times ten. A huge blast takes place midair, blowing back Volley due to recoil, but Issei is unfazed by the attack, earning a frown from Volley. I underestimated you. You aren't weak, Volley says. Hanukle, Issei says. A swirl of holy aura accumulates around Issei, causing Volley to get uncomfortable while Michael looks at the sword with curiosity and shock. The forgotten holy sword of purification, Michael says. Boost! Times ten. Divide! Times five. Issei then suddenly disappears and reappears behind Volley, delivers a horizontal slash, breaking his balance breaker while Volley gets flung back and bleeds a little from his mouth. You completely destroyed my balance breaker. That's what I expected you for my rival. Volley says, you're good, Issei says. A bright light shines and soon disappears, revealing Volley in his balance breaker form, flying. I thought that fight was over, Saji says. Dragons fight till neither one is standing, Subaki says. Indeed. We are dragons are prideful creatures and will fight till the death for the sake of our pride. This is how we dragons battle, partner. The mysterious voice before echoes through Sanji's mind, causing him to look beside him in confusion. Now with the two dragons, supremacy strike, domination jab, divide, divide, boost, boost. 
a Azer Blue Aura and a Red Aura in Vullet Volley and Ise, respectively. Both of the unbelievable speeds ram into each other, trying to gain superiority between each other. Shocked at the intensity of the fight, Rias tries to intervene, thinking that her dear pawn is in danger, but Sir Zek stop her. Rias, if you try to interfere, their aura will burn you into a crisp, Sir Zek said. Reluctantly, Rias stays away while biting her lips in frustration, causing Sona and Mordra to look at him in irritation. Time to end this, Ise says. Boost! Times 20! Transfer! Soon, a green aura transfers to the Holy Sword, causing the Golden Aura to significantly increase in size Then Issei appears next to Folly. It delivers multiple slashes, breaking the Balance Breaker, and sends Folly crashing into the floor, with blood plurting out of his cuts on body. The battle is over. You fought violently, Issei says. Why didn't you use your full powers, Folly said. I have made a promise to Drag that I will defeat the White Dragon with his power, not mine, Issei says. Struggling to get up, Volley looks at Issei with a battle-hungry grin as Issei walks away from him. You wouldn't dare, Albion says. Oh, but I can. Doing this will destroy the whole town. It will kill innocent people, Albion said. Volley says, I don't care. <clears throat> As Issei walks away from Volley, towards Mordred, who is the opposite direction. At last, it's over. It's currently 12 p.m. Fuck, Mordred says. Finally, my fiancé came out alive and victorious, Sona says. Volley says, I, who shall awaken. A heavy, dense Izzer blue aura erupts from Volley, causing Issei to turn around and look at Volley dead in his eye. But all the faction leaders look at the scene with them somber, looks recalling their past memories. Even the crazy Azazel and insane Seraph all look at them and worry. Don't you dare, Issei says. Issei then looks at Volley, fear evident in his golden orbs. And that is the end of chapter 13. Chapter 14, The Awakening. I, who shall awaken, Volley starts. A heavenly dense orzo blue aura erupts from Volley, causing Issei to turn around and look at Volley dead in his eye. But all the faction leaders look at the scene with somber looks recalling their past memories. Even crazy Azazel and Saint Seraph will look at them in worry. Don't you dare, Issei says. Issei then looks at Folly, fear evident in his golden orbs. Volley, don't do this. Do you want to repeat the same mistakes that my past host did, Albion says. Azur blue orbs appear from his balance breaker, an um, armor admitting an ominous aura. Feeling the ominous deep blue aura released by Volley, the two Harris and Parage members gasp over air, unable to deal with heavy aura, but the most effective one is Saji, who is seen twitching on the ground in agony while whimpering a bit, causing Issei to look at them with concern for Saji and Sona's Parage. Sir Zex, can you increase the barrier around the academy to the deity class? That's the only way the innocent people will make it out alive, Issei says. I sure can, Sir Zex says. The barrier suddenly turns to a faint red in color, indicating Sir Zex powering up the barrier, but then both Michael and Azazel combine their powers to establish a barrier protecting themselves and the other devils. And the heavenly dragon who has taken the principles of supremacy from God, Volley says. The vanishing dragon balance breaker armor releases a monstrous aura responding to Volley's chant. Partner, Drake says. If he activates the drive, I'll be destroyed in an instant unless I release some of my seals. But if I use Trace On, the faction leaders will be able to deduce my identity as the hunter of the Red Plains. Sir Zex already knows of this, but if Heaven finds out, the peace conference will be ruined and they will declare war against the dragons as I massacred the first Heaven, Issei says to himself. Irina, I order you to leave this place, Michael says. Yes, Lord Michael, should I gather reinforcements? No need for that, Michael says. Rius, Sona, I'm going to force teleport yourselves along with your parages. This isn't the sight for youngsters to see, Sir Zex says. But, brother, but... Sir Zex instantly force teleports the young devils in Irina to an unspecified location. I envy the infinite. I pursue the dream, Volley says. Fine, if you wish to taint your hands in the blood of innocence like my former host, go ahead, Albion says. The former devil's descendant's voice turns more deeper and primal like the dragon's, while deep blue aura completely overwhelms Issei's crimson aura. Issei, I'll help you, Mordred says. Mordred tell, uh, tries to approach her beloved, Aza but Azazel stops her. Hey, Mordred, right? Don't go after them. If you do, you'll die, which I am sure your husband will not be happy about, Azazel says. I shall become the dragon of supremacy, Volley says. The vanishing dragon balance breaker grows, a pair of extra wings while his tails and claws increase. Don't do this. You'll die along with thousands of humans in the town unaware of anything happening here, Issei says. Partner, it's no use. We have to do something before it's too late, Drake says. 
this drive. I can never forget about it. I have seen many who have fallen into the curse, and it has always been disastrous, Sir Zek says. I am not afraid of Volley. He can use his vast draconic reserves to sustain the drive for about 10 minutes, but since he's a bit exhausted, he'll be able to maintain it for about 5 minutes at best. I hope the Red One survives, as Azel said. What exactly is this drive? Issei didn't tell me about a single thing about this, Mordred says. And I shall take you to the limits of White Paradise, Volley says. A very intense flash covers Volley, and the light disp dissipates. A colossal white dragon at the height of 45 meters, radiating sheer power, scorching the land below the buildings with its aura, earning a look from utter terror from Mordred at the dragon. Divide times ten. The white dragon suddenly slams Issei with his tail at unbelievable speed, breaking Issei's balance breaker upon impact, while also causing Issei to cough up blood. It's now or never. Release restraints. Mana. Issei mumbles those words, which manages to go unheard by everyone. Let's do it, but beware, but beware. Don't drown in the curse, partner. If he uses his draconic powers to sustain, I'll use my hatred for ones who treated me like trash. Oh, past hopes of the Red One, respond to my hatred. Give me power. Remove your curse and abide me. I, who am about to awaken, Issei starts. A deep red-colored aura erupts from the boosted gear as if responding towards its wielder, earning the attention of the White Dragon, which doesn't attack but patiently awaits for Issei to complete the chant. It's starting. The time has finally come. Numerous green orbs appear besides Issei, which a pale human voice is heard. And the heavenly dragon who has stolen the principles of domination from God, Issei starts again. The crimson aura intensifies, making earth itself tremble under the might of the two dragons. It had always been, always and forever, the voices of the humans behind him. He is using his hatred to power the drive, unlike Folly. This is crazy, but for him to maintain this by overcoming the curse, the negative feelings of hundreds past hosts, just using his hatred, he must have suffered a lot, as Azel said. The past hosts, they are responding to his hatred. They are helping him. Finally, you old geezers are providing to be useful, Drake says. I laugh at the infinite, and I grieve the dream, Issei says. What the world desires, what the world rejects, the voices of women, men, children alike are heard echoing through the places sending chills up everyone's spine. I shall become the Red Dragon of Domination, Issei says. Has always been power, has always been love. No matter the occasion, you always choose the path to ruin. Slowly, Issei's hands changes into a dragon's clump, and I shall sink you into the depths of crimson purgatory. As the words are said, Issei is a huge green light envelops the surrounding ones, concentrated hard enough to see the transformation that took place. A colossal red dragon, at the height of 45 meters with large fangs matching the size of the white dragon. A gigantic, dense amount of red-colored aura, screaming the concept of domination, surrounds the said dragon, thus blowing up all the building's academy into dust and in the attention of the other dragon. Ugh. He says dragon, boost times 50, divide times 20. With a ferocious roar, Issa aka the red dragon charged towards Vali aka the white dragon, breaking the sound barrier in which process is possibly moving at Mach, at Mach 2. The white dragon successfully evades the attack but bites the red dragon in his neck. Enraged, the red dragon fires a red colored beam from its mouth, sending the white dragon Feel my anger, my hatred, can you feel it, Issei says. Boost times 50. Heavenly flames of domination, Issei says. A dragon made out of flames appears around Issei in a hot, concentrated blast. A dragon fear, imbued with principles of domination, hits Vali, sourcing his outer scales. The time is further reduced to the attack. At best, you have two minutes. Any longer, you'll lose your mind, Albion says. I can feel it. Hatred, anger, sorrow. I think I can't do this, this, but I feel staring the abyss at itself. The curse. It's so strong, I see now the past hopes die in their agony. Pain, hatred, and anger. It's suffocating. The Red One must be going through this just like I am, Volley says. The Red One, he isn't using his magical reserves, but instead he is using his own negative emotions to bend the will of the curse. This mustn't be possible. His hatred has surpassed hundreds of past O's curse, but even he will have his limit. Partner, I never accepted to say this, but let's flee. We'll fight him when he is 
We are strong enough, Albion says. I won't flee from a good fight, Volley replies. Divide! Times 50. In an instant, the air next to Issei starts to rapidly crystallize, creating a huge crystal around the dragon, trapping it in size. Divide times 20. Boost! Times 50. Transfer! The giant layer of suddenly cracks on multiple sides. Then with a loud roar, Issei's seal breaks, revealing a pissed red dragon. Volley. The timer has been reduced from 1 minute to 20 seconds due to the usage of my original spells. We cannot win this. The red one may still have about 10 to 60 minutes. We cannot win, Albion says. Boost! Times 20. Transfer! The red dragon suddenly releases its wings and dashes towards the white dragon, now reaching the speeds of Mach 5, checking the white one off guard, and delivers a solid punch to his gut, creating a huge shockwave, making the barrier to shake and then proceeds to reverse kick the white dragon in its neck, penetrating the thick scales and draw blood. Two, Albion says, let's make a deal. An eye for an eye, a dragon for a dragon, Volley says. You have one minute. Good luck, Albion says. Huge amounts of deep blue aura burst from the white dragon, causing the red one to lose its footing. Restart, Albion says. The white dragon glows in erupt blue, causing the red dragon to fire a blast into the air in frustration. Partner, it seems the white one made a sacrifice to gain power. Partner, are you still there? Drake says. I am fine, Drake. How much time do I have left? 40 minutes. If you're using your negative... If you're using your negativity, but if you use your mana at this rate after losing a part of the seal, I'd say you'll get an additional hour or two, Drake says, with the faction leaders now. Inside the protective barrier, conjured by Michael Azazel and Grafia, Mordred bites her lips in frustration and worry, while Sir Zex looks a bit tired but still keeps on maintaining a deity class barrier which separates the city of Ko and the academy. Sir Zex, do you want me to help you maintain the barrel? Seraphal says. Lady, shut, shut, shut up, Sir Zex says. Aw, you're no fun, Seraphal replies. Sir Zex groans while restraining the huge urge to facepalm himself, noticing the chirpy Seraphal. Mordred looks at her and confused. Hey, weirdo, you're Azazel, right? Tell me, is she always like this? Mordred says. You have no idea. She thinks I think she may have some physiological issues because she is obsessed with her younger sister, Sona, Sea Tree. Obsessed with magical curls, and who the fuck can remain calm when the two heavenly dragons fight each other using the drive? Azazel says. Indeed, Mordred says. You're awfully calm about this situation. I don't find it amusing, Blondie, Azazel says. With a sheepish smile, Mordred looks at the two dragons fighting each other. It's simple. I have faith on my darling. He made a promise to me the day he confessed his love for me. No matter what he takes, he'll stand by my side no matter what happens. He said that he will always be there for me and would even kill thousands of gods to prove his love for me, Mordred says. With a heartbeat smile, Mordred looks at a ferocious battle while earning the attention of everyone. Some looked at her in awe, happiness, while some looked at her with shock. This girl. It's like I'm looking at an old mirror of myself, Grafia says. Ah, true love fascinates me more than anything, Michael replies. Man. Looks like you got yourself a woman, Issei. I don't care if you're Issei Kodamine or Hyodo. You are my friend. As long as you don't turn into a cruel person, I'll help you. No, I must help you. At least repay my debt that I owe you, Sir Zex said. Quite amusing, Azazel replies. With Issei, I can't win this battle unless I use it at my disposal, Folly says. Divide! Times 20, half dimension. <clears throat> Issei's huge aura starts to shrink in size and then suddenly, but then the white dragon seeming to disappears and appears behind Issei and uses his claws to attack Issei, which provides to be futile as a part of the scale gets ripped off, and the red dragon causing Issei to try to counter by his own claws to rip the white one's dragon scales, which works but only to be met with a point blank rage dragon shot, stunning him. Shit, this is bad. Wait, that's it, Issei says. Under normal circumstances, you'd be dead if you do that, but I think you'll survive, Drake says. In a desperate attempt, Issei manages to hold off the rip scale of the white tail, which has a deep blue crystal imbued in it. Suddenly, Issei takes the orb and places it into his chest, shocking everyone who was witnessing it. You wouldn't, Volley said. Boost! Times nine! Transfer! The blue orb suddenly merges with center green orb of Boosted gear causing the various orbs in his body to simultaneously flash from green to blue. You fool! Do you have any idea what would happen if you combine the two opposing forces? You'll die, as Azazel says. After a few seconds, the simultaneously light changes stops and the orbs retain their original color. Vanishing dragon. Power is taken successfully, Drake says. This is impossible. No way. This can't be true, Albion says. A low to me. 
is how you something spectacular, Issei says. Divide, times nine, transfer. As the orbs Issei chain into a blue, Drake shocks everyone by calling out divide instead of boost. As Volley could feel his power being divided and boost times a thousand, the ground underneath him begins to get broken into shards of the rock due to sheer intensity of the aura contained with the red dragon. Drake, long giant is smasher. The green orb in his chest glows radiant, and soon huge quantities of mana accumulates around the orb in an instant. A huge green colored beam brimming with broad power is launched from the red dragon towards the white dragon and successfully hits its target, causing a huge explosion which cracks the barrier created by Michael and Azazel, and with the white dragon crashes into the ground with huge chunks of its armor broken. Reset, Albion says. The white dragon starts to glow up poop peril and color of following Albion's words. Soon the glow dies, revealing the badly hurt folly, barely conscious with numerous deep cups and third degree burns. Littered all over his body throughout the most important part was his left eye turned blue. I lost, Folly says. Tell me a good reason for not gut to not gut you like a fish, Issei says. Soon the red dragon vanishes into thin air. Instead, Issei in his battle outfit with his arms crossed as he looks at Folly, his armed and starts a disgusted feeling. We are dragons. We fight like this, Folly says. Sighing in relief, Sir Zex dispels the barrier around Ko, but the once beautiful Ko Academy was no more than a pierce of land aboard with craters of piles of rumble. Yo, that's what I call a good fight, as Hazel says. I'll take responsibility for repairing the Academy. It's devil territory, Sir Zex says. Dashing forward in an instant, Mordred tackles Issei to the ground while giving him a bone-crushing hud. You came back unharmed, Mordred said, smiling to himself. Issei tries to hug her back to comfort her while feeling her enchanted scent. I promised you that I'll always be by your side. What kind of man if I, if I couldn't fulfill my promises, Issei said. Suddenly a fast red blur crashes into the ground, which reveals to be a Chinese man in his early 20s with brown eyes, carrying a staff and wearing a Chinese armor. Seems like you took quite a beating, Volley. Fuck you, Volley says. Azazel laughs at the mysterious Chinese man. Bioko, you've joined the Chaos Brigade, huh? I'm sure your old man will be mad at you, Azazel says. The man now introduces Bioko chuckles. I don't care. I just live my life doing as I like, Bioko says. Who the hell are you? Don't tell me you're here to fight me, Issei says. Nah, I'm here to save the pretty boy, Bioko says. The descendant of Sun Wukong and the descendant of the first Devil King. You both... Make a good pair, as Hazel says. I'm flattered, but I don't swing that way, Bioko said. With Bioko swings at his staff, creating a portal, under thus and turning successfully escaping. You may have won this time, but the next time we meet, I'll be the victorious one. Until next time, rival, Volley says. Both Volley and Bioko disappear via magic circle, earning a sigh from Azazel. I think you owe us an explanation, Issei Kodamine, or Issei Hyoto, Sir Zex says. With a heavy sigh, Issei motions for Sir Zex to pay attention. I once was known as Issei Hyoto, but I have long discarded that identity, Issei says. How did you become a dragon, Sir Zek said. Drag changed me into one, Issei replies. For what purpose did you visit Ko? Classified, Issei said. Are you the one behind the recent killing on Ko, Sir Zek said. No, Issei replies. Sir Zex looks at Issei dead in the eye to find any traces of deceit. But since Issei is a master of concealment, he finds no trace of lies. Does this change anything between our friendships, Sir Zek says. No, unless you try something else like keeping tabs on me, Issei says. Last question. Why did you leave my sister's barrage, Sir Zex replied. After an uncomfortable minute of silence, Issei answers his question. She kicked me out of her club, then turned my life a miserable one as the students tried to harass me. And even my own parents abandoned me. They thought that I did something bad to your sister. And after some small analysis, I found out something, Issei says. What did you find out? Sir Zex replies. Tell me, Zex, if any rogue fallen angel trespasses into a devil's territory, what should the devil, according to the protocols, do? So Issei says, well, if the fallen angel is confirmed as rogue, the governor of the territory can do whatever she wants with the fallen, either kill them or capture them. Issei then looks at Sir Zex with unparalleled rage present in his eyes, causing him to flinch. She knew that a group of fallen rogue angels have infiltrated Ko, but she didn't take any action. And when I was asked to date by a fallen angel, she didn't alert me, but instead ordered her rook to stalk me on the day of my death. 
her familiar, gave me a summoning circle belonging to the house of Grimory. And when the fallen killed me, she forcefully revived me as a devil since I had the sacred gear. And she was in despite, she was in a desperate need of powerful parage pieces. As Isu then completely completes his speech, everyone looks at him in surprise and then shock. But the worst affected out of them was Sir Zex, who looks at this ground with unrecognizable emotions, unable to believe that his dear little sister had capable of doing this. Meanwhile, I'm going to kick her ass, Sarah Falls says. Meanie. I did inform the Duke of Grimory about the rogues, Azazel says. The moment we re was revealed as the old pot of Rius, I knew something was terribly wrong, but this, I never expected this. Zex must be taking it the hard way. I hope he doesn't do anything rash, Grafia says. Rius. I can't believe she did this, Sir Zex says. Sir Zex whispers in a lone tone with her hair shadowing his eyes as his voice turns into a raspy one at the end. I am so sorry, Lord Codamine, but if you wish you could bring this to the Council of Devils for a proper questioning, Gravia said. I am terribly sorry for my sister's immature behavior. I will definitely bring this to a trial for justice, Sir Zex says. You don't have to be saddened by the actions of your sister, but... I do want to severe actions taking on her, Issei says. I definitely wanted to kill her, but now, no, she mustn't die. Death is a luxury she can't afford. I have faith in Zex that he'll punish her sister, but that still won't be enough. I'll make her life a living nightmare, Issei says. I wanted to give this as a present, but considering the circumstances, I'm giving this as a token of apology. Please accept this. Sir Zex brings out a small case of which radiate radiates a faint draconic aura. This is a set of evil pieces, custom for turning humans into part dragons instead of devils. The same rules of evil pieces apply to this, and you can also enter the devil's rating game. I hope you like this, Sir Zex says. Sir Zex then opens the case revealing a set of evil pieces, which has 15 pages radiating a strong draconic aura, earning a small smile from Issei. Thank you for this gift. This will be good enough. To help in the future, Issei says. Well, you must infuse your aura into the pieces for them to acknowledge you as king, Sir Zex says, nodding his head. Issei then places his hand above the case and pours his aura into the pieces, causing the, them to glow brightly. All 15 pieces have mutated. This hasn't occurred more than twice. Ajuka and myself were the only ones who got all pieces and mutated ones, Sir Zex says. Great. I'd like to have a good conversation, but it's time for me to go home. As the payment for your protecting your sister, I'd like half of Ko's ownership, which Rias owns, to be transferred to me. It will be done in a couple of weeks, Sir Zex says. Well, then see you later, Crimson, Issei replies. With a bright red flash, both Issei and Morta disappear from the Academy. Lord Lucifer, we have to rebuild the Academy, Gravia says. Curse my dumb luck, Sir Zex replies. Gravia then drags Sir Zex to help rebuild her academy while the Sir Zex weeps like a woman at his misfortune. But then, oh shit, I forgot to tell him about the engagement between him and Sona, Sir Zex says. Now, currently with Sona, currently at the middle of the night, Sona is seen on her bed and unable to sleep after receiving the news that Issei's safe and academy will be rebuilt within tomorrow. I have to inform my mother about my fiance being the Red Dragon Emperor and the second in command of the dragon, Sona said. Oceanic blue colored magic glimpse forms at her ears and soon a feminine voice is heard. Sona, dear, how are you? I'm fine, mother. The treaty went well. The city is safe, Sona said. Good. How is your parage, my dear? H I have been notified that a Vitra sacred user had been made your pawn, Lady Citrus says. Indeed, he is not bad for a newly reincarnated devil. He's like an annoying little brother at times, Sona said. A loud giggle is heard from Lady Citri. Now, I'm looking forward on meeting him, Lady Citri says. Mother, about my fiancé, Sona says. Oh, the one who you bet in chess? Say he is a good individual, Lady Citri says. He is... A and mother, he is aware of the supernatural, Sona says. After a long, cold minute of silence, Lady Citra responds back. Oh, so what is he? He is a dragon and a really powerful one. He was invited to the conference representing the dragon faction. It seems like he is a very powerful dragon. And the Red Dragon Emperor. The perverted pawn of Rius. Hmm, no way. He was declared dead as the new Red Dragon Emperor. 
Is he the new Red Dragon Emperor, Lady Citrus says? No, Mother, he is Issei Hyodo, but somehow he managed to survive, removing his pieces and becoming a dragon adopted a new identity, but I assure you he is no longer a naive pervert. He has drastically changed into a ruthless but caring person, and Mother, please don't oppose this engagement. I am in love with him. I fell in love with him the moment he defeated me in chess. Before that, when he arrived at the student in Co, it was a small crush, but now I love him with all my heart. Oh, I cannot say no. That I suppose, but I wish I have a present talk with him, Sona. Inform him of this engagement, and if he's alright with it, we'll proceed, Lady Citrus says. With an atomic blush, Sona tries to compose herself, but then Fi is unable to do so. It's late, mother, so I'll call you after a couple of hours, Sona says. With that, Sona dismisses the magic limp and proceeds to fall asleep, thinking about Issei, but unknown to her behind, Velatorm Glaral of her room, a small camera with a microphone, is seen if one could look at it clearly. A word is seen out of the camera which says, Property of Leviathan. And that is the end of chapter 14. And that is where we're going to stop for now. Thank you guys so much for the support. It's been absolutely amazing. I'm so, so fucking tired. I can't even begin to explain. I gotta go eat lunch after this. Your boy's been grinding like a lot. I've had to move my stuff from places to places. This place has shitty Wi-Fi. But either way, I'm in college. I had to move a college door in because our shower needed maintenance and I didn't care. And so now we had to switch to another dorm. You know what? I'm not even gonna bother fucking explaining it. Either way, it was super annoying. Once again, thank you to all my people who joined Balance Break. Rob the King, Jorge Alvarez, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Quesical Toltec Sun God, Daybreak, VR Wolf 2347, Sinrar Q, Jordan Paccio, and Mazaku. Thank you so much for the support. I cannot thank you enough for joining the Balance Breaker tier. You guys don't understand how much this helps me. Thank you guys so much for your support. It's been absolutely amazing. My next series I really plan to do extremely recent is What If Naruto Was Betrayed? And obviously, the If Issei Awakened His Boosted Gear Early, or Awakened His... What If Issei Awakened His Boosted Gear Earlier? which will be a movie and it'll include something special. So just be prepared for that movie and what if Naruto was betrayed. Thank you guys so much for the support and without further ado, Spartanic Arts DXD out. Wait, let's try to hit 600 to 500 likes. Peace. What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DXD back with another high school DXD related video. And today we have what if Issei was betrayed and became a god. Part 6. Let's try to hit 500 to 600 likes. And if you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. And a special thank you to all my balance breakers. Rob the King, Jorge Alvarez, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Quasikill Toltec Sun God, once again, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, Daybreak, VR Wolf, hashtag 2347, Sinrar Q, Jordan Pachow, and Mazaku. Thank you guys so much for becoming a balance breaker. Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough for the support. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter 15. Third POV, an unknown location a day after the conference. Darkness, as far as one eye could perceive. Amid the darkness was a heavy stretch, a heavy stench, of blood along with whimpers and groans. Suddenly a small streak of light appears, a lone candle is ignited, revealing a small boy curled up in a corner, his hands drenched in crimson liquid. But soon a chuckle is heard, not from a boy, but something else, causing the boy to sob. I'm back, kiddo. Tell me how was your day? How was it to feel your own intestines in your hands? A deep voice is heard within the darkness, scaring the boy to no end. Devil kids are more restrained to pain. Any human kid would have been dead before he could see his insides, but you can feel your own intestines in your hands. I envy you. With a loud clang, the light turns on revealing blood and squished organs all over the room, and in the corners of the room, corpuses of young women were piled up with rotten behind identification. But the most incinerant thing was... A teen with amber hair, most likely in his late teens, but the most remarkable feature was the unnaturally smile on his face. Tell me, kiddo, how are you feeling? Please help me, the kid says. But then from the shadows on the corners, a man, no, a scary humanoid creature wearing a luxurious robe of ancient design. Satanious scarlet patterns adorned the pitch black fabric, comes with traumatizing the kid by those abnormally big eyes, easily reminding him one of nocturnal animals, but the amber-haired teen just grins at the creepy thing. 
Rinosuke, I have arrived at last. How is our new victim I have brought you earlier? He's just cool. He can feel his own guts and insides in his hand without dying. I'm about to test him by serving his man part and making him look at it. His despair. It's so cool, Rinosuke says. The team now intruded by Rinosuke's claim with glee causing the scary thing to chuckle. His despair is quite fresh indeed, but hey, boy, don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. You can get out. You can go by yourself, right? Yes, the kid replied. The thing casually heals the boy and opens the door with a smile on his face, which makes him look more uncomfortable than before. But the boy, with hope in his eyes, exits the room and looks at the hallway with the main door just a couple of steps ahead in happiness. As the boy, with his hopes high, tries to leave the house, multiple tentacle-like things catch him and drags him towards the creepy thing, and the teen, in process to stab him, then this newly healed guts and proceeds to rip out his limbs, earning a loud scream of agony from the boy, which becomes faint as the boy slowly dies. Oh, that was cool, Rinosuke says. Some forms of terror are live liar than others. The best is to show them a ray of hope just to be crushed in an instant, just like what happened to me a long time ago. Suddenly, a green-colored magic circle opens up, and a man with his identity concealed by hood appears. Uru, your next mission is to infiltrate the city in the underworld called Baphaseal. In the territory Beal Devil House, you will be infiltrating that place as a common devil citizen and gather any available intel. Keep a low profile and do not commit mass murders. It may be a couple of killing. Do not, by any chance, try to enter the Beal private grounds. This mission was directly appointed by Beelzebub himself. Plus, if we get, if you wish, you can have Jiv Bluebeard accompany you. But by any chance, Bluebeard mustn't leave your house. We'll assign you. I'll do it for the brigade, Rinosuke says. I will help you. Good. Be good to use. Since we were the ones to have saved your life by reincarnating you as the devil, now, POV, we're with Issei. Princess, hurry up. We don't have all day, Issei says. I'll be ready in a sec, Mordred replies. With a huge sigh, Issei crashed onto his couch while checking his watch. The reason for him being like this is because today they were visiting London for a day, on all official purposes. I've been meaning to ask you something for a long time, Drake says. Tell me, Issei replies. What goal do you have? I mean, everyone has a dream, which it makes them to push forward. Drake says, I want to make Rias' life miserable and spend my internal life with my love. Issei says, after that, what will you do, partner? Drake says. Hearing Drake's question, Issei struggles to give him an answer, but after a couple of minutes, Issei answers the question. I always had a dream of being a hero when I was a child, but I honestly don't know what to do. Issei says. A little boredom can be a dangerous thing, Drake says. I know. I have always felt an urge to destroy things since the day I became a dragon, Issei says. In my honest opinion, I don't think you can be a good person nor a villainous one. Sure, you can kill people, but I think that you should be an embodiment of balance. Just because without balance, everything will fall apart, Drake says. After a minimum of hesitation, hesitation Issei replies to Drake. I don't know. Sometimes I kill people and sometimes I help them. Honestly, Drake, I don't know what I've become, Issei replies. Issei, as I said, you are neither the light that protects nor the darkness that consumes. You're both of them. Sometimes you're the brightest light and sometimes you're the darkest nightmare, Drake says. You're right. But I think of myself as an abomination that shouldn't exist. I'm a cruel person. I enjoy tor tormenting people, Issei says. Silly boy, you are nothing but a broken soul. Tainted by the deaths you took part in anger you hold within. Tell me, the moment you became the vessel for the thing I saw, the restricted sections of your soul, I'm sure you remember those horrific things your consciousness once erased. The moment Drake said those words, Issei's hands trembled violently while a few tears escaped from his eyes. I saw them, everything they did to you. The Hyotos, they weren't your parents. They were a Magus family with a hefty bounty placed on them for illegal activities. Your memo, Drake cuts off, my memories were altered. I wasn't a cheerful child. I was an orphan who was adopted by them, but then I found out that they adopted me only to experiment me on it since I had a good quality of magic circuits in you. They tortured me. For months, then I lost my sanity and tried to kill them only to fail. In fear, they altered my memory with fake ones and intended to erase my knowledge on the supernatural, as they feared that I might become a threat. That's why I killed them. The pain and sufferings on my life changed my physique. 
As a dragon, your instincts make you more emotional. I fear that you might become an evil dragon, Drake says. I won't. I was close to becoming one, but she saved me. For her sake, I'll live. I'll kill anyone who tries to take her away from me, Issei says. Your past may be tr a tragic one, but your present is a life filled with happiness. You and your mate... You have your mate to help you, and I'll wholeheartedly support you till the end of mine, Drake says. I decided I'll have my vengeance, and after I'll become the justice itself. I'll punish the wicked, Issei says. With determination and demeanor, Issei looks at the new contract boosted gear as passion and determination replaces the unmotivated look on his eyes. I'm ready, Mordred says. A red blur suddenly crashes onto Issei, making him fall on the couch, and heard the red blur is revealed to be a super greedy Mordred wearing her usual outfit with a pair of glasses, earning an atomic blush and a nosebleed from Issei. So, am I cute? Master, Mordred says. Mordred giggles mischievously at the stuttering Issei, who lays eyes on the floor, unable to form any roots. Whew, cuteness overload, Issei says. Unable to take the pressure any longer, Issei faints, causing Mordred to pinch him in his cheeks, making him to gain his consciousness back. Oi. Don't die on me, Mordred says. I hate you, Issei replies. Nah, you love me. Only I can be the meanie here. As you wish, my king. With a sly smirk, Mordred suddenly gives her boyfriend a sweet kiss, which lasts a couple of seconds, then she pulls away with a grin. I should have known that she'll become more bolder than before once I made her as my queen, Issei says. Flashback, a day after the peace conference. Currently at Issei's apartment, everything was good as it was. The weekend in the Co Academy was being rebuilt. It seems the Crimson Clown and the Weirdo reported to the Co Academy's annihilation as the gasoline explosion, Mordred said. Inside the kitchen, Issei has seen cooked some food while Mordred helps him on mundane things. A shame. I must have held back my last attack, Issei says. That wasn't your fault. It was the silver-haired bastards, Mordred said. Yeah, he destroyed my entire plan by revealing my old identity, Issei says. Issei stops at chopping the vegetables and looking at the cutting board with anger, causing Mordred to hug him from behind. You yourself said that you wouldn't kill her, but make her suffer a thousand times, Issei said. I originally thought of killing all of her Parage members, but now I can't kill them if they're dead. Sex will get suspicious of me. Also, I can't abruptly stop killing them. It will just increase their suspicion. The best things I could do is kill on a rogue exorcist and make it look like he's the killer and I killed him as he tried to kill me. I'd like to join your parage, Mordred said. Issei abruptly stops at Mordred. Out of nowhere, asks him to make her his servant. I beg your pardon? I'd like to join your parage, Mordred said. Are you sure? Issei said, I am. Mordred looks at Issei in his eyes with a burning passion and determination, causing Issei to look at her in astonishment. The perks of being part dragon are enhanced reflexes, enhanced mana reserves, magical resistance, enhanced physical strength, with the downside are that you'll be vulnerable towards dragon slaying weapons. You'll become emotionally sensitive, Issei says. Not bad, Mordred says. Overall, it will be a good boost to your potential, as you will be able to use Clarent, Blood Arthur, in succession without getting exhausted due to your enhanced mana reserves. I want to be your knight or queen, Mordred says. Issei drops his kitchen knife and summons a case and takes out the queen pieces. Are you ready? I am. On the name of Issei Kodamai, I order you, Mordred Penadragon, to be reborn as my queen and my beloved. You shall become my sword and shield. A bright green light then engulfs the whole room after a few seconds, the light out revealing a perfectly fine Mordred with mana circulating around her. I feel incredible. But I can hear various noises. I... It's nothing to worry about. It's a side effect of becoming half-dragon. You'll get used to it, Issei says. As I am your queen, I shall be call you master, Mordred says. With a deadpan look, Issei stares at the newly reincarnated half-dragon, who has a sly smile plastered on her face. How in the world did she find out my kinks, Issei says. Present... Present day, we're back to the present day now. Issei looks at the ceiling with a blank stare, reminiscing in his past memories, revolve around Mordred's reincarnation. Hello, Earth to Issei, Mordred says. What? Oh, you were staring at the ceiling for a whole minute. We have to be at London, remember? Oh, yeah, I do. A bluish portal opens up a couple and there's the portal holding hands. In the underworld... In the outskirts of City Lua Fault, served for devils, we're in a magistrate room which serves as the council room since the Civil War room. Devils from various royal clans were present, and a few elder devils, along with the four great Satans and the great King Zek and Biel, were seated on the upper deck overlooking the trial. Welcome, distinguished royal families of each clan. Let the trial begin, Sir Zek says. Rias Grimmery, Harris of the Estad Grimmery clan, has been charged with the breaking of the Reincarnation Act, violation of territory protocols, endangering the devil community, improper rule over territory, high treason, may Rias Grimmery be present. As soon as the older 
older devil, aka Zirkrum Bale, the oldest devil alive, announces the news. Two guards bring Rias chained towards the trial. Rias Gremory, you have been charged with the breaking of the Reincarnation Act, violation of territory protocols, endangering the devil community, improper rule over your territory. High treason, do you have anything to say? Sir Zach says. I... I knew that a bunch of fallen angels have infiltrated into my half of Ko, but I didn't do anything as I was banking on Issei to be killed so that I could reincarnate him, Issei says. In a crestfallen tone, Rias tells them the truth with her head hung low, causing a few murmurs. I'd like to clarify that the person Rias forcefully reincarnated was the Red Dragon Emperor Issei, and recently he was declared to be dead. But we have found that he is alive, and he managed to expel the pieces and become a full-fledged dragon after he found out the truth. Who is the second in command of the dragon faction? Rias Grimory has managed to not only risk a great war, but also risk a war with the dragons. But Lord Issei didn't let his personal grudge against Rias to affect the devils as a whole, and it's all thanks to him that we have achieved peace, Sir Zex says. The moment Sir Zex ends his long speech, the whole council enters a state of panic and causes, causing various clan herds, elder devils, to scream at her. She dared to cause the extinction of the devil? She must be executed, Lord Gideon said. Guilty! She must be executed amid the common devils, Lord Gideon says. A disgrace to the devils must be eliminated, Lord Beol says. A huge uproar breaks out as many devils demand for Rias to be killed, but then Zekim intervenes. As the great king, I personally consider that Rias Grimmy, although guilty, is an immature devil. She wasn't well aware of the consequences of her doings, so I suggest that we reduce her punishment, Zekim says. I agree. It isn't right for an immature devil Harris to be executed, Lord CG replies. Execution isn't the right thing to do in this case, but one can't leave this unpunished. We, the Phoenix Clan, will be neutral for this trial, Lord Phoenix says. A vote shall be taken to decide the punishment of Rias Grimory, Ajuka says. Time skip. Scene break, time skip. The votes of every pillar and the mouths have been received, and the results are 13 clans have voted for execution, Four clans have pledged neutrality, and 15 clans have voted for minor punishment. Us Maus have voted for minor punishments. Rias Grimory will not be executed, Sir Zex said. As the Great Kings proposed that Rias Grimory should be stripped of her position as a Harris and should be stripped of her parage, Zirkum says. I agree, Lord Grimory says. I disagree. Rias Grimory is considered as an upcoming devil prodigy by common masses in the clan, so I refuse to strip her of her parage. She will be valued asset to the devil society as a whole, Sir Zek says. After a long minute of silence, Zek Yombiel with a huge frown answers back. I can't deny, but what if the dragons come back with an army demanding her head, Zirkum says. He would do no such thing. It was all thanks to him that we managed to secure the treaty, Sir Zek says. The dragons are in dire need of portions of the underworld, as the dragon apple is only found in the underworld. That was the primary objective of the dragons. So what if he betrays the treaty after acquiring the lands and comes back for her head, Zirkum says. A few murmurs raise at Zirkum's point, but causing Sir Zek's face to twirl into that of a frown. If that happens, Rias Grimmer will be handed over to the Red Dragon Emperor, but she won't be executed by us, Sir Zek says. I acknowledge that the fact that Rias Grimory is considered a prodigy and she won't be stripped of her parage, but what about her position as the Harris? Zirkum says. Lord Zirkram, you should consider the fact that we have no Harris to the clan. If Rias is stripped of the position of the Harris of the Grimory clan, will most likely become extinct, Lord Grimory says. Don't fool us, Lord Grimory. I am well aware that there is another heir to the clan. Milicus Grimory, firstborn son of Sir Zex Lucifer and Graphia Lufridge. He inherits the power of destruction of the Beals and the power of the only chains of Twilight, the long lost signature ability of the Grimories, which allows the user to conjure and manipulate chains of made of demonic energy which earn the respect of the former Lucifer as he asked to acknowledge the ability, and that is why the Grimories were given the rank of Duke. Lord Agrius says. As Lord Agrius reveals the information, the whole meeting disrupts into chaos, causing Sir Zep to sigh. Dear Satan, power of destruction in the only chains of Twilight. The last no Gremory to wield this ability was the first Gremory and his son, Lord Phoenix says. The Gremory is of such a terrifying child, Lord Bia replies. But he's just six-year-old child, Lord Gremory says. Ah, yes, a six-year-old child with the power level of a low-tier high class, and he hasn't even trained his powers. And not to mention that Rias Gremory, the prodigy who is 19 years old, has trained since the age of nine, is also a low-tier high class in power, Lord Gardas said. 
With a, moth, with a mocking laugh, Lourdes looked at the Grimery, causing him to sigh. Fine. I agree to strip my daughter from the title over Harris. In form, now on Milicus Grimery will be made the heir. That's all. Council is now adjourned. Sir Zex says, now back with Issei. Britain has changed a lot. From the top of a huge skyscraper, the couple stare at the city, London, with their hands over intervene. So, where do you want to go? Hmm, shopping, Mordred says. No, 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 Issei says. Issei frantically waves his hands and looks at the now smiling Mordred with horror etched into his eyes. First, we'll go Hyde Park, and then we'll spend our time in the National Portugal in the National Museum. I want to see how many humans have decapitated my glorious life after we'll pay a visit to the Millennium Wheel, Mordred says. Sure, let's get going, Issei replied. Time skip. Mordred looks at something with no emotions visible on her eyes, and next to her, Issei lets out a chuckle. Why, this is absurd. My mother is portrayed as a gruff-looking man. Well, an incompetent piece of steel. Mordred looks at the portrait of a gruff man on a horse with a sword. Grinning her teeth in frustration, the petted dragon averts her gaze of the portrait, while a huge bloodlust covers the gallery, causing several people near them to sweat profusely, and many move away from them, seeing the Issei slight nudges her. Humans try to misinterpret many things. You have to tone down your bloodlust, Issei says. After hearing her boyfriend's word, Mordred halts her bloodlust, causing the people to unconsciously sigh. Time skip. Scene break. With the flick of his hands, a portal opens up and a couples go through and come out only to be met with a busy street brimming with life and excitement. A huge ferris wheel next to the river. This is awesome, Mordred said. So this is Millennium Wheel, not bad, Issei replies. Come on, let's check it out, Mordred replies with a mysterious glint in her eyes. Mordred drags Issei towards the Millennium Wheel. Time skip, scene break. As the sun slowed, start to high above on the Millennium Wheel, the couple enjoy the view while standing on an iron rod which supports the wheel, quite an unorthodox way of watching the sun tents from a ferris wheel. It's beautiful, Mordred says. Maybe, but it's dwarfish in comparison to my beloved queen, Issei says, with a toothy grin on his face teases his queen, causing her face to turn fifty shades of red, earning a small chuckle from Issei. Issei, I had lots of fun today. Thank you for spending time with me, Mordred said. With an innocent smile, Mordred in a swift manner plants her lips on his, catching him off guard. Ah, yes. It, young love. It's like I'm looking at an old mirror of myself. Those were the good old days. Although I'm surprised they didn't give in to their urges. He likes to take it slow, just like me, Drake says to himself. Time skip the next day. At the, earl at the earlier hour of the day, the birds were happily chirping and the trees waved at the cold breeze. And menaced the forest was the couple. Both Issei and Mordred looked at each other and they nod. They changed into their battle attire and the flash of light using magic. Head northeast and scout the land nearby for any bounded field. If you spot any, do not infiltrate. Just inform me in the place and I'll check it out. Be safe, Issei says. In a swift motion, Issei suddenly disappears, causing her to sigh. Well, time to fight the old sanded faction's armored base. Mordred then changes into her typical battle armor and charges towards the forest. Now, with Issei... Where are they? According to my intel, a secret bunker must be around here, Issei says. Issei scouts the place by jumping from tree to tree at high speeds, but then he feels a source of mana around him, causing him to stay on the ground. Hmm, a typical bounded field with about three layers. Not bad, but I could still breach it, Issei says. Issei then places his index finger near the field, and a green light radiates from his hand, which cuts a pathway through a bounded field. In an instant, Issei passes through the bounded field, only to find a huge castle with numerous devil and mage-like guards. Halt! State your identity, Devil One says. Don't you know me, Issei replies. We don't. Now state your identity, Devil Two says. Issei Kodamine, your non-friendly slayer, Issei says. With a manacle smile, Issei grabs the two devils and smashes them into the floor, killing them. Ah, Mage One says. A soul mage tries to alert the other guards, but suddenly someone comes and grabs him by the collar and lifts him to the air by his throat. Ouch. Could you please tell them that I'm sorry, Issei says. Issei's manacle grin whines at the mage's terrified expression and then proceeds to kill him. You're awfully violent, Drake says. Two mages made my life a living hell when I was young. So what did you expect from me? Issei replied. Remember, control that frenzied side of yours, Drake said. Can't help it. Whenever I see these fucking mages and devils try to kill it, it reminds me of my past, Issei says. Suddenly, Issei disappears out of thin air, and reapers next to the devil guard with his presence concealed. 
Hey guys, open up, the devil guard says. The devil knocks on the door, causing a mage to open the door with a frown. What do you want, Mage 3 says. In a swift manner, the devil's head falls down to the floor, earning a small yelp from the mage, but then the mage looks at his chest only to find a hole. Ta-ta, Issei says. The mage's body falls onto the floor with a thud, causing the other devil and human mages to notice him. Kill that fucker, Mage 4 says. Boost, Drake says. Trace on, Issei replies. Ma mana accumulates around Issei and then condenses into multiple kitchen knives, which rust out towards the guards to kill most of them. Pathetic. Pathetic, pathetic, Issei says. A sole mid-class devil crouches on the floor, barely conscious with a knife only on his eye. Where's your boss, Issei says. B the basement, the devil replies. Thank you for your cooperation. Two kitchen knives from around Issei's hand then proceeds to cut the devils into pieces with his knife while having an innocent smile. Just a couple of mana-infused knives and nearly everyone on this floor is dead. Pathetic, Issei says to himself. Issei then scratches for anything suspicious, only to end up finding a poorly hidden elevator into which Issei enters and presses the basement button. After a secondary elevator, door opens up, revealing a futuristic lab with a huge central computer next to it. Three tanks filled with a mysterious liquid inside, which a girl, a small baby, seemingly in type of stasis, were present, focusing Issei to lose his cool demeanor. Human experiments, Issei said? Partner. I can feel a strong amount of aura with faint traces of holy aura, Drake says. Issei looks at the main computer, which displays words in devil language. Project Humunculus, artificial spiritual vision of spirits on humunculi, experiment success, Issei reads. The bastards were trying to fuse a powerful soul into a humunculus. It will kill them, Drake says. Activates Experiment 43, Issei says. Suddenly, the capsule which contains the girl opens up and the girl opens her eyes, which is accompanied by smoke. What? Well, I am a homunculus. I can... You understand? I am created by an old uh, Satan faction. Aurora's voice echoes through the surroundings as the smoke dies down, revealing a young woman with short, like, hair, lavender eyes, and fair skin. Who are you? The girl says. Ah, well, I'm Issei Kodamine, the Red Dragon Emperor. Nice to meet you. The girl suddenly looks at Issei with curiosity, causing him to sweat drop. Boosted gear? Long giantess? Uh, yes, you are correct, but can I ask you something? Issei says, sure. How do you know about this? Issei says, I was implanted with knowledge about the supernatural, the girl replies. Oh, okay. So what do you want to do now? Issei says. The girl looks at Issei with a blank look, causing Issei to get concerned. I want... To live. You're a humunculus, right? Issei says, yes, the girl replies. Do you know what that? You'll die in a couple of years, Issei says. But I want to live, the girl replies. Issei just sits there in silence, unable to form any words. Issei looks at her with sympathy and pity. I want to follow you. What? Issei says, I want to follow you, the humunculus girl says. My instincts say that I can trust you. Shell socked at her naivety, look at Issei looked at now the summons boosted gear with confusion. You could just make her into one of your Parage members. That way she'll be able to live for thousands of years. Also, this girl has the presence of a hero, which could be useful, Drake says. Hey, if you desperately want to live, I can reincarnate you as a dragon, so that you'll live a long life like dragons do. The girl looks at Issei dead in his eyes and answers in a monotone voice. Only devils and angels can reincarnate. The girl says, oh, but I can make you a dragon using my custom-made evil pieces, Issei says. I agree. Are you sure? I am. With a sigh, Issei summons a pawn piece and tries to reincarnate her, but nothing happens. Confused by Issei summons for four pawn pieces, which suddenly glow a dark violet, which soon dims down, revealing the girl whose body radiated a demonic order. I feel better, the girl says. Now, do you have a name? Subject 43. Hmm, that won't do. How how about any name you like? With a sweat drop, Issei sighs. Mash. Oh, you like the name Mash, Issei says. Yes, the girl replies. Suddenly the elevator dings and it was a, a pissed of Mordred comes out. Why do I sense the shield bastard nearby? Mordred says, ugh, Issei replies. And that is the end of chapter 15. Chapter 16. Issei's POV. Where am I? Issei says, I desperately look around, but as far as my eyes could perceive, only an infinite void was around me. This isn't funny. Who's there? Issei says, nothing. I got nothing in return to my question, but I can sense a presence, a faint one, but then suddenly the void dissipates and a lake appears out of nowhere. 
Ah, you're here. What the? I turned around and saw nothing abnormal. The voice, it sounded cold, inhumane. Where the hell are you? Issei says. Issei Kodamai, it's good to meet you, the mysterious person says. Where am I? Issei replies. As much as I want to get out of here, there's something particular about this place. I want answers. If you weren't this troublesome, I'd have brought you here without any resistance. That's called kidnapping, Issei says. I, uh, you are right. So, why did you bring me here? If you wish to kill me, I am more than capable of disintegrating you. That's it. His ass six feet under the ground, I then called out for Drake, but he didn't answer me. It isn't like him to avoid me in crucial times. I'm sorry, but Drake won't be hearing you anytime soon. What the hell? It is nearly impossible for someone to cut off the link of a sacred gear. I didn't sever the link. You're inside your soul plane. This place can't be evaded by outside sources. Okay, so what do you want? Do you want this universe to be destroyed? What kind of question is that? This voice isn't normal. Of course not, Issei says. A storm is approaching. Mysterious voice says, and everything starts to cut off. The second I said that, the landscape morphs into the void, and I felt something that made my bones chill. I could feel every cell in my body screaming the word danger. I tried to move, but I couldn't. My body was frozen, unable to move. Is this fear? But then in the midst of the void, I saw something. Blood red streaks resembles an eye of a savage beast. I couldn't feel my already tense body screaming at the, to get away. It wasn't something to be taken lightly. That thing, I could feel something chaotic. It screamed of madness. It's like I'm staring at something diabolical. But then the void disappears and the lake reappears, making me sigh in relief. Is that you? No. I could help all I could, and then the text cut off. The voice distorted into a monstrous speech. This doesn't make any sense. Third POV. With sweat dripping down his face, Issei wakes up from his bed. He turns around and he beams out with Morgan sleeping peacefully. What was that? Issei says. What's the matter? Is something wrong? Drake says. Just a dream, Issei says. Oh, okay. It's just one past midnight, so just go to sleep, Drake says. Time skip, Issei put POV. A sweet aroma lingers around the house as my love Mordred, Mash, and surprisingly Sona have their breakfast together. It's been one week since I made my Mash my pawn. Mordred managed to reveal the identity of the spirit which got fused with Mash and surprisingly it was the spirit of an authoritarian tradition, Gald, whom Mordred addressed as the Shield Bastard. Also a couple days ago, Sona requested to temporarily live with us since her mansion was under renovation and surprisingly Mordred agreed. Mash, have you succeeded on controlling your new demonic aspects, Issei says? Controlling my reflexes have gotten a lot better, but I'm not able to use draconic magic, but I'm able to use human magic craft thanks to my homunculus part, Mash says. If you need any help, feel free to ask for my help, Mordred says. I thank you, Mash replies. I can feel it. Mash is around high tier, high class, and power but she has her potential to get peak of ultimate class or maybe low Satan class. She can manifest Gallad's shield, but still she's far from reaching her true potential. So, Sona, can I create an own club for my parage? Issei says, it will be done. But do you tell me your club's name, Sona said? Uh, I'm tempted to create a video game club. Screw it. I'm going to create an archery club. An archery club, Issei says... Perhaps, are you interested in archery? Sona says, I am. Issei replies, it's unnatural for a dragon to practice archery. Sona says, I'm an exception, I guess. Why did I stammer in front of her? A dragon mustn't stutter in front of a weaker being. Lord Kodamine, since you're the governor of a part of Ko, which belonged to Rias, I think we should cooperate with each other on catching the killer, who may be a rogue exorcist, Sona says. No need for the formalities, just call me by my name, Issei says. Ah, shit, everything was going fine until now. I could feel the catalyzing gaze of Sona. I can't afford to be outsmarting. Sure. What plan do you have in mind, Issei says. My parage is constantly on the patrol within Ko, and my familiars are constantly supervised the city for abnormal activity. So far, we haven't had any luck. I propose that we both work together to secure the city, Sona says. She suspects me. Just as I suspected Sona isn't someone to be fooled easily, my answer to this will be deciding factor for this mess. I could see Mordred's slightly nervous smile. Sure, we can help each other, I guess. 
That's great. Also, I'd like to have another game of chess with both of you if you could spare some time, Sona says. Sona looks slightly nervous while Mordred winks at her. Is there something I'm missing? I'd love to, he says. says. Mm, I have to train, so bye, Mash said. Mash must have been uncomfortable with this many people. She's just a child. Sure, she may be 16 years old physically, but mentally she isn't even mature. But that part of Humunculus, her progress on her demonic part is extremely fast. Third, POV. Mash leaves to the underground training facility while the rest of the time goes awkward for Sona who continues to eat in silence. I still can't believe that I told her about the engagement straight up to her, and she said she has no problems, Sona says in her head. Flashback two days ago. At the cafeteria of Code Academy, it was a normal day. Students were having their busy, their heavy in their meal. Mordred was no exception. The Knights of Treachery was not in a good state of mind. She was annoyed as her love was unable to be with her. Issei owes me a good spar, Mordred says. The Knight of Treachery grumbled under her breath. It was an unnatural sight for her to be irritated by her boyfriend's actions, as she was distracted by her thoughts. A certain student council president made her way towards her. You're here. That saves my time for searching for you. Lady Pentadragon, could you please save some time for me paying a visit to the student council room? Sona said. I sure can, but do tell me the reason behind this. Request, Sona. I would like to have a private conversation, Sona says. With her eyes slightly raised, Mordred analysis of any hint of deceit behind the teacher's eyes, but then lets out a sigh. Just make it quick. I am not in a good state of mind, Mordred says. Sure, Sona replied. At the student council office. Scene break. Inside a well-organized room filled with various materials, Mordred and Sona look at each other while being seated on their respective chairs. Is it related to Issei unable to spend his time today with me at the cafeteria, Mordred said? No, but if you wish to know more regarding that, I can help you, Sona says. Tell me, Mordred says. With absolute seriousness in her tone, Mordred demands the answers from Sona. Issei wanted a piece of Ko under Rias' jurisdiction, and an official order from Lord Lucifer has arrived stating that Rias should be relieved of her duties and the land to be transferred to Issei. Also, it seems the issue regarding Issei's reincarnation has caused an uproar among the council. The council wanted to execute Rias, but later they have decided to strip her of her status as the Harris. <laughs> Sona says, she deserves it. That sick manipulating bitch manipulating my East to her selfish desires. This doesn't make me feel any better, Mordred says. With a small snarl, Mordred curses Rias, causing Citri Harris to nervously laugh. I can't deny that, Sona says. So what do you want to talk about, Sona? With a snarky smile, the Knight of Treachery slightly teases her victim. With a prince's smile, irritation is to be placed by Bliss, causing Sona to look at her nervously. I'll be honest with you. I'm engaged to Issei, Sona says. What? Mordred replies. Mordred looks at Sona with a twisted anger and jealousy. The infiltrated knight looks at Sona while subconsciously admitting huge amounts of bloodlust scaring the sea tree Harris beyond belief. Hold on, let me explain, Sona says. Sona looked at Mordred with pleading for her to hear you out. Explain, Mordred said. When I was about 13, my parents made a marriage contract with the Almon clan. I was forced to marry the second son of Almon clan, who is a great pervert. So I challenged him to a game of chess, and he lost. Using this, I demanded that I wouldn't marry a devil who couldn't match my intelligence. Since then, my clan made a deal with me, that the first male to win a game of chess against me will become my fiancé. I was challenged by many devils, but none managed to win. But then you and Issei won against me for the first time. I explain to your parents about this. I am sure they will cancel your mistake, Mordred says. With her voice as cold as the ice, Mordred harshly answers her, causing Sona to flinch. But then, why can't you understand? I love him. The first moment I saw him, it was a crush. But then after all this, I love him. I love him. I love him. I swear I love him. I want him. Why can't we just share him, Sona says. With a twisted smile on her face, the Citri Harris stares directly at the knight's eye. But then her twisted smile changes into a frown, as her facial features become distorted, holding her unhealthy desires. Do you love him? Mordred says. Yes, Sona replies. What will you do if someone tries to take him away from us? Mordred says. I'll kill them, Sona replies. What will you do if he doesn't accept you? Sona just sits there in silence. Sona visibly tenses and stays quiet, with her hair shadowing her face, earning a small smirk from Mordred as she knew that she struck a nerve. Answer me. I tell me, are you scared? If you're scared, you don't deserve him, Mordred says. I will kill 
Sona says. With an expression that contradicts her original personality, Sona yells and she breaks the table nearby in two and looks at Mordred with an expression of person, nearing the verge of insanity. Who will you kill? Everyone and everything. Will you kill your sister if she tries to interfere? I will tear her limbs apart. Till, till she pleads to kill her, I will obliterate her wretched existence off this planet, Sona says. In a fit of rage, Sona lets out her aura, causing the ceiling to crack and the furniture to break it too. Such an intensified bloodlust, even the Lucifer's descendant didn't have much Melissa's aura. She's dead serious about the fact that she will kill anyone to be with my Issei. Her eyes then glowed eerie, red causing Mordred to take a step back and closely compose herself. That's a nice answer, Mordred said. Uh, what? Sona replied. I'm not scared by your little trick. I won't stop you from pursuing him, Mordred says. W why? Sona said. It can't be helped. Dragons are known for having multiple mates. If Issei falls in love with both of us, we can share him. But if he doesn't like you that way, I have no choice but to kill you if you'd lose your sanity. After a long moment of science, a small smile makes its way towards Sona. Much appreciated, Mordred. Damn. I think Issei's genre tendencies did change me into one, Mordred says. Flashback ends. The sounds of metal clashing with other resonating throughout the room as Mash with shield blocks attack from Issei's sword. A fireball makes its way towards Mash, but using her shield she blocks the attack. Issei sneaks behind her and throws a haymaker, which the newly recarned Humunculus retaliates by kicking him in his abdomen. Your reflexes are still good. Still, it's not enough. Your physical capacity is too low according to a dragon standards. You're just as strong as a high tier class being, but in your dragon standards, you're just as strong as a low class dragon, Issei says. I have to increase my physical capacity. How can I do that, Mash says. With a confusing evidence on her face, Mash looks at the floor, causing Issei to sign her innocence. I forgot. She's just a child. Come on, teach me, Mash says. Let's call it a day, Issei replies. But I, Mash says... Issei looks at Mash stuttering, causing him to get amused at her desire to grow stronger. You've made great progress on your training and in abilities, but I think you should learn about the society, Issei says. Uh, what's that? Mash says. Issei suddenly stops dead in his tracks and looks at her in disbelief. What are the things that the old Satan bastards taught you while you were in the weird capsule? Basics of the Devil Society, list of main targets to kill... It's time I teach you about the human society, Issei says. The elevator nearby opens up, revealing Mordred, who has a furious look on her face. That damn bitch, Mordred says. What happened? Issei replies. The Gremory bitch and her group of sluts dared to come here to see you. How dare she? Hearing this, Issei's previous expression changed into an emotionless one. Where is she? Issei says. Sona threatened to revoke her permission to stay in Co, causing her to leave, Mordred says. I see. This was bound to happen sooner than later, since Volley carelessly revealed my past identity, Issei says. She was really furious when I asked her to leave, and then half-fallen, I think her name is Akino, tried to attack me. Keyword, tried. With a battle-hungry grin, Mordred playfully punches Issei on his shoulders who remains unfazed. What did you do in retaliation, Issei says. Just a light punch to her guts, a kick to her groin, although she was weirdly blushing after my small retaliation. She's a masochist and a sadist, a huge one at that, Issei says. Sensing the commotion, Sona decided to threaten Rias to leave, Sona says. So, want a good spar, Issei replies, at the occult research club. A depressing aura surrounds the club, room inside, which all members of Rias's Paraj are present. Um, President, Akana's wounds are healed, Azia says. Thanks for your help, Azia, Rias replies. With the tears streaming down her face, Rias sits down on the chair, while Kiba and Azia silently move towards the corners of the room. Konako looks at the crimson magic glyph with a frown. Zenobia just stares at the depressed club. President, the familiar sent to spy Issei's mansion is dead. It looks like the curse-bounded field was eradicated, which killed Akana's familiar. Hearing this, Rhea sobs and becomes louder than before, causing Zenovia eyes to twitch. Why should we spy on Lord Kodamai? If your brother finds out, you'll be punished severely, Zenovia says. Getting her teeth in frustration, Rhea lets out an aura to flare, silencing the former exorcist. He is my... E that gives me the reason for me to watch his actions. He's just being humiliated by that disgusting whore, Rhea says. In a fit of fury, the former Grammary Harris summons her power of destruction and obliterates a chair nearby. Rhea, I know that the past has been very hard for us, but I think we should let him be by himself, Kiba says. He is Issei, Rhea says. Not anymore. 
Not after what we've done, Kiba says. Kiba yells at Rias, trying to knock some sense into her thick skull. You. He is my pawn. My Issa. He belongs to me. I love him, Rias says. He isn't yours anymore. He is not Issa Hyoto. The man called Issa Hyoto is long dead. We killed him without remorse. Issa Kota mine isn't the new Issa we knew. He is a monster that we made. Get that into your dense skull. If you can't accept the truth, you're delusional. Fool forever. With a cold glare, Kiba leaves the club by some teleportation circle, leaving a pissed Rius. I didn't deserve this. I lost my territory. My position as a Harris is stripped from me and given to immature brat by my brother. And now a blonde slut and my bestie Sona have Issei under their strings. Do not be worried, my beloved Issei. I will cut you free from her strings. In the Kota Mine residence, the... Air was tense in Issei's apartment at Issei. Mordred and Sona stare at a figure cloaked in shadows. Fancy seeing you here, Azazel, Issei says. The figure slightly smirks and comes out of the embrace of the shadows, revealing himself as the governor fallen angel. And the former archangel, Azazel. Yo, red dragon, blonde, and sea tree, it's good to see you again. Oh, who's the kid, angel, Issei says. Issei suddenly throws a knife at the fallen angel governor who casually dodges the knife. Your aim's a bit off, Azazel replies. Why are you here, Azazel? Last time I checked, Folly Lucifer was your subordinate who couldn't keep his tabs on who could casually blew away my identity. The blame's on you, Azazel, for not keeping him on a leash. Azazel cheerfully smiles in an instant and frowns and replaces his previous demeanor. Look, I'm sorry for what Folly did, but can we just have a small talk? What small talk do we owe the governor of the Gregor? Sona says. Oh, I just came here to tell you that Zack and Tani have asked me to be your advisor and live here in Co. Zazel says. I refuse. Sona replies. Isaiah, are you sure, Citri? Because if you don't want to have me as your advisor, your beloved sister will pay you a visit. And I heard some rumors that your sister was extremely pissed about something related to you. Zazel says. With a broad grin, Azazel looks at Sona's flabbergasted face while Mordred slightly um, shivered, reminiscing her past encounter with Seraphoth at the peace conference. You can stay here, Lord Azazel, Sona says. No need for the formalities, just call me Sensei or Azazel, Azazel says. Having you as our advisor is not that bad. You're the best sacred gear researcher, aren't you, Issei says. I am, but do mind me telling about Park Dragon here. With a cocky grin, Azizel looks at the slightly frozen face of Issei. Her name is Mash, my new pawn, Issei says. How many pawn pieces did she take? Four pieces. She has the spirit of Galad fused inside of her body, Issei says. Azazel's cocky grin vanishes and a horrified expression makes its way towards his face, causing Mordred to burst out laughing. How is that possible, Azazel says. Humunculized experiments by the old Satan faction based near London. I rescued her after destroying the lab. That's noble of you. Anyway, I have decided to train and camp in the underworld in the end of the semester of vacation, which is 30 days, so I think it would be better to inform your respective parage. We'll be leaving to the underworld via Gremory private train in a couple of hours. And that is where we're going to stop for now, which is right at the end of chapter 16. I'm just kind of tired. We're too much tired to finish it. So I'm sorry once again. But like, I've been reading like 40 minute videos for a while now. I got to do them consistently with track and school as well. And it's kind of tiring. I have a meet this weekend. So I'm going to be absent through Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So don't expect a video until Monday or Tuesday after this one, which will probably come out either Thursday or Friday. But I'm baking on Thursday. So thank you guys so much for the support. Once again, a special thanks to my balance breakers, Rob the King, Jorge Alvarez, or George Alvarez, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Quizzical, Tolek, Sun God, Daybreak, VR Wolf, Hashtag 2347, Sinrar Q, Jordan Pacho, and Mazaku. Oh, shit. Sorry. Um... But thank you so much for the support. Thank you for joining Balance Breaker once again. It's the highest tier in the management. Thank you to all my Ultra Instinct people as well, as long as my Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan God people. What if Naruto was betrayed? I do plan on making that my next theory. It's just because I want to enjoy myself when I'm reading these things. My next Issei story will be the movie, of course. If it's not, well, then something unexpected happened. But thank you guys for the support. But I really want to do What If Naruto Was Betrayed and gather a new audience as well of Naruto and High School DxD because, like, I really think that I, I just like Naruto way too much to not be able to get into it. So without further ado, let's try to hit 500 to 600 likes. And Spartanic Arts DxD out.
What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Was Betrayed and Became a God, Part 7. Let's try to hit 500 to 600 likes. If you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. A special thank you to my balance breakers, Rob the King, Jorge Alvarez or George Alvarez, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Quozelko Toltec Sun God, sorry if I mispronounced that once again, Daybreak, VR Wolf Hashtag 2347, Sinrar Q, Jordan Patchow, and Mazaku. Thank you so much for becoming a balance breaker. And if you guys want to see other what ifs on other characters, for example, Goku, like what if Goku was the god of destruction, head over to my second channel and I'll put a link down in the description below. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter 17, third POV, Mordred. Yes, master, I've been a bad girl, so punish me. I hate reading that. Suddenly, the cabin's door opens, revealing Sona and her parad standing there with a huge blush on their face looking at the position the couple was in. Sona, Mordred, Issei all look at each other just in silence, and Saji goes, I'll just go back. Saji runs away with a huge blush, and soon after, both Issei and Mordred separate from each other, embrace with their red face with embarrassment. I should have locked the door, Mordred said. You should have, Issei replied. Issei sarcastically says, causing Mordred to punch him in his guts, causing him to groan in pain. It's my fault. I should have not been here, Sona replied. It's not your fault. It's just you got here at the wrong time. It's a misunderstanding, Issei says. Anyway, we will be at the Seatree territory in an hour, so I just wanted to say farewells and some else, Sona says. Sona bites her lip in nervousness, earning a small smirk from Mordred and a clueless stare from Issei. I'll check out for Mesh. I must make sure she's fine, Mordred says. Mordred leaves the cabin with a small smile. Well, what pleasure do I owe you, Issei says. I have been wanting to confess this for you for a long time. What do you want to know about, Issei says. Still clueless about the situation, Issei nonchalantly asked her, causing Sona to develop a small blush. Please don't freak out about this, but we are engaged, Sona says. Holy shit, partner. You got yourself a harem. Wait, partner, can you hear me? Drake says. Drake yells at Issei's mind, but gets nothing in return, while Issei, unable to believe what he just heard, stares at her. Pardon? Issei says. We are engaged, Sona says. A small crack is heard from Issei as his mind internally collapses, earning a boisterous laughter from the Welch Dragon, whose voice fills the captain's starling, but blushing Chitri. I can't believe this. The strongest red dragon emperor with the power to crush multiple gods at his full power who has an unbreakable will has been mind broken by a girl, Drake says. I, Issei starts to say, I'll explain this, Sona says. My parents decided that the first male to outsmart me in a game of chess will be my fiance, and you're the first person to do this. I have also informed Mordred about this, and she doesn't have any problems with this. So, Sona replies, I don't know what to do. Issei just sits there. I love you with all my heart. The day I laid my eyes on you, I felt a blissful feeling that I hadn't ever felt. It was tempting. I wanted to see you, to look at you, and before I knew, I had a crush on you. But then, the moment I lost you in the game of chess, I fell in love with you. I just wanted to know about this. Think about this. I'll be waiting for an answer, Sona says. With a gentle smile, Sona gently kisses him on the cheeks and then takes her leave, leaving a dumbstruck Issei. Issei in his head. What the fuck? Fuck was that? I got kissed by a girl other than by Mordred, and it's none other than Sona Citri. The most serious person I've ever seen, and apparently I'm engaged to her without my knowledge just because of the fact that I won a fucking game of chess against her. What am I, some hentai protagonist who is hellbent on fucking woman and creating a harem? Wait, when I was a devil, I did have my goal as a creating a harem. Does that mean I am a hentai protagonist? But why do I feel like Dragon Sense is getting a bit dormant? Should I just accept her confession? Wait, no. Why did I ever think about cheating on my queen? Holy shit, Issei says to himself. Indulged in his own thoughts, the Red Dragon Emperor fails to notice his queen making his way towards him. I suppose that she confessed, Mordred did. That she did, Issei says. Without letting his emotions out, Issei vaguely answers her, earning a small frown from the Knight of Treachery. Issei, darling, I am not against the fact that you have been multiple lovers. Dragons are known for having a lot more but mates. But if you ever try to replace me, I'll tear you apart, Mordred says. With a manacle grin, replacing her previous smile, the Knight of Treachery lets out her bloodlust. Looking at her malicious behavior, Issei feels himself getting a bit nervous, feelings a few drops of sweat on his forehead. But then another feeling took over his nervousness. 
I will never leave your side. I made a promise to be beside you forever, he says. I'm glad to hear that. Anyway, what about Sona, Mordred said. I honestly don't know, Issei replies. Letting out a huge sigh in frustration makes Issei make eye contractions with Mordred earning a small smirk accompanied by a blush. Perhaps I could help you, Mordred says. Understanding the meaning behind the smirk, Issei immediately pushes her into the couch and proceeds to kiss her. Now, with Rias. The ex Grimmery Harris has her gaze fixed on the television in which a devil tells news regarding the underworld. President. The familiar spying on Issei's cabin has reported a live feed, Akino says. Hearing this crimson-haired ruined princess averts her attention to the newly formed Gremory magic glyph, which also earning the attention of everyone except Kiba. I want to see this, Konako says. I'll pay attention, Azir replies. With a meek voice, Azir responds to Akino while Konako answers to Akino with her stoic voice. This is called stalking. I don't recommend this, Zenobia says. It's not stalking, it's called taking interest, Rias replies. That doesn't justify your actions, President, Zenobia says. Play the clip, Rias says. Ignoring Zenobia's comment, Rias orders her queen to play the clip with her voice as cold as the cactus, earning a flinch from half the fallen who proceeds to play the clip and freeze at the sight. The glyph shows Issei pinning down his queen, hungrily plants a few kisses on her neck, earning a few stuff moan from the knight who has a lewd expression. Seeing this, almost everyone with the exception of Rias gain a pink hue on their cheeks. That's embarrassing, Zenobia says. Akino makes a glyph disappearing, earning a sigh of relief from Kiba, who shakes his head in disappointment, but then a cold bone-chilling aura invades the surroundings. P president Akino says. Rias looks away, averting her gaze from her parage. Remembers, slowly her emotionless stare morphs into a terrifying smile that reflects her dark, twisted side. Do you think if you ignore me, I would stop following you? Do you think if you would get some help, I would back down and give up? Or have you ever thought, if you hide somewhere, I'd never find you? Oh no, my dear Issei. Somewhere around in the Shito realm, so scene break. In an unspecified hill peak, Volley is seen staring at the sunrise with a small smile reminiscing his old memories. Suddenly, a blue-colored teleportation circle appears from it and Bioko comes out, earning a small frown from Volley. Yo, Volley, how are you doing? Bioko, you're back earlier than expected, Volley says. Ah, don't blame me. The job was extremely easy, Bioko said. With a huge grin, Bioko lays on the grass and looks at the beautiful scenery with a huge smile. This does bring me some good memories. How is your assignment? Folly says. The Norse gods have decided to ally themselves with the biblical faction if the rumors are true. Also, there is a party for the young devils. I wonder, will you be at the party, rival? Folly says. Volley. He may be there for the party, but focus on getting stronger. You may be in the peak ultimate class, but you're a mere hatchling compared to the real world of the gods, Albion said. Listening to Albion's words, the white dragon emperor looks at the now manifested divine dividing with a small frown. If you compare my power to the list of the most of the strongest beings, where will I be placed, Folly said. Hmm, and your balance breaker, you'd be placed between 1,500 to 1,300. And the juggernaut drive, you'll be between 600 to 400. Gritting his teeth in frustration, Volley looks at the sunrise with a huge frown. Not enough. Even at my best, there are 600 people who can defeat me, Volley says. You know, she has planned to try and take her sister back to the party. At the party, Bioku says, hearing Bioku rant about someone Volley sighs and looks at the sunrise, trying to avoid Bioku. But then suddenly, the space itself tears apart, and from a chalet, a man appears. Why did you decide to come here? Volley says. My assignment was finished earlier, and thus I have arrived earlier than expected. A smooth voice echoes through the surroundings, earning a small smile from Volley while Bioko just snorts. I am curious about what will you do if you ever cross paths with the fabled Mordred Pentadragon. The air suddenly becomes more colder than usual, and a strange golden aura radiates from the chalet. I shall execute that imposter for tainting the name of the Pentadragons. Now, back with Issei. After a long makeout session, the couple was watching a movie with a smile on their face. It looks like we've arrived at the Gremory territory, Issei says. With a small smile, Mordred looks outside the window spotting a huge territory roughly the size of Japan. That's the Gremory territory, Mordred says. It is. Suddenly, Azazel barges into the cabin, breaking the door in the process. I forgot to mention something, Azazel says. With a heavy sigh, Issei looks at the painting fa panting fallen angel and questions him. What? As you already know, I have planned to train you guys, and for that, I'll have to test them. So I asked their Zex to send Tanin for a small examination of their skills, as Azel says. Hearing this, Issei's neutral expression changes in that of pure surprise at the mention of Tanin. 
Tanin is here? How? Issei says, he's not here in this train, but is waiting at a valley between the Gremory territory and I'll force teleport Rias' barrage there and Tanin will attack them. This way? I'll know about their skills and Tanin may be a higher up dragon faction, but he's also part devil and under a devil. I'm well aware that was the reason for Tani not being sovereignty of the dragon faction. That's why he made his second son as the sovereignty, Issei says. I know that your queen and yourself are highly capable, so I don't want to waste my time testing your skills, but I would appreciate if you could help me out finding out their skills, as Azel says. After a minute of thinking, Issei's lips curve upwards, indicating his approval. Azel lets out a nervous chuckle, spotting Issei's disturbing smile. Now, back with Rias. The ORC club members were minding their own business with a little to no conversations better than them, but suddenly they find themselves in a valley. The whole group breaks into chaos except for Rias, who has an emotionless gaze. What the fuck? Akiba says. It's a trap, Zenobia replies. Force teleportation, Akino whispers. The Paraj bring out their weapons and spells getting ready for the ground shakes violently and the dragon comes out of a cave nearby. It was 30 meters tall, gigantic western dragon. With the exception of his lower body, specifically his belly, the inner portions of his long tail and legs that are beige in color. A majority of its body is covered in dark purple draconic scales. Uh... A dragon? Akino says. Seeing the dragon, everyone except Kiba immediately launched their attack, creating a small smoke screen, but the smoke disappears, revealing the dragon without a scratch. Its magic resistance is very high. We shouldn't focus on that strategy, Kiba says. Focus on offense. We can do this, Rhea says. Ignoring Kiba, the Princess of Ruin orders a barrage to blindly attack that dragon, much to Kiba's shock with her illogical thinking. Azia, heal, Rhea says. Konako blindly charges toward the dragon, which simply uses its tail to knock her down, but then Akino fires a lightning bolt, which causes no visible damage. Now, back with Issei. What the fuck are they doing, blindly charging at a dragon, at a fucking dragon that is 30 meters tall, and their teamwork is even mediocre? The only one who is thinking rationally is Kiba, Issei says. A golden glyph directly telecasts the fight between Rias' Paraj and the dragon. Even amateurs are better than this. Sure, Rias is a low-tier high class, and the others are mid-class in power, but if their teamwork is bad, even a small group of mid-class fallen angels could defeat them. How am I supposed to teach them, Azazel says, groaning in frustration at the Paraja's terrible coordination. Azazel curses himself at his own luck, causing Mordred to laugh at his misfortune. Pathetic. If they're pointless, then it'll be the first to die, Issei says. Now back with Rias. The situation is very bad for Rias, and her Paraja as Konako knocked out Ozzy, extremely exhausted by her reserves to heal the dragon was unfazed by their attacks. Take this, Rhea says. The ruined princess uses her fable power of destruction at the dragon. The dragon calmly uses a claw to block the attack, causing Rhea to enter a state of panic. It blocked the power of destruction, Rhea said. The blue-haired devil knight suddenly disappears and appears next to the dragon and draws out a sword brimming the with holy aura. Ignoring the uncomfortable glances of her fellow devils, Zenobia rushes towards her with the sword aimed to kill, but the dragon extends its horn, which successfully blocks the attack, and dragon uses its self-tail to knock her to the ground. It blocked her all, doll? This isn't a normal dragon, Zenobia says. Akino fires a lightning at the dragon, which casually blocks the lightning with its tail, but then the power of destruction makes contact with its scales and dissipates, leaving a small scratch. Balance breaker, Kiba says. A black sword beaming with both holy and demonic aura manifests on his hands. Suddenly, the dragon fires a torrent of flames at the devils, who narrowly dodges the attack on time. Ha! Kiba says. In a blink of an eye, Kiba appears next to the dragon and tries to impale it with the holy demonic sword, but the dragon uses its claws to break the sword. Now, back with Issei. Issei looks at the sword with Zenobia, used a small smirk while Mordred had a joyful smile. Mordred. The girl, she has potential to become a good swordsman, and the sword that she used isn't a normal one. It may be on par with clarinet, Mordred says. Durandal, the perilous sword, one of the most powerful holy swords, was wielded by Roland the Paladin, leader of the twelve paladins of the Charlemagne. He was the only wielder who mastered the Durandal. He reached mid-tier ultimate class in power with a human body, a very rare exception between humans, Issei said. A disturbing gleam makes its way towards the Knights of Treachery eyes, seeing that this Issei pats her, causing her to blush while Azazel coughs. Jeez, don't be flirting in front of me, Azazel says. You're just jealous that you couldn't flirt.
Isn't that right, old man? Issei says. Zazel's mischievous attitude changes into a cold tone as he throws him the coldest glare he could muster. What did you say, Mr. Virgin with no experience? Zazel says. Yeah, I'm a virgin and I'm proud to be it. I bet you're a virgin as well, Issei says. Azazel lets out a boisterous laughter hearing Issei's words as soon as a smug smirk replaces his laughter. Bitch, I lost my virginity when I was just 12, Azazel says. Issei and Mordor just sit there in silence. I think you should go get them, Issei says. Now, back with Rias. Everyone except for Rias and Nakano falls unable to get up due to their exhaustion kicking in. How in the name of Satan can it block my power of destruction, Rhea says. A golden-colored magic circle appears next to Rias, and from it the Governor General comes out with a huge smirk. Time skip. Rias and her parage look at Azaz with a dumbfounded expression at the new information. That dragon was a test for us, Rias says. Yup. And we failed miserably, Rias replied. Yup, Azazel said. Azazel gleefully smiles, causing Rias to let her aura flare, earning a flinch from her queen. That is Tanin, a former dragon king, now half-devil and high-ranking member of the dragon faction, Azazel says. Hearing the name Tanin, everyone freezes, knowing about his strength, and they avert the attention to the former dragon king. I must admit, that wasn't that bad. The young Durandal wielder has good potential, and the holy demonic sword user has decent agility, Tanin says. Did the dragon just talk, Zonovi replied? It did, Kiva said. You're... But your teamwork was very sloppy. You have a lot to improve, especially you, Rias. You must have ordered them to attack Tanin on sight, Zazel says. Hearing Azazel pointing out their mistakes, Rias bites her lips in frustration. We managed to push back a former Dragon King. This is good enough. Keep dreaming, King. Tanin was just using 10% of his power, Zazel says. A tick mark appears next to Rias' head, as Azazel nonchalantly walks away after giving them the teleportation leaflet. This will take you to the Gremory Mansion. Lord Gremory wishes to have dinner with you, and all of you will start our training. Your brother has invited a newly appointed second governor of Co. Issei Katamai to the Gremory Mansion, so your brother wants you to avoid disturbing him or his barrage members. In the blink of an eye, Azazel disappears into thin air, leaving a shocked Rias, and soon a small grin appears on her face. I don't care what the fuck my brother says. He is mine, Rias says. Now, in the Gremory Mansion, scene break. After a long day, Issei finds himself in his parage, teleported to the gates of a huge mansion located at the center of the city. A devil guard comes closer towards Issei, and a smirk its way towards his face looks at Mordred and Mash with lecherous eyes. Halt! This is off limits for civilians. This is the housing of the great Lord Grimory, so why don't you let me have... Why don't you let me have these sluts? Hmm, they'll do fine, the guard says. The ignorant guard moved towards the girls greedily, eyeing them, while the other civilian devils nearby just sigh. Oh, I don't think Lord Gremory will be happy once he finds out that his guests have been ill-treated, and I don't like the fact that you're flirting with my mate, Issei says. With a fake smile, Issei warns the guard, but deep down, one could feel the enormous amount of hatred. Fuck you, asshat. These low-class bitches must be proud of receiving an esteemed mid-class devil's dick. I'll be have her crave my dick like a bitch in the heat. Issei, show him the feeling of death, Drake says. Oh, low-class, huh? You have the guts to take them from me, huh? Issei lets out his blood-red aura, run from scaring the shit out of every single devil while the guard falls to his knees and able to breathe. Scared beyond under looking at, the unstable smile on Issei's face and his eyes change into that of a dragon's, and about 50 low-class devil guards hastily try to approach him, but failing miserably. The civilian devils run away from the scene, unable to resist their primal instinct, and then a Gremory magic circle appears from it, and highly panicked Lord Gremory comes out to face a sweating profusely at the unnatural smile on Issei's face. Lord Codamine, you're scaring the civilians, Lord Grimory says. Issei, calm down, Mordred says. He just released an aura equivalent of a high-tier ultimate class. He isn't even using his full powers, Lord Grimory says. P please don't kill me, the guard says. Wrong choice of words. I hate people like you, Issei says. Issei's aura comes into contact with the guard whose body evaporizes, unable to withstand the aura. Lord Grimory, pleasure meeting with you. I think I owe you an apology for disintegrating one of your guards. He tried to lay his filthy hands on my mate. With a nervous laugh, Lord Grimley apologized to him for his guard, and soon Grafia appears next to the guide in the rooms. Please feel free to do anything you want to, Grafia. He will be a small torrent around the mansion, Lord Grimley says. With a small smile, Lord Grimley leaves them with the strongest queen who humbly bows down to greet them. Lord Codamine, Lady Pentadragon, if you would like, may I give you a small tour of the mansion, Grafia says. Sure, I appreciate it. Tell me, Lady Grafia, how is Sir Sex? Isis says. P 
Please refrain from addressing me with such titles, Lord Codamine. I'm just a maid of Lucifer. And to answer your question, he is fine, Grapheus says. Grapheus sternly corrects Issei with a stoic stone, which earns a small look of curiosity from Mash. We dragons always respect the strong lady, Grapheus, Issei says. You're the one bearing the title of the strongest queen, right? Mordred said, I am, Lady Pentadragon, Grapheus says. Then let's have a spar with a huge manacle grin on the Knight of Treffery. Challenges the silver-haired queen annihilation to a duel, earning a face palm from Issa and a sweat drop from the stonic mater swell. I apologize for my mate. She's a bit of a battle maniac. Since she's a dragon now, her tendencies have multiplied, Issa says. There is no need for an apology, Lord Coat of Mine, and I would wholeheartedly accept the spar if you wish, Lady Pentadragon. Yeah, I got a duel, Mordred says. Princess, control yourself, Issei replies. I am merely curious to see the girl next to you, Grafia says. Out of curiosity, which is rare of the stoic mage, she asks about Mash, causing her, causing Bash's mind to go stiff. Ah, she's my newest pawn, Issei says. Pleasure to meet you, Lady Grafia. I am M Mash, pawn of Issei, Mash says. With a shy tone, Mash introduces herself to Grafia, who slightly smiles at her. Likewise. Lady Mash, Grafia says. Time skip. Scene break. The Red Dragon Emperor, along with his parage, walk into this main hallway which is filled with butlers and maids who could bow down to them at respect. This place sure has a lot of maids, Mordred said. Devils highly believe in the system of hierarchy, Issei replied. As they were walking through the hallway, a cute young boy with short crimson red hair advances towards the Red Dragon. You're the one who caused the aura flare, aren't you? The voice says. With a small scowl on his face, the boy young glares at him, causing Issei and Mordred to be amused by his actions. I am. It's impressive that you could sense that, kid, Issei says. Why did you do it? The kid replied. A snob threatened someone to get close to me, so I guess, Issei replied. With a sheepish grin, Issei nonchalantly explains to the boy who scoffs in return, amusing Issei even more. You shouldn't have done that. What if an innocent man got caught up in it? Tell me, kid, were you able to sense the power of my aura? I was able to. It was the range of an ultimate class. Aren't you afraid of my power, kid? Issa replies, no. It's a noble's duty to save the innocent, so I'll do anything to defend them, the kid says. With all the serious he could muster, the kid proudly exclaims, causing Issa and his queen to break out laughing. You have such a good heart, Mordred replies. Well, if you are noble, where are your manners, Issa says. With a smirk, Issa questions the young boy who answers with an innocent smile. I am Milikis Grimmery. Nice to meet you. The serious tone of his sudden vanish is a cheerful one and takes place. You're the son of Sir Zex, aren't you? I'm Issei Kodamine, but you can call me Issei, Issei says. I am Mordred Pentadragon, the true heir of King Arthur. The boy identified as Milikis suddenly bows down. I am sorry for being cold, but I just wanted to make sure the people were fine, Issei, Milikis says. With a coldness completely gone, the son of Lucifer flashes a cheerful smile akin to his father's. You're pretty powerful, Milikis. I can... Tell that you're powerful as a low tier high class devil, while most of the pure blood devil kids of your age are just low class or mid class in power. You have, have you ever trained? N no, I have never trained. I was born with this power. Grandfather said the devils only train after they're ten. Milikus says with a sad smile. The boy looks at a couple who have slightly shocked his expression. You are something else, Milikus. You have the potential to reach ultimate class. Keep trying hard and do not become an arrogant prick. You're kind of weird, in a good way. Can we be friends, please? Milikus says, I am your friend, Issei replies. Issei gently ruffles his hair, walks away from his parage, following him, but before leaving Mordred, flashes a smile at him. Drake, you felt that, right? I did. It's a suppression seal, Drake said. Issei inwardly chuckles at Drake's word while diving deep into his thoughts. He has such tremendous amount of potential. He is surpassing his powers. He's suppressing his powers. He must be at least high... Tier high class in power, Milikus Grimmery, you are amazing. You have the potential to reach the realm of the gods, Issei said. Seems like you take a liking to him, Mordred says. I did. He just looks like Sir Zex. He's kind of funny. He and his mother, cold demeanor, and his father's cheerful attitude. He is also cute, Mordred says. Time skip. Currently, there was an unbelievable incident taking place, which was Issei and his parage seated at the dinner table with Rhea sitting on the opposite side of the table. Rhea keeps on staring at the red dragon who holds back the urge to kill her right here. Noticing his Mordred throws a cold glare at Rias, who returns the same while the members of the ORC look violently avoiding the eye contact. I really want to kill her right now, Issei thinks in his head. Lord Grimmery says, please relax and enjoy yourselves. By the way, Lord Issei, Lord Grimmery shoots Rias a glare, 
clearly understanding the staring contest. Yes, he said replies. I have been informed that you'll be taking part of the training montage. I hope you have a good time, Lord Grimmery says. Thanks for your concern, Lord Grimmery. Ah, quite a gentleman you are, Lord Issei, Lady Grimmery says. With a mischievous smirk, Lady Grimmery teases Issei, who just brushes it off. Well, this is the format... Even please refrain from your being your mischievous self, Lord Grimmery says. You're no fun. Hmm, Lady Grimmery replies, slightly pouts, earning a small blush from Lord Grimmery seeing Mordred chuckles. Seeing this, Mordred chuckles. Mother, I will... Maria starts. Lady Grimmery cuts her off daughter by engaging the conversation with Mordred. Lady Pentadragon, may I call you Mouse Son? Of course you can, Mordred says. Well then, Mousen, if you want to take any advice from me, feel free to ask, Lady Grimmery says. Mordred's face changes in a deep red embarrassment, causing Issei to stare at them blankly. Women are strange, Issei says. Indeed, Dreg replies. And the rest of the dinner was filled with utter silence, but it wasn't peaceful as Rhea's glare was directed towards Mordred. And that is the end of Chapter 17. Chapter 18. Third POV, Unknown Location. This is a magnificent sight, isn't it? Tomoki says. Tomoki takes a glance at the ominous altar, which has an aura of the dread surrounding its couple of mages emerge from the shadows of the grin. Take a look at the heavy mana presence surrounding this altar. This must be used by a supernatural entity, Mage One says. The Totska Pariarch and a couple of other mages approach the ancient altar with a power hung with power hungry. This isn't a typical altar, this one is special. This is specific altar was built 2,500 years ago for a sole reason of execution, but what many don't know is the altar is a seal, Toki says. A what? The mage replies. A seal which confines an ancient relic, one feared through the supernatural world. It can make the mightiest of the ultimate class tremble, Tomoki says. What relic are you talking about, Sir Totsuka? The mage says. Hearing the unknown mage's question, the Totsuka Parich grins widens. The curse of the gods, the true power of bewitching black serpent, but it's completely refined as a sea bill or mystic eyes of petrification, Tomoki says. Suddenly, the mage nearby lets out a gas as he finds the staff lodged into his chest. Ah, isn't it pleasant to be killed by a fellow magi? But alas, what needs to be done needs to be done. Unfortunately, I can't let you walk away with this information. A magus should never trust another magus, Tomoki says. The dying mage looks at his killer with shock and disbelief as the jewel of Tomoki's staff glows and soon the mage gets incinerated. The mystic eyes will be a great help in my search for Seraph of Grail. And once I get the Grail, I'll make sure the old Satan bastards die a painful death for my betrayal of our terms. Ah, speaking around betrayal, the Hyoto family got butchered by some random freak. I wonder, is the child with the mystic eyes that they've adopted and experimented under my orders alive? What was his name? Issei, uh, yeah, Issei Hyoto, Tomoki says. Let's just make this a note. Tomoki did not know that Issei was the Red Dragon Emperor when he made Issei Hyoto family adopt him. He just knew about it, Issei's mystic eyes. That's all he knew, just for clarification. Now, scene break. We're at the Gremory Mansion. You want Mash to be trained by Tanin? Issei says. Correct, Azazel replies. With a smug grin, Azazel replies to the Red Dragon Emperor's previous questioning, causing Issei to facepalm himself. The poor girl will be traumatized by him, Issei says, but she'll be get stronger, Azazel replies. You want me to send her to the Dragon Valley for a whole month? Issei replies. Yes, Azazel says. Have you lost your mind? Azazel says. Issei yells at the Governor of Fallen Angels, who lets out a small sigh in return. Look. I don't know a lot about dragons and half-dragons, but I know what will happen if you keep a hatchling sheltered for a long time, Azazel says. She is... Just a week old, Issei says. Have you become soft, Red Dragon Emperor? Azazel replies. A taunting smirk makes its way to Azazel's face, earning him a scoff from Issei. Fine, I'll send her to the Dragon Valley for Tani to train her. But if I find her missing a limb or two, you're gonna die in the most painful way possible, Issei says. With a cold gaze adorning his face, Issei threatens the Governor of the Fallen, who laughs nervously at the threat. And I have made a special arrangement for the blondie with Oki to Soju, the Knight of Sir Sex. To help her with her swordsmanship, as Izzel says. I am aware of the fact that my Mordred lacks technique in swordsmanship, as her stance is mainly focused on strength and speed, Issei says. For you, I believe that you can just train yourself in isolation, Azazel says. I am sure I'm going to miss my Mordred and her adorable smile, Issei says to himself. Issei's neutral demeanor morphs into a sad smile, causing Azazel to raise an eyebrow. You're fine, aren't you, Azazel says. I'm good. I was just curious if anyone from the Gremory's parage will be trained by Tanin. 
Ah, uh, yes. Tanin personally wants to train Barkil's daughter. Zazel says, oh, Issa replied. The next day, scene break. On the courtyard of the Gremory Mansion, the Red Dragon Emperor amidst of the Rising Sun bids farewell to his barrage. Take good care of yourselves. I'll be back in a month in MASH. Tani, don't, won't hurt you while training, so don't quit, so quit worrying and use this to self-improve. I'll, I'll try my best, MASH says. With a meek smile, MASH turns away as Tani flashes a thumb and gently carries her away. I'm going to enjoy this training to its fullest, Mordred says. I'm sure you will. Just stay safe, Issei says. Bye, Mordred replies. Mordred gently kisses him, causing Azazel to groan. I'll miss you, Issei says. A pair of emerald-colored wings sprouts from Issei's back, and the Red Dragon Emperor flies away, taking a last glance at this queen, is his queen's beautiful eyes. Now, with Mash. A defeating blast echoes throughout a valley in which Mash desperately tries to escape from the blaze meteor dragon's blast. He, he said, Tanin won't hurt me, Mash said. Getting distracted in a battlefield is fatal, young one, Tanin said. Tanin once again fires a turret of flames at the exhausted dragoness, who narrowly dodges the attack. Suddenly, another torrent of flame hits Mash, who falls into the ground exhausted. Hmm, your reflexes are good for a hatchling, but dwarfs in comparisons to an experienced dragon. And we'll have to train on you to hand-to-hand -hand combat, Tanin says. Uh, okay, Mash replied. Now get up, hatching. We haven't finished our training yet, Tanin yells. While Tanin roars at the poor girl, a teleportation circle appears, and from it the Priestess of Thunder arrives with a mischievous smile. Ha! <laughs> this makes me hot, Akino says. Suddenly, Mash feels a chill down her spine as Tanin turns around, facing the Queen of Rias. You're late, daughter of Barkyol. Tanin says, I am sorry. Please do not punish me, Akino says. With a slurdy smile on her face, the Priestess of Thunder tries to teach the former Dragon King, but failing miserably. I, are you really Barkyol's daughter? Tanin said. Don't ever say his name, Akino replied. Your training for today is to evade my attacks and attack me till you're out of steam. Tomorrow I'll take both of you to the Dragon Valley for you to meet other young dragons, Tanin said. Before that, you must be... Mash Pawn of Issei. I am Akino Hajima, Queen of Rias Gremory. I'm looking forward to training with you, Akino says, with a smile that Akino introduces herself to Mash while waving her hands. Location unknown. Scene break. A magic circle appears from it. Mordred comes out and leads to find the forest, causing her to raise an eyebrow. The crow said that someone called Okita Soji will be here. After a few minutes of searching the forest, the Knight of Treachery finds a silhouette under a sakura tree. This place is really stunning, Mordred replies. Mordred tries to sneak on the shittlewet by concealing her presence, but gently gasps in a shock, having a look at the shittlewet. It was a girl in her mid-teens who wraps her body in fashionable Japanese clothing and has an unnatural aura around her. You must be Mordred Pentadragon, I presume. The girl suddenly averts her gaze towards Mordred, who looks at her with wide eyes. I am, Mordred replies. I am Okatisoji, Knight of Serzex Lucifer. Now, shall we have a spar? I'm itching for a good fight, Mordred says. I'll be glad to face you, Knight of Treachery, Okita says. Now, with Issei. In an archery located on the Underworld Club, Issei raises a classic bow and, with outstanding concentration, aims at a target. With his aim never faltering, the Hunter of the Red Plains releases the string and soon the arrow hits the target in the bullseye. What the fuck is he? No supernatural creature I've ever seen. His target... 10,936 yards away accurately, Random Devil says. The other devils in the room back away nervously while a few newbies look at him with curiosity. Hey, this is the one who killed the guard of Marcus of the House of Gremory household, the Random Devil said. You're quite famous, it seems, Drake says. Oh, great, Issei replies. Drake internally chuckles at Issei's sarcastic remark. This isn't training. This is kids' play for someone like you, so why don't you train a bit seriously, Drake said. I think you're correct. I must take things seriously, Drake. Do you know of any isolated places to train? Issei replies. Aye. There is a place called Dragon's Bane on the Shinto realm. I think it would be do just fine, Drake says. Thanks for your help, partner, Issei replied. In the blink of an oven eye, Issei disappears into thin air, leaving a bunch of flabbergasted devils. Time skip. In a flash, Issei appears out of nowhere into a dense forest, causing Drake to groan as the boosted gear manifests itself on Issei's hands. This isn't Dragon's Bane. This is a, looks like a creepy shine. We have been teleported to the wrong place, Drake said. Ah, but I must admit, 
This place is creepy, Issei says. In front of them was a spooky shrine, which most likely is abandoned. I'm going to search this place for any living thing, Issei says. Issei decides to take a stroll through the shrine and slowly inspects the shrine while never letting down his guard. Partner, I can sense a faint sense of aura inside the shrine, Drake says. Issei approaches the shrine cautiously, and for a moment he sets foot on the shrine and disappears in an autonomous forest, replaces the shrine causing Issei to put up his guard even further. Reverse special teleportation loophole, Issei says to himself. If it is true, when we have no choice but to destroy this mini dimension, Drake said. We can't escape this place by running, flying, or teleportation. This place is an endless loop. You'll end up in the same place even if you fly for years, Issei says. Suddenly, Issei snaps his head in a particular direction with a small frown on his face. This aura must be a kitsune, Issei replies. Issei... Spreads his magic draconic wings and searches for any living thing, but spots a huge chunk of ice located far away. Issei flies towards the ice at speeds nearing Mach 2. Gre location, Grammary Mansion. Now we're back with the Grammary, so scene break. We're no longer with Issei. The sounds of kicks and punctions echoes through the surroundings as the Rook of Rias works out with determination on her eyes. I don't need it. I won't become a monster, Konako says. Look, now we're at a new scene break location, secluded chambers of the Grammary Mansion. I just of the colossal library books the crimson-haired ruined princess desperately searches for a book. Where the hell is it, Rias says. In a fit of rage, Rias bangs her fist on the bookshelves, causing a pile of books to fall down. But when Rias' anger changes into a smile as she picks a book from the pile of books. Hmm, let's see. Cultural Heritage of Dragons, Draconic Anatomy. Ah, uh, what is this book? Let's see. The Dragon Eater. This will do just fine, Rhea says. A predatory smirk appears on her face as the torrent of negativity surrounds her. Now, scene break. We're with Issei. Issei looks at the site before him with a cautious huge hill of ice radiating a faint trace of aura seen. Partner, this looks like the seal which that someone or something is trapped inside, Drake says. I have never seen an ice strong, uh, the ice this strong in my life. Except for the cactus, Issei says. This ice is a fine one indeed, but even this pales in comparison to Albion's ice spells, Drake said. Should I break the ice? I would break the ice if I were you, Drake says. Hearing Drake's advice, Issei ponders on what to do for a couple of minutes and finally makes his decision. I have decided. I'll break the ice and find what's inside. A good choice, partner. Now tell me, how do you plan on breaking the ice seal? It seems to be at least an ultimate class seal. Balance break. Welts Dragon Balance Breaker! A bright red light invades the surroundings as the light dissipates. Issei, covered in his balance breaker, is seen fully. Boost! Times 50. Huge amounts of mana accumulates on his lungs with a mighty roar. The mana was released as a huge torrent of fire. After a few minutes, the fire stops, revealing a nearly all vaporized, earning a smirk from Issei. Time to check out the remains of the seal, Issei says. As Issei gets closer to the remains of the ice seal, his face morphs into a one of pure shock. A female kitsune, Drake says. In the middle of the remains is a gorgeous girl with long pink hair and fox characteristics with such the ears and tail. The girl was wearing an elegant blue kiyomo as she laid amid the ice with a peaceful smile on her face. I'm starting to think the author likes fox girls. Am I right, guys? I just wanted to say that. Anyway, back to the story. I didn't expect the kitsune to be the one that's sealed, Issei says. The woman in front of you is no random kitsune. She has aura of divinity on her. She is a nine-tailed kitsune, Drake says. She seems to be in a coma due to extended periods of imprisonment, Issei replies. Issei gently checks her pulse. With a snap of his fingers, the unconscious girl levitates into the air, while the dimension around them crumbles into a burst in light as the Red Dragon Emperor finds himself on the creepy shine with the mysterious kitsune next to him. Drake, how many nine-tailed kitsune were recorded in history, Drake says? Only a handful. Of nine-tailed kitsune has ever existed, and the only two alive are Yakuza, the leader of the Kyoto Yokai faction, and her daughter, Kyono. But I assure you that this woman is not Yakuza, Drake says. As Drake was explaining about the nine-tailed yokai, the unconscious woman slightly opens her eyes, gaining regaining her consciousness. Well, where am I? I can remember those wretched yokai. They took everything from me. The Kitsune yells out, st startling Issei a bit, and a huge fireball comes crashing onto Issei, creating a small explosion in front of Issei comes out with his shirt completely burned, as a massive frown made its way towards his face. I helped you, and I get a fireball to my face. Is this how you greet others? Issei says. Shut up, you vile creature. You're here to make my life miserable, one, aren't you? You're all the same, the girl replies. 
The girl responds with a snarl, preparing another spell, causing Issei to sigh. I am a dragon and not a yokai, and I am here to make your life miserable. I'm not here to make your life miserable. I freed you from prison, Issei says. This is the Kyoma Code period, isn't it? The Kisei says. Hearing this, Issei nearly tips due to shock at her question. What? When were you imprisoned? Issei says. Uh, the year 1193. Issei just sits there in silence. Drake sits there in silence. That's... 828 years ago. You were in prison for 828 years, Issei says? Issei answers come in a form of whisper while Kitsune stares at him with a blank expression. Wh which year is it? It's 2021, Issei replies. What the fuck? Who are you? Issei replies. Why should I tell you? The girl says. The girl snaps at his question as a smirk forms on Issei's face. I'll ask you a question and you can ask me one. It's a win-win for both of us, Issei says. The girl stares at the ground for a moment, pondering the offering with a small sigh agrees. Fine, who are you? The girl says. Issei Hyodo, the strongest red dragon emperor and full-fledged dragon. Now tell me, who are you? Issei says. With a proud smirk, Issei answers a question, earning a small smile from the kitsune. Reincarnation of the divine fox yokai, Tama no Mei. Hearing this, Issei's smirk gets replayed by an emotionless stare. If you're telling the truth, I have to admit that I am shocked. But how do I know that you're not a threat? Issei says. Chill, dragon boy. I won't mindlessly kill everyone in my set, Tamiyo says. Issei groans at Tamiyo's nickname for causing her to giggle. How were you trapped inside the ice seal? Issei says. A frown replaces her giggles the moment she heard this question. When I was weakened, a wandering ice mage used his fire force to reinforce his ice magic and su successfully sealed me at the cost of his life. It's your turn to answer. Tell me about the Shiodo Pantheon and the Yokai faction, Tamiyo says. The Shiodo Pantheon lost a bit of their territories to the devils, but other than that, nothing big has happened. And the Yokai faction's authority has rapidly declined to a state where only territory they have is the city of Kyoto. Tatsuki and Hiraki, but the ruler of the yokai faction, Yakusa, a nine-tailed fox, is doing a good job at recovering the glory of the lost yokai faction, Issei says. Hearing Issei's lecture about the yokai faction, Tamiyo burst out laughing. Ha! Those fools deserve even worse than this, Tamiyo says. One final question. What are you going to do after this, Issei says. Hmm... Maybe we'll kill a bunch of yokai and wander the realms, Tamiyo says. Tamiyo nonchalantly answers his question as Issei sighs at her bluntness. I am in a search for an isolated place to train. If you wish to follow me, you're welcome, Issei says. I don't train with lizards weaker than me, Tamiyo replies. Issei attempts to hold back a laugh but fails to do so, causing her eyebrows to twitch. You know, the last person who said that to me ended up pretty badly, Issei said. Why don't you prove it to me, dragon boy? Time skip. Y you Tamiyo says, a battered and bruised Tamiyo laid on the ground, clearly exhausted, while Issei was standing next to her with a few minor bruises and burns. Is this enough? Issei says, I'll follow you, Tamiyo replies. Now with Mordred two weeks later. So this is a time skip to two weeks later. With Now we're with Mordred. Ah, stay still, bastard, Mordred says. Mordred desperately tries to land a hand on her opponent, but Okita successfully dodges all of her strikes. Not bad. You're improved considering your terrible lack of technique in your swordplay when we first had a spar, Okita said. Using her katana, Okita skillfully blocks Mordred and disarms her. This isn't fair, Mordred said. Your physical strength and reflexes surpass mine, but you have a huge lack of technique. But you are slowly getting better, Okita said. Thanks, I guess, Mordred replies. Now we're with Mash. Mash was running for her dear life, as Tanin fired numerous fireballs without giving her a rest while far away, Akino was reportedly using thunder on a rock which failed to shatter. For the past two weeks, I have done nothing but use my electricity to shatter rocks. This isn't training, Akino says. Ah, Mash says. Keep dodging, Hatchling, Tanin replies. You're insane, Mash says. Respect your elders, young Hatchling, Tanin says. Suddenly, a huge firestorm surrounds Mash, trapping her inside of the fire. In about a minute, the fire will begin to scorch your pseudo dragon scales. Try to find a way out before that happens, Tanin says. Please stop this, Mash says. No, I can't. Now save yourself, Tanin says. Mash is POV. So we're going into like her first person moment. The firestorm Tanin summoned was beginning to get closer. I feel like I am being roasted. What is this feeling? Is this fear? Am I scared of death? I was created without being able to feel any negative emotions. But why can I feel fear? But then several images invaded my mind. I want to get stronger. 
Mash says. The image of Mordred patting my head appeared. I need to get stronger, Mash said. The image of Issei teaching me about things appeared. If I don't, the image of Mordred beating me in spar appeared. I think, Mord, uh, Mord, Mash says, the image of Issei saving me from those wretched bastards appeared. My vision went red. I am not worthy of their friendship, Mash says. Everything went black as I felt unconscious. Third POV. Back with Tani. Tanya was getting worried as the firestorm began to get incredibly close to Mash. Mash said, Ah! Mash's shield transformed into a green-colored magical barrier, which easily dispels the tornado of flames, then falls to the ground unconscious. Well, this was unexpected, Tanya says. Now, back with Issei. An exquisite hidden lair covered by Issei was meditating under a giant ice drag view. Next to her, Tamiyo was also trying to meditate but failing miserably. This sucks. It's been two weeks and the only thing you've made me do is meditate, Tamiyo says. Meditation helps better health and controlling of our aura. But this sucks, Tamiyo says. The fox priestess whines like a child, to which Issei responds with a sweat drop. I am trying to enter the subconscious of the boosted gear, so please don't disturb me, Issei says. Fine, Tamiyo replies. Tamiyo leaves Issei to do his training, goes to find and goes out to find anything to eat. Inside the subconscious of the boosted gear, Issei found himself floating on a void, but then a strange force pulls him away from the void. Now with Issei. Issei suddenly appears and opens his eyes with confusion attached to his face to which Tamiya raises an eyebrow. Drake, something blocked me from entering the subconscious of the boosted gear. Partner, it looks like the boosted gear is responding to your draconic nature and it's changing itself, Drake says. Hearing this, Issei's confusion changes to worry. A subspecies, Issei says? No, the boosted gear is undergoing an evolution. In other words, you may gain access to a power similar to Juggernaut Drive, Drake says. Ah, good news for me, Issei says. It is, Drake says. Drake, I was thinking about Sona. I don't know what to do about her, Issei says. Issei asks with anxiety dripping of his voice, which is a rare sight. Do you have any kind of romantic feelings for her? Drake said. I don't know, Issei says. Geez, you really are dense, partner, Drake says. With an amused chuckle, Drake laughs inside Issei's head. Follow your heart's desire. It will help you, Drake said. Easy for you to say. I like her, but I can't. I can't cheat on Mordred, Issei says. You can have a harem, just like you wished back then, Drake says. That part of me is dead. I don't want to be a sex-crazed maniac who bangs everyone. I want to be loyal to my princess just like how she is loyal to me. He says, snaps at Traeger and a huge smile and sigh. In sign from Drake. Try to act a bit mature, he say. Your mate understood about the culture of a dragon and gave her permission to have Sona as your mate, Drake said. Issei suppresses the urge to yell as he gets frustrated hearing Drake's advice. You don't know what it feels like to be betrayed and stabbed in your back like Rhys did. You don't know how it feels to think about the only hope casting you aside, Issei replies. You believe that Mordred would cast you aside, Drake says. I do, Issei says. Issei internally screams at Drake, causing Drake to go silent for a minute, and then boosted gear manifests itself on Issei's arm and punches him in the face. I understand that you have troubles with trusting others, but this is just extreme, Drake says. Says the oldest virgin with no experience or love. Do you know how it would feel if your love left you all alone in the darkest days? I do. I was in love with the most beautiful and the most fearless dragonist I have ever met, but one day she left me, alone one of my darkest days for the sake of gathering her fucking treasures, and neglected me for her precious little treasures while I was in pain in the day I met Albion, my rival, soon I devoted my life for sake of getting stronger to beat my internal rival, Drake says. With the intention to knock some sense into his mind, Drake reveals his dark past to Issei who goes silent hearing the words. Issei says they're in silence. I hope I have knocked some sense into your thick skull, partner. Issei learned to never temper him. Finally, a decision was made. And the text starts going crazy. I will always love you, Ty Matt, Drake says. Time skip, last day of training. We're at the courtyard of the Grimmery Mansion. I swear, I'm going to kick his ass for making me worried, Mordred says. Suddenly, Mordred senses a presence behind her, and with her guard up, turns around only to be met with his king and Tamiya with a sly smile. Long time no see, Issei says. Issei fucking Kodamine, you have a lot to explain about the girl behind you, Mordred said. Issei nervously laughs as he met with a punch to his face by Mordred. This is a misunderstanding. This is Tamiyo. No, my latest bishop, Issei says. Nice to meet you, Tamiyo says. How did you manage to recruit her? Mordred says, well, Issei says, time skip. Now we're back. 
So she wanted to join the group on her own will? Yes, Issa replied. Well, welcome to the group, Mordred says. With a huge grin, Mordred walks away, but then Issa appears behind her and whispers something into her ears. I have decided to pay the Sea Tree Mansion a visit. You wouldn't mind if I do, would you? Issa says. I... Go ahead, Mordred replies. With a small smile on his face, Issa leaves the Grembury Mansion. And that is the end of Chapter 18. And that will be where we're going to stop for now. Thank you guys so much for the support. It's been absolutely incredible. I know I've been MAA for like six days, and that's because I've been, uh, I don't know, man. I've just been, I needed a break. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I don't even want to get into my personal life. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to fuck you guys over in the process because I'm already mind fucked right now so let's go ahead and just get past that so thank you guys so much for the support I'm going to start doing things that I enjoy more so I'm going to make more series I'm going to try to go back into the content grind I'm going to focus on my passion and focus on myself now I was a little lost there for a minute I can't lie but once again thank you to my balance breakers Rob the King Jorge Alvarez Lachlan Yates Atomic Warlord 58 Kozakel Toltec Sun God, Daybreak, VR Wolf Hashtag 2347, Sinrar Q, Jordan Pacho, and Mazaku. Thank you so much for becoming a balance breaker. Without further ado, I am going to do What If Naruto Was Betrayed Part 1 will most likely be my next series, and What If Issei Awakened the Boosted Gear earlier or early will be a movie, 1000%, and I promise you guys that. I do have really good things coming soon, so just thank you guys so much for the support. I need you guys now more than ever, let me just put it that way. So, I need to get out of this little state that I'm in. I need to I need to go back to focusing on my, on my passion. My passion is both track, and I do sprints, by the way. Uh, I run the four and the two is my main event, and I'm running things. And I've been doing really well in the events, just because of all the support. So once again, like I always come back here and I'm I couldn't be thankful enough. Like you guys don't understand. I completely get I, I I'm I'm much bigger than I used to be, and I don't un quite understand that yet. But like, thank you guys so much. Let's try to hit like 400 to 500 likes. And if you guys enjoyed this series, thank you so much for the support. And without further ado, Spartanic Arts DxD out. What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Was Betrayed It Became a God Part 8. Let's try to hit 500 to 600 likes. If you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. First off, a special thank you to my balance breakers, Rob the King. Jorge Alvarez, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Kozakel Toltec Sun God, Daybreak, VR Wolf Hashtag 2347, Sinra RQ, Jordan Patchow, Mazaku, Dr. Underscore MLG Underscore is the bomb. Thank you so much for becoming a Balance Breaker, which is the highest tier membership in my channel membership tier. Seriously, can't thank you enough. If you guys want to see what ifs on other anime or Goku in general, I love Dragon Ball, go ahead and subscribe to my second channel down in the description below and Popowski. And without further ado, let's go. Go ahead and get right into part eight chapter 19 location unknown third pov ha i found it i found it finally i did it i can't wait to break her in a dark room which appears to be a dungeon a voice filled with malice and desire echoes along with manacle laughter at last i found it i found the perfect maiden who i desire Ah, oh, master. Soon screams of ecstasy fills the room as the sound's bang increases, but then a photo of a knight of treachery lands nearby, blown a breeze. I'm bored and I have no use for you hereafter, you vile slave. Go prepare the bush-ups. I shall have them in my room tonight. Yes, master. I can't wait to taste my dear little maiden. A shalite of a man with green hair picks up the photo of Mordred and places it on a desk nearby. Location, Sea Tree Training Gowns. A teleportation circle opens up from it, and Issei comes out with a small smile on his face as he finds himself on a cliff where he can see a huge lake. They are the Sea Tree Training Grounds? Issei thought to himself. Issei spreads his wings and flies towards the lake, but then finds a barrier around the lake protecting it. Piece of cake! Issei says. A hole appears around the barrier through which Issei enters the training grounds with a content smile. Partner, a presence is approaching us, Drake says. Must be Sona and her parade, she said, replied. You know that trespassing is a major crime, Sona says. The Melita's voice of Sona reaches his ears, earning a smile from Issei who notices in Sona was behind him. You've improved, Issei says. Of course I am. What brings you here, Issei? 
Sona stops. With a small destructive seduct dishonored voice, Sona tries to tease the Red Dragon Emperor, which gets no response from him. I just wanted to check on you guys, Issei replied. Hmm, trying to deduce my Paraja's development, are you? Sona says. Maybe, maybe not, Issei says. Sona rolls her eyes at Issei. His antics earning a small chuckle from Issei, but Sona soon finds herself getting tense. This certainly decreases my stress, but I find it hard to believe that you paid me a visit without any hidden motives, Sona said. Is it that obvious? Issei replied. Sona chuckles at Issei's comment, but then raises an eyebrow at the Red Dragon Emperor's change in character. This can't be my Issei. This must be a replica of my... Did someone abduct him? Sona says to herself. Issei notices that Harris' face filled with doubts and concerning earning a sigh from him. I assure you that I am Issei Kodamine, not a doppelganger, Issei says. Well then, why don't we have a nice conversation inside the Sea Tree Royal Farmhouse, Sona says. How nice of you, Sona. Now, we're with Mordred. In a highly decorated room in the Gremory Mansion, Mordred, Tamio, and Mash are seated next to each other having a conversation. Foxy, tell me, did you see my e convinced you'd be in his parage, Mordred said? Actually, I was the one who wanted to join him, Tamio says. Flashback a week before. A huge explosion takes place, scorching the ground nearby. Ha! My powers are cooler than yours, Issei says. If you're cooler than me, does that make me hotter than you? Tamio says. With a predatory smirk on her face, the fox priestess throws a witty remark with sarcasm dripping off her voice. Ha! Maybe, Issei replied. Boost! Times five, Drake says. The boosted gear glows, earning a curious smirk from Tamio. But then a fist comes crashing into her face, but Tamio dodges and fires a golden beam hits him. Quite powerful, Issei says. There's still more, Tamio replies. A strange sensation invades Issei's mind, as its draconic instincts react to the sensation by pure instinct. The red dragon flares his aura. His aura. Senjutsu, Issei says. I have mastered all the forms of key manipulation, and Senjutsu is one of them. And by using Senjutsu, I can put a person's life force like severing puppet strings. But it's hard to do it when having a huge reserve of mana. A crimson orb makes contact with Tamio, causing a small explosion while she was busy rambling. Payback accomplished, Issei said. Suddenly, Tamio gets up with a strange smile on his face. What's with the smile? Issei says. I have decided. I'll join your parage, Tamio says. With a mischievous grin, Tamio declares, causing Issei to jaw drop at her unexpected declaration. What? Issei says. I have no regrets on my past life. I have no goals to achieve, so I decided to follow you and aid you, Tamio says. If that's what you wish for, I'll gladly do it, Issei says. A lone bishop piece appears on Issei's hands as he places it near her. I have no regrets, Tamio said. By the name of Issei Kodamine, heed my call. Enjoy me, my trusted bishop. Be reborn as my faithful bishop, Tamio no me. Issei says, a bright green and golden light invades the surrounding. After a few minutes, the light dies down and revealing Tamiya with a pair of dragon wings. How do you feel? Issei says. I feel great. This is impressive. My magical reserves have been increased by around 30%. The flashback ends. That's it, Tamiya says. That was quite a nice way to join, Mash said. Welcome to the team, Foxy. You did not try to steal my Issei from me, Mordred said. With a toothy grin, Mordred shakes hands with Tamiya, who giggles mischievously. Don't worry, Mochan. I won't steal your Issei. Good, Mordred says. Location, now we're back at the Sea Tree House. In a well-designed, stylish room, Issei finds himself staring at a bookshelf nearby. Sona, noticing his stare, smiles internally before beginning him a cup of tea. Want some refined tea handmade by myself by using the famous Sea Tree Royal recipes? Sona said. With a boastful smirk on her face, Sea Tree Harris bags about her tea. earning an amused look chuckle from Issei. The tea is quite delicious, Issei says. Thanks for the compliment, I guess, Sichu replies. I've been meaning to ask you about Saji. Tell me how the training is going on, Issei says. Quite well, Sona replied. Sona suddenly goes silent as struggles to refrain as disappointment frown from her replacing stoic face. Hmm. It's good to know that a fellow dragon is doing fine, Issei says. Not to be rude, but why are you here, Sona says. How can I avoid you after that little confession from before, Issei says. With a heavily amused smirk, Issei watches the Sea Tree Harris face turn a deep shade of red. I am so sorry. That was my fault for being rash, Sona said. Look, I'm not angry at you. You sure I was a bit shocked, but I was not angry about it, Issei said. With a heavy sigh, Issei mentally curses himself for feeling anxious, but then decides to calm down and finish his speech. I can't blame you for falling in love with me. After gathering my thoughts, I have decided to give it a shot. I'll keep this short. I've 
had fallen in love with you. I love you, Issei says. Wh what? Sonja replies. The sea tree Harris's face turns red and sheds of red, shed shades of red never seen before. Calm down, Issei. Don't blush. Ah, oh, damn it. I'm a dragon. I shouldn't be losing my composure, Issei says to himself. I... Sona starts to reply. Gathering all the courage she could, the sea tree hair dashes forward and seizes the red dragon's hop lip with hers. Location, outskirts of the Beal Territory. In the beautiful village of the outskirts of the Beal Territory, commoner devils were busy minding their own business. The devil guards on the gates of the village were inspecting the devils entering and leaving the Beal Territory. Guard 1. Man, this is tiring. Why should we have to inspect every single devil who enters this village? The devil guard was relatively young who was questioning an older devil. You have a lot of learning to do, son. The great gate is the only way through the common devils can enter and leave the great territory of Biel, and there are chances that some criminal or old Satan follower may try to infiltrate the great King Biel's territories. As the older devil was delivering a lecture to his son, as a familiar ginger-haired stealer or killer, his so-called creepy mentor arrived, checking the terminal. Welcome to the inspection terminal, hashtag 45. Please hand over your permit and devil identification card, Devil 2 said. Sure, Rinosuke said. Rinosuke and his mentor hand over the card and a few papers to the guard who take a look at the papers and smiles a bit. Welcome to BL Territories. Mr. Black and Mr. Uru, your papers are legitimate and glory to the old Satans. The older devil car the older devil guard whispers at the last part with a wicked grin on his face as the killer duo leaves the great gate enters the streets of the village nearby. So many kids, so many guts, <laughs> Rinosuke says. Location unknown. What do we do? Some mysterious person says, and a spooky building lone voice echoes through the room. Soon two hooded figures appears from the shadows. We must reclaim our rightful place as the Satans and continue our legacy. But first we must help Leviathan escape from the clutches of them. Indeed. But tell me, how are the tasks assigned to you? The first voice lets out a hollow chuckle at the second voice's question. Near London, a few of the soldiers' Elden's elite squadron encountered a group of first-class enforcers from Magus Association, but our men managed to kill them, except one who fled. Casualties on our side? Two. The person replied, The Magus Association must have known about us by now. The second voice sneers at the other voice, who hungs in his head in shame. Apologies. The Magus Association is allied with the angels. So by now, the fake Mao in the heaven must have learnt about this. Is there any precious outpost or bunker at that place? No, but three squadrons are placed near London. Abandon that city and relocate our squadron to the city of Bristol and Birmingham. Task them with scouting potential resources and kill any angel which dares to hinder our plans. Time skip the next day, location, a castle of Cilia, a castle at the city of Billard. The magnificent city of Billard, which was full of advanced technology and busy people. Inside the castle, Issei and his parage were all in elegant costumes for the young devil part. Several devils were gathered, as well as the four devil kings. This place is amazing. I want a house like this. The fox priestess observes the surroundings with curiosity and admiration, causing a few devils nearby to stare at her beauty. A lot of... People, Mash said. Don't be scared, Mash. I'll dispose of any vile devil who dares harm you, Mordred says. The Knight of Treachery reassures the nervous homunculus as she catches the eyes of everyone due to her formal black tuxedo with a white rose on her side. I want that hot chick, Devil One says. I want her, Devil Two replies. A few devils stare at the Knight of Lustful Eyes, but an angry glare from Issei scares them. That's a nice dress, blonde, Azazel says. The Governor General walks towards the group with a smirk and a smile, wearing a white tied suit. Azazel, it's nice to meet you, Issei says. Likewise, Azazel replied. Yo, creepy crow, how's life for you? Mordred replied. With a mythful screen ex chuckle escaping from his lips, Azazel gains a small smile. Life isn't that bad when the Chaos Brigade wants your head and your faction destroyed, Azazel said. The Governor of Fallen Angels answers in a sarcastic way, earning a couple of chuckles from the group. Not bad, Tamio says. May I get the honor of getting to know you, my lady, Azazel replies. Tamio burst out laughing at Azazel's poor attempt at flirting. I'm the reincarnation of Tamio no Mei, the Fox Priestess. It's a pleasure to meet you, Azazel, in the flesh. With a wink? The fox priestess introduces herself to Azazel in a seductive manner. Yo, Issei, Saji says. Across the hallway, Asona and her parage make the way towards Issei and the others. It's good to see you, Issei, Sona says. Sona winks at Issei as she was in an elegant light green party dress, earning a small blush from Issei. 
Like what you see? I do, Issei replies with a grin reviving that of the governor of fallen angels. Issei answers to her filthy remark. The Mordred dress... The, the dress looks good on you, Mordred said. I'm flattered, Sona replied, but before they could continue, suddenly the wall nearby exploded into debris, and through the debris, they saw a man and woman who were in a deep argument. I won't let a filthy bastard such as you as insult my ancestors, Zephador. Quit whining, you shitty old hag, Zephador says. This was bound to happen, Sona replied. Ah, isn't it rude to trash a party hosted by the Devil Kings? The voice was that of a young man with a muscular body who appears next to Zephador, with speeds untraceable by anyone except Issei and Mordred. The man suddenly shifts his attention towards Issei, who stares at him without in with any emotion. Strong, Issei thought. Cyrog Bale, the strongest youth devil, Sona says. Sona Citri, Harris of the Citri clan, Cyrog says. With an air of confidence and pride around him, the young man walks towards the two arguing devils. Zephador, the problem child of the Glacia, Labuas family. Do not anger my fiance, Cyrog said. The young devil proclaims with a smirk, causing the problem child of the Glacia family to frown while the unknown devil gains a faint blush. I'll make you pay for disrespecting me, Beale. Final warning, Cyrorg said. You don't scare me, trash of Beal, Zephador says. The moment Zephador utters those words, he finds himself embedded into a tree, which is half a kilometer away from the castle. Oh, hell, Saji says. Impressive, Mordred replied. Every single devil on the room stares at the gigantic hole through the castle with wide eyes. Fuck, Devil One said. Issei's Paraj and Sona look at the strongest young devil in awe, except Issei, who has had his eyes narrowed. That punch. It was strong enough to knock out a high-tier ultimate class, but he's still holding back. Do you think he's reached the Satan class? The Knight of Treachery whispers to Issei, who's still in at his gaze at the gigantic hole. He may be a low-tier Satan class, but strangely, I can't feel any trace of power of destruction from him, Issei says. Oh, I want to fight him now, Mordred replies. What is this feeling? This devil, he isn't normal. I am sure I can defeat him, but why do I feel tensed? Perhaps there are monsters, huge potential among devils, Issei says. The image of Saji, Cyro Org, and Milikis appears in Issei's mind, as a predatory grin appears on Issei's lip. I can't wait to see their full potential on Lise, Issei says. He is the next heir of the Biel family, Cyro Org. He is known as the strongest youth. Now, with Cyro Org, away from Issei in the group, the strongest devil has a thoughtful look on his face as he walks away. Issei Kodamai, I'm looking forward to meet you in the battleground, Cyrorg says to himself. Now, back with Issei. While Issei and Mordred were having a stroll around the hallway, a young blonde devil bumps into them. A apologies. You're Riser's little sister, Issei says. With a surprised tone, Issei exclaims about the young devil who blushes at his praise. How's your bratty big brother doing, Issei says. Um, actually, quite terrible. Since his humiliating defeat at your hands when you were a devil, he has refused to interact with us and only became worse the news about the Red Dragon Emperor has become a dragon. With a short sigh, the blonde devil expresses her feelings about the condition of her brother earning a sympathetic smile from Issei. I might have went overboard, Issei says. That you did, Ravel replied. Oh, don't ignore me, Mordred said. The once hair of the Camelot punches Issei at his face with a cute surrendering pout. I'm Ravel Phoenix, third born of the third Phoenix. Hmm, I have never met a phoenix devil in all my life. I always wanted to check out a phoenix devil's immortality, Mordred said. Mordred scares the blonde devil with her strange smile. Oh, ha <laughs> ha, Ravel replies. Ah, where's my manners? I am Mordred Pentadragon, the true heir of Camelot. You're the knight of treachery, Ravel said. I am, Mordred replied. With a proud smile adorning her face, the knight of treachery boasts about herself while Ravel looks at the huge pure glee. Oh, my Satan, I am in front of a true knight, but isn't King Arthur's hair a son? No, both King Arthur and Mordred are female. They were portrayed as men by the old historians, but I'm surprised devils know about the legends of King Arthur, Ravel said. The legend of King Arthur is one of the most famous legends in the underworld. It is said that King Arthur once killed a low-tier Satan class only in a handful of Satan class devils were alive at the time, Ravel said. The phoenix devil enters her fangirl mode as she continues to ramble about King Arthur. Hey, it's time for the party to start, so why don't we have this talk later? After the party, Issei says, Oh, 
Ravel replies. Shouldn't you help your big brother since you work for him? Mordred says. No, I don't serve under him, Ravel replies. Hearing this, Issei averts his attention towards the blonde devil. Explain, Issei says. I left his parage for my mother's, Ravel said. You can do that, Issei said. You don't know about trade, Ravel said. Ravel calmly explains about the process of exchanging an evil piece on the condition that the two pieces must have the same value. Beelzebub did a good job on creating the evil piece, Issei said. Mother doesn't participation in rating games, so I'm free piece, Lord Code of Mine, Ravel says. Hmm, just call me by my name without any horrifics, Issei said. Can I call you by your name then, Ravel says. The blonde devil's tone breaks into one filled with embarrassment. Of course, Issei replied. This is boring as hell. I'll wait for you at the party hall, Mordred replies. With a soft kiss to his cheeks, the now blushing blonde knight says her bye to her beloved, earning a squeak from the poor Ravel. You know, your reputation has increased exponentially among the devils since the news about the defeat of Cocafiel and the trial of Rhys Grimory, which was directly broadcast across the underworld. I'm sorry for you, Ravel said. It's fine, Issei replied. As I was saying, every single devil alive, either a slave or noble, knows about you being a noble dragon. Also, rumors state that the white dragon emperor was defeated at your hands, Ravel said. Issei's previous stoic expression changes into astonishment smile at her knowledge and of his endeavors. I'm surprised that many know about many, Issei says. The common masses have no knowledge of the White Dragon Emperor's debut, and only the influential pillars among the 72 pillars know about the White Dragon Emperor, and even us knowing nothing about the identity of the White Dragon. Politics, Issei said. A huge sigh leaves the Red Dragon Emperor's lips at the thought of politics. Politics indeed, Ravel said. I hate politics, Issei replied. But it is necessary to upkeep peace among the common deviants, Ravel said. Deviants are common devil citizens, by the way. Indeed, Issei said. If you wish to know more about politics, you can ask me any time. Until then, Ravel said. With a small nod, the blonde devil leaves Issei on his own and walks towards the party hall. What a strange girl, Issei said. Indeed, Treg replied. Now at the party hall. The Amora of delicious foods were found in the air as many devils were gathered in one place. Mordred finds herself. Unable to take her eyes off the food next to her while Guard Devil approaches the group. Lord Codamine, Lord Lucifer has requested your presence, Devil One said. Tell him that I'll be there in a few moments, Issei replied. Lord Lucifer has requested your presence at the moment, my lord, Devil One says. With a sigh escaping his lips, Issei nods and heads with the guard. Lead the way, guys. I'll be back in a few minutes, Issei said. Issei leaves the guard. Devil, after bidding his farewell to the group. Now, time skip. Issei finds himself in a luxurious bedroom with the Crimson Satan, who is beaming with happiness. Greetings, my friend, Sir Zek says. Likewise, but do tell me the reason for request my presence. I was having a good time with my loved one, Issei said. The Crimson Satan lets out a huge, exhausted sigh. Issei, I did not call you here for a pep talk, but instead for your help regarding a certain issues. Sir Zex says. Issei raises an eyebrow. Sir Zex's like normal change in character. From goofy to serious. What do you help? What do you want from me, Zechi? Issei says. Issei, whatever happens in this room must not leave this room, Sir Zex said. Sure, Issei replied. With a small smile, Sir Zex places his hand on a mirror nearby, and soon a mischievous manacle voice is heard. Identifying. Sir Zex Lucifer. Entry approved. Suddenly, an organic blue colored magic circle appears in a bizarre. Eye appears on the magic circle. Feeling the potent aura admitted by a magic circle, Issei gets shocked. That is a multi-dimensional cross-transmit teleportation seal created by Ajuka. Only the individuals that I have acknowledged to be teleported can use this. Not even a Dragon King class being can trespass through this seal, Zerzek says. You better explain the reason for using this, Issei replied. I will now enter the magic circle, Zerzek said. Issei enters the magic circle along with the Satan Lucifer who grins Issei's slightly shocked face. Zerzek just sits there. A bright blue light blinds Issei as he finds himself being teleported away. Location, private laboratory of Ajuka Beelzebub. In a blink of an eye, Issei finds himself in front of a giant door made of fairy silver reinforced with magic. Open the door, Sir Zex said. Yes, Nynx replied. A mechanic's voice, now named as Nynx, responds to Sir Zex's command and opens the door, revealing a high-tech laboratory. Issei looks at the advanced equipment with surprise evident in his eyes. The Devil Society is not underdeveloped in technological developments thanks to the one and only Ajuka, Sir Zex said. Gee, thanks. A mysterious man with green hair and his azer blue eyes wearing a lab suit approaches Sir Zex. You must be Issei Kodamine, the Red Dragon Emperor, the honorary champion of dragons and the hunter of the Red Plains. 
A juke of Beelzebub. I'm not surprised that you know about my last identity, Issei says. The ma'am now introduces the juke who flashes a very small smile. While you did a decent job at concealing your identity as the hunter of the Ren Plains, it was not hard to find out the truth, Ajuka said. As expected of the most intelligent devil, Issei says. Reintroduction aside, why don't we inform Issei about the issue, Sir Zek says. The current Beelzebub's non-existent smile turns into a visible frown. After the reveal of the White Dragon Emperor, Vali Lucifer, being a half-breed descendant of the first Lucifer, the Devil Council decided to conduct an all-out research for any other half-devil descendants of the royal clans. And two weeks ago, a devil mole inside the old Satan faction had informed us about the existence of a half-devil descendant of the Leviathan clan, being kept in status. And we successfully managed to find out the target and some, put in some important information. A small alarm goes off at the current Bezovov rushes to the system and Panel lets out a sigh as soon as having a look at the monitor. As I was saying, we successfully retrieved the descendant of the Leviathan, but we found out that she could not be taken out of the Sastus as she has an aura of the interference disease, which is due to her Longinus class sacred gear, Nirin Kairi, rejecting her body. This disease has no cure as it damages the soul and I have estimated that she only has a few days to live in her stasis. But Ajuka here believes that theoretically the disease could be cured by changing her original aura signature in her half-human body into a creature with huge affinity for energy, and the only creature we could think of is... Dragon, Issei says. Issei interjects Sir Zek's ramblings with a synthetic smile on his face. Yes, dragons are the creatures born of pure energy and have the greatest affinity for aura. Thus, I believe that if she wants to lose her humanity and turn into a dragon-devil hybrid, she will live, Ajuka says. Since I am the only one with your chronic evil peace, you want me to resurrect her into my parage, Issei says. Yes, I can't create a new draconic evil peace in a couple of days, so I ask you, please help her, Ajuka says. With a sad smile adorning on his face, the green-haired devil pleads to help her, causing Issei to sigh at the devil. I may be ruthless at times, but I wouldn't dare refuse to help an innocent little girl, Issei says. Thank you, Issei, Ajuka says. Well then, we'll resurrect her after the party ends. I believe that Mao Chen would be upset if you were missed to party, Sir Zek said. It seems like I have to go. Farewell, Lord Beelzebub. Issei and Sir Zex walk away, leaving the lab. The Beelzebub, who has a bright smile on his face, a lone tear escapes his eye. At last, I have fulfilled your final wish with that of me, my love. I swear on my name that I will take care after your daughter as my own. If I were only, if only you were alive today instead of being killed by my own hands, my childhood friend and internal love, Ajuka says to himself. The image of the young Ajuka who is bloodthirsty grin choking a beautiful purple haired woman who struggles to escape his grasp but failing miserably appears in his mind. I will always love you, Ajuka. Location, young devil gathering, the city of Billard. Issei finds himself in the middle of the party hall, with Mordred eating a ton of food, earning nervous glances from everyone nearby while Sona was being dragged away by her big sis Leviathan, who was ranting about her sister being kidnapped and mind-controlled by the evil dragon of lust known as Issei. A few things never changed, Drake. Do you think I could save the girl Juka said about? Issei says, to be honest. You can help her by turning into a half-dragon, since her sacred gear is known as the only Longinus that can strengthen dragons, Drake said. Suddenly, Issei senses a faint wave of Senjusu, causing him to look at Mordred, who appears to have not noticed it. While at the corner of his eye, he spots Konako going stiff before running away to the part hall. Princess, I'll be back, Issei says. Issei suddenly disappears in the shadows, leaving an infuriated Mordred. A forest near the city of Billard is the location. The white-haired Nekomata rushes towards a tree, unaware of Issei following her. Where is she? Konako says. Above a tree silhouette of a woman appears as soon seductive voice is heard. Big sis Kuroka, Konako says. Ah, you can still sense me, I'm touch, Kuroka says. What do you want, Konako replies. Konako raises her guard and takes a fighting stance while Kuroka merely raises an eyebrow. I am disappointed in you, Shirone. You cast aside our gift in Senjutsu and use your fist instead of magic. This is the reason why you are just a mid-class at best, Kuroka said. Yo, Kuroka. Don't be harsh on your sister, Byoku said. Byoku appears from a portal nearby with his staff ready to strike down the white-haired Nekamata. Shut up, monkey. Now the Shirone. Why don't you let your big sister take care of you, Kuroka said. We also have to gather intel on other young devils gathering to make this quick, Byoku said. I'm afraid I can't let you do that, Issei says. From the deepest of the shadows, Issei emerges, startling everyone. You must be pretty skilled for evading my senses, Kuroka says. 
What is this fool doing here? Konoko replies. Oh, the Red Dragon Emperor found us. I'm scared, Bioko says. Issei snarls at Bioko's sarcastic remark, earning a gleaming smile from Kuroko. This is the one who pounded Volley, Kuroko said. Issei raises a barrier, trapping them with him. Sorry, I didn't pound him, but rather he got his ass kicked by me, Issei says. Whatever. Think you could take both of us, Bioko said. A victorious smirk appears on Issei's face as the dragon roar is heard from afar. Soon Tanin in his dragon form appears above them. Need help taking care of these pests, Tanin said. Yes, please, Issei replied. The former dragon king, huh? I want to fight him. Extend, Bioko says. A cloud appears below Bioko, and the cloud takes him high in the sky, and then his staff extends and tries to hit the former dragon king who evades the attack. Looks like the monkey is having fun. Kuroko said, I will warn you for the last time. Get out of here if you wish to live, Issei says. Hmm, nope, Kuroko replies. And that is the end of chapter 19. Chapter 20. I will warn you for the last time. Get out of here if you wish to leave, Issei says. Hmm, nope, Kuroko replies. Issei finds his body tense at her answer, causing him to narrow his eyes. Nice try, but your senjutsu techniques won't work on me. So while Issei was busy explaining about how senjutsu didn't work on him, he is met with a blue orb made out of senjutsu on his face. How rude, Drake. What are you waiting for? Activate the balance breaker. Sorry, pal. The boosted gear is still undergoing its evolution, so you can't use it, Drake said. You want to play with this naughty kitty? Kuroka said. In an instant, Kuroka disappears and a miss reappears at random locations earning a smirk from Issei. Now, what will you do, Kuroka says. Yojutsu. Trace on. Mana accumulates around Issei's hand as it materializes into the familiar red spear. Rush and drill. Get Drake, Issei says. Issei rushes forward and slashes every single clone of Kuroka as they disappear into thin air the moment the spear touches them, earning a shocked gasp from Kuroka. Found you, Issei says. Issei disappears into the shadows and appears behind Kuroka with his fist ready to strike her, but by pure instinct, the older Nekamana conjures a defensive barrier just in time to stop the attack. You know, you're really a fool to think that you could win against me, Issei says. Huh. <laughs> Kuroka replied. While Issei and Kuroka clash against each other, the white-haired Nekamata decides that this is the time to escape, but then... Don't leave your big sis alone, Shirane, Kuroka replied. Strange obsidian-colored runic text appears as Kuroka rises her hands and suddenly a mist appears. The white-haired Nekamata instantly falls to the ground, unable to withstand the effects of the fog. That was my own spell, which is poisonous to beings who come into the mist, although it won't work against dragons, Kuroka said. A mid-tier ultimate class at the least, Issei says to himself. Don't lose your focus to miss a battle, Drake says. Run away, you'll die, Konoko says. Ignoring Konoko's warnings, Issei, with a war cry, dashes forward with his stance unbroken. Die, Issei says. In an instant, Kuroka conjures multiple barriers made of key, but the crimson rose of exorcism cuts through them, like a hot knife slicing through a block of blutter. What the- Kuroka says. Use your brain, dumbass, Issei says. Using the blunt end of the gate drag, the red dragon emperor pushes back Kuroka by several meters and then delivers a sucker punch. <laughs> You're hardly a challenge for an SS class straight devil. I wonder who wanted a pathetic waste of space like you in their barrage, Issei says. Tss, arrogant bastard, Kroko replied. Visible hints of frustration appears on her face as Issei inwardly smirks at angering her. They say that you became drunk in power and you killed your master, but I doubt that you would have killed him by yourself, Issei says. You have no idea, Kroko said. The older Nekomana's voice becomes filled with hatred and venom, indicating that the Red Dragon has opened up old wounds. Hmm, perhaps you weren't drunk in power, but killed him in a fit of rage, Issei says. Kuroka visibly flinches at Issei's words, causing Bioko, who was fighting Tanin, to yell at her. Kuroka, snap out of it, Bioko says. While Bioko averts his attention towards the Nekomana, Tanin fires a huge torrent of fire which engulfs the descendant of the Monkey King. Fool, do not leave yourself open, Tanin says. Damn, you're not bad, old man, Byoko says. Byoko rushes towards Tanin and his cloud. With his staff ready, but Tanin evades the attack, he uses his tail to hit slam him into the ground, leaving a huge crater. You're a thousand years too young to face me, Tanin says. Now, back with Issei. Issei gracefully dodges multiple blue-colored projectiles with ease, further frustrating Kuroka. You're a disgrace of a sister. To abandon your own sibling is something I wouldn't even think in my darkest nightmares, Issei says. 
Damn you, Kuroka replies. A purple-colored magic circle appears behind Kuroka, and with a loud yell, the older Nekomata creates three orbs of pure Yojutsu. Using his spear, deflects the first two orbs towards the third orb, making them explode mid-air. I need a weapon, he say thinks to himself. The crimson rose of exorcism dissipates into thin air as a couple of throwing knives charges towards Kuroka who uses her senjutsu to stop mid-air, but then finds out that Issei is missing. A bait? Kuroka said. A vicious haymaker was the only answer the Nekomata received from the red dragon but retaliates by slamming a dozen of Yojutsu spheres into his face at point-blank rage, throwing him about 50 meters away. That hurts like a bitch, Issei says. The smoke dissipates and Issei, with his right eye, bleeding, stands there with an uncanny smile. You, you were able to penetrate my pseudo dragon skin. Ah, you must be high tier ultimate class with mastery and long range combat, Issei says. You're not invincible. In your base form, you're just a high tier high class. And if equipped with a good weapon, you may reach tier ultimate class. But without releasing one of your seals, using the boosted gear or suppressing the limiters on your reality marble, you can't win this girl, Drake said. You know very well that I cannot release the limiters on my reality marble, as it would reveal too much about me and most of my ace weapons are available only after releasing the limiters, Issei said. With an angry snarl, the Red Dragon Emperor charges towards Kuroka, who retaliates with a huge orb of concentrated ki to his gut, who grunts in pain. Activate your sacred gear if you want to win, Red Dragon, Kuroka said. F fuck off, Issei replied. How rude. Maybe I should tame this naughty dragon, Kuroka said. A dozen of orbs made out of yojutsu appeared behind Kuroka and then merges each other with creating a circle of ki. Orb of Calamity, Kuroka says. Issei, dodge that, Dreg said. Fuck, Issei says. The attack successfully hits Issei, causing a heat explosion which blows away a dozen of trees and creates a huge shockwave. The explosion catches the attention of the former Dragon King, who has anger all over his face, then summons a huge fireball which severely injured Byoku. Issei, Tanin says. She used it, Byoku says. Back to Issei. The smoke cloud disappears, revealing Issei with his combat outfit reduced to cinders, a dozen of first-degree burns all over his body, and a broken finger. Dragon Slayer magic, Issei says. You must be pretty strong to be able to stand that after taking my strongest attack, Dragon Slayer attack. Kuroka says, shit, I can't take a Dragon Slayer attack on this form. I have to release a seal or I will die. If only I had the boosted gear now, Issei says. You fool. Did you lose your mind? You refused to use your full powers and nearly got yourself killed. Are you the strongest Red Dragon Emperor who killed Kokoville in his new armor and defeated the strongest White Dragon Emperor in Juggernaut Drive? Drake said. Drake roars inside his mind, causing Issei to stare at the cold Necromata who has a smug grin on her face. The most powerful Red Dragon Emperor who has mastered the Juggernaut Drive, has gained powers enough to slay gods, has lost to a mere ultimate class Necromata, as you hesitated to use your full powers. Don't you have any pride as a dragon, Drake said in his head. I, Issei said, educate this weakling about the power of a dragon and show her the might of the red dragon emperor, Drake said in his head. The primal, unshackled fury of the heavenly dragon who was chained and used as a tool by lesser creatures who tarnished his name fills his mind as Issei's battle instincts take over him. I will kill her, Issei says. Kill her, Drake said. Seal release one. Partial limiter release. Reality, marble. All Kuroka knew was an unbearable whisper, and soon all she was is a predator staring at its prey. Trace on, Issei says. A ton of information floods Issei's mind as he chooses the sword he desperately wants. Search, select, Issei says. A long, gigantic axe appears on his mind, while a huge amount of mana bursts from his body, earning a pure shock from everyone, even the former Dragon King, Byuku. What the... He has given in to his instincts, Tanin said. Nine lives blade works, shooting the hundred heads. The feeling of dread and despair was all around the air as a huge act materializes on Issei's hands. Is this death? Kuroka says. In an instant, Issei dashes towards Kuroka at unbelievable speeds, causing a loud sonic boom. Kuroka, watch out, Byoko said. Kuroka stares at the nearing figure of Issei with wide eyes, as the time just seems slow down before an explosion occurs. Kuroka, answer me. The girl must have agitated him, Tanin says. The smoke dissipates, revealing Issei's giant axe clashing with a sword of a stranger who was trying to protect the older Nekomana. The stranger was a blonde man in his mid-twenties wearing a tuxedo, but the most unnatural thing was the sword in his hand, which is radiating a strong holy order. I'm afraid I cannot let you kill her. 
the random dude said. Fuck off, Issei replied. Issei proceeds to use his axe and strike at the stranger at his vital point, says speed greater than the sound, but the stranger blocks all attacks. Quite impressive, the stranger says. The stranger switches into offensive and tries to slash him at his tendons, but Issei uses his axe to block it and kicks him on his gut, slamming him into the ground and uses the momentum gathered to deliver a devastating strike to his sword, which he uses to defend himself. This is the greatest Excalibur fragment, Excalibur ruler, the stranger says. The stranger immediately moves back and changes his stance and only then finds out large parts of his sword broken. Death. It felt like I was staring at death itself, Kuroka said. Impossible. What is that weapon? The stranger said. While the stranger dropped his focus just for a moment, he said disappears and appears behind Kuroka and upper arm, collarbone, windpipe, temple, diaphragm, rib, testicles, and thighs. Issei says in his head. What happened next could only be described as carnage. Within a second, Issei delivers eight lethal strikes at Kuroka's vital points, causing blood to gush out of her unconscious body. Byuku says, You bastard! I shouldn't have underestimated him, the stranger says. Byuku rushes towards Issei with his staff extended, but Issei uses his axe to deflect it, while the stranger takes out a sword brimming with divine aura, causing the Issei to stare at it with eyes wide open. Caliburn? Issei says the stranger uses the sword to cut the air, creating a rip in space into which Byoko carries the unconscious Kuroka, while the stranger following them. I assume that you are the Red Dragon Emperor. I will not forget this and tell the fake Pentadragon that I will hunt her down in her misdeeds. You'd have to go through me to harm her. The Pentadragon, Issei says. Farewell, this boy says. The rip on space vanishes without any trace. Issei then shifts his attention towards Konako, who is staring at him with wide eyes. Forget, Issei says. Issei snaps his fingers as Konako falls into the ground unconscious. Time skip. Issei finds himself in a party hall, along with the young devils gathering after his fight with Kuroka. I, Mao Lucifer, am honored to inform you all 16 devils have reached the required age to participate in the reigning games, and 7 are from the 72 pillars. They are Cyber Org Bill, Sikavera Argus, Didorio Astaroth, Sona Citri, Rhea Scrimmery, Greg Fornis, and Zephador Labius. To celebrate this occasion, we have decided to host a reigning game tournament between those young devils, and also the honorary champion of dragons, Lord Issei Kodamine will be competing in the tournament as a guest to improve the relationship with the dragon faction, Sir Zek said. The crowd cheers for the young devils while the pillars were busy chatting amongst themselves. We're going to participate in a raiding game, Mordred said. Yes, we are, Issei said. Awesome. Is killing allowed in the tournament? Mordred said. Every devil stares at her, at her absurd question, her show for smile with fear. No. Killing is prohibited, Sir Zek says. Hmm. This might be a good way to spend some time, Tamio said to herself. We have to fight, Mash said, with a nervous dripping from her voice. The shell they're asked with a nervous smile on her face. The first round of the matches are all selected. They are a holographic image of the schedule for the first round was shown to the devils present, causing a few devils to take photos of the hologram. It displayed match one. Sauerg Bill vs. Zephador Galassia, Labos. Rias Gremory vs. Issei Kodamine, match two. Match three, Sona Citri vs. Greg Fornis. Match four, Tadoria Astroth v. Sikavir Argus. Everyone in the room erupted into cheers and the smiles display, but Issei spots Rias, who has uncanny smile on her face. She stares at the hologram, causing him to raise an eyebrow. This is perfect. I'll kill that blonde bitch with Ascalon. And since it was at a raiding game, they can't arrest me, and the only thing they'll do is disqualify me, Rias says. The terminant will start one week later. I wish you all good luck, Sir Zex says. Sir Zex finishes his speech, earning an applause from everyone in the hall. This tournament. I will win this, Sona says. Location unknown. In a mountain cliff, during a cold night, a split in space appears, and the blonde sergeant and Byuka come from the split in a space with the unconscious Kuroka. Is she dead, Volley says? Nope. But if we don't help her, she will be, Byoka replied. Without a second thought in his mind, the white dragon emperor carries Kuroka to a nearby tent and places her down with a solemn expression on his face. I have no knowledge of healing spells. I should have hired a healer, Volley said. May I suggest we patch up her fatal wounds while I contact my sister who must have knowledge of a few basic spells. The unknown swordsman suggests solution, but Volley shakes his head in disapproval while letting out a sigh. I suppose that I could heal her in a traditional devil way, Volley says. 
How would you do that? Bioka replies. I, devils can heal others or half-breeds by sharing a bit of their life force, but the process requires both the devils to be naked. Polly says, with no visible changes in his facial expression, but a faint pink hue adorns his face at the thought of certain things. Polly explains about the devil's shin skip, causing the others to snicker. Damn, you really have the devil's luck, Bioko said. Very well. Wouldn't it be a hindrance by being here? And Volley, do treat her well. With amusement dangling in his face, the unknown swordsman leaves with a content smile. See you later, Bioko said. A teleportation circle appears below Bioko as he teleports away with the girl on, her, on his face. Time to heal her, I guess, Folly says. And all my life, I, Albion, never expected you to be embarrassed, Albion says. Just shut up, Folly replied. Issei time skip the next day. Issei finds himself in the middle of a Juka's laboratory, with a Juka nearby working on a hologramic computer. <sighs> Countermeasures, stand by, Nix says. Roger, what about the stabilization pod? Juka says, operational, Nix replies. The mechanical voice of the AI, Nix, is heard through the room, along with the sounds of metallic clanging. Nix, bring out the stasis pod, Juka says. The floor opens, and from it, a futuristic pod appears, which has brimming with magic. Issei, you have 54 seconds before she dies. Yes, Issei replied, Nix, open the pod. The pod opens revealing a purple-haired girl with her skin paler than the moon itself and has orange eyes, but the most captivating feature was the innocent smile on her face. Ochuka stares at the girl with a solemn expression as his past memories overwhelm him. By the name of Issei Kodamine, I be reborn as a faithful dragoness with your weakness casted aside and serve as my pawn, Issei says. A bright purple light engulfs the laboratory. The Gishin Castle Town, 3,800 years ago, is the new location. So, scene break. The city of Gushin, a magnificent city portraying the diversity of the devils, was in ruins. A territory filled with nothing but debris and, re and remains of once great city. Amidst the ruins, a total 150,000 pound soldiers were stationed around the city while a younger Ajuka was among the army generals. Status, Ajuka says. The forces under Tatsumi Leviathan are estimated to be around 700,000 to 10 million and are currently in the Royal Trident formation, which is suited for direct defense and stealth strikes, Devil General said. Hearing this, Ajuka lets a frown adore his usually stoic face. They will break our defenses. We are also outnumbered in numbers, Ajuka says. What do we do? The devil general replied. Rapid fire at the city. Aim for the skyscrapers, Ajuka said. A gas escapes the general's lips at the young super devil's command. But sir, there might be civilians who have escaped the fall of Gushin, devil general says. I don't care. Kill every single devil you come across for victory, Ajuka says. Multiple beams of demonic attacks are fired from Ajuka's army as they wreak havoc on the buildings while killing innocent people in the Satan army. But then a huge shield covers the whole city. A desperate attempt to defeat me is everything you've got, Ajuka. A shield of a woman is seen in the building with a devil nearby. Lady Leviathan, a quarter of our forces killed the traitor. Ajuka himself is in the front lines, Devil One said. Let us show them our conviction. Time skip. After a few days of battle, both sides were heavily routed with Ajuka and the unknown woman standing face to face. Surrender. I don't want to fight you, Ajuka. I have come here with only the goal of killing you, Tsufume. Ajuka lowers his hood, revealing his handsome face. You've gotten stronger, Tsufume says. The silhouette of a woman now introduces Tsufume. Let's add a sigh as she reveals herself a young woman in her late twenties with looks which could kill a man. Ajuka's stoic face morphs into a disgusted scowl at the sight of the woman earning a sigh from her. You still haven't let go of your grudge. Tatsumi says, I see. You were having a good life far away from me while I was all alone, broken, and tortured, Ajuka said. With rage barely held back, the young super devil lets out an animalistic howl. I had no choice but to bear his child. My mother's last wish when she died a hundred years ago was to marry him, Tsufume says. A human. You had a child with a human, Ajuka says. The Leviathan lets out a huge sigh, as sadness was all she knew. At the sight of the gentle Ajuka reduced to such state. You could have asked me to help you live your life, our life, but you betrayed me for that creature. I was tortured for 40 fucking years by my own clan for falling in love with you, Ajuka says. I didn't know, Safumi said. You broke our promise and revealed our past relationship to everyone. 
I was betrayed and tortured just because I was a lowly Ashtaroth obsessed with the great Safuma Leviathan, Ajuka said, with venom that could make a god shudder. Ajuka yells at his past lover gods and Leviathan to shed a few tears. Uh, I, Safume says, I fell in love with a gentle woman who admired me for who I was, but now all I see is a broken hag with a rotten heart covered in fake innocence and beauty. I will not let you deceive me any longer, Ajuka says. A huge green colored beam hits Safume below her a couple of kilometers away. I will make you pay for those 40 years of torture and heartbreak I have endured and I shall kill your offspring and your cousins for your sins, Ajuka said. And thus began a fight that would one day change the underworld and the super devil himself. Time skip eight days later. The fight lasted for eight days without food or sleep, but still there was no clear victor in sight, but it was clear that Ajuka held the advantage over the fight. Stop holding back and fight me, Tsufume says. Pathetic, Ajuka replies. A multicolored beam of demonic power directly hits the Leviathan at the point-blank rage which she erects a barrier just in time to protect herself. Demon King Leviathan. Water Dragon of Greed, Tsufume says. The water vapor in the air rapidly condenses, taking a form of dragon which rushes towards Ajuka. Ajuka conjures multiple barriers. The water dragon breaks all of them directly, hits Ajuka creating a huge explosion which is capable of destroying a small country. Aye, there is no way for him to survive that. He is a Satan-class devil, but I am a Dragon King-class in power. The power gap between us is huge, Fume says. The smoke dissipates, revealing Ajuka, with bruises littered all over his body, with a snickering smile on his face. Ha! I am not the weakling, science freak, Ashtaroth you knew, Ajuka says. Ha! How? Fume says. Kenkara formula, Ajuka replies. Ajuka's voice slightly distorted while a ton of magical energy accumulates next to Ajuka. Strange magical runic text appears on the super devil's arm, shaking the whole city with his enormous power. Fight me with everything you've got, Ajuka says. Dear Satan, this power, it's on par with Rizavim, who is stronger than the father of lies himself. How's my new power, Sue? I can control every single phenomenon if I know about its mechanics, for example. I could control the latent magical energy in the atmosphere to create countless attacks which could engulf the entire continents. Or I could just control a god's ether concentration to kill them from the inside. Ha! Demon King Leviathan, Sea of Serpent of the End. With a sad sigh, the daughter of the original Leviathan uses her trump card, which allows her to change into a giant sea serpent, and the ocean of water appears out of nowhere. With a loud screech, multiple jets of concentrated demonic waters rushes towards Ajuka, who simply deflects the attack with a wave of his hand. M Mama, is that you? A child's voice is heard gaining the attention of both the devils, as they spot a little girl with violet hair, with teleportation circle below her. Ha! Ah, what a rotten luck you have. Your own child has its found its way here to see you die, Ajuka said. Ingold, go away from here, Sufume says. The terrified little girl tries to summon a teleportation circle, but fails at doing so. Can't let you escape, brat, Ajuka says. Let go of my baby, Sufume says. The serpent wraps its tail at Ajuka, tries to drag him into the water, but only manages to save the girl, known as Invigold, from the super devil's grasp. Invigold, always remember that Mama always loved you, Sufume said. With all of her might, Sufume opens up a small magic circle and pushes Invigold into it, but unknown to her, the little girl's body flickers a shade of blue. Kankara formula dissipate, Ajuka says. The green-haired super devil's voice comes out of distorted accompanied by the water disappearing and the giant serpent's body starts to glow as cracks from all around it. Soon the serpent disappears, leaving a heavily wounded Tsufume with a hand missing. Any last words, Ajuka said. Ajuka returns back to normal and grabs the beaten devil by her throat and chokes her with a sadistic grin on his face. I will always love you, Tsufume says. Liar! Ajuka replies. I, my sins have finally caught up with me. I have many regrets. Just keep my daughter safe. I beg you, my Aju. Tsufume says. The woman's voice comes to a stop as Ajuka snaps her neck, causing a sickening crack sound. You liar. You never loved me, but instead I am the one who fell in love with you. With hot tears streaming down his face, the super devil gently picks up her body and lays it down on the ground next to him as she stares at the night sky with a heart wrenching smile full of both grief and happiness. Now, location, Ajuka's lab. So we're back. The bright light fades in an instant. Ajuka hurriedly made it into the hologram nearby and was working on it. Sir, the patient's aura signature has been altered successfully, Nix said. What about the aura deficiency, Ajuka replied. Sir, it looks like the sacred gear inside her strengthened, the draconic aura thus curing the disease, Nix said. With a huge sigh, the super devil walks toward the pod and unlocks it. 
You're going to take her out of the stasis? Issei replied. Yes, I am, Ajuka said. The pod opens up, revealing the girl to the outside air for the first time. Then, where am I? The girl says. The girl gently opens her eyes and looks at Ajuka and Issei with confusion on her eyes. Who are you? The girl says. This is going to be a long day, Issei says on his head. Time skip a few hours later. In the hospital room, Issei and Ajuka are seated next to the Leviathan Descendant, who was having a peek at the outside with a small smile. I have been asleep for 3,800 years, she says. Yes, since you were six years old, you were kept in a stasis, as you have contacted a type of aura malfunction, Ajuka says. My mother is dead, isn't she? I saw her in a giant snake form, fighting a man with green hair, just like you, the girl says. The girl innocently replies, earning a small frown from Issei and a sigh from Ajuka. Yes. She wasn't able to make it out of that fight, Ajuka says. My homeland has changed a lot, the girl replies. You're awfully mature for a six-year-old girl, Issei says. The girl innocently flashes a smile at his question before answering. I am not six-year-old child, the girl says. I'll order the maids to send you a few books regarding the recent changes in the underworld since 3,000 years, Ajuka said. With that, Ajuka leaves the room in a blink of an eye to somewhere. Hey, Issei, I am your pawn. Am I right? The girl says, yeah, Issei says, then I'll follow you, big brother. The girl says, I like this girl, Drake says. The girl jumps on the stunned red dragon emperor who unknowingly pats her head, earning a coup. I almost forgot to introduce myself. I am Invigold Leviathan, daughter of Safume Leviathan. Can I join your parage? I promise I won't be able to burden you. Please, the girl says, if that is what you wish, I'll make sure to inform the others about this, Issei says. Yay, I get a lot of big sisters, Invigul says. Unable to suppress a chuckle, Issei awkwardly waves his farewell and leaves the room with his thoughts wondering. Big brother, huh? I'm glad I have a little sister, Issei says, chuckling to himself. The Red Dragon Emperor teleports away. And that is the end of chapter 20. And that is where we're going to stop. For now, right at the end of chapter 20, and we will pick up with chapter 21 in part 9. Thank you guys so much for the support. What if Naruto was betrayed? Once again, it didn't get like tons and tons of views, but I really didn't care because I knew I was awakening to a whole entire new audience, so I knew it wasn't exactly going to pop, but I'm really happy to know that I still have people that would support me regardless of what I post. It's really nice to like see that. I just wanted to gather a new audience because I really, really enjoy Naruto. So that's why I did the video because I like putting my passion into things, as you guys know. But I really wanted to make Ampalpalski a Dragon Ball almost only channel and just talk about everything Dragon Ball related, as long as, as well as do what ifs on the videos. But thank you so much for the support. This was What If Issa Was Betrayed and Became a God Part 8. And a special thank you once again to my balance breakers, Rob the King. Jorge Alvarez, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Kozakil Toltec Sun God, Daybreak, VR Wolf Hashtag 2347, Sinra Q, Jordan Pachow, Mazaku, Dr. Underscore MLG Underscore is the bomb. Thank you so much for becoming a balance breaker. Your height, which is the highest membership team, membership tier, I can't thank you enough for becoming a balance breaker. Let's try to hit uh, 500 to 400 likes. Thank you all for once again for all the support. If you guys want to subscribe to my second channel down in the description below, it's always there. Along with my shorts channel, aka Fallen DxD, we'll be posting a lot of videos as well soon, just on shorts about anime and just random things in general to just know my thoughts or analysis on some things. That once again, thank you for all the support, and without further ado, Spartanic Arts DxD out. What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Was Betrayed and Became a God, Part 9. Let's try to hit 400 to 500 likes, and if you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. Seriously, a special thank you to my balance breakers, Rob the King. Jorge Alvarez, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Kozakul Toltec Sun God, Madly Wolf 333, Daybreak, VR Wolf Hashtag 2347, Sinra RQ, Jordan Patchow, Mazaku, and Dr. Underscore Emeralds Underscore Emoji is the bomb, and Asimotis. Thank you so much for becoming a Balance Breaker, which is the highest membership tier. I cannot thank you enough for becoming a Balance Breaker. Seriously. If you guys want to see what ifs on Goku or other anime in general, go subscribe to my second channel, link down in the description below, along with if you just Click the channels, you can click on Fallen DXD and Ann Popowski, and those are my two other channels. Hit the sub button for those, along with follow me on other social medias. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into part 9. Chapter 21. 
Back at Issei's own house, a stranger was on the doorstep as he presses the doorbell with a smirk adorning his face. Kodamine residents, how may I help you? Tamiyo says. I have come to see Issei, the Red Dragon Emperor. The man blatantly replies, causing the Fox Priestess to raise an eyebrow, but welcomes him. Follow me, Tamiyo says. The man proceeds to follow her with a stoic face, as he finds himself in the lounge with Mordred, Sona, and Mash having a conversation. Who are you? Mordred said. He wanted to meet the Red Dragon Emperor, Tamiyo said. With a teasing smirk on her face, the Fox Priestess teases the unknown man, earning a small snicker from him. What business do you have with my king? Mordred said. Classified, the man says. The man answers almost like a machine, causing Mordred to snarl at him, causing Sona to interfere before things get worse. Don't be rude to our guests, Mao-chan, Sona said. Whatever, Mordred replied. Can I see Issei Kota mine? the man says. I'll bring him here, Mordred says. The Knight of Treachery spares the mysterious man one last glance, and proceeds to the basement. That guy, he is not normal, Mordred says to herself. Shaking her thoughts aside, Mordred proceeds to the basement, only to find Issei and Invigold in a friendly spar. You've gotten a lot better at controlling your draconic order, Issei says. Hmm, I'm going to hit you, big brother, Invigold says. A series of explosions follows the Leviathan descendants' threat shaking the walls nearby. Control yourself, Invigold. This manor can't withstand the attacks of an ultimate class being, Issei says. Okay, Invigold says. Yo, Issei, a crappy dude wants to see you. Mordred says, the Knight of Treachery approaches the Red Dragon Emperor with a sly smile on her face as she delivers an unexpected kiss to her love and pulls back. Hmm, intoxicating, Issei says. Now hurry up and go kick that stranger's ass, Mordred said. Get a room, Invigold replied. Ignoring the Leviathan descendant's sly remark, Issei then proceeds to the lounge with a stoic face replacing his previous expressions. Hey, darling, that guy, he isn't a normal one, Mordred said. Fear not, my princess, for I am invincible, Issei says. Mordred rolls her eyes at her love's proclamation before elbowing him in his gut. Dragon, Drake said. Definitely a dragon Zora, Issei replied. The couple enters the lounge, where Issei spots with a mysterious man, who now has a toothy grin on his previous stoic face. Yo, Issei, you look as good as ever. I can say the same to you as well, Bova. The man now introduces Bova, spreads his four sealed obsidian wings as his appearance changes into that of a tan skinned man in his late 20s wearing a regal dress. But the most prominent features were his golden eyes, filled with warmth and mirth. I thought you wouldn't recognize me in my disguise, Bova says. Everyone on the lounge has their eyes set on the dragon with wide eyes, but the fox priest's eyes man with a man with lust. The hell is this? Mordred said. That is. That, my love, is Boa, third son of Tanin, famously known as Bova the Destroyer, and my associate. Issei says, Sexy, Tamio says. You all must be a member of Issei's Parage, Bova said. I did not receive any notice regarding the entry of the notorious troublemaker of the underworld, Sona said. The C3 Harris gives a blank stare to Bova with irritation present on her eyes. I am here on a top secret business of the dragon faction, Bova said. Is there anything wrong? Issei replies. The air of the household drastically changes from cheerful nature to seriousness. The Chaos Brigade has attacked. And nesting on the astern sector of the dragon faction and 15 guardian dragons were killed on our own side. A dozen of the hatchlings were killed brutally by dragon slaying magic, Bova said. Rage floods into Issei's mind as the thought of hatchlings killed is the same as provoking the dragon faction. How dare those insolent pests attack us? This deserves death, Drake said. The booming voice of the Red Dragon Emperor echoes through the room as Red Aura shrouds the room, forcing everyone except Zona, Mordred, and Bova to their knees. Drake, save your anger for the ones who deserve it, Issei said. They're trying to provoke the dragons, since they are the biggest obstacle in the Chaos Brigade's way, Sona says. The dominating order of Drake disappears without a trace after a few seconds of earning a sigh for many. How could they slaughter innocent children, Mash said. The High Council has decided to assign the task of killing those bastards to my eldest brother, Bova says. The son of Tanin tells them with anger and disappointment in his voice. Stupid councilman. They want that disgrace of a dragon to avenge the death while they could have sent you to kill them? Issei says. According to those old geezers, I am irrational and unfit for helping them in this issue, Bova said. Issei simply sighs and proceeds to calm the sneering dragon while the others just watch him. I argued those fools and they decided to assign me with guarding you, and they believe that you'll be able to help me control my irritational behavior, so I want to join your parage. 
Par pardon? Issei says. Now, in the underworld, in a dark room, a lone voice is heard from across the room. I did what you asked me to do. The mysterious person says, Good. Another voice is heard from across the room, shall the light of a man is seen. Give me a snake. I am afraid I can't. I wanted to kill every single dragon in that village, which you failed in doing so. The dragon slaying artifact you gave me was very weak. A cold aura infiltrates the place as loud as the voice is heard. Fine, I'll give you a single snake, but use it wisely. A creepy smile makes his way towards the Shilowet's face. I'll use it wisely. Soon, my pursuit of Manian, I'll save you from that wretched dragon that has you captive. Our business here is concluded. I'll see you later, Astaroth. Location, Co Academy, a day later. After a long time, Issei finds himself in a classroom with Mordred next to him. As the teacher was waiting for him for something or someone, Class today, we will be receiving a new student, the teacher says. As the teacher finishes, Invigil enters the class with a cheerful smile on her face. Hi guys, I'm Invigil Levestone. I'm from Norway. Please take care of me. The whole class erupts into cheers, but in case of the boys, many were loudly yelling praises and perverted things. Hell yeah, total babe. She's mine. Back off. Damn, she's cute as fuck. The teacher decided that he had enough of this and yells at the class to calm down. Now, if you have any questions for Miss Levestone, please ask. Do you have a boyfriend? Motohama says. Nope, Invigold replies. Every boy in the class acquires a very strange glint after hearing her answer. Are, are you a virgin? Akia says. The she pervert questions Invigold with a teasing smile on her face. That's for you to find out, Invigold replies. All right, Miss Levestone, you can sit next to Miss Kiryu. Teacher says. Akia raises her hand to show that Levity descended her place. Time skip. The whole class was having the gaze fixed on Tamiyo, who was wearing an elegant outfit with a couple of books in her hand. Students, your old history teacher has been hospitalized since he got hit by a baseball. And he has left the school, so instead of him, Miss May here will be teaching you history since it's nice to her. Hey, yeah, I'm Tamiyo May, and your new teacher for history. I like brave young men. <laughs> The whole class was a blushing mess, excluding Issei and Mordred, who were amused smile on their face. Holy motherfucker, she's one hot piece of ass, Matsuda says. Time skip. The whole class was having their eyes fixed on Boa, Bova, who was in front of the ground wearing a skin-tight performance t-shirt. Yo, I'm Bova, your new physical instructor since your old teacher has been hospitalized after getting hit by a basketball on his head. Everyone stares at him with deadpan look as the two teachers were out of the school due to a major accident. That's a big one, 11 inches. My god, Akia says. The she pervert faints with a nosebleed while all the other girls were blushing mess. Hmm, accurate, Bova replied. Location, Gravery Manor, Co City. The sounds of explosion and mental clashing with each other is heard. Is that all you've got? Kiba says. In a training yard under the manor, the old ORC members were training and having mock battles against each other. Come at me, Zenobia said. Balance, break. Kiba says. The holy demonic sword of Kiba appears on his hand as he sprints towards the blue-haired former exorcist who raises her sword to parry with Kiba's onslaught. Lightning strike! Anakino says, a few meters away from Kiba and Zenobia, Rias and Akio are engaged in a battle in the air with firing magic attacks at each other. Stronger. I have to make them strong enough to be useful, Rias says. President, how about we try our new move? Akino says, okay. Holy lightning. A pure beam of divine lightning rushes towards the ceiling. Multiple gremory glyphs appear beside the beam as demonic aura is interjected on the beam of holy lightning, making it glow rapidly. Holy lightning of demonic destruction, Rias says. The training arena was in ruins after the powerful attack, but then the field automatically repairs itself in a minute, while Akino and Rias are on the ground visibly exhausted. It drains a lot of magic from our reserves, Akino says, but this attack can take down a low-tier ultimate class devil. This is our trump card along with Zenovia's Durandal and Kiba's balance breaker. A satisfied smile appears on Rias' face as she examines the other members who were training. No one gets away with stealing my Isi. This gets cut off. It would have been a great help if Gasper was here. The others may believe that a Chaos Brigade terrorist infiltrated our manor and killed him for his sacred gear, which the Leviathan descendant had along with the Hyotos for their hidden magi research, but I won't believe it. The supposed infiltrator was killed by Issei, but I doubt that it was the truth, Rias says. Location, Eight Circle of Hell, Maglodon. The screams of countless souls, each writhing the screaming in agony, was heard while it missed them and Katria Leviathan was tied up in a cage screaming. No! Stop it! It hurts! It hurts! Katria says. Shh! 
The pain will stop if you tell me about your plans. Think about it if you were experiencing this for three weeks, and yet none of your allies have tried to save you. Face it, Ketchla, you are just a pawn who has no value to them, but I promise you, I'll free you from here if you tell me everything you know, Sarah Fall says. In a sticky, sweet tone, the current Leviathan interrogates the old Satan descendant. I'll tell you, please, just make this pain stop, Ketchla said. Then tell me, Sarah Fall replies. Shalva and Kersi are leading the members. Orphis is the leader of the Chaos Brigade. She helps us by giving us part of her powers. And there are several spies inside the Devil Faction. A group of rogue magi led by Tamaki Totska. The madman magi was ally, but he betrayed us, Katsuya said. The Leviathan descendant's reply comes as a crooked whisper indicating that she was not in good state. How did you get your hands on the Balor view, Sarah Fall said. O Orphis gave it to me. I don't know how she got it. That's all I know, Catra said. Catra desperately pleads to Sarah Fall, who has a smile on her face. Your help is much appreciated, but I am afraid I have no choice but to kill you, Sarah Fall said. The moment those words left her list, huge ice sword was embedded into Catra's chest as she dies instantly. Location, 6th Heaven. In Residence of the Archangels, a meeting was held between them. Brothers and sisters, is there any developments on heaven? Michael says. Brother Michael, the rebuilding process the rebuilding process in first heaven is complete. Hearing this, Michael looks pleased, but another voice is heard. Brother, we have found an interesting development on the elusive hunter of the Red Plains. Please tell me about it, Ural, Michael says. The angel, now known as Ural, summons a bunch of papers earning a sigh for Michael. When the hunter of the Red Plains assaulted the first heaven, we have found a faint trace of magical energy, and a brief examination of my men have found a trace of draconic aura, but the most intriguing thing is that the detectors on the fourth heaven have detected an awful similar energy on the forest of the city Billard, and the underworld at the same time the young devil gathering, but the energy was lacking its draconic aura. The energy match is 84.34% with our samples. The whole room becomes unnaturally sound after hearing the Archangel's unreal discovery. The devils? They are dared to help a monster and betray our treaty? Raphael, calm down. Wrath is a deadly sin. A heavenly voice is heard across the chamber as a woman with blonde hair and killer curves that would kill a mortal was seen seated next to Euro. She has a point, Raphael. We have faced a great loss, but revenge is not what we want, Michael says. Fine, Raphael says. As the meeting was going on, a six-winged angel burst into the room with a terrified expression, startling the archangels. Lord Michael, an intense holy aura has shrouded the seventh heaven. Hearing this, all our ankles find their body trembling in the worst fear. I'll inspect it myself, Michael says. Time skip. Inside a huge castle, Michael was seated on the throne radiating intense holy order. A holographic screen appears displaying various descriptions in an unknown language. Hmm. Eden is fine. Belief system is operating. Defense system, fine. Third heaven is stable. Michael says. Michael desperately searches for the cause of this phenomenon, but then sacred gear locating transplant systems are unstable, Michael said. Warning, access denied. A mechanical voice is heard from the throne as burning sensation invades the leader of the angels. That voice, Lazarus. I haven't heard that voice since the Great War when God was in charge of the throne. Auto self-correction program activated. Searching for the error. Multiple errors detected. Error detected in sacred gear location and transplant system. Scanning the subcategories. Error found in Longinus section. Trying to locate all Longinus losers. Error found in locating the boosted gear. Error. Third party interference. Rebooting system. Reboot successful. Systems operations online. Sacred gear location and transplant system stable and active. Boosted gear is hereby removed from the sacred gear system and all substantial suppression seals on the boosted gear removed. The number of long Jason Longinus has been reduced to 12. The system returns back to normal while Michael's terrified expression most contradicts to his gentle belief. What in the name of the almighty lord, Michael says. Codamine Residence Co. Academy. At the same time the system of God was malfunctioning, Issa was in his personal library reading a couple of books, but then suddenly, something's wrong with the gear, Drake said. Huh? Issa said. Suddenly, Issa feels a burning sensation, which soon turns into a painful sensation as Issa groans in pain. The sacred gear is getting out of control. It's not stable, Drake said. Ah! What the fuck is happening? My body feels like it's on fire, Issa says. Issa internally screamed and tries to get up, walks towards the exit without normal breathing. 
you say. The gear is trying to obliterate your soul. I'll pull you inside the sacred gear, Drake said. Issa then faints and falls on the grind with his sacred gear manifested, but unlike before, it was in a horrible state, and the green gems losing their brilliance. Location inside the boosted gear. Inside the boosted gear, Issa finds himself in front of the mighty red dragon of domination, Drake. Flames were all over the place, as multiple Red Dragon Emperors were in their Balance Breaker fighting Drake. It's good to see you, partner, Drake said. Hey, Drake, what's going on? The mighty 70-meter dragon drowns the past host in the sea of endless flames with a smug grin on his face. Looks like the boosted gear was unable to evolve to suit your powers through the suppression seals on the gear, and your power partially broke the seal, causing the sacred gear system to become unstable, and the system has identified you as a third party, trying to tamper with the gear, and it has just now launched several offensive measures to subdue me and kill you. Drake calmly explains the current situation to Issa as he stomps out a couple of past hosts. The sacred gear system can influence the inner gear mechanics, Issa said. The god of the Bible was not a fool. He knew the dangers of imprisoning multiple beings more powerful than him, and he designed the gears in the system with multiple safety measures. If a third party tries to tamper with the gear, and it seems like you have just now broke a part of the suppression seal. There's a suppression seal on you, Issei says. With barely hidden shock, Issei Issei questions the dragon who unleashes a torrent of fire in the plasma. Of the Indeed, most of my abilities are sealed by that old fool. The only ability the users, if the boosted gear can access, is boost. And the only three exceptional users were able to use my other ability, transfer. And there are still a couple of abilities sealed, which none knows. Drake says, the Juggernaut Drive must release all the limiters on you, right? You truly are clueless about the gear, partner. The Forbidden Drive is mistaken by many of all the limitations are released, but it is nothing but a lie. The Drive releases a quarter of my limiters. Why do you think the Drive gives the Dragon King class power while I am a heavenly dragon? While Drake finishes his speech about the gear, a red beam of draconic energy hits Issa in his face. Use it, the juggernaut drive, and reduce the white one to cinders, the past host says. Yes, do it, past host still replies. Issei summons a bow and releases a dozen of arrows, and the past host who disappear into thin air, while a moment of arrows touch him. What's the old host? Why are the old hosts attacking us? The system has full control of the past hosts and is the one that's using them to attack us, Drake said. Drake lets out a battle cry and charges towards a dozen of past hosts, kills them effortlessly. But then, how amusing to think that a host has managed to overwhelm the suppression seals on Drake. A voice is heard when across the surroundings area causes Drake to sigh. What are you doing here? The best white dragon emperor, Drake said. A man probably in his theories reveal himself as he effortlessly crushes the past host of the boosted gear. The brat managed to absorb my soul while he merged a jewel of Albion in the boosted gear. Why are you here, he say, says. Just giving you a helping hand. I just wanted to end the rivalry of the twin sky dragons and bring back the glory of the holy heavenly dragons. The man along with Issei and Drake continue to massacre the old host for a couple of hours. Time skip a couple of hours later inside the gear. Issei and the man are seated on the ground after killing every single past host. You're quite powerful, brat, but I must warn you, the current White Dragon Emperor has highest potential out of all the past White Dragon Emperors. In a couple of months, he will have access to the power stronger than the drive. I can feel it. Make my dream a reality, will you, Issei? I will do whatever I can. I will still fight against him the next time we meet, Issei says. Hearing Issei's reply, the man lets out a huge laughter. Ha! Huh, all the dragon emperors of the past have become part dragon. It is our blood to fight. The man lets out a final chuckle before disappearing into thin air, causing Issei to sigh. The system. It has cut all connections with the gear. It has as if it's given up on retrieving the gear, I think, Drake says. A pulse of overwhelming energy flows through the red dragon as he stops his speech with his eyes widening in shock. We have succeeded, haven't we? Issei says, fuck yes. At last, I have been freed from my shackles. The system has relieved the suppression seals. My powers are like, it's back to my prime. The boosted gear is free from its clutches. Partner, we have attained a new power today. With this, we shall burn our enemies to the ground. Location, Codamine Residence Co Academy a few hours later. Easy and his Paraj were on the couch watching a live relay of the first match of the Young Devil Raiding Games tournament, which was between Sarah Oregon and Zephyr. The guy with green hair is acting like a wimp, Bova said. Yeah, Mordred replied. 
Hmm, Issei said. While the others were busy commenting about the battle, Issei was having his gaze fixed on Cyroorg, who was demolishing a couple of rooks of Zephyr. Is, is something wrong, Sona says? You're not going to faint like what you did a couple of hours ago, are you? Mordred replied. Both of the girls look at him with concern, for his health evident in their eyes, making Issei smile at the pleasant feeling of bliss, knowing that there was someone worried for him. I am fine. I was thinking about certain things, Issei said. Hell yeah, kick his ass, Bova said. Issei nearly fell off the couch due to the delinquent dragon's loud yell. Noticing this, Mordred flashes a malicious glare at Bova, who was slightly unnerved by the glare. Bova son, do you want me to weaken you with my sacred gear and hand you over to Tamiyo? Invigold said. I'd like that. Oh, the number of things we could do together, Tamiyo said. The newest rook of Issei lets out a nervous laugh at the menacing smile passed on the fox priestess's sexy face. This woman is crazy, Bova said. Hmm, looks like Tamiyo took an interest on him, Issei said. A loud explosion is heard from the television, which shows Cyroorg destroying the problem child of Glacia clan without breaking a sweat. I want to fight him to the death, Bova says. This man is Tanin's son? Mash says. You can't kill him, Bova. He is the heir of Beol and clan, and a promising young devil. Besides, we have to focus on wiping the floor with Rias, Issei says. The Gremory girl is no more than a weak training dummy for us, Bova said. The delinquent dragon puffs his chest in pride while Issei's expression changes into a serious tone. I think we should increase our daily trading regimen, Issei says. Oh, I almost forgot that I have a meeting with my pariah. See you later, Mr. Serial Killer of Co. And good night to you all, Sona says. The Citri Harris leaves the apartment by Magic Circle, with a vicious grin on her face leaving a stupefied Issei and Mordred. She knows? But how? I set up a random exorcist nobody even avoided going on assassination missions, yet she still figured it out? Now I regret killing that vampire hybrid. But hey, I reduced the red-haired bitch's parage power and got my hands on an extremely rare sacred gear. Although it did did cause me some trouble, it certainly will be useful. The girl finally figured it out, but seeing how she loves you, she won't inform this to anyone, Drake said. Third Heaven, a couple of hours later past midnight, is where we're at right now. In my whole life, never once did the system disconnect with a sacred gear, Michael said. The voice of the leader of Heaven was grim as he held his gaze fixed at the severely night sky filled with the stars. The boosted gear. The present of the Dragon of Domination has broken. I wondered what happened to the Red Dragon Emperor, Michael said. The Archangel feels a melodic smile on his face as memories of the distance passes into his mind. The world is changing. We angels must adapt to the changes if we not perish, Father. What would you have done in move if you were in my place? You'd probably laugh at the problems and give me a reassuring smile saying that everything would be alright. Michael says to himself. Michael's voice turns a bit melonic at the end as a few drops of tears come seen from his eyes. I swear, Father, I will do whatever I can to save the humans and angels while propagating your eternal love. Time skip, four days later, Kodamai Residence, Co Academy. It was a typical morning in the Kodamai Residence, with the Golden Mash having a long conversation. The Fox Priestess and Sona having girls talk but unexpectedly that Archangel Michael was seated on a chair and having a talk with Issei. The system was acting strange for a moment, but then it severed its connections with the boosted gear. I don't know why it did, but Drake must know something about this. I was shackled for thousands of years by your god. It's natural that my prison will be broken in time, Drake said. The Dragon of Domination gives the Archangel a rather rude response, which causes the Archangel to sigh. The Longinus and Balance Breaker itself was a bug in the system, so it may have happened naturally, Issei said. This is the first time a sacred gear has been severed from the system, and nobody wants uncontrollable Red Dragon Emperor. Has Drake ever tried to take your body, Michael said. The leader of heaven interrogates Issei with a sharp look in his eyes, causing Issei to give him an emotionless stare, but underneath his stare was uncontrollable rage and wrath at the thought of his partner and friend betraying him. I am fine. My partner will do no such things, Issei said. Then my business here is concluded, and this piece of information must remain a secret from everyone, including the other faction leaders in your parage, Michael said. Michael disappears in a flash of light, which smiled with a smile on his angelic face. Today is the day the battle with the Grimmery bitch commends. Beware, Rius, I shall humiliate you in front of every single devil. The Red Dragon Emperor sets his gaze at the bustling city with an unusual determination in his eyes. Location? unknown. Once again in a familiar place, a silhouette of a figure is seen. 
interesting, truly interesting. This is the moment from which the future is unpredictable with numerous possibilities. I wonder, Vessel, will you succeed in the future or lose everything you have and become a broken soul? A deep primal voice is heard from the figure which seems to be familiar. You are standing on the threshold of limits of destiny. There are two prominent possibilities. In one you shall succeed, your life become true watcher. The surrounding space detorts into an image of Issei wearing a red scarf, but the most surprising thing was his eyes, which were filled with conviction. In the other one, you shall fail. Lose everything you had except for a wretched landscape of infinite sores and undergo an eternity of pain becoming a broken soul, hell-bent on salvation, which you shall never find. The space again morphs into a blurry image, a man on his knees amidst the countless swords embedded on a desolate landscape. A storm is approaching, a big one, the mysterious figure says. And that is the end of chapter 21. Chapter 22. Location, Kodamine Residence, Co Academy. It was a peaceful night for the citizens of Co, but inside the Kodamine Residence, the atmosphere was serious. Today is the day I will humiliate you and break your ambitions and dreams, I promise you, Grammarie, Issei says to himself. I'm ready, Mordred says to herself. The melodic voice of the Knight of Treachery is heard as she moves towards Issei. You look great on that dress, princess. Aw, you're making me blush, Mordred said. A small pink hue is seen on her adorable face, causing Issei to smirk. Are the others ready? Issei says. Yes, they are, Mordred replies. Issei, you've suppressed your bloodlust and that crazy side of you, but how much longer do you think you can do it? Drake said. Issei completely ignores the Welch Dragon's questioning, but then the sound of the clock striking 12 is heard as a teleportation circle appeals below them. It's time, Issei says. Capital Castle, Lucifer, the Underworld, is the location we're in as of right now. Seat break. The Crimson Satan was with his queen on a room filled with numerous devils working on something with a smile on his face while the ultimate queen was in her usual stoic mood. Are the preparations complete? Sir Zek says. Lord Lucifer, the preparations for broadcasting the rating game is complete, Devil One says. A rather old-looking devil answers to the Devil King who is trembling with anticipation. Good. I want every devil, may it be a commoner or a noble, to be able to witness this game, Sir Zek says. It looks like the game is to begin, Grafia replies. Grammarie Mansion, Coast City. Inside a European-style building, the members of Rias's Parage were on the lounge. The preparations are complete, Akino says. Good. I want everyone to give their best in this game, Rias says. Yes, everyone replies at the same time. The whole group yells together, earning a smile from Rias. Konako, you remember our technique I've planned for you, Rias said. Yes, Rias-sama, Konako replies. The white-haired Loli replies to her master in a usual stoic tone. This time, we will defeat every single one of those opponents, and we'll rescue our eat. Rias gets cut off again. Hello, Azia says. In a couple of hours, you say, I'll save you, Rias says in her head. Dark, sinister thought make her way towards Rias, who barely restrains herself from letting out an insane grin. Why do I feel like this game is going to go terribly wrong, and Rias will be behind it? I don't wish to die at the hands of a psychopath yandere, Kiba says to herself to himself. The devil swordsman shudders at the thought of Issei threatening a couple of students who were eyeing Mordred in a lustful way. It's time for me to save you, Rhea says again. Location unknown, underworld. Inside a small tent, sounds of moaning and screaming and pleasure is heard, and soon of the voice of a familiar Nekomata is heard. Don't stop, or are you at the limo? Oh, fuck. This was unexpected. But then another voice is heard. Never provoke a sleeping dragon, Volley says. Soon the sounds of moaning and grunting, blah blah blah, you get the point. I'm not even going to try to fucking read that. Uh, never mind. I've been hearing those sounds for the past 72 hours, Byoko said. Letting out a sigh, the descendant of the sun, Wukong, sets out his sight on a glimpse which was displaying an underworld news channel. Hmm. I want to see how a dragon pounds his opponent, Byoko says. Ah, uh, nope, Kuroko's saying some crazy shit again. After a minute of uncompromising silence, Byoko shakes his head and furiously with the one thought of his mind. I take that back. I don't want to win a dragon's banging, Byoko says. The poor bastard goes back on watching the glimpse with a sweat drop. Location, pocket dimension, replica of Koka Academy. In a flash of light, Issei and his Parage members were teleported to a luxurious room in Ko Academy. Which place is this, Boba says. Welcome to the second match on the Young Devil Tournament. I, Gravia Lufage, Queen of Lord Lucifer, will be the overseer of this game between Lady Gremory and Lord Issei Kodamai. 
The booming voice of Gravia is heard across the whole dimension, earning the interest of everyone. The base of operations of Lord Konami is the principal office in the main building of Ko Academy, and Lady Rius's base is the Occult Research Club. The usage of lethal holy weapons and dragon slaying weapons are prohibited. Pawns can be promoted in the enemy territory, and usage of familiars are allowed. Good luck, Gravia says. Looks like we're in the principal's office. It's time to devise a plan, Issei says. Location, RC club office, replica of Code Academy. The proud members of Rias were in the next Rias waiting for their king's orders. The opponents must have started plotting their move. It's time we devise a strategy. Our base of operations are the occult research club. There are obviously three... Uh, the three obvious ways for them to attack, which is by crossing the playground, crossing through the gym, and by air. But the third is unlikely, Rhea says. The Crimson, Prince, uh, the Crimson Princess of Ruin for once decides to use her brain to formulate a strategy. Then, the gym is a position holding the high ground, as it is near the main building in the Occult Research Club, Akino says, correct. Issei will most likely send a rook or a pawn, another piece of moderate value, so we will send Kiba and Akino there. Principal's Office, Replica of Ko Academy. At the same time Rias was plotting her plan, Issa was also doing the same. The gym building is one of the most critical areas. That may be a good use for us. Knowing Rias, she'll send either one of her knights, Rook, or her queen. So we will send Tamiyo and Mash. Mash, I want you to focus on defending Tamiyo, and Tamiyo wreak havoc, but don't kill them. Issei says, Sure, leave it to me, Tamiyo replies. ORC Club, Rap Club, Co Academy. The atmosphere around the room was tense as Rias was deep in her thoughts. Asa, you are our only support for our group, and the enemy will most likely take her out. So you'll stay here with me and Akino. I mean Akino, if you ever feel like losing your if you ever feel like losing your holy lightning and if you can't win, withdraw and make it here for Asya to heal you. Rhea says, Yes, President, Akina replies. The fallen devil hybrid bows in respect, but a small twitch in her lips are seen. Zenovia and Konako, you'll be our offensive team, as you will both will try to infiltrate their base by crossing through the playground, and you will find the opponents there and engage them, but with all at all costs protect Konako while also attacking the opponents, even if you are forced to use the Duran doll, Rhea says. <clears throat> Principal's Office, Replica to Co Academy. So back with Issei. Our next priority is to ruthlessly strike down the members of the Rias' Parage, and her bishop, Ozzy, will be a pain, so I will personally eliminate her, as she will most likely be with Rias in the ORC. After taking care of the healer, I will engage in a duel with Rias, but before that, every single member of her Parage must be eliminated. Everyone pays close attention to Issei with the utmost seriousness. Before that, Invigold, I want you to use your sacred gear and strengthen everyone while guarding this place while Mordred. I want you to, I want you and Bova to lead offense in the playground. That's, that's it. Now go and win. With that, Issei disappears into the shadows with a smirk on his face while the other equip their battle gears. RC Club Office, Replica of Co Academy. Back with Rias. There's no time to spare. Let's win back our Issei. With that, everyone leave to the base except for Rias and Asia, who are on their guard with this raiding game has begun. Soon, my Issei, Rias thought in her head, an uneven grin emitting a malicious feeling was the current expression of the crimson prison of ruin. How low has one prideful Rias Grimmery hair as the Grimmery clan has fallen? Location, capital, castle, Lucifer, the underworld. Inside a huge room, many devils along with Sir Zex and Azazel dressed in regal style dresses were paying close attention to a huge screen in displaying the raiding game. I'm curious to witness my sister's utter humiliation at the hands of Issei, Sir Zex says. Don't you think that's a bad idea for both of them to fight each other, Azazel says. The first angel to fall was having a serious look contradicting to his cheerful personality. Issei has no desire for revenge nor vengeance. He has long forgotten the past, and he wishes to be left alone. So I doubt that anything serious will happen, and Rias was getting way too prideful and arrogant. This will certainly destroy her pride, Sir Zex says. The Crimson Satan explains his motives behind the raiding game, but he had no idea of his sister's obsession with Issei, which he will find out soon. However, I can't get rid of the uneasiness, Azazel says. Lord Lucifer, it looks like the game has officially begun, Grapia says. Location, ORC Club Office. Rias was focusing on several glimpses next to her displaying various places next to the replica of Co Academy. Akino, this is Rias, can you hear me? The voice of Rias is heard through a communication device, which each ORC member has. I can hear your voice, President. Good. Are you in position? I'm on the way. Akino says, in a split second, one of the glimpses displaying the locations becomes blurry, and soon all the glimpses become blurred. All the familiars of Rias Grimmery eliminated. 
Gravius says. The voice of the Ultimate Queen is heard across the dimension as Rius gains a shocked look. Replica of Co Academy. Above a huge building, the sole look of the sole rook of Issei was holding a bat like creature as it disappears in a faint blue light. That was easy, Bova says. Gym building, replica of Co Academy. Sounds like a metal clashing. Against metal is heard across the field as Mash blocks a strike from Kiba, who is wielding a nameless demonic sword. I am Kiba Yuto, Knight of Rias Grimmery. I don't care, Tamio says. Multiple black-colored tentacles sprout out of nowhere and rush towards Kiba, who prepares to dodge, but Kiba prepares a sword blade to defend himself, but a huge lightning blocks the attack, giving time to Kiba for escape. My, my, who might you be, Akino says. Not bad, little crow, Tamio replies. With a huge smirk on her face, Akino summons multiple lightning bolts and fires them towards Tamio, but Mash redirects the attack towards Kiba with her shield, forcing Kiba to block it. Shit, Kiba says. While Kiba was busy blocking the lightning bolts mash sprints towards kiba and radiates to slam her shield on him but due to his instincts the blonde knight manages to block it the sword and the sword breaks upon impact demonic lightning flash fire akino says a huge grimmery glimp appears midair and akino fires a huge lightning strike at mash causing a small explosion akino flies above the building's now ruined ceiling while kiba dashes backward and summons a bunch of swords which covers him Ha! This was exceptionally powerful attack for a low tier high class, but, Tamio says, Akino suddenly falls back with a stunned look on her face at the sight of Tamio and Mash perfectly fine, but then, Black Flash of the Wicked, Tamio says. Multiple ruined texts appear next to the fortress as the Black Mist hits Akino and Kiba, causing them to cough up blood. That spell is my favorite. Reverts contaminates your magical re reserves, causing them to shut down, which means you can't use any magic for an hour, but unfortunately your sacred gear remains unstable, Tamio says. This is bad. Balance break. Sword or betrayer. Sword of betrayer. The Priestess of Thunder helplessly watches as Kiba tries to turn the tides by activating his balance breaker. Location, Athletics Track Replica of Co Academy. Konako was in tense situation as she found Bova in his human form staring at her with a smirk. Ah, Nekomata, if memory saves me correct, Nekomatas are extinct, hunted by devils, and yet a half-devil Nekomata is in front of me, amusing. Dragon, Konako says. With that, Konako rushes towards Bova with his fighting stance ready to strike, but the dragon pays no attention to her and simply catches her attack. Weak. Use your abilities, kitty, Bova said. This mischievous dragon then does something incredible. He punches Konako in her gut, sending her flying at speeds that a naked eye can't perceive. There's no way she can stand that attack at, even though I just use a small fragment of my power, Bova said. A couple of hundred meters near Bova, the armored Mordred was clashing with the blue ex head exorcist. Ha! Huh, you guys are weak as fuck, Mordred said. The knight of treachery ruthlessly slashes at Zenobia, who was forced to defend her attacks using his caliber destruction. This is bad. I'm just second rate compared to her, Zenobia said. Pathetic. To think that the fabled Excalibur being reduced to such a state. It taints my mother's glory, so I shall destroy it. In one swift motion, Mordred uses her monstrous strength and slashes at the Excalibur fragment with all her might, causing it to crack. She managed to crack Excalibur destruction? I have no choice but to use my trump card, Zenobia said. An intense holy aura surges from the former exorcist's body, pushing back a slightly intrigued Mordred. The sword chose me, my final trump card, Durandal, the pierceless sword. A regal-looking long sword manifests her hand, radiating an intense holy aura around it, which scorches the surrounding rocks. Things just got a lot more interesting, Mordred said. While Mordred was busy admiring the Pierceless of Osora, White Blur approaches them. Bova did his job well. The Knight of Treachery grabs the flying Konako and slams it to the ground, creating a crater. Queen of Rias Grimmery, retired, Grafia said. The voice of Grafia is heard earning a smirk from Mordred. Jim building, Rapaclo of Code Academy. The blonde devil knight was panting heavily as he restlessly blocks the magical onslaughts from Tamio and physical attacks from Mash. I can't keep this up much longer, Kiba said. Be grateful that Issei didn't want us to go all out on you guys, Tamio said. I'm just a mid-tier high class at best with my balance breaker. I can't land a scratch on them. By their aura, their ultimate class and power, Kiba said. While Kiba was distracted, Tamio closes the distance with Kiba and fires a spell at Kiba who manages to dodge it at the last instant. The spell misses Kiba and instant blows up a large 
large building nearby. That was close, Kiba said. Look above, dear, Tamiyo said. The mischievous fortress flashes him a teasing smile, and soon a huge chunk of building was flying towards Kiba, who tries to dodge it, but then a dozen of yellowish chains appear from the ground and restrain his movements. Fuck, Kiba said. Bye, Tamiyo replied. The huge chunk of the building crashes onto the devil swordsman, who lets out a groan in pain before disappearing in a flash. Knight of Rias Gremory, retired, Grapius said. Cuckoo, he was a fine young man. Let's make sure Invigold is safe, Tamio says. Athletics track replica of Code Academy. Scene break. The surroundings were a wreck, with cracks and craters all over the ground, but amidst the ruins, two knights were facing off against each other. Good, good. Your style and reflexes are good, almost as good as an expert. But, Mordred said, in an instant, Mordred seemingly disappears and reappears next to Zenobia and ruthlessly delivers a few strikes from her sword, facing the former exorcist to block them. Why? Your strength, speed, and almost everything is above mine, yet you are toying with me. Tell me, am I not good enough for you? Zenobia says. I want to test the pierced sword to its full extent. That's all I aim to, Mordred says. Without wasting a single second, both holy both ho the holy sword users continue with their clash swords with inhuman speeds a true splendid clash indeed almost for a second both of them were on par with each other but soon mordred overwhelms the blue-haired devil after the destruction of camelot i have visited a lot of places and i heard a lot of legends about the pierceless sword even among the supernatural but to find that this it's the weak pathetic you weren't worth this of this sword, of being Greshiel's adopted child. Perhaps even the dead god of Bible would have been ashamed of you. The knight of treachery tossed the devil with a mocking grin, causing the blue haired devil to grit her teeth in frustration. Looks like it's working. This brat has potential to enter ultimate class and power and become a master swordsman. Mordred says. Is that an insult towards me or my sword? Bastard child of King Arthur, Zenobia says. Amidst the clash of swords, the wielder of Deronda questions Mordred with a blank stare, earning a frown from the Knight of Treachery. But the thoughts of Zenobia was, did she just braid Durandal? How dare she so bluntly throw insults at the miracle for which I bled for? My whole life training and hardships are worthless for her, Zenobia says. For a brief moment, the former exorcist's eyes turned to avoid emotions, which is an unserving sight even for veteran fighters. It was the look of something, pushed beyond her limit, a pure luck of unadulterated furry. Hmm, I suppose that you're- Shut up, Zenobia says! A huge aura bursts from the blue-haired devil, throwing Mordred by a hundred meters back while the ground breaks into smaller pieces. The aura gains attention of Bova nearby, who tenses a bit, but Mordred raises her hand, signaling him to stay out of this, but the white-haired Nekamana, on the other hand, was terrified. Z Zenobia? Konika said. Child, child of King Knight, think twice before you speak, Zenobia says. A foreign voice is heard what comes out of her lips, which Mordred responds by moving her helmet and looking into her eye with a small smirk. Durandal. Said Mordred said, Indeed, I have indeed taken control of this wielder for a short period of time to teach you a lesson, child of a Torah, Zenobia says. Even if you take control of her body, there is a limit to her body, Mordred said. It will suffice. I cannot tolerate someone tarnishing my glory, but I must admit, this host is good, one just behind Vasco surrounded in terms of potential, Zenobia says. The possessed Zenobia raises her sword in a stance that radiates power. Let's see what you've got, Mordred says. Go forth, bring me utter her victory, Peerless Sword, Durandal Unleash. The Peerless Sword glows brightly, almost as if responding to her words. Seeing this, Bova turns her skin into scales while Konoko runs away for her dear life. With a mighty swing of her sword, a golden beam of intense divine energy surges towards Mordred, who is staring at the beam with wide eyes and nostalgia, as she recalls a memory itched into her very being. The sword promised victory, unleashing its radiance. Excalibur, mother, it's just like Excalibur, Mordred says. Clarent Blood Arthur, Mordred says. An unnatural dense red beam of pure energy surrounds Clarent, but surprisingly the beam was twice as big as the original one. The peerless sword met the radiant, brilliant royal sword. The divine destruction met the manifestation of demonic hatred, of a child with twisted feelings towards its parent. The red beam effortlessly cut through the golden beam of Durandal and hit Zenobia in point-blank rage, causing a huge explosion. The whole dimension trembles under the explosion. After a few minutes, the smoke dissipates, revealing Mordred with part of her armor damaged while Zenovia was on her knees with a broken arm and numerous third and fourth degree burns and cuts along the refraction. I lost, Zenovia says. That wasn't half bad, Mordred replied. Ah, your hatred for King Arthur is stronger than my expectations. That attack of yours was on par with a high tier Satan class. This body is not in ashes only due to sheer luck. I, before the possessed Zenovia can completely finish, she appears in blue light. 
Rias Grammarie's knight, retired, Gravius says. While Gravius' voice is heard, Bofa appears next to Mordred with a grin on her face. That was cool, Bofa said. Now, location, ORC club office. The sister of Lucifer was staring at the glimpse nearby with a frustrated sigh while Ozia was next to her. To think that Akino got eliminated before we could use our combo, how unfortunate, Rias said. Knight of Rias, Gremory, retired, Grafius says. Hearing this, the ultimate queen's declaration, Rias closed her eyes and concentrates to find out which one was eliminated. Kiba, Rias says. President, is Kiba's son? Yes, he must have been outnumbered. The blood ex-nun glances and finds the shadow behind her move, freaking her out. Rias? Azia says, what? Rhea says, the shadow behind me moved. Azia says, Rhea's eyes widen at Azia's proclamation before any of them could act the deep voice of Drake as her. Welch dragon, balance breaker, Drake says. A choking sound was soon heard, causing Rhea to turn her attention towards the healer who was on her knees at the dominating figure of the red dragon. And before her was fist in her gut. It's nice to see you, Azia. Issei says, Issei son, Rhea says, shut up, you don't deserve to utter my name, treacherous filth, Issei says, tears were seen on the blonde healer's eyes as she cries at her former friend's remark, e e Rhea, shut the fuck up, bitch, who gave you permission to talk to me, Issei said, the immense hatred and bloodlust emitted by Issei was enough to scare both devils, or so he thought, not now, I need an opening to execute my plan, now, be a dear little girl and willing to retire yourself from the game, Azia, I, can't put Azia said. Azia abruptly stops as she looks down to only find out that Issei has mercilessly delivered a roundhouse kick, causing her to fall to her knees. Boost times four, Drake says. Azia, I always thought of you as a friend who I could trust with my life. I went as far as taking a light spear to my lungs, two on my two knees just to save you. I never expected you to do this to me. My whole life was a lie. My parents are fake. My friends are fake. I just wanted to be loved, but thanks to you guys, I got strong. Strong enough to challenge gods. I always wanted to do this for a long time, so Issei appears next to Azia in a second and grabs her head and slams it into the ground, breaking the floor, causing Azia to instantly disappear. You're next, Issei says. Issei, just hear me out. I, Rhea says. Both the dragon and Rhea subvert their attention to a massive aura flare at the level top tier ultimate class. That aura. It is not identical of any others, Issei says. Partner, if I am correct, that was the raw aura of Durandal, but the current wielder cannot use it in her state. It looks like the sword took control of the wielder. Drake says, I'm sorry for this music in the background. This fucking idiot's just playing music around me. I gotta finish this video, so I'm just gonna continue. But then an awfully familiar aura was also felt, but strangely it was a lot stronger than before. Clarence Blood Arthur, I have never felt this strong. It is due to her change as a dragon, Issei says. That was, Rias replied, fuck off, motherfucker, Issei says. Knight of Rias Grimmery, retired, Grafius says. Hearing the strongest queen's announcements makes Issei sigh in relief, but then, take this, Rias says. The Gravia glimpse appears and from the fabled power of destruction rushes towards Issei. Issei calmly summons a red sphere and shoots the power of destruction as both of them cancels each other. A terrific ability to destroy a molecular level, but you do not possess us any skills to use it. Disgrace of a Grimmery, Issei says. Oh, Issei, I know that that blonde bimbo is the one messing with your mind. I'll prove you my love and save you. Issei visibly pales at the sickeningly sweet tone of Rias. Boost times nine. You've gone insane, Issei says. Only for you, Rias replies. Konako, execute our plan the moment I tell you. Unknown to Issei, Rias telepathically communicates with Konako using the transmitter. Get lost, bitch, Issei says. Now, Konako, both of you, it's time. Before Issei could engage in a duel with Rias, two shillettes appear between them, causing Issei to jaw drop. Matsuda and Monohama, what are you doing here, Issei says. Do your job well, pawns. Activate Castling. The moment Issei drops his guard, Rias uses Castling and disappears in a blue light in her place with a terrified Konako. Issei just sits there in silence. Sorry, buddy, but I can't let you pass through us. Rhea-sama has promised that she will take our virginity if we help her. Oh, I can't wait, Matsuda says. Innovit clear, miniature garden of green tree of innovation, Motohama says. The world around Issei disappears. Did Issei find himself on a grassy plain with Matsuda and Motohama next to them? Innovate clear, a high tier long Jinus. Be curate, be cautious, partner. This is a sacred gear that can create a pocket dimension, create any type of monster within the pocket dimension, Drake said. The balance breaker is not bad. I had to sacrifice my arms to use this, but Rias 
gave me another arm of made of demonic power, Motohama said. You can't stop me, Issei says. I can't stop you, but we can stop you, Issei, Motohama says. A bright light surrounds Matsuda, causing Drag to groan in irritation. Freezing a priority, a rare sacred gear, Drag says. Location, athletics track. After a long duel, the Knight of Treachery is in the middle of a crater with an exhausted sigh on her face, as the trembling Konako was in front of her. Bova was in the sky watching this mess. If you want to leave this game, I won't stop you, Mordred said. I, I, Konako replied. Stealing her nerves, Konako rushes towards Mordred, who lets out a sigh in annoyance. Fool, Mordred says. When Konako was a few meters away, Mordred, a bluish light, engulfs the Nekomana. In a split second, Rias was on the place where Konako was as she charges towards Mordred, who was caught off guard due to her exhausted state. Die, bitch, Rias says. Rias then summons the strongest dragon slaying sword and then proceeds to stab Mordred, who narrowly dodges the strike to her heart, but the sword was impaled to her left lung, causing her to cough up blood while Bova was rushing towards Rias with angry snarl. Baby! That's what you get for trying to take what's mine, Rhea said. You crazy bitch, Bova said. Rhea says notice that the delinquent would have a dragon flying back towards them and drops Mordred with the sword and bit it on her lungs and backs off. Damn, you're crazy, Mordred says. Bova lands next to the injured Mordred and kneels down and inspects the stab wound. No, stay awake. Look at me. If you close your eyes, you'll die, Bova said. The whole audience at the capital were speechless at the fight possessed by Zenobia and Mordred. This was unexpected. Gravia, retire Rias's knight immediately, Sir Zek said. On it, Lord Lucifer. What in the name of Satan? How could a devil wield such holy aura? Even the ultimate class devils won't be able to escape that attack alive, Lord Lucifer says. A few devil nobles elders scream at the sight before causing Sir Zek to sigh. Calm down, gentlemen, Sir Zek says. This is really interesting, as Aza replies. The screen shifts to the so Issa brutally eliminating Asia. That'll hurt, Azazel said. Bishop of Rias Grimory, retired. Time skip. After a few minutes, everyone at the castle, including Sir Zex and Grafia, stare at the screen displaying Mo Motohama activated his sacred gear, and soon the screen goes blurry. What the fuck is this? Azazel says. In a bit clear, is the hands of my sister in freezing as Sir Zex says? This will cause an uproar within the devil faction, as well as the other pantheons, Grafia said. The screen shifts to Mordred, who was impaled by Ascalon in her lungs, by Rias, who had informed casting to transfer to play. What the fuck? Grafia, teleport them out of there now, Sir Zex says. Lord Lucifer, the balance breaker of Innovent Clear is interfering with our teleportation system. That sword is Ascalon. She will die if we don't do anything, Azazel says. Sir Zex grits his teeth and summons Grimory Glyph and tries to teleport, which fails. Get a Juka here now, Sir Zex says. Cut the feed! Our citizens are watching this, Circum says. The oldest devil alive manually cuts off the feed with the enraged look on his face. Location, pocket dimension, clearly innovated. The sounds of huge explosions were all over the air due to the Red Dragon Emperor destroying Council's monsters while keep responding. Rias told us everything, Hyodo. How dare you betray us and find a girlfriend for yourself, you bastard. Fuck off, Motohama. I am not the same pervert you knew. A beam of e uh, ice hits Issei, freezing his arms. The beam was a giant 15 elsewhere at breaking Matsuda. Rias-sama also promised to hand over your blonde bitch to us after we defeat you. We are going to have a lot of fun breaking that bitch into a mindless slut, Matsuda says. Issei lets out a loud roar and soon a green orb in his hands. Spewing a huge of Tourette of fire, the bird eyes destroying it. The monsters is by also reduced to cinders by the devastating attack, making Matsuda tremble at the attack, but Motohama was maintaining his composure, perhaps due to his arrogance of wielding an Innovent Clear. Pathetic. You guys are just mid-class in power, except the fucker with Innovent Clear is a high-tier high-class. At best, with his limited time balance breaker, you are fucked, Issei says. Instantly, Issei stops his speech and averts his gaze to the ground, the balance breaker activates. Mordred, Issei says. Inside the boosted gear, the Welsh dragon was having his mouth agape with disbelief, shock present in his geronic features. Mordred, I, dragon slayer magic? I can feel dragon slayer magic, Issei says. The connection between us due to this piece. It's almost undetectable. This means my Mordred is fatally injured. Rias performed castling with Konako, and I think Konako is fighting. Mordred, Rias, that bitch, no! The Welch Dragon checked on his partner's state. He found nothing, not a shred of emotion or concise. It's if his partner just shut down. Drake tried to enter his mind skip but forcefully rejected. That's not good, partner. Can you hear me? Drake said. She took my saving grace from me, Drake. It is wrong that I want to kill her. Issei says. Ha! I am really a fool. She doesn't deserve death. What she deserves is pain. Issei says. 
My thinking was wrong until now, I finally understand. Whispers those words causing a chill go down their spine. Those golden eyes, devoid of any emotion, really did scare the perverted Duro. Release restraint too. Reality marble. Total release, Issei says. That perverted duo knew they were fucked by the look on Issei's face. Location unknown. The night of treachery, Groggily's eyes open and finds herself inside a majestic tower surrounded by endless fields of flower petals. On the flower petal, there was a person who Mordred never expected to see. It was a blonde woman with eyes experienced warrior and the aura of a king. The woman flashes a small sad smile at Mordred before. It's been 700 years, my child. It's amusing to finally see you, Mordred. Mother, Mordred says, and that is the end of chapter 22. That is where we're going to stop for now, right at the end of chapter 22, and we will pick up on chapter 23 later. Thank you guys. This chapter is getting really intense. We only have two more chapters after this, so the next part will be the final part. And this was part nine. Thank you guys so much for the support. If you guys want to see what ups on more things on my other channels, go ahead and uh, subscribe to Fallen DxD and Amp Opowski down in the description below, along with if you just scroll over to channels and you can click sub on that. Let's try to hit 300 to 400 likes on this video. Thank you so much for the support. Seriously, I can't thank you enough. Thank you again so much to my balance breakers. Like seriously, a special thank you to the boys. Like I cannot thank you enough. Hold on, let me just like, I'm trying to open this up, but um, it seems to be the Google document will not. All right, so thank you guys so much for the support. A special thank you to my balance breakers, Rob the King, Jorge Alvarez, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Quasi Cult Toltec Sun God, Badly Wolf 333, Daybreak, VR Wolf Hashtag 2347, Sinmar Q, Jordan Patchow, Mazaku, Doctor Underscore MLG Underscore Is the Bomb, and Asimotus. Thank you so much for becoming a balance breaker. I can't thank you enough. What if Naruto obviously dropped earlier? today or earlier two days ago this video is being recorded because i will be on a little bit of a trip on a hiatus for as you will but you won't really notice because i'll have this upload schedule so this is the second to final part the final part will be next time thank you guys so much for the support without further ado spartanic arts dxd out What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Was Betrayed and Became a God Part 10 or the Finale. So let's try to hit 400 to 500 likes for this big finale. Thank you guys so much for the support. And before I start the video, a special thank you to my balance breakers, Rob the King. Jorge Alvarez, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Quizzical Toltec Sun God, Madly Wolf 333, Daybreak, VR Wolf Hashtag 2347, Sinra Q, Mazaku, Doctor Underscore MLG Underscore Is The Bomb, and Asimotis. Thank you so much for becoming a Balance Breaker, which is the highest membership team of membership tier of the Balance Breakers. So thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. And I'm sorry for once again not uploading completely consistently. It's just that finals are coming up. I have some things to do. Your boy has some problems that I need to settle, and I don't talk about my life on YouTube. So, once again, thanks for all the support. Uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter 23. Third POV, location, Beale City Capital, The Underworld. It was a busy night at the capital of the city of Beale Territory. The rating game between Rias and Issei was being escalated. Dude. The high-class devils are freaking powerful. I can't even blow up a house, Devil 1 says. Hey, the dragons are more powerful than us, Devil 2 says. This world is freaking scary. Only 1 out of 10,000 devils is a high-class devil, and only 1 in 10 million is an ultimate-class devil, Devil 1 said. The giant screen displays Mordred being stabbed in her lungs by Rias, causing the crowd to yell in disbelief. What the fuck, Devil 3 says. My Satan, Devil 1 once. The champion of the dragon is going to be pissed. The dragon faction may wade wars with the devils. We are going to die, Devil 2 says. Location, underworld, unknown. Bioka was staring right at the glimp in front of him in disbelief while ignoring the moans of pleasure on the air. Holy mother Bioko says. Location, sixth heaven, layers of heavens. The king of angels was watching the screen displaying Motohama activating his sacred gear balance breaker. Dear lord, an even clear has found a new host, Michael says. The screen shifts to Rhea stabbing Mordred on her lung with Ascalon, making him break a table nearby in shock. Fuck you, Rhea Grimmery, Michael says. Dear lord, forgive me. I have committed a sin, Michael says. Brother, is something wrong? The most beautiful woman in heavenly innocently questions Michael with an expression dipping with innocence. 
Everything's fine, Michael said. Mount Kalash, India. In a dote of god Shiva, who resided there along with his concert goddess Parvati and their children, the god of Shiva was on his meditation. Shiva was in the appearance of a teenage boy with black spiky hair and his wife Patati. The Hindu goddess of love, marriage, beauty, and power, she was one of the top 30 beings in the world. Hey husband, the evil creatures of the Bible are holding a war and a group of dragons are participating in it. You should take a look, Pavati said. They are known as devils. They are not holding a war. It is called a rating game. And I am taking a look at my, the game. My wife, Shiva says. The Hindu god of destruction speaks without opening his eyes. But then, the child of king of knights has reached the ever-distant utopia, which holds the key to all about her. The red dragon unleashing its fury. A land of infinite swords. I, a concept, Shiva says. The true manifestation of destruction is his identity, for he is god of all gods, and the usurper of gods who shall bring harmony and destruction. Shiva says, Pavati looks at her husband's face in curiosity, but then a third eye appears on his forehead and opens. The third eye of destruction, Pavati says. My dear wife, I just found out an interesting development which my clairvoyance foresaw. Truly curious, Shiva says. Location, pocket dimension, created an infinite clear. My thinking was wrong up until now, but I finally understand. East Bay whispers those words, causing a chill down their spine. Those golden eyes, devoid of any emotion, really did scare the perverted Duro. Release, restrain. Hashtag number two. Reality, marble, total release. The perverted duo knew they were fucked by the look on Issei's face. What can you do, bastard, Motohama says. The perverted glasses tries to act unaffected by a sudden turn of events by creating a huge 10-meter giant black monster with a huge eye. I am the bone of my sword, Issei starts. The single sentence itself brings fear upon the feeble souls of the two fools. It was an incarnation of something deadly, and the two perverts felt it. Quit trying to intimidate us, you bastard, Matsuda says. Fools, run away or you will die, Drake says. The Welch Dragon of Domination words the perverted duo, who were shocked with a deep voice. Who the hell are you, sucker, Motohama says. The custom bow of Issei manifests on his hands, causing the duo to raise an eyebrow. Seriously, a bow? What can you do with a bow which lacks an arrow? Hound of the Red Plain. Hunting, Issei says. Huge quantities of mana accumulates around Issei, taking shape of a black weapon with a few small edges coiling around the thin core, spiraling around it and somewhat curving outward. The perverted duo pales at the sight of the sword due to their survival instinct, screaming to get away from the weapon. Perish, Issei says. The magical arrow was released from the bone. It reaches the speed of Mech 10, causing a sonic boom. The arrow was invisible to the naked eye. In a second, a huge explosion erupts onto the place where the perverted duo was. Issei, we have to get out of here, Drake says. The dimension crumbles as the weirder of the innovant clear was unable to sustain it. No, Motohama says. Issei and the perverted duo were teleported to the ORC club room, the place where Motohama activated his balance breaker. Damn it, Matsuda said. As the last ditch effort, Matsuda fires a weak ice spell at Issei, but the ice vaporizes due to the intense aura of Issei. Get out of my sight, Issei says. Issei diminishes his bow, and instead on its place was a red spear oozing with bloodlust. He then rushes towards murder at speeds beyond comprehension, creating a sonic boom. Location unknown. The knight of treachery is staring at the blonde woman with her mouth agape while the blonde woman was smiling at her. How is this possible? I was sure that I died, Mordred says. You are not dead yet, my child, and I am not an illusion, I assure you. Don't fuck with me, Mordred said. Mordred flashes a threat and glare at the woman, who does nothing but make the eye contact with Mordred. This place is known as Avalon, the ever-distant utopia, a tower of century of the universe, and the home of Vivian, the mother of all fairies, and the current home to Merlin, the flower mage. You're Merlin, aren't you? Mordred said, No, child. Merlin is being held captive to avoid any interruption to us. The woman nonchalantly answers to Mordred, causing the Knight of Treachery to sigh. I can't believe that you are King Arthur. Give me any sort of evidence, Mordred said. The blonde woman slightly flinches the venomous tone of Mordred. Very well. The history doesn't know this, but the affair between Lancelot and Jevernin was brought up to the public by Morgan. The blonde woman whispers those words with a solemn smile on her face, causing Mordred to take a step back in shock. I... Mother, Mordred said. The blonde woman, now identified as Mordred's mother, King Arthur, or Atora Pentadragon. I am proud of you, Mordred. You lived your life filled with happiness, even if you deny it, Arthur says. 
You are proud of me? Don't lie to me, Arthur. I am no fool, because the last time we met, you stabbed me in my guts using Mirakatong. The night of treachery recalls a few bad past, between them causing a Torah to avert her gaze to the ground. I was burdened with the purpose of a king, and you were a threat to my people. I had no choice but to do it, Atora said. Ha! How could I forget? The King Arthur does not understand feelings, Mordred said. Letting out a bitter sigh, Mordred throws a glare at Atora, who gains a sad smile upon hearing those words. Truly the night of treachery and rebellion, Atora says. You were the one who pushed me to such extents. I never wanted Camelot to be reduced to ruins, Mordred said. You were not meant to be wielding Calibrum. I have also learned that Calibrum has chosen another wielder, Atora says. The King of Knights blatantly mentions a touchy subject, earning a death glare from Mordred. I have no desire for Calibrum, Mordred said. Hearing those words, Atora's eyes widened in surprise before a visible smile appears on her face. I, Atora said, before that, I want answers, Mordred said. Location, Co Academy, replica. A fast blur races across the replica of Co Academy in search of Mordred and finally finds Mordred on the ground unconscious with an Ascalon impaled in their lung. Hey, Mordred, it's me! Issei, you're gonna be fine! Mordred, can you hear me? Issei says. The red dragon lets out a roar of pain and breaks down crying. Soon the rest of Issei's prods were with the shock and sadness on their faces. And we called, use your sacred gear and strengthen their demonic aura. It may repel Ascalon's magic, Issei says. Big sis, I'll help her, Invigold says. Gremory, I'll find her and make her suffer, Bofa says. The delinquent dragon roars in anger, but Issei pays no attention to him. I'll be back, Issei says. I'll also try to heal her, Tamiya replies. Thank you, Issa says. The Red Dra- No, the Hunter of the Red Plains extends his aura to sense the location of Rias and second finds her location. Found you, Issa says. Again, Issa sprints away from speed, surpassing ultimate class beings. Location, Capital Castle, Lucifer, the Underworld, one or two hours after the incident. The atmosphere around the castle was reeking of anger and rage. Inside the observation room, a few devil nobles were screaming insults at Rias and the Gremory clan. We should have executed that vermin when we had the chance, Lugares said. Indeed, the foolish little girl has clearly gone insane. I'll personally hire mercenaries to eliminate her, along with the filthy Gremory clan, Lord Beale says. Touch my mother and I'll show you real pain. Lord Bill, Sir Zek says, the super devil gives the Bill clan a head clan and releases part of his aura, which destroys all nearby furniture, which shut the Bill head. Is that a threat, Lord Lucifer? Zerkum says, it's a warning, Lord Zerkum Bell, Sir Zek replies. The Gremory has risked war with the Dragon Faction. Our clan will no longer remain as an ally of the Gremory clan, Lord Phoenix says. Dear Lords, can you quit yelling, Ajuka said. The green-haired super devil was really irritated by the noble's antics, but there were hints of worry in his eyes. How long will it take, Ajuka? Sir Zek says. Fifty-five minutes, give or take. She will be dead before that, Azazel replies. Sir Zek stomps his foot on the floor so hard that the floor was in pieces and the entire castle rumbled for a moment. My daughter, Invigold, Leviathan can use her sacred gear to strengthen the knight's aura, which will buy us a couple of minutes' time, Ajuka says. You have a daughter? Lord Biel replies. Everyone except Sir Zex were shocked at the discovery. Adopted daughter, the last descendant of the Leviathan clan, the granddaughter of the original Leviathan, Ajuka says. It took... It looks like the citizens of the underworld are undertaking protests in Billet and Orest. Fuck, Sir Zex said. Location, Tower of Avalon. Before that, I want answers, Mordred said. Very well, Ortorta replied. The King of Knights averts her gaze towards the endless skies of Avalon and begins to answer her daughter's questions. How are you still alive, Mordred says. During the Battle of Camelot, as we fought against each other, you managed to disarm me and threw my Calibremo away. When you did that, I used the Holy Lance to pierce you, and, and you mistook that, that you were dead. But you were able to live thanks to my long-lost Sabard, Avalon, which was implanted inside your body. By Morgan. I was caught off guard and was forced to use Excalibur, but you used that thing to fight on equal terms with me. I lost to the final clash because my light was not pure enough. Excalibur is as strong as its wielder's intentions, and my thoughts were not pure at that instant which weakened my Excalibur, and you shattered the sword of my victory. My light lost to your darkness, but before that thing's attack overpowered Excaliburs and reduced my body to ashes, as a desperate attempt I removed my soul and placed it inside my Sabar, which was inside your soul. I watched your life for the past 700 years without being able to communicate with you. A tour completely loses her composure and lets out all of her emotions, which were restrained for nearly all her life. What? Mordred said. I'm not finished yet. 
Are you aware what that thing is? Atora says. I know a bit about it, Mordred replies. You craved power so much that you actually fell, that low to become a wielder of it. You did exactly what I feared for. The sword is the manifestation of the predormal darkness. I am very much disappointed in you, Mordred. You sealed your fate when you took the sword. Where is it now? Atora says. The King of Knights raises her voice in anger and disappointment along with a hit of sadness. This earns a sigh for Mordred. It's locked up inside a pocket dimension. I never used it after the fall of Camelot. Mordred said. Good, Atora replied. Since when do you care for me? Mordred said. The Knight of Rebellion yells at her mother with rage and so many other dark emotions in her voice. I am your mother. I raised you when Morgan left you with me, Atora said. Yeah, you raised me like a bastard child and when I wanted to be by your side, you broke my heart and then impaled me to near death. What a nice parent you are, Mordred said. Mordred lets out a dark glare with an unadulterated fury, making the once perfect king feel something. Am I feeling sad? It's been so long that I forgot these feelings, Atora said in her head. Invigold's POV, location, replica of Co Academy. The situation is worse. Big Sis Mordred is fatally wounded by a dragon slaying sword, and Big Brother Issa wants revenge against the Gremory. Let me pull the sword out of her body, Bova said. Is this guy a fool? Removing the sword will kill her in seconds. No, if you remove the sword, then she will die, Invigold said. But the sword's dragon slaying ability is killing her slowly, Tamio says. The fox has a valid point, but removing her sword will cause her life to force to escape from her body. The life force is force binding, a soul to a physical body. The manifestation of a life force in a physical body is called as aura or magic reserves. If an aura opposing nature conimates a magical reserve, it will drain their life force at the incredible rate. I can use my sacred gear to strengthen her demonic aura, so that the aura dominates the dragon slaying nature, Invigold says. Moving towards Mordred, I place my hands near the stab wound and activate my sacred gear. This is everything I can do to stabilize her, but then, healing flames of the sun god, Tamio says. I watched in awe as Tamio sun activates a spell which produces a small flame around Mochan, accelerating her healing. Get well, blonde, Boba says. I hope big sis Mordred will get well soon. Third POV, location replica of Co Academy. After committing an atrocious attack on Mordred, the ex heiress of the Gremory was hiding inside a building with a satisfied smile on her disgusting face. At last, I did it, I killed her. There's no way she can be alive after taking a stab from Ascalon. Thank you, Michael, for unknowingly helping me by giving me Ascalon, Rhea says. Rhea's, Issei says. Rhea's completely freezes, hearing a growl from Issei, who was standing behind her with a pissed glare. It's good to see you, Issei, Rhea says. Why did you do it? Issei Reset replies. Do what? Rhea says. Rhea tries to play innocent, but intimidating growl from Issei makes her drop her act. Why do you always meddle with my life? Issei says. My dear, I love you and that gives me reason to meddle in our life, Rhea says. Yet you brought me nothing but pain, Issei says. Issei surprisingly surprises his urge to tear into her shreds and make a conversation with Rhea. Love is pain, Rhea says. You're insane, Issei replies. I prefer the term mad love. Rhea says. The moment those words escaped her lips, she felt a sneering hot pain across her cheeks. You slapped me! Your dominating hand touched my face? Ah, oh, this is bliss. I know who you are. Easy the pervert with a dream of becoming a harem king, Rhea says. You may know me, but you have no idea who I am, Issei says. We are destined to be together, Rhea replies. All my life was filled with lies and illusions. People manipulating me with sweet words. My so-called parents, the girls, you, my old friends. You all used me like a toy to satisfy your desires. And when I was no longer needed, you threw me away. I was forced into a cruel unforgiving. I would gone insane if my saving grace, my mortar didn't show up. But you, you took her away from me. Issei calmly explains with a stoic expression, which contradicts his previous rage. Issei. You will not go insane. I will take care of you, Rhea says. Sorry, Rhea. I hope we can have a longer talk, but unfortunately, my sanity is short supply, Issei says. Images of Mordred appears on his mind while a lone tear escapes his eye as the thought of Mordred's gentle smile filled with love and mirth. You are my mate. You suffer. And then the world around them distorted. Reality itself distorted around Issei. Cracks appeared on the isolated dimension due to the sheer amount of energy radiating from Issei. Can you feel it? My rage, my anger, my hatred, 
Issei says. A deep primal voice, full of authority, was all horrified Rias heard before a dead golden pair of eyes met hers. Issei Ray. Issei raised his face and met Rias's horrified look, his face in cracks as itself was being eroded around him. But one that invoked terror on Rias, the dead golden eyes, which shone dimly. It held something deadly, and then Rias knew that she had officially fucked up. I am the bone of my sword, Issei says. Those words filled Rias with even more terror than before. It was as if she was staring at an impossible existence, which held unadulterated rage. Those words brought the beginning of a taboo, but godly power, and subconsciously her soul itself shook. Partner, if you re unleash reality marble, this dimension will dissipate into the dimensional gap, Drake says. Kill, 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 he say thanks in his head. Location, Hawaii, Earth. It was four past noon at Hawaii. Aside the seashore was a traditional Japanese building, which is extremely rare at Hawaii. Inside the building, it was unnaturally silent that the one could get spooked by silence, but for that, being the thought of a matter of silence was not adequate. It was a cute young girl with long black hair, down to her hips and black eyes, and the most alarming feature was her dark gray eyes, having reptilian slitted pupils. The girl was munching over a dozen of sweets without care in the world. Swords are disturbing my silence, the girl says. The cute girl's innocence presence was completely replaced with a primal aura which destroyed everything in the room. No, they were not destroyed but were removed from existence itself with no way of bringing them back. Issei Kodamai, you will help me obtain my silence. The girl's lips curled upwards by a little which made her scary in a way. Before that, I need tons of sweets, the girl says. Location unknown. In a strange dimension, with multicolored ripples all over the space which gave a weird feeling. No, that place was devoid of space and time itself. In simple, the laws of time and space was nil in that dimension. It was something that no ordinary being can enter or live. How annoying! As if someone responding the deep primal voice, the dimension trembled for a minute before returning back to normal. A presence strong enough to gain my attention. Ouroboros must have felt it by now. That voice amused itself with annoyance and curiosity in its tone, but the source of the voice was not visible. A concept. Related to destruction, last time I checked, only two were linked to the concept of destruction. One was the Crimson Devil, and the God of Destruction, but this one. He is not linked, but is a manifestation of a concept, just like me and her. Location, Replica of Co Academy. The dimension around Issei was being teared into shreds by an unknown aura. Grammary devil, run away or you will die, Drake says. The Welch dragon? Rhea says, I sought a blade that terminates into me, Issei starts saying. The aura around the air starts to condense while the dimension slightly shook at the authority, the deep draconic voice possessed. A blade that severs bond, severs certainty, severs karma. The dimension trembled, the might of the chant. Red sparks were flowing around the air, giving horrible sensation. Partner, don't do this, Drake says. That is to say, to free one of one's fate. The Welch dragon, please, fell on deaf ears. Issei paid no attention to Drake as his eyes, gaze, was fixed on Rias. My dear Satan, you are not my Issei, Rias says. Forging thousands of swords to create a borrow of blades, Issei says. A heavy pressure forced Rias to her knees, bringing despair and fear upon her wicked soul. Issei's golden orbs nearly observed Rias with an emotionless hollow smile. Many paths converge here, Issei says. Must flee, Rias thinks in her head. A huge tear in space occurred below Issei, giving birth to a pitch black darkness below him. Space time itself was being destroyed despite the self correcting maneuver of the universe. The universe was built in a way that it was almost equal in every aspect to avoid its self destruction. When something threatens that stability, the universe tries to repair itself by wearing the fabric of space time back to its original state. Only a few individuals can affect the metaphysical universe in its very fabric. Enduring desires flow her, Issei says. Stop this, Rias replies. Unjust deaths gather here, Issei continues. Rias desperately tries to move away from him, but her body remains frozen in fear at the beast she's being unleashed. There is nothing that I can falter his spirit now, except your fate, Grammary, Drake says. Accept this blow from my Tesmurma Sarana. Originless creation of swords, Issei says. For a second, the ominous aura disappears, but soon an even more terrific aura invades the surroundings. 
I don't want to die, Rhea says. The ideal sword of demonic bladesmith which severs karma, destiny itself. The sword forged by a human which reached the level of severing cause and casualty. It was created to perfect copy of the Kensuke no Tashi. The divine sword which was forged from the tail of the dead evil dragon, Yamata Noruchi. A large Japanese katana materialized on Issei's hand, taking... A one last look at Rias, the hunter of the Red Plane, disappears in a flash. W what? Rias says Rias' confused whimper suddenly comes to a halt as she feels the phantom pain across her right arm. Rias tilts her head towards her right arm only to find her limb missing. She screamed in horror while a ghostly smile appears on Issei's face. Ha! <laughs> Issei starts laughing. A, la a lone wail echoed through a surrounding. Time skip five minutes later. The heavy aura that made the dimension itself shook was nowhere to be found. The land around Issei was heavily created and scorched. Issei was standing tall with his head blocking Rias. The red dragon emperor slowly moved away from the crater of his own making in an almost manical manner. His eyes betrayed no emotions except for satisfaction. Never think of meddling with my life. If you do, I won't be merciful. Issei says. Sparing one last glance at the crater, Issei disappeared almost immediately, revealing a gross good sight. At the center of the crater, the Crimson Princess of Rune was lying on the ground with her crimson blood all over the place, and both her legs and hand were missing from her elbows. Her body was littered with deep gashes. The biggest one was a deep cut running down her left eye to her chin. I see, Rhea says. I got axis, Ajuka says. Now, Grafia, get them out of there, Sir Zex says. Capital Castle, Lucifer the Underworld, is our new location. Ten minutes ago, multiple runic symbols were hovering over the green-haired super devil. The others in the room were having a conversation between them. I've got reports from all of the other world about the riots and armed protests, Circum says. The oldest devil, alive, glares at the crimson devil who pays no attention to the glare. I have gathered all the Phoenix Tears in our clan, and can, there can be a total of 14 Phoenix Tears to be immediately used, Lord Phoenix says. Thank you, Sir Zex replies. This is a fucking mess. The Dragon Faction may break off the Alliance and declare war against us, which will drag the Fallen and the Angels to a war as our allies by the Treaty. To make things worse, the Chaos Brigade and the Old Satan Faction may attack us, leading to a full-blown Second Great War, Circum says. A cold aura erupts from the Old Devil, breaking the glasses and furnitures nearby. The Dragon Faction has severed an ultimatum on us. I just received the official statement from the Elder Dragons. Sir Zex says, Truly we're... Truly things were grim for the devils. All devils nobles who were present were nervous at the development. The official statement says, Statement of demands by the Dragon Faction on the United Devil Faction. The United Devil Faction has been found guilty of attempted murder on the Champion of Dragons and the unofficial ambassador to the Devil Faction and his parage. The mate of the said dragon, Mordred Pentadragon, a half-dragon, is fatally wounded by one of the greatest dragon-slaying artifact, Ascalon. The prideful dragon faction will not tolerate such a vengeance against one of the highest ranking dragon. And thus, we present you with 15 demands to be fulfilled. If not, then the dragon shall declare war against all devils in existence. The 15 demands. If the devil responsible for this Rias Gremory is alive, she must be stripped of her title as a Gremory and exiled from the underworld to the human realm for 300 years along with her parage. The clan of Gremory must secede half of its territories in the underworld to the dragon faction. The Shamprak Valley, the modern Devil Gate, the Ominid Mountain Range is in the Forest of Zion must be seceded to us for 5,000 years. 15,000 Phoenix Tears are to be paid per year for the span of 135 years. One fourth of Familiar Forest must be handed over to the Dragon King Tymat. The Clan of Gremory is required to secede all books in the Imperial Library of the Gremory to the Dragon King Yulong. The Northeast Sector under the Bale Clan is to be lended to us for 4,000 years. The eastern lands under Astasroth must be seceded to us. Any dragon slayer artifacts that the devil factions control must be handed over to us immediately. 15,000 megatons of diamondite per year is to be supplied for the dragon faction for 100 years. The crystal lake must be given to the victim, Issei Kodamine. No devil under the service of the clan of Grimmery must enter the city of Ko. If the fatally injured Mordred Pentadragon is alive, all medical expenses must be taken care of by the Devil Faction, and the said Dragonist must be the given almost a treatment. The number of Dragon Soldiers under the Devil Faction as per peace treaty must be reduced to one half. 
Mint Hellblaze under the Phoenix Clan must be lent to us for 50 years. If these demands are not fulfilled, we shall obliterate every single devil in existence. The prideful dragon faction are not cowards to back down from war. The room was so unnaturally silent after Suzek finishes reading the demands. Why the fuck should I give my lance to them? Lord Beal says. Those sly old bastards, they are using this situation to fulfill their goals that they weren't able to. Yu Long is known to be a book freak. There were rumors that he wanted the books on the Imperial Library. Time at wants to increase the size of her territory in the familiar forest. 15,000 Phoenix tears per year for 135 years. Those fuckers are trying to decrease our profits by exporting them to the other pantheons while they can also use them to their advantage. The Forest of Zion. Sharp Fang Valley were once a part of the Dragon Faction, but under the first Lucifer, they they were conquered before 4,000 years. They also want the Crystal Lake, a popular tourist attraction in the Sea Tree Territory. The demand for any Dragon Slayer artifacts, treatment of Mordred Pentadragon, and stripping Rius off the name of Grimmery seems reasonable. 15,000 megatons of Dararite ore per year for 100 years, huh? This alone can ruin a quarter of the BL clan's profit, as they are leading producers of Dyronite. Circum says. The old man almost screams at the last part. Circum never yelled once since the Great War, and this made the super devils worried. There's nothing I can do now. The Phoenix clan agrees to the treaty, Lord Phoenix says. I will not cede a chunk of my land for a pompous Grimmery's mistake, Lord Biel says. Under the supreme authority of the Satan's I, Sir Zex Luter, order you all to abide my decision, Sir Zex says. The Crimson Satan's voice held immense authority that it made everyone shut up and nod at him. You are not a Satan, Circum says. Yes, I am not a Satan, but a super devil with enough power to destroy the underworld, Sir Zex says. An intense stare off between the wisest devils and the crimson super devil ended with Circum sighing in defeat. Do whatever you want. I will stay here no longer, Circum says. I got access, Ajuka says. Now, Grafia, pull them out of there, Sir Zex says. Location, Tower of Avalon. The sound of giggling and laughing was all around the air and the source of it was Mordred and the King of Knights. Ha! Huh, I can't believe that I was this cute when I was young, Mordred says. In the hands of Mordred, it was an old book labeled. As memories remember, the Knight of Treachery was looking into a picture, a child, Mordred laps, with a horse nearby. Truly, it was a wonderful picture, filled with warmth. The usual stoic Otora was also having a small upward twitch on her lips. You were adorable and extremely curious for your age, always trying to impress. Atora says. This doesn't mean that I forgive you, Knight of Knights, Mordred said. This picture is my favorite. Completely ignoring Mordred, Atora flips the page revealing that be described as one of the most beautiful things in the world. It was a picture of Mordred asleep on her parent, while the Knight King of Knights was busy adoring her face with contempt smile on her face. Ah, you were narrating me a story and I found it incredibly boring that I fell asleep, Mordred says. The Knight of Treachery was having a huge smile. The story I narrated to you was the Epic of Gilgamesh, and yes, you did find it incredibly boring. Heh, <laughs> she remembers about me, Mordred said. It pains my heart to see this, but I cannot reveal everything I know. I will carry this burden alone and no one else it to think that you were as far as becoming the wielder of the forbidden sword, Atora says, or just sits there in silence. Hmm, I also know that you found yourself a new king and a husband, Atora says. Yeah, Mordred was soon blushing mess trying to compose herself while Atora just watched her smug smile on usually stoic face. Inside a tower, a man with hair as white as the snow was tied up to the ground. Someone save me. That's it. I hope you will... I hope you all forgive me for the delay and update my mistake. Whew. Okay. And that is the end of chapter 23. Chapter 24. Location, Sea Tree Main Hospital for Supernatural, City of Galantine, Sea Tree Territory. I have lived over a thousand years and never in my life have I seen such a mess. Lady Sea Tree, the Dragoness of Rius Grimmery have been brought, Devil One says. Looks like I can't take a break. I don't hate doing this as I am merely helping my future son-in-law's queen. I just can't believe that Falana's daughter will do something like this. Take the dragoness to a critical ward, Lady Seatree says. I will, Lady Seatree, Devil One says. The noble doctor bowed down and left two to do his duty. I should also be going as a ward. I am the best doctor in Devil Society along with Aurelius. In a couple of minutes, I have reached the critical ward. It was full of my colleagues who were desperately trying their best to help the poor lady. Lady Seatree, this way, Devil Two says. The young devil brought me to the surgery room. 
It was painful to look at this girl's condition. She had the dragon slaying sword removed from her body, but the fresh stab wound was large. Lady Seatree, we have stabilized the patient's aura poisoning, but we are not able to pinpoint her life force, Devil 2 says. Huh? What? Dr. Lore, are you telling me that she is alive even without her life force, Lady Seatree says? I yelled at a man in shock. The man soon flinched, and he looks intimidated. Ah, I must have subconsciously released my aura. No. What I am implying that there is nothing that is interfering with our life force detector, Dr. Lewis says. Is that possible? Devil 2 says. An interference. It is possible for something or someone to interfere with the life force, but only conceptual weapons can do that. The most astonishing thing is that her body is repelling the Dragon Slayer's aura. This is just impossible. Even a high-ranking dragon will find his aura being eaten away by a potent Dragon Slayer artifact, and her body is emitting... Holy aura, Lady Choo Choo says. I can feel it. The uneasiness is in my very being. This girl. Her wounds are also being healed by this unknown energy. But I must say in my entire life, if I only heard a few artifacts with this much healing power, and all of them are almost lost in time. What do we do, Doc? Devil 3 says. Keep her in observation. Two relatives of a patient are allowed to be on the ward, Dr. Leia says. The good doctor flashes a small smile and walks away to check the other patients with an exhausted sigh. He must have been exhausted by the whole mess. After a few minutes, I too left the ward and went to my own office room to regular duties. What I didn't expect was my beloved Aurelius and Mr. Zex on the office waiting for me. Greetings, Lady Seatree. I hope I am not interfering with your duties, Sir Zex says. Of course not, Lord Lucifer, but I wonder what brings you here with my beloved, Lady Seatree says. Sir Zex chuckles at my response while all Aurelius did was groan in annoyance and a little bit of lust. Dear, now is not the time for your teasing, Aurelius says. He is certainly aroused, I can tell by the look in his eyes, those mesmerizing pearl blue's eyes filled with hunger as he... I believe you know the mess of my sister has caused. I want no devil council wants to know of Mordred Pentadragon's condition, Sir Zex says. The girl will live, but the stab wound will most likely leave a scar, but I'm not sure as something is accelerating her healing, Lady Citra said. This made everyone confused. Aurelius looked at me in the eyes, wanting more information. What kind of thing are we talking about, Sir Zex says. I believe that it is conceptual weapon, Lady Citra replies. The room went silent for a minute before Aurelius softly spoke, breaking the silence. That's insane, Aurelius says. Whatever it is, it is related to something divine, Lady Citra said. Sh Sir Zex shakes his head with a sigh and then... Let's not pry into the Pacifics. Specifics, Sir Zex says. Agreed, Aurelius replied. By the way, how is Issei Kota mine? Lady Citra says. I couldn't help but outright ask about the man my little girl loves. The dragons are really dangerous if angered, and I do not want my baby girl in danger. He is in his prior... He and his entire parage are outside the critical ward. He is not in a good state, I'm afraid. He was just staring at the door with a detched look on his eyes. Sir Zex says, a shame we couldn't meet him in a good occasion, Aurelius replies. <coughs> Lord Seatree, do not try to get near him as he may lash out, Sir Zex says. I couldn't help but agree. With Vanilla's son, this could provoke him. Due to this mess, Sarah and I decided to have a meeting with the dragons and, Sir Zex says, Lord Lucifer, the Seatree clan will do whatever we can. We could be helpful in this situation, Aurelius says. The dragon faction has served an ultimatum at us. Sir Zex says, I expect an outright declaration of war from those prideful dragons, but it looks like my daughter being engaged to him made things a bit easier. What do you want from us, Lady Citri says. They mainly demanded the land and treasures from the Gremory Bale and Phoenix clan, but they want the Crystal Lake from your territory. The official statement will soon arrive to you formally. Aurelius lets out a sigh, but complies with the treaty to give away our Crystal Lake. Lady Citri, how is my sister doing? Sir Zex says, I could practically feel his sadness and guilt. Just with the look in his eyes. Shame on you, Rias Grimmery. You are the sole reason for a good-hearted clan to suffer. She is, well, how do I say this? Lady Citri says. Is she dead? Sir Zex replies. No. She is alive, but barely. Her legs and arm have been severed completely. We tried to use the Phoenix Tears to fix them, but a curse is preventing them from reattaching them. She's also lost an eye, and the scar on her face can't be fixed, but fortunately, the other wounds on her body are not as severe except a huge gash on her stomach. It will take several months for her to recover, but then even her legs and her head cannot be healed. I'll put it to your blunt. Your sister cannot be fully treated, and she will most likely be crippled, Arlita says. 
Arlos explains that Gremory's girl's condition to Lord Dusra with no hint of sadness or remorse. She did deserve this, but the poor Satan did not deserve this. I see. I will take my leave from her. A good day to you both, Sir Zek says. And just like that, he went to Satan knows where. Issei's POV, location, Seatree Main Hospital for Supernatural City of Galen, Seatree Territory. I gazed. I gazed upon the unconscious, vulnerable body of my love. She'll be fine, I guess, Tamiya says. I'll fucking kill that bitch! Who did this? Bova said. Bova was sneering in rage at what happened. I feel the same way, but that can wait. My first priority is to make sure my mordred is alright. But Bova-san, this is a hospital. Do not yell, Mash said. Why? What did I do to deserve this? My light, my sunshine, I... Lord Beal is here to meet with you, Lord Kodamine, Dr. Lord said. The doctor sh stuttered in front of my presence, breaking me off my thoughts. I must have been staring at Mordred for a long time. Fuck off, Issei says. I'm in no mood for this. The doctor ran away with sweat dripping from his forehead, causing Tamiyo to sigh. Issei, Mordred will be all right, so stop scar scaring the others who wish to help you. Even the mischievous Foxress is acting serious. I will fucking kill all of the devils! Issei, look at me, Sona says. She must have felt my anger. My ice princess moved forward and placed her hand on my chin and forced me to look into her eyes. She had the verge of breaking down into tears. This forced me to restrain my anger. Come on, guys. Let's give them some space, Tamiyo says. The others left the room, leaving me alone, leaving me and Sona alone on a couch. Sona scooted towards me and placed her cold hands on my hair and started rubbing them, causing me to flinch slightly. You need to be strong for both of us, Sona said. Leave me alone, Issei replied. I slapped her hand away from my hair and glared at her. I know that I shouldn't do this, but I don't give a fuck. Issei, I know that you want to burn the underworld for what happened to Mordred, but trust me, revenge brings no good, Sona says. Issei sits there in silence. Issei... Your mate takes precedence over a twisted bitch, Drake says. Drake is right, but deep down I can feel all those rage. I can feel confused and it hurts. Sona. Though I saw it coming, it hurts, Issei says. Those words brought tears from her eyes as she wrapped her hands over me and pulled me for a hug. Sometimes you just have to stay silent because no words can explain how you feel, Sona says. I, she's right. No words can explain my feelings, but, but, why? Why do you desperately try to help me? Issei says, all relationships have one law. Never make the one you love feel alone when you are there, Sona says. I broke down at her heartwarming words. Tears of pain and sadness was bottled up until now. Rain down like a thunderstorm. I, no. We will always be there for you, Sona says. I buried my face in the crook of her neck and cried without a notice. I will never admit this, but I wanted that. Huh. <laughs> I'll go back to sleep, Drake says. I obviously ignored that and kissed her on her lips, catching her off guard, but soon she gave me to the kiss and snaked her arms around my neck and pulled me even closer while I roughly slammed her to the wall. Thank you, Sona Citri, for everything, Issei says. What a nice view, Mordred replies. Mordred! Third POV, location, Tower of Avalon, Tower of Avalon, five minutes ago. A gentle breeze pushed past the Knight of Treachery, whose gaze is fixed at the seemingly endless field of flowers. Beautiful, Mordred said. Indeed. But for me, it is just painful reminder of my past, Atora says. The stoic former king spoke with Mordred with a solemn voice, earning a glare from Mordred. Let's have a battle, king of knights, Mordred said. I accept your challenge, Atora said. I'll make you bite the dust, Mordred replied. Before they could continue, a strange tugging sensation spread across Mordred, which doesn't go unnoticed by Atora. Your body is pulling your conscience back to your body. It seems like Avalon has healed all your wounds. How unfortunate. I wanted to spend some more time with you, Atura said. Eat, Mordred started saying. The knights of the King of Knights voice came down as a whisper, filled with longing and loneliness, making Atura's lip twitch outward. Go ahead, my child. Live a great life with your beloved. I can see the love and loneliness in your eyes. Also give me a grandchild soon. The King of Knights' sly words brings out an atomic blush for Mordred, the mental image of a blonde girl with golden eyes on her lap, and things worse for Mordred. See you later, Mordred said. Issei's POV, location, Seatree Mansion Hospital. You get the point. 
Mordred, in the blink of an eye, rushed next to her and gently grasped her hands as I felt relief and a small spark of happiness inside me. You're awake, Issei says. Yes, Mordred replied. I frowned. Her voice was so fragile that it broke my heart to hear her chirpy voice in such a state. It is my fault. So in a gasp and surprise and soon rushes towards us. Take it easy. You were stabbed by an Ascalon straight at your lung. Don't overwork yourself, Zona says. F fine Mordred replies. A lone tear slid across my ice queen, but she quickly wipes them. Mordred, noticing this, lets out a chuckle, or at least tried to. Sleep well, darling. You need rest, Issei says. Hey, Issei, no. None of this is your fault, Mordred said. I lost my calm hearing those words. I silently cried with a sad smile on her face. I could feel her and Sona's worry instantly. They make me feel happy. Quit sobbing, you fool. Dragons do not show our weaknesses. We destroy our weaknesses to stop crying and make the ones responsible for this for suffer. And by the way, it's good to know that you're safe, Mordred, Drake said. The booming voice of the Welsh dragon makes me stop sobbing. I swear I can feel amusement from that grumpy old bastard. Have a nice sleep, Sona says. Third POV, location, city of Dragonborn, the eastern dragon sector, underworld. High up in the sky, a floating city was hovering over the barren landscape. The city was magnificent with vividly castles and multicolored crystals. Inside the most tallest castle, where something was going on, rejoice. The devils have nothing to do now but bow to our terms. This day is a celebration, Mysterious One says too. Many dragons were gathered inside the castle in their human form. They were happily drinking and chatting with each other. This is all thanks to the great Lord Clen. Firstborn Lord of Tani, your majesty provides your superior intellect and strength once again. A random dragon bows in respect to the man in front of him. The man had a sharp aura wearing a black tuxedo. His notable features were his handsome face and his blood red eyes. He was staring at the dragon with arrogance and pride. Look at your savior, your hero. You're god, you lowlifes. I, Clan Tanin, order you to amuse me with your praises to your god, Clan says. The dragon flared his aura a bit, making the others comply with his words. Seeing this smile finds its way towards his lip. All hail, Lord Clan, our savior. Good. Bow down to your god, weaklings. Soon I will overthrow the council and become the grand dragon emperor. Just wait, father, your reign is nearing an end, Clan says in his head. Location, Mount Olympus. Up above realm of the Greek gods stood a sturdy mountain castle. It was Mount Olympus, the abode of Greek gods and century of the Pantheon. Inside the castle, inside the council chambers, an old man at his 60s with scars all over his face was seated on the throne with lightning bolt next to him. The old man is the Greek god of thunder, Zeus, also known as the man his playboy nature, which made his wife kick his ass. Oh, the mortal women of this era are a piece of work. Should I visit the mortal realm and impregnate an early earthly woman giving birth to a new demigod? The number of demigods are also declining, so Zeus says the preferred god of thunder had a smile on his face, but upon hearing the voice, his smile went away in the look of horror. Don't tell me you're trying to cheat on me again. The voice held so much malice that made them even the strongest mortal to knee. Hera, my dear, Hera says her in silence. I'm fuck, Zeus says. Zeus, an ominous raspy voice is heard all over the gigantic room, earning an attention of the two gods. Identify yourself, Mora. Mortal, Hera says. Get back, dear. I will take care of this wretched existence by my hand, Zeus says. The god of lightning's booming declaration and earned manacled chuckle from the voice. The shadows turned darker. From it, a man came out. You, Hera says. The mysterious figure noticeable features were his pitch black skin. If a sin itself is given from other, his features were blurry. The man let out a chuckle and stunned expression on his face. You have something I want. You can't demand things from me, Zeus says. <laughs> well, then I'll take it from you, the person says. Foolish god, you dare threaten the supreme god of Olympus inside Olympus itself? You can't face all of us alone. The vengeful goddess grew a cruel smirk at the thought of killing the man before them. But then, I'm going to put some dirt in your eye, bitch. The moment the man said those words, a huge explosion took below Mount Olympus, a demigod camp was in flames. In this cause of a huge army of about 10,000 soldiers, each low class and mid class, while few hundred were ultimate class beings. You want war? You'll get one, Zeus says. The gigantic broom exploded violently a second later, but it was clear that none of them were injured. Location, abandoned house, outskirts of Biel territory. The stench of rotting flesh and metallic blood was all over the place along with screams of agony. The resident psychopath in Biel territory, Rinosuke Uru, the creepy blue-headed beard, were currently disposing of a woman's mutilated body. Hey dude, that woman, she felt so good, didn't she? Rinosuke said. 
Of course, my friend, that lady was 100% a A-grade virgin, Bluebeard says. That brought a smile on the ginger-haired serial killer. He flashed a cheeky grin at his partner in crime. What do you wish for? Inosuke said. Blasphemy. God doesn't exist. He stole my holy maiden away from me. Cursed our future together by taking her away from me. He, he burned her alive in front of me. I want to prove that God doesn't exist. That it is my w Bluebeard gets cut off. The insane speech by the creepy clown was cut short, as he averted his eyes' attention to a devil television of TV, which displays the news of Mordred being stabbed by Rhys. The creepy clown felt the world freeze at the image of Mordred. His eyes widened considerably. He slowly raised his hand, covered in blood, and went towards the TV and placed his hands on her image. My holy maiden, she lives, <laughs> Bluebeard says. What are you laughing about, Rinosuke replies. The most insane psychopath who loves to kill women and children as his hobby tilted his head innocently to face his eradicated partner in crime. I, she is what I desire, my holy maiden, Bluebeard says. The pedophilic clown hugs his partner in crime with tears streaming down his face. Ah, boss just gave us an order to deliver her to our green-haired friend. What are we going to do now, Rinosuke says. We save her from those bastards to deliver her to him. I believe... That he will let me have her after doing his thing, but before that, I'll take care of my holy virgin. Bluebeard says, Cool, Rinosuke replies, Oh, my holy maiden, I will come for you, Bluebeard says. Sea Tree Main Hospital for Supernatural City of Galan, Sea Tree Territory. Three days later. The room was plain white, without anything but a few equipments and an all-familiar redhead lying on the bed, with a deep scar running all over her right eye to her chin. The Crimson Satan was next to her, along with the Vela and a Gremory. Stay strong, mother. I have the best doctors on the underworlds treating her. She will be fine, Serzek says. You're a terrible liar. Ironic considering you hold the title Lucifer, Vanilla says. The brown-haired woman laughed at the poor joke, or at least tried. She, can, she can't have her arms and legs restored. Most probably she'll end up crippled for her entire life, Serzek says. The devil king places his hand on his mother's shoulders and puts her into a hug. I know. Trying to kill a historic well-known figure and mate to a red dragon emperor... How low has she fallen, Vanilla says. I know very well that she deserves this, but it pains me to see her reduced to such a state. She could have died rather than being subjected to such a cruel fate, Sir Zex says. She deserves this. She is not my daughter anymore, nor is she a gremory. Once all of her wounds are healed, she will be exiled from the underworld, Vanilla says. Before the mighty will of Vanilla, the Devil King wasn't able to do anything but nod. He may be a super devil, but he still feared his mother. Good, Vanilla says. Where's father? Suzex replied. At the Gremory Castle, dealing with the civilian riot. Before she could continue, a weak groan echoed through the room, drawing attention of both devils. Rius? Suzex says. Br brother, Rius replies. The raspy voice of the redhead was cut short as her own body went limp except for her mind. Please don't try to speak. Your vocal cords are not so well. What? Rhea says. Rhea tries to move her hand, but finds unable to do so. Taking a deep breath, she slightly opens her eyes, only to be greeted with a stump where her arms should have been. Ah! Rhea says. A street, Gremory territory, the underworld, is the new location we're at. In one of the most popular streets in the capital of the Gremory territory, it was not so regular day, as there was a small riot with rogue spells flying at each other. The devil... Metropolitan City was crowded with raging protests who were trying to leave the cities with Sea Tree Main Hospital, with Gremory Special Forces trying to hold them back. Let us kill the Gremory girl, the random devil said. Yes, death to the traitors, random devil replied. The Special Forces were trying their best to hold the violent protesters back, but they were being overwhelmed by sheer number of protesters. I need reinforcements. The protesters are pushing back our forces, the guard says. The Special Force agent, who was a high class devil, gets bombarded by multiple spells, which breaks his barrier. But then, stop this madness, my citizens, Lord Grimmery says. Lord Grimmery appears from a teleportation circle, pleading with a look in his face. You cannot control us, the random devil says. The protesting citizens turn their attention towards Lord Grimmery, who tries to peacefully resolve the issue. What do you want accomplished from this? Killing Rius, that girl, is no longer a Grimmery. She will be cast aside to the human realm without her legs and an arm. My citizens, do you realize that you are fighting for nothing but meaningless bloodshed and death of our own kin? We are fighting for our future that your daughter ruined by provoking the dragons, the random devil too said. The, par the patriarch of Gremory sighs in exhaustion by the roaring crowd. I declare a state of emergency due to the riot which threatens our life of thousands of civilians. For the well-being of our race, I hereby declare all the protesters as rogue devil to be killed or captured, Lord Gremory says. 
The whole street went up in flames at the aura of the Grimmery Partich. It was the aura of a low-tier Satan class being. A bloodbath was about to begin, which will shake the core of any civilian low-class devil. Location unknown. Underworld. Somewhere at the underworld inside a huge base with hundreds of thousands of devils were equipping themselves with battle armor and weapons. Inside a room with a name board, True Satans, a conversation was going between a dozen of devils, each having an aura of ultimate class devil, but the most prominent ones were two devils, who were hidden in the shadows whose aura surpasses the others. My liege, the preparations are also complete. Almost complete, the general says. An old devil bows his head in respect and looks at the shadow of finger. Good. It's a shame that Tomoki betrayed us. A different voice was heard from the shadowy figures. It was a voice of the second man. Humans are selfish. Little creatures killing each other for nothing but their own dreams. They fail to see the bigger picture as a species and live in a dream world eluded by false hope and the illusion of peace, while such things clearly don't exist. The first voice bellowed at the figure with anger and disgust, his words of wisdom beyond a human comprehension. My lord, we've got reports from our spies in the underworld that Elder Grimmery has personally decided to eliminate the rioters in the Imperial Grimmery capital, Lieutenant says. The youngest devil in the room spoke up with his voice visibly shaking at the beginning. The other devils took the information in with a smile. This makes our plan easier. Beelzebub, do you remember about our wager with Astaroth, don't you? I have already sent Ryosuke and Gillies to Rias to abduct the Mordred girl and deliver her to the freak. Beelzebub said. The man now identified as Beelzebub utters those words with disgust at the thought of a certain Astaroth. My lord, the dragon might cause a lot of trouble to try to save her, the general says. We'll use that as an advantage and launch a full-scale assault on them, Beelzebub says. Hell, old Satan's, lieutenant said. Location, Citri Main Hospital, Supernatural, City of Galen, Citri Territory. A day later. At the entrance of the Citri Main Hospital, a crowd of peaceful protesters were demanding for Rias' execution. Amidst the crowd, a man whose face was hidden by his hoodie slowly made his way towards the reception desk where a dozen of devils were politely holding out others. Welcome to the Sea Tree Memorial Hospital, sir. How may I help you? A female devil politely welcomed the stranger with a small smile, but soon her smile faded away. It would be much appreciated if you die. The mysterious stranger removed his hoodie, revealing Renosuke Uru in the blue bearded behind him. The receptionist starred to two, stared at two figures with wide eyes, but before she could do anything, a nauseating pain was felt, for her head was severed from her earning was severed from her body, earning shocked glances from everyone nearby. Everyone get back, the guard says. Rise, my summon. Show them that God is no more, Bluebeard says. A few devil uh, security officers rush towards the duo, preparing to launch a few spells, but then from the shadows below, a couple of fears appear with the guard saw their bones freeze in horror. What the fuck am I looking at? I may be a closet pervert, but I don't do pedophilia and necrophilia. Two corpses with one missing head and another missing an eye were giggling at horrified expression of the guards in their face. Ah, oh, what the fuck is this? The guard said. The screams of horror, the sound of flesh being ripped, echoed through the building. <sighs> Location, room number 777, Tree Main Hospital. Inside the room, Mordred was having her talk with Tamiyo seated on the hospital bed. Looks like the artifact in your body can accelerate by the healing factor. It may have any other abilities, but I don't know for sure. Do you know anything about this artifact? No, Mordred said. If I am correct, there are only a handful of mystical artifacts that can increase the healing factor to this extent, and they are, are lost. One such as the artifact is Usich Bretha, but it was destroyed. And then there is Resurrection Fright Hades, which is with Hades. Painbreaker is also capable of explosive healing, and there is Avalon, but it can't be... The fox versus rambling were cut short by a high-pitched scream, followed by sounds of, being ripped, of flesh being ripped apart. What? Mordred said. The Knights of Treachery's shout was cut short as she saw Tamiya with a terrified expression. No. How is this possible? How could someone use such dark art? What's wrong? Mordred says. Tamiya suddenly walks towards Mordred and gives her a golden pendant. This is protection spell against dark arts. It will help you because you are in no condition to fight, but I'll inform Issei and Bova about our situation. Tamiya waves her hand and leaves the room with the stupefied Mordred. Time to find out who did this. With Ryosuke. The killer stood across the deck with corpses and body parts littered all over the place. Rinosuke, I will take care of the fox while you t my holy maiden. The pedophile's creep face twisted into a disturbing smile at his own words. Sure, man, I'll bring you the girl to you, Rinosuke said. Wait a minute, Ryosuke, take this ruin. This will help you put her to sleep. 
The crazy pedophile was smiling as he saw his partner with using a magecraft to propel himself upwards. I should cast a barrier, Bluebeard said. Bluebeard cast a barrier around the hospital, blocking it from the city and takes the surviving devils in the first floor as hostage. After he tries to go to the second floor, only back orb to narrowly miss his head. Oh, you're the one I felt, Bluebeard said. The creep above to find Tamiya with a serious expression contradicting to her cheerful personality. A dark art user with grandmaster level of mana control. Why are you here, Tamiya says. Ha! Bluebeard replies. You won't talk? Fine, Tamiya says. The female kids say fired a beam of golden light towards the dark magician who simply raises his hand. And a pitch black shield blocks the attack effortlessly. Killer, Bluebeard says. Obeying their master's command, the two living corpses attack Tamiyo, who uses Senju's to effortly destroy them. Using innocent children for your own gains, I hate you. Heh, <laughs> I love breaking women like you. That earns him an aura infused punch to his face and him flying. I may be a spellcaster, but I can fight with my fist, Tamiyo said. The crazed dark magician lets out a manacle laugh and fires a dozen of tentacles towards Tamiyo, who conjures a magic shield to protect herself. Reinforcements on the way. You can't escape. My friend will help me escape, Bluebeard said. With Mordred, the Knight of Treachery was ready to fight with Claren in her hands. Even her weakest moment, she won't go down without a fight. He say, Mordred said. For a second, Mordred lowers her guard, only to be greeted with a ruin to her face. Heh, <laughs> he said this was work. Well, never mind. I'll just do this my way, Ryosuke said. The killer easily knocks her out with a kick to her chin and creates a teleportation circle. In the moment he was entered circle, the windows break broke revealing Issei flying towards Mordred with his dragon wings. Let her go! Issei says. Sorry, pal. Can't do, Rinosuke replies. The killer enters the circle with Mordred, but disappears just a second before Issei reached the palace. A bone-freezing scream of a dragon was heard all over the city. The prelord to war has begun. And that is the end of chapter 24. I know you guys are about to be extremely upset, but that is the end of this story as it concludes. The author has not posted the next chapter, but he said he might do one next week as far as I'm concerned or looking on Wattpad here. So I apologize for any further say. I might be able to finish the story myself, just pick it up and keep writing it, but I think the author would be pissed if I did that, so out of respect for the author, I will not do that. So I'm sorry if you guys were expecting something, but the movie is going to be, god, I don't know, I think eight hours and like 50 minutes possibly nine hours of me just talking so yeah i can't believe that um thank you guys so much for the support on this fucking series it's been absolutely amazing i promised myself i would finish this one because i really really liked it i just enjoyed reading it myself i know that was one fucking hell of a cliffhanger and i seriously apologize like i can't apologize enough for that and I am continuing to write my own story called Issei the God Killer is Born. So this could probably connect to this story, but I'm actually just going to write it on myself because I really, really want to do it this way. So, with that being said, once again, thank you to my balance breakers, Rob the King, Jorge Alvarez, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Quizzical Toltec Sun God, Madly Wolf 333, Daybreak, VR Wolf Hashtag 2347, Sinmar Q, Mazaku, Dr. Underscore MS Underscore MLG Underscore is the bomb, and Asimotis. Thank you for becoming a balance breaker, which is the highest member tier. Thank you for also all my Ultra Instinct members as well. You guys are super homies. Thanks to the Super Saiyan God and thanks to the Super Saiyans that it's just 099. Thank you so much for the support. It's been absolutely crazy. This, I don't even know how long this video is going to be. It's probably really fucking long. It might even be an hour. I'm not exactly sure. But what if Naruto will, was betrayed? We'll probably be coming out maybe soon. This is either going to release Wednesday or Thursday whenever I get done with editing it. Because I have a lot of work to do and I have a lot of problems to settle in my personal life as well so but i all i don't want to get distracted because you guys don't understand this is like my escape from reality so this actually helps me cope and i probably said too much already but uh thanks for all the support again if you want to see my second channel uh and palpowski it's linked down in the description below i do what ifs on goku there so thank you so much for the support without further ado spartanic arts dxd out